Flop is a term that is often used to describe an uninteresting or unbalanced game with terrible controls. Or in the case of a game with an absurd difficulty level. The virtual reality game, Tower of Trials, fit this description exactly. After the launch of the game, Korean old men, each of whom considered it a hobby to outplay its creators, rushed to conquer the game by refusing to eat or sleep for 365 days a year. However, after three years, people realized that Tower of Trials was a game that was impossible to pass. A gatekeeper worthy of being called invincible. A polar region with a temperature of minus 60 degrees, where it is possible to freeze to death in just an hour. A long labyrinth of over 10,000 kilometers. It wasn't fun, it was sheer torture. After that, the game went bankrupt. Well, almost bankrupt. There were still a small number of old guys who challenged the damn difficulty. Breathing heavily, a system window showed up, congratulating me on clearing the 50th floor and completely clearing the Tower of Trials. Is this true? The player asked, holding his bloody arm. Unlike the others, he had cleared the tower in a different way. The guy had replayed the same thing over and over until he had learned everything by rote and was confident he could get to his goal. And he spent 11 years doing it. He didn't expect to clear every last floor and wished he'd turned on the live feed. He was even thinking of putting it on YouTube, it would get some views. However, he was distracted from his thoughts by a system notification, thank you for still playing our game. There will be a reboot refresh in 12 hours. We wish you an enjoyable game. That was unexpected news. A reboot update? And what kind of money is this company using? Did they find an oil field somewhere in the desert? The guy still couldn't understand the logic of what was going on, after all, this game didn't make much profit. Although maybe the developers had something in mind. Only one thing remained the main thing, reboot refresh or something else. He wasn't going to play this game anymore. The broadcast, which can be considered the guy's source of income, he's going to do for the last time. He has no family to take care of, but he's already 27 years old. He can't live on just 500k one a month forever. Also, the captain should be told that the guy won't be playing sports for a while. It was once said that he should have been a professional fighter, but now money was definitely more important than sports. The live feed is live. People in the chat room started to get active, some of them were wondering if it was too early to start the broadcast today, some of them were discussing the amount of food on the table. After gathering his thoughts, the guy started to speak, Hina's, I want to tell you something. In the comments immediately began to wonder what this atmosphere is and whether Heck wants to announce about marriage. However, after a short pause, he laughed and said that he was just building up the atmosphere. Drinking another glass he thought that tomorrow he should officially announce that he was cancelling the streamings. In the morning Heck suffered from such a terrible problem of mankind as a hangover. However, even so, his first thought was to quickly post a video of the Tower of Trials walkthrough. Turning on his computer, Gene Heck saw a live broadcast with an unusual title, The Tower of Trials Has Really Appeared. His interest overpowered him and already his cursor was on the enter button. Wow, hands! You see that? Everyone can see it, right? Came from the live broadcast, I found out about it because I was informed by a hen melon flavored watermelon. It's from a game, Tower of Trials, that launched 11 years ago. Can you believe it? Panic started in the background, huh? Just a second, the sky turned blood red in color. No way, Gene Heck thought this kind of thing happens when you first start the Tower of Trials. As soon as he thought this, a system window appeared in front of him, announcing the completion of the first stage of updating the new version of Tower of Trials. System windows appeared in front of each person one after another. All players must advance to the next floor of the tower in 90 days. If they fail, humanity will be destroyed. Phase 1 of the new version, Test Tower, upgrade has been completed. People's level of adaptability and acceptance of reality is increasing amazingly, the system windows reported. We need to stay calm. Flashed through Gene Hyok's mind. He realized that if Test Tower had actually become a reality, then now was not the time to hesitate. He hurried to the place where he could obtain this item, after all, the world would probably be destroyed. Hex Hart was ready to jump out of his chest with excitement. At this time, panic broke out in the central city. People were looking for ways to leave Seoul for Busan or somewhere else, most importantly not to stay in Korea. However, that damn tower had appeared overseas as well, 
so there was no point in going there. The people in the city were sure that if they stayed in Seoul, they would be foolish and die for nothing. Meanwhile, Jean Hayak had already reached the subway station. He realized that now was not the time to run, now was the time to go forward. On the Korean server, this metropolitan area had been selected as one of the off-tower areas and if you looked at the countries, there were only 40 of them and this was the closest of them all. You have entered an event area. Reported the system notification. The people who were here were people who had played the first part of Tower of Trials. Everyone was just watching each other, since there was nothing else to do for now. The number of items that were soon to appear here was limited and if they were lucky, there would be around 5. You are. Kong Jean Hyok? The blonde haired guy asked, turning to Heck, ha huh? That's right, Kong Jean Heck. Wow, you came here too. That's right, you've been doing nothing but playing with toys all day and night, hiding in the corner of the room. The guy who addressed the main character was Paprika TV's BJ partner and 500k subscriber on YouTube, Lee Jong Su. People like him are commonly referred to as successful celebrities. Along with this, Jiang Su is a representative of the company that Jean Hayok was also a part of. Isn't this a good time for a live broadcast? Jean Hayok sarcastically asked. However, he only received an oblique glance at the other players in response, which was accompanied by a rhetorical question about the appropriateness of such a broadcast. More importantly, what floor did you get to? After all, you played this game so hard. Why hide such a thing from a colleague with whom you work in the same company? Let's share it, and we'll enjoy it together. Colleagues, repeatedly ran through Hack's mind. In the company Jong Su created, there were many BJs who were cheated because of the unfair contract. The more broadcasts they did, the deeper they sunk into this quagmire. And their protesting voices were mercilessly drowned out by the force of the huge lawlessness. Eventually, in the course of time, the colleagues with whom Jean Hack had been close and with whom he had risen from the lowest ranks gradually left the company. I know you're pretty good at playing and making mouth-watering mock bands. And just for you, I'm willing to change your contract terms to a more favorable one, hmm? John Su was about to start trying to negotiate with Jean Hayak. However, one thing he hadn't calculated was that the world had changed. So now Hayak was able to punch John Su so that two of his teeth came out. That makes me feel better. Hack thought. Almost immediately, however, he glanced behind his back gradually, he should start to appear. It was about the unusual tree that had appeared in the fountain in the center of the event district. The magro tree was what the players in the area called it. Everyone marveled at the fact that it was just like the one in Tower of Trials. In his thoughts, Heck praised himself, making sure his memory was in order. The mangrove greed tree continues to grow. A system notification alerted. Immediately afterward, appetizingly ripe fruit began to appear on the branches. These wondrous and appetizing fruits have the effect of raising dexterity, strength, and mana stats. It was no doubt a good item, but there were only four fruits for the entire tree. Pretty cruel. Flashed through Heck's mind as he realized what was going to happen. While all the players were trying to pick the fruit and fighting each other, John Su was trying to convince Hayak to team up and split the fruit in half. Sit tight if you don't know anything. It's not time yet. Hayak said with a victorious smile. Ordinary people don't even know about the existence of a tree with fruit. People who have only played a few times will focus their attention entirely on eating the fruit. But the old timers enjoy a more perverse and cruel spectacle. The last fruit was plucked and the tree began to rampage. People began to panic again, for everyone here had been through this a long time ago and had already forgotten everything. Even Jiang Su tried to hide, and only Jean Hayak alone stood there looking at that tree. Are you going to give up? A question sounded towards Jiang Su. Our meaning. Panic the guy, this place is all about dying a dog's death. Is that so? Heck asked intrigued, that's a pity. After all, the real reward of the event can only be obtained when all the fruits have been eaten. Jiang Su thought for a moment. Now everything was falling into place, now he understood why Jean didn't show any interest in the fruit. A plan emerged in his mind. Let's say your words are true. How are you going to proceed? We need to get inside, Jean Heck answered him, if we move next to each other, we'll become an easy target. So it's imperative that we approach it from both sides. He pointed his finger at the tree trunk. 
All in all, the plan was insanely simple all they had to do was spread out the tree's attention. However, Jean Hayak warned if even one of the two started to hesitate, that would be the end of it. However, Jiang Su assured him that everything would go smoothly, since he was also playing this game for a while. Now, Jean Hayak shouted and started running along the routes, dodging attacks. However, as soon as he wondered where Jiang Su was, he saw that he was standing still. Jerk! Jiang Su shouted, who's going to listen to you? Here, or become the bait yourself. His plan was even more simple, he was going to wait for the tree to kill Jean Hayak and himself, in the meantime, was going to collect the reward. What a relief! That your character hasn't changed. Jean Hack fought solemnly as he dodged another tree attack. The one who will be the bait will be you, standing there. As soon as he thought this, the roots that Jean had dodged headed towards Jiang Su, wrapping around him. The roots of the mangrove greed tree began to wrap around Jiang Su with renewed vigor. In just a few moments, the guy was almost invisible behind the roots. Jiang Su started begging Jean Hayok for help. Why would I do that? Jean Hayok smirked, if you want, you can report me through that wonderful lawyer. Jiang Su tried to say something else, but was trapped in a cocoon of roots and crushed to death. Have a safe trip, trash. Or Hayok's last thoughts to Jiang Su. Left by 22 degrees and right by 35 degrees, the roots flew at Jean Hayok with great speed dodge. It's not difficult. In the very next second, the roots collided and pierced through the tree trunk, exposing the heart-shaped fruit that was hiding under the bark. The core of a mangrove tree has appeared. There really isn't an ounce of error from what I went through in the game here. Heck smiled slyly, after all, knowing the exact trajectory is hard to let yourself be attacked. Gene Hack picked up the broken off end of a root from the floor and aimed straight for the tree heart. The only disadvantage of this tree was that since it was an event monster, there was no experience to be gained from it. At most, it could raise the honor level for a day. Mangrove Greed Tree is using the skilled bloodsucking vine. Reported a system notification. Even though Gene Heck was an old man, even he would have a hard time dodging it. However, Heck thought, grabbing the root more comfortably and fending off the first attack, it's within my power to tweak the trajectory and change it as much as I like. There's no need to be frightened or worried. Reflecting the attacks one after another Gene Heck changed the trajectory of the root so that they would dig into the ground after all. I've been through this many times before. Almost there. Flashed through G. Hayok's mind as he dodged the roots and approached the trunk. Suddenly, translucent turquoise butterflies began to fly out of the crown of the tree. Soporific butterflies. They release soporific pollen as a defense mechanism. The soporific pollen is inhaled instantly, and if one doesn't know the defense method, one can instantly fall under its influence. However, the method of defense is quite simple and Jean Heck knew it. The pollen wouldn't be dangerous if one simply held their breath. That's exactly what our hero did, because he reached the trunk without any problems, dodging the attacks directed at him and pierced the core of the tree. The tree began to wither right before his eyes, while a system notification informed Jean Heck that he was the first to defeat the mangrove greed tree. The guy hadn't expected that the capture pattern and timing study he had repeated so tediously would be of such use to him. However, he was once again grateful for everything he had been doing all this time. Within 24 hours, honor level will be recorded as your achievement. The system notification reported, followed by the next one, give me the player's name. No name. I will remain anonymous. Heck spoke to himself. He was adamantly opposed to the dissemination of his personal information. The guy realized that he would cause all sorts of interest if it was revealed that he was an old timer. Apparently, the system doesn't allow complete anonymity. Such was the reaction to the system notification that Heck's face would henceforth be hidden by a mosaic and his voice redone. That means she compromised and hid my identity after all. Though I won't say there's no way to solve it later. The boy reached for the area inside the tree trunk, what matters now is this, it's finally in my hands. In the guy's hand lay a turquoise sphere that emitted a dim light. Tree core tree heart has been obtained. A system notification reported. If each tree fruit raises strength, dexterity, or mana by 3 points, then tree heart gives at least 12 bonus stats. Considering that 3 points are given for gaining 1 level, with Gene Hex core, it's as if it will rise by 4. Honestly, I can't believe my eyes. There can't be an item with such a good return rate. 
Heck examined the sphere while twirling it in his hands, moreover, even after going through 50 floors, there's nothing better to be found. The guy absorbed the sphere, after which his entire body was pierced by a turquoise light. After the light went out Heck decided to check the status in the system window to see how well the loot was absorbed. After the summoning, a system window appeared in front of Heck, which had the necessary information for the system, such as name, gender, age, and level. But he was more interested in the field that was just below where the stats were described. Specifically, the line stat points available. Level 1 and 12 stat points available. Kong Jin Hack was the strongest first level in the entire Tower of Trials. Just an hour later, the video walkthrough was posted online and immediately caused an explosion of comments. Barring a couple of comments in the beginning, everyone was sure that this news was absurd and it was all about luck or a simple method was used to kill the mini boss. However, as soon as the video was uploaded to the network, all doubts instantly disappeared. Some loved it, some didn't. People who saw this video reacted the same way. Also, among all the comments, there were so many who offered exorbitant sums for cooperating with them. Was it that unbelievable? Heck was perplexed, although, of course, it's not easy to defeat Greed Mangrove Tree while being at level 1. But that's not to call it that amazing either. However, perhaps the reason for this violent reaction was something else. Other people had never reached the second part of the tower, and Heck was judging from his bell tower, once again forgetting that it wasn't advisable to do so. By the way, 1 billion, Gene Heck reflected. He had lived a hard life, during which he struggled to earn even his own food. The guy was often late with his rent, there were even times when, after saving money for food for the mock ban, he could sit hungry for days at a time. If he had been offered that money 24 hours ago, he would have accepted the offer without a second thought. But right now, offer him even 1 billion, even all 10, he wasn't going to share the information he possessed. Right now, the most important thing was monopolizing information. While Heck was busy playing the game, the mana flowing out of the Tower of Trials filled all the neighborhoods in Seoul. It didn't really affect anything, but if anything was changed, it was the relics outside the tower, which later became sacred relics, not for real, of course. Sacred relics with abilities from the legends are in the tower. So now we're talking about replicas, or in other words, duplicates. The place where I can get the most replicas is here. Standing in front of the building and checking against the map on his phone, Gene Heck pondered. This building turned out to be the People's Central Museum. It is a beautiful place that houses many relics. It's like a kind of treasure warehouse. However, the problem was that there was more than one Gene Heck targeting the relics. Unlike the greedy mangrove tree that appeared in seven different places in Seoul, the People's Central Museum is only one. There will definitely be a lot of people gathering from all the districts wanting to get their hands on the relics, and there will clearly be old people among them. You have entered the event district. The system notified me as soon as I crossed the threshold of the museum. It was too quiet, however. At first, Heck thought that maybe he was one of the first to arrive. But no. The presence of others was hinted at by the burned corpse that lay among the ruins of one of the stands. As expected, Heck thought, looking at the burned corpse that lay among the ruins of one of the stands, someone still managed to come first. The world had changed, so the guy assumed that people would change as well. But the difference between expectation and reality was even greater than imagined. In 24 hours, people had become overly fearless and targeted the sacred relics stored in the halls of the Middle and New Age. The sacred relic that all the people who invaded this place want to get their hands on is the Tidoyanjido map. They obviously don't want to look at the eight provinces of the Republic of Korea. Since the ancient map imbued with mana holds information about the Tower of Trials, everyone wants to possess it. It details where to find the labyrinth with ruins and what items and monsters are there. Who wouldn't want to possess something like that? Even though there is no information above the 10th floor, it is enough to light a fire in people's eyes. Everyone wants it, but they don't know that truly valuable sacred treasures are hidden in the clay. Meanwhile, chaos was going on in one of the museum's halls, many exhibits were smashed or broken, and people were literally killing each other in an attempt to get to the map first. Freeze! Loudly shouted a guy with the appearance of a typical Yakuza, whoever moves from this point onwards is considered dead. However naturally no one believed him and people started snapping back. Then if you move a finger either, I'll crack your skull. Threatened the guy with the Yakuza hammer. However, angering this guy was a fatal mistake. The Yakuza activated his personal ability, 
turning his fists into stone. The map is mine. Stay back. Threatened everyone in the hall by the Yakuza guy. Yours, you say? Came a voice, clearly disagreeing with that statement. An elderly man walked out to the guy, ho ho. I can't agree with those words. The old man's name was Min Young Woo, which literally translated to let's live in love and friendship. Who needs to introduce themselves here? Understand the situation and hide. Began to shout at the Yakuza who was clearly angered by John Woo, your dried up neck I can ring like a shaking chicken head. The young youth is so crude with words. Not a tongue, but a blade. John W. reasoned. But tell me. Will you be quicker to wring my neck, or will I turn you into a coal? The old man smiled sinisterly and snapped his fingers, whereupon a light was lit above his index finger, catch. Literally one touch of the fiery spark was enough to engulf the entire Yakuza in flames that burned him in a matter of seconds. Now in the place where the Yakuza had just stood was a corpse that looked strikingly similar to the one Jean Heck had seen at the entrance to the museum. This is a tongue-in-cheek disaster, this is tongue-in-cheek fire, John Wu summarized. Wow, fire magic is really hot, spoke the girl that just walked up, it's really good to see that I decided to cooperate with you. The girl's name was Li Yuri, and she was retreating behind the statues from the Egyptian hall. He will be enough. The girl spoke, placing one of the statues of Anubis, the Egyptian god of death. On the floor, he will deal with anyone who decides to interfere with us, the girl activated her personal ability, and a two meter tall humanoid with the head of a jackal appeared in place of the figurine. The person who moves will be considered his enemy. Question Li Yuri's rule, understand? He will devour you, starting with your head. Rum rum. This time she was already addressing the people in front of her. The people around them didn't understand why there were so many old people gathered in the museum, even if they were awakened. Therefore, it was easier for them to surrender than to try to resist the experts and die in a not-so-fair battle. Everyone started throwing their weapons on the floor and declaring that they were surrendering. However, the moment Li Yuri and John Wu had already relaxed into the hall, Jean Hyok walked in. What a mess they've made. He was indignant as he looked around, don't these people even have the basic etiquette of handling antiques? Anyway, what a relief that nothing got torn. A satisfied Jean Hack picked up and dusted off the ancient manuscript. Hey, Appa, who disturbed the atmosphere of fear? Addressed Yuri to Hack, does it look like I'm messing around here? The girl turned to Anubis with a single command, get rid of him. Anubis charged straight at Jean Hayak, intending to kill him with a single blow of his Najinata, but the boy easily deflected the attack, knocking the weapon out of the copy of the god's hands. The Najinata flew off and made a groove in the floor behind the boy, so strong was Anubis' attack. A ripple of excitement began to run through the hall. No one understood who this guy was, how he got such strength, how he fended off such an attack, and most importantly, how he didn't take any damage. They're the ones who still don't know how many stats Hack has, that's how they reacted like this. What will you do? Your pup, Hack turned to Yuri mockingly, and your only weapon is gone. W who said I only have one statue? Li Yura began to panically rummage through her backpack, pulling out four more statuettes from there and reviving them. Awakening of the Sacred Relic Anubis Incarnation, Replica. The system notification reported. How's that? You could easily tell from Yuri's face that reviving and maintaining the five statues was quite hard on her, still want to laugh? Not bad Jean Heck summarized. Judging from the fact that Li Yuri is able to maintain five of these things at the same time even with such a small amount of mana, she's no ordinary level. And the grandfather who had recently used magic. Somehow there's a lot of old people who got out of the nub images. Did you say not bad? Li Yuri interjected lost. Aha. Uh -huh. More specifically, somewhere between not bad and SOSO, Jean Heck continued to stand his ground. Li Yuri was confused at first, and then got angry and accused Heck of bluffing, how about this? Then I'd better show you. Because it's impossible to sense if the difference in skills is too great. Even just showing her would be enough for her to see everything with her own eyes, the overwhelming difference. Jean Hack took the same manuscript that was dusting off and injected his mana into it. Entering mana into the sacred relic Pine Tiger, replica, a system notification announced, followed by another, appearance of the mountain ruler. A huge golden tiger appeared beside Jean Hayak, looking at everyone around him with an evil grin. Absurd, the girl muttered quietly under her breath, not believing her eyes. Era, Josian. 
identity, nameless, presented the tiger system notification. The jackals began to grind their teeth, feeling threatened by the tiger. Some desert jackal dares to show its teeth to the ruler of the mountain? Jean Hex smugly muttered, stroking the tiger behind its ear contentedly. Then the guy pointed his finger at the jackals and spoke out pathos eat is served. The tiger was just waiting for this command. He pounced upon the jackals with indescribable anger, mauling them one by one. However, Anubis replicas were not far behind either, they tried to fight off the tiger as best they could, but none of their attacks reached the ruler of the mountain. There's no way, Stunley Yuri, I've certainly heard of different ways of using sacred relics, but I've never heard of anything like this. The girl was racked with fear, and her body wouldn't listen to her mind, and this mana. It feels like my skin is being ripped off. I can't win. The girl fell to her knees from helplessness against the mountain ruler and Jean Hayak. One could easily read fear, despair, and incomprehension on her face. I was firmly convinced that this was the strongest card, tears came to the girl's eyes, how could it be? Who is he? While the girl was coming to her senses and asking a lot of questions Jihak began to approach. Give it back. The guy uttered, looking at the girl from top to bottom. However, Li Yuri didn't understand what he was talking about, so he clarified Tutankhamun's mask. It's useless in Korea, where are you going to use it? The girl clearly wasn't going to part with that mask so easily. That relic really was useless in Korea. Why would a guy need it? However, Jean Hayok did not argue with her. He simply summoned the tiger O dash. I'll give it back, I'll give it back. Li Yuri screamed panically. Sacred Relic Mask of Tutankhamun, Replica, has been received, the system UV emission reported. Wonderful. Jean Hack thought, now I've gotten the second sacred relic. You're targeting the Tetanyajito map? Li Yuri asked interestedly. Heck remembered that originally, after all, people had come here mainly just for this map. Hinting to the girl that it was none of her business, he turned to the Lord of the Mountain, make sure that everything is under control. Make sure no one decides to follow me. Finally, all the preparations were completed and it was time to obtain the strongest skill, Tower of Trials. Lady Li Yuri, how come? He stood beside a pensive Jean Hayak who was thinking about the barrier in front of him, who was he that he could get here? Did he really defeat Lady Li Yuri and that's why he came up here? It seems to be a level 1 barrier, Hex said thoughtfully. Ho ho! Looks like you know about it too. John Wood touched the blue wall in front of them, this is the first time I've seen a barrier like this. Whether it's a physical attack or a magical attack, it's all useless the old man spoke like a longtime barrier expert. Jean Hack touched the wall, focusing on the flow of mana. He needed to find the place where the flow of magic diverged. It was there that he saw this word, Carpo. I think I know how to destroy it, turn to the old man, but I have a condition. A condition. John W. interjected. If you affect the barrier with your flame magic non-stop, that way we will have a chance to weaken this shield, Jean Heck issued a quite logical theory. How long do we need to do this? John Wu questioned. Until I return with the necessary relics. That is to say. While you're inside I have to stand outside the barrier and affect it with my magic? The old man couldn't understand this guy's train of thought. However, Heck's reasoning was logical, he didn't have the ability to use powerful attack magic that could damage the barrier on his own. He was even willing to give the old man the map, since he himself had come for something else. There was nothing left to do but trust the guy. Understood. I'll trust you and do my best, John Wu assured him, activating magic and directing it at the barrier. The barrier began to resist the attack, but still began to crack. Go! Jean Hack shouted to himself, while simultaneously uttering the word Carpo, which allowed him to safely run through the barrier. Hurry up! Grandpa shouted, squeezing out all of his mana reserves. Heck nodded back at him and turned away. Quickly looking around the floor with a quick glance, the guy noticed that, unlike downstairs, there was nothing to indicate that anyone had been here. Except for one thing, a broken display case that had iron sword engraved with Luan on it. This person. Already did what he wanted to do and left Heck pondered, it also became obvious that he was the one who put up the barrier. Whether people are fighting somewhere or not, this man left right after he got what he wanted. He still couldn't bear the slightest burden of danger. However, even those like him did not know what Jean Heck knew. 
namely, the fact that the item he obtained was merely a second-rate relic. Found it, Hex said softly and with a smile as he looked at the Lee D dynasty coins. It was the final piece of the mosaic in obtaining a personalized ability just for Heck and coincidentally, to create the strongest skill. Its ingredients were ceremonial Persian pouring mold, E, and the right eye of Tutankhamun's mask, B. By combining these two relics a system notification appeared, two relics react, that only appeared when two matching relics met. At the same time, if one wanted to advance further, one had to pay the appropriate price. Jean Heck added Lee, D, Lee dynasty coins to the two provisual relics, and then the system notification said that three relics were already reacting with each other, followed by another notification saying, you have overcome the abysmal probability percentage and succeeded in unification. The eyes of truth, SS, relic has been obtained. The system window showed data about the new relic, allowing the owner to open another person's status window and discern the truth slash falsehood in the object's words. But this function was only available three times a day. In fact, Eyes of Truth was the best of the five existing eyes in the world. However, the real reason why Gene Heck had come to the museum today was not that. Screen Quest, by combining three replicas below B-Class, you have succeeded in creating an item above S-Class. A system notification appeared in front of the guy, which was soon replaced by another a strange fate has been achieved. Copy and save numerous abilities that existed in the world, creating more powerful skills from the saved abilities. This was Ji Hayok's personal unique weapon that he was going to use to become the strongest in the Tower of Trials. The special personal ability unification, Overrun, has been obtained. Another system notification, which was replaced by the following, the world memories are being formed. A system window appeared in front of Heck, with data about the ability. By completing a special quest, the guy could copy the personal abilities and skills of other people, which he could then save in the world memories. By combining the stored skills, he was free to create top-level abilities. However, in the case of a drastic level rise in the preservation conditions, certain details of the conditions could be changed. Hey! John Wu's shout pulled Hayak out of his own thoughts, if you're done, let's hurry up. We're already running out of strength. Turning his attention back to him, Grandpa reminded him that Jean Hayak also had a test subject to test his new ability on. The guy decided to see what it would take to copy John Wu's skill. Copying conditions, Min Young Wu always hides his feelings under a mask. Make him show his true self, the system notification informed him. The thought flashed through Hayok's mind that it would be quite easy to anger the old man. Copy condition, Min Young Wu always hides his feelings under a mask. Make him show his true self, the system notification said. The thought flashed through Hayok's mind that pissing off the old man would be quite easy. Hey! John Wu shouted, hurry up. You don't have to use this skill anymore, Heck said coldly. John Wu didn't understand what the guy meant to be honest, there wasn't much need to use it. What? What does that mean? Still didn't understand the old man, T then why did you tell me to do that? Carpo. Gene Heck said loudly, after which the barrier fell. In Latin, it was a destruction spell that made it easier to break through the barrier. It was the one the guy used to get through the barrier when he entered the room. The old man didn't actually contribute anything to the barrier's destruction. Did he really believe that his endless attack on a barrier that was impossible to break through would be of any use? Just a waste of mana, Heck pondered, in the end, that old man's mana was almost completely depleted. All this was done as a safety net, because now the guy was going to piss the grandpa off. Heck knew everything about the tower to the smallest detail, and therefore the map with information up to the 10th floor was completely useless to him. Even so, he wasn't going to give it to anyone. Bringing a lit lighter to the edge of the map heck was going to burn the map. With this map, anyone could find out all the information up to the 10th floor, so it was feared that heck's advantage would disappear. In this case, the surest way was to get rid of that possibility. The entire map burst into flames and burned in a matter of minutes. This event in absolutely angered John Wu, who immediately started cursing at heck, promising to wipe him into powder. Condition fulfilled. You have succeeded in copying the fire element, B, skill, a system notification informed Gene Heck. The copied skill is stored in world memories. Reported the system notification. Fire element. Not a bad stat for the first copy, the guy thought, ignoring the old man's threats, which continued to pile up. However, when the grandfather activated the skill Gene Hyok's patience broke, you don't seem to understand. You don't know why I burned the map, do you? 
After saying those words, the guy activated a new skill. Although it was only level 1, the difference between Heck and John Wu was astonishing. John Wu realized that Heck was far from a mere mortal since he had such a level. He was so not simple that he didn't even need a map. Old man, if you intend to continue to climb the tower in peace, you must obey me well. Counting Jean Heck, only four old men had appeared in the National Central Museum. Now that, the challenge tower, was a reality, the guy understood the general desire to reduce risks. But the guy didn't understand how one could do get ahead of everyone else by doing such a thing. Be that as it may, the guy was determined to gather as many personal abilities and skills as possible. Just like that, Gene Hack had gotten a horse that he would be able to do whatever he wanted with for a long time. His road is still so long, so the first thing he decided to do was to gather the most necessary abilities. Of course he won't be able to monopolize absolutely all the ironic destinies, but it is in his power to gather the coolest and most important ones. Suddenly, the silence was interrupted by the rumbling of his stomach, there it is, my limit. It's time for rice soup. Walking into the cafe he heard people's outrages. There was an incident at the National Central Museum in which at least 23 people were killed and more than 50 were found injured. The casualties include the critically injured, so the death toll will continue to rise. The instigators allegedly targeted relics kept in the museum. Reported the news broadcast, however, it's not just in South Korea, but also in the US, Europe, China, Japan. Similar incidents are happening all over the world. As expected, players in other countries weren't sitting idly by either. Making preparations to conquer the tower, let's take a look at the CCTV video taken inside the building. Footage of Hayak and Lee Yuri fighting in the museum began to appear on the TV screen. It's hard to believe, but this is, without exaggeration, reality. The government is investigating the reasons behind the appearance of a building of unknown origin called the E-Test Tower. For the employees who can now use special abilities, a special unit, the Awakened Association, was founded. The government reacted faster than Heck had anticipated. Judging from the fact that they had formed the department from people who had already awakened personal abilities, they had decided to accept what had happened at the museum as something inevitable. It was rather unexpected. Gene Heck was sure that it would take them at least a few weeks for this to happen. Let's meet the participants and hear the details, the voice from the TV continued, My name is Han Sang Jean. I am the head of the Awakened Association. The reason I am here is to recruit awakened ones. It will depend on your level, but we promise that the pay will be in line with a 7th grade civil servant, and the minimum annual salary will be 60 million won. After a short pause, the man continued, of course, the people who appeared on the broadcast are the exception. Nevertheless, I am willing to put the name of the head of the association on the line and promise, if you join us, whatever you wish for, all your needs will be funded by the government. The people who appeared on the broadcast are the exception hesitated hack so in the end their target was me they considered the guy a serious threat however he wasn't going to be owned by anyone no matter what price was offered one experienced person had far more value than a hundred similar players and since han sang jean also understands this he tried to lure such a person to his side by beckoning him with a bank check han sang jean since he was entrusted with the position of the head of the association does that mean he has a pretty good ability a thought flashed through Gene Hyok's mind, or else. Is it all because he's been playing Tower of Trials for a long time? Since that's the case, it would be glorious if it was a really good ability. Hiku was already impatient to feel the sweet taste of copying. Shifting his gaze to the clock the guy realized that it was only a short time before the tower opened. At 7 p.m., when the hour hand indicated the new time, the Tower of Trials officially opened, greeting everyone with a system notification. People couldn't believe that the tower had actually opened and looked just like it did in the game, however it never ceased to amaze. In honor of entering the tower, 100 coins have been given away, a system notification alerted everyone who entered the tower, coins are a currency that can be used in the tower. Dear players, by saving your achievements on videos and uploading them for every 10,000 views you will be awarded 100 coins. The commission varies depending on the level of the player. Viewing videos by those who live outside the tower will only count when they watch the video for the first time. Therefore, please be cautious when choosing a video to watch. The live streaming function can only be used while clearing boss monsters to get to the next floor. Appropriate action will be taken if tampering of views and other illegal activities are detected. Here it is.
The bridge that is the link between the people going up in the tower and the regular people living outside the tower is the live streaming system. Viewers watch player videos, wanting to see the end of the tower, and thus raise views. The most interesting setup of Tower of Trials is this system. In other words, the more famous you are, the more coins you can earn. After all the system notifications appeared, people snapped out of their seats, hurrying to grab a favorable spot as quickly as possible and raise the level faster. They must want to get ahead of everyone or get rich quicker. It wouldn't be a problem for Heck to learn coins since he knew everything. However, he wasn't going to pour the video first. Even if he gets some coins for watching, but shares the information he has, he will do himself a huge damage. Especially since the guy had already decided what he wanted to do first. A bit of a different road from the rest of us. G-Hack was immersed in the memories of the very first pass. At that time, after clearing the beginning of the 30th floor of the tower there was a period where there was no way to advance further. He collected hidden parts, searching the lower floors to climb to the next floors, constantly analyzing every step of the way. Eventually he was able to find a solution in the ruins alone. Finally, he realized that his character was worthless from the beginning. Is this the result of me searching all the lower floors? The character I pumped up after spending several years in misery turned out to be crap. The guy was bursting with internal resentment and despair. However, he was determined to delete the character and start all over again. That was about six years ago. Heck wondered, standing in front of the dungeon doors. Name, Liverinthos. Type, Labyrinth. Difficulty level, B, the system notification popped up, description, Labyrinth of Crete, designed by Deadless. Features an incredibly intricate maze and the presence of traps of various types. The foundation for breaking through above the 30th floor will be base accumulation. And the key to the essence of this sweep is in the Liverinto's maze. Heck never thought that he would have to do this again. It feels like he's going into the army again. Alright, let's go. Gene Heck encouraged himself as he opened the maze. Inside, he was greeted by the familiar sight and smell. Everything was exactly the same as before. Beautiful blowing moths flew under the ceiling, one of which descended and sat on Heck's arm. However, the guy's attention was taken away by the people that entered the maze after him, who are you? The guy asked menacingly. The guy asked menacingly. Hello? Friendly began a girl in a pink sports sweatshirt that looked to be the head of the team, we were looking for a place to hunt and saw an open maze. So we decided to go in before it closed. Asterisk 10 minutes before the labyrinth invasion asterisk. A group of people had been watching Heck from the moment he entered the tower. They thought he knew something, so they followed him. They didn't understand why the guy went into the maze as soon as he entered, and even more they didn't understand how Heck opened the maze door without a key. Let's go in too, said the girl in the pink sweater, for which she was immediately bombarded with angry comments from her teammates, if you have a head, try such a thing as thinking. We also know what the most important thing is at the beginning of the Tower of Trials, right? He hasn't even found the key and the maze has already opened. Besides, since it's at the first level, that means it's possible to go in there and the degree of difficulty isn't that high. From the crowd came the logical statement that the guy obviously wouldn't want to share items. To which the head of the group stated that they would make him stay in that maze forever. Hello? Friendly began the girl in the pink sports sweatshirt that looked to be the head of the team, we were looking for a place to hunt and saw an open maze. So we decided to go in before it closed. Since you're going in anyway, wouldn't it be better if we all went together? They say the more people who share the burden of danger with you, the better. Heck didn't like the fact that they were trying to outsmart him, confident in their numerical superiority. Activating his eyes of truth he began to study the status window of the girl who introduced herself as Park Hannah. The guy noticed a very entertaining ability, contact, it allowed for faster rapprochement with people and eliminated the feeling of awkwardness. Copy condition, move together with Pak Hanna for a minimum of 240 hours. However, during the 240 odd hours, you cannot have anyone else around besides you and Pak Hanna. Contact. It will help control that person later. Flashed through Hyok's mind. The rest of the squad members introduced themselves as well. Some hadn't even made it to the end of the first floor, for others it was the first time at all. Hack didn't even memorize their names, because he was sure they could betray him at any moment. Pak Hanna approached Heck and put her arm around his waist, asking him what level he was on. 
Park Hanna is activating the contact skill of level 1, the system notification warned. So that's how it works thought the guy, coming to his senses from the skill if I didn't know about the ability, I'm sure I would have sensed we were close, right? Dryly replying that he was up as much as he could, Heck did his best to shove the annoying girl away from him. What's up with that bastard? The contact effect should have shown up by now. Strange, Hannah couldn't find a place for herself. Then maybe you can tell me what kinds of monsters there are in the maze and what their features are it's not hard for you, right? Hannah turned to Hack. Not difficult, replied Jean Hack dryly, this maze changes every time at a certain hour. At first, the people around him didn't understand what he meant, but as if to confirm his words, the maze shook and began to change its shape. New blocks began to emerge from the walls of the labyrinth, changing their position with great speed, crushing and crushing the players in the process. By the time the reshuffle was over, only four people remained alive from Hannah's group. Everyone's been to the beckoning maze at least once, haven't they? Heck asked calmly, dusting off his shirt. It's too dangerous for level one. We need to get out of here now, Park Hannah stated the fact. Hi Min, can you find a way out? You can find it with your ability, right? Asked Hannah to the girl in her squad. This. During the maze change, the ability deactivated, he min said with tears in her eyes. Then, it turns out we can't find an alternate exit either? We're. Locked in here? Hannah's face showed fear. Heck wondered why they had entered the labyrinth so confident. And it was only because of their faith in navigation. Afraid that this someone was not a novice, they figured that knowing about the maze would turn their foray into a trip to the neighborhood supermarket. Okay, let's stop with the fact that they're idiots. Now it's almost time for him to show up, Hack was distracted from his musings by Hannah shouting at him. She began to accuse him of not warning about the maze changes earlier and that many people had gotten hurt because of him. The rest of the group joined her. Hey, tell me. Did I tell you to follow me? Heck asked coldly, you said yourself you came from there, didn't you? I didn't drag you here by force. The white-haired guy was getting even angrier at Heck, and even drew his weapon to attack the guy when his head was blown off his shoulders by a single blow from a sharp axe. From around the corner came a huge and clearly not friendly minotaur. Everyone drew their weapons to defend themselves while the axe reappeared in the beast's hand. We're dead, ran through Hannah's mind. Stand back, Heck said and headed out to meet the beast. No one realized what he was doing. The Minotaur was about to strike, but at the last moment Heck ducked. You have successfully dodged, said the system notification, followed by the next one, a hidden stat breach has been received. Great, Heck thought, smiling contentedly. The Minotaur was about to strike, but at the last moment, Heck dodged. You have successfully dodged, said the system notification, followed by the next one, a hidden stat breach has been received. Great, Heck thought, smiling contentedly. A gap is a stat that reduces the level difference in a battle with a strong opponent, and increases it even more in a battle with a weak opponent. When fighting an opponent stronger than yourself, the level difference decreases for every three points. This is the way to grow while remaining at level 1, and the only way that Heck learned about through countless trial and error. Dodging the Minotaur's numerous attacks, Heck remembered that he had already been hit by a thousands, no, tens of thousands of times. His body remembered every attack pattern. Status breach increased by 0.05, the system notifications appeared one after another. No matter how powerful the Minotaur's attacks were, they were of no use if they didn't reach their target. Hannah's squad began to slowly realize that they were going to pick on the wrong person. Even Pack Hannah herself realized how crazy she was since she was planning to kill a monster like this and take away his rewards. Slowly, very slowly. Heck reasoned as he turned to the Minotaur, swinging it from side to side like that, and you think you can hit it even once? These words only made the monster more angry. The way to become stronger in a short time is simple. You just need to take a risk by placing a bet and putting your life on the line. After all, the reward is given according to the life-threatening danger. That's why Heck risked everything and at the last second dodged the attack that should have blown his head off. At the last second, you managed to dodge a fatal attack. The breach stat is increased by 1. Getting 1 stat point for a scratch is generally not a bad trade-off. Great. Fought heck, but make a slight mistake and the situation becomes many times more dangerous. We need to slowly finish this, the guy looked at Hannah's team oh, look at them. 
Secondary characters willingly decided to remove themselves? Hannah's group moved under the wall, trying to find a way out, where are you guys going? Heck crept up silently, which startled the entire group. Especially when they saw a minotaur behind his back that was rapidly approaching, if you want to gain stats too, join us. Dodge its attack and you'll be given a hidden stat. It's easier than it looks. Just give it a try. Heck smiled wryly, gotta share the rewards, don't we? The minotaur struck the square, but none of Hannah's team fought to dodge everyone froze in horror. If Gene Heck hadn't dragged everyone away at the last moment, this was where they would have died. Oh no, what will happen if you continue to stand here like this? At least bend over. And keep your distance, came the guy's mocking voice. He was clearly enjoying the helplessness of the players who had decided to finish him off, am I right, Calf? He never got an answer though, the maze started to change again, saving the players from the monster and giving them some time to rest. See you later, Heck threw to the Minotaur one last time, smiling. The angry Minotaur struck the wall with his axe, but it did not do any good. Meanwhile, the boys were catching their breath, panicking hysterically at their proximity to mortal danger. They had hoped that the Minotaur would no longer pursue them, but Heck saddened them, the pollen of the glowing moths I touched recently is attracting the Minotaur. It's quite possible he will continue to pursue us. When asked why he did something so reckless, the guy explained elementally, while well, I have to raise stats, right? Every time the maze changes, I get a little rest to replenish my stamina and have fun, only for the calf to find me again. Isn't that a beauty? Hannah asked the perfectly logical question, then how much longer will you be doing this? To which she received an equally logical answer, until we get out of the labyrinth. Exactly one month. At such a statement, Hannah along with the surviving guy decided to move separately from Heck, however, they didn't know where. While Heck, who knew more about this maze than anyone else, naturally knew where the exit was as well. There seemed to be no way out. Hannah had to agree to go with her boyfriend. She was just about to say so when she was interrupted by Jean Heck, but no, is there anything in this world for free? Even car fare has to be paid for. Coins what you've got, lay it all out. The guy said, putting the knife to the girl's neck. Ah, pa! Shouted the guy while killing goblins in one of the tower caves. This guy's video racked up quite a few views at a time, as everyone was wondering if he was really closing a dungeon without resting for 15 whole hours. The comments section was full of both spam to promote the video, and some stereotypical comments. Either way, however, they were promoting the video and making it more popular. Enough! Enough! Look, look, they ate it, the guy couldn't be happy with his friends. All the headlines on the bulletin board are all about me. At least I got some use out of fighting the yearlings to a pulp, the guy continued to peck away, we'll get a thousand coins for this video. It's thanks to our combined efforts. Thanks, guys. I bet everyone thinks you did it solo. We edited it cool too. What would you do without us? The second guy began. They edited it really well, no one even noticed that the player has a lot of buffs. However, in the comments began to write that it could have been cleaned up in 5 hours. Of course, the company didn't believe it, and began to joke with the words life in this world initially assumes its monopolization by outstanding discoverers. The guys had no time to rejoice at their success, as they uploaded a new video on the Walk of Fame, which immediately attracted the interest of the whole community world's first success in strengthening the subject by 10 times. The numbers of comments and views instantly skyrocketed and the video took the first place in the Walk of Fame, displacing the cave closing video. Asterisk 10 minutes ago asterisk. Heck sent the two newfound slaves off to gather moss for the recliners and something to make a fire, while he himself summoned the exchange, a handy platform for buying anything the lad needed. He was glad that he had gotten coins without much effort and could buy the things he needed for crafting. To many, they might look like trash that no one would buy enchanted tarot cards, a shard of an old worn bronze key, a piece of a wooden wagon wheel, a bingo amplifier. But to the guy, they were some of the most important components of his plan. Thank you sincerely for your purchase, the system notification alerted. The most important thing about buying any item was one principle, the most important thing was knowing how to use it. So, by combining enchanted tarot cards, a shard of an old worn bronze key and a piece of a wooden wagon wheel, the guy received Wheel of Fortune, Goddess of Fortune, unfinished. This artifact elevates luck to its highest value for 10 minutes, but only had one use. Unless one knows the limit of luck with a limited area, to the best of one's ability, 
the luck gained can be something that will push you from heaven to earth. However, Hiku knew its limit, and so he activated the artifact. The highest value of luck has been increased. The system notification reported. The amplification success rate is 0.000012%. Reinforcement loot was famous for having the worst percentage, but right now, Hex Luck was at its maximum level and he was going to use all of it on the Kinjol. You have succeeded in amplification. System notifications appeared one after another, with the same text. It was hard to count how many there were, but finally after all those identical notifications, another one appeared received old dagger 10, max. Followed by two more, you are the first person on the Korean server to succeed in creating a 10 item. 5000 coins received, followed by another one this achievement will be placed on the walk of fame for 24 hours starting tomorrow. It was the 10th 24 hours of life in hell. A fire made of gathered twigs, a bed of moss and no food except mushrooms and the same moss. The minotaur that came regularly at certain times was exhausting, and the changes in the labyrinth and the constant struggle on the verge of life and death only made it worse. But Gene Hack took it all casually, not showing any signs of it at all. What was harder was Hannah and the guy with her. If this keeps up, we're going to die. Hannah summarized. Yeah, that demon will take advantage of us enough and leave us, her friend agreed with her. In front of Pak Hannah, messages from anonymous people started popping up with all sorts of advice on eliminating boyfriend Ta and generally words of encouragement. From these messages, it became clear that the girl was doing a forbidden live broadcast for which she could be penalized if this came out. The commentators tried to dig up information about Gene Hack, but they naturally failed. All videos about the tower before its opening in the real world were blocked, and there was no information about a player named Gene Hack anywhere. A couple of people tried to find his channel on Nightube, but also failed and decided that the guy chose a full solo walkthrough. Anonymous passed information about the situation to the Guild Black Raven, which consisted of both guys from the maze and Hannah's old brother, but even there no information could not be found. The only thing the girl learned was that it would take another three weeks to get her out of the labyrinth, because no one knew exactly where the labyrinth was. I've been thinking. Hannah began, if we kill this freak and hold on a little longer before Appa comes to the cave we discovered. We can survive this hell and get out of it, the girl thought for a moment, but soon continued the thought, the only question is how to get rid of him. Isn't while he's asleep the best chance for that? Asked the boy sitting next to her, picking up a heavy stone from the floor will get rid of it at once. Not many people can live with a fractured skull anyway. Isn't while he's asleep the best chance for that? Asked the fellow sitting next to him, picking up a heavy stone from the floor will get rid of him at once. Not many people can live with a fractured skull anyway. The guy took a swing at Hayak, but was stopped at the last moment by Park Hanna. Wait. That man has the reaction speed of a real monster. Whether you attack head-on or sneakily, we're powerless against him. There's a good chance that if you attack him now, he'll stand up and attack back. And what do you suggest? The boy hissed angrily, it's not like we can keep suffering. And who says we will continue? The girl started rummaging through her pocket, frantically searching for something, you know that my older brother is a member of the Black Raven Guild, right? He gave me something in case I find myself in danger. Hannah showed a sting that reeked of black energy a deadly poison, one drop of which is enough to kill a hundred trolls. The poisonous sting of a giant immature pumpkin wasp. If it's to be acted upon, it must be acted upon. In a way he can't resist. Fried moss and mushrooms again, Heck stretched out anguishly. A wooden board served as a plate, and the chopsticks were made of mouse bones. It felt like the characters were making a survival movie. Park Hanna hinted rather bluntly that if a guy wanted something different, like a mouse or a moth, he would have to get that different first. It wasn't a lie in general, but the guy still called Hannah rude in his mind. Miss Park Hanna, would you pass the water behind you? Mr. Soul Sick, pass some mushroom with moss. Gene Hayak asked the others. They gladly complied with the guy's request, additionally telling him to eat the mushrooms since there's still plenty of this nasty stuff. Have a nice one, the guy finally nodded, taking his food. As soon as he put a bite of food in his mouth, the commentators exploded in an uproar. Some joked about the warmth in his mouth, others wryly asked if the food was good. The plate fell out of the guy's hands, and his mouth bled. However, for some reason, it wasn't everyone's expected heck who got poisoned, but Hannah's friend seal sick. Literally in a second, his body darkened and started emitting an ominous aura around him. Assholes. 
Heck summarized, you thought I'd mindlessly accept food from your hands like that? You, knew about the poison? Hannah asked worriedly. She was afraid that Hyun wouldn't do anything to her, for she realized that she was powerless against him. Yes. When I asked for a refill, I quickly changed plates when you were distracted for a moment. The guy opened the report window and turned to the anonyms that were chatting with Hannah and you. It's definitely illegal to secretly conduct a live broadcast. What are you talking about? Both Hannah and the commentators started to panic. Do you have any proof? Let's see. Live streaming can only be enabled when facing a boss to go to the next floor. The guy started reading out the rules in the event that view tampering or other illegal activities are detected, appropriate action will be taken. If no illegal activities are detected, the applicant will be fined. Apply? A system notification popped up. You should watch your facial expression while on air, don't you think? There's a bit too much visible disappointment on it. Park Han. The guy pressed the yes button in the system notification and a barrier labeled warning immediately appeared around the girl. Application has been submitted. Anonyms have been removed, the system notification reported. Hannah just watched as her viewers were blocked one by one, without being able to do anything. These viewers will not be able to watch the video for one month. If violated again, these viewers will be permanently deleted. The system notifications reported while Hannah still didn't fully understand what was happening. A new notification appeared, this player's fine has been replaced by a merciless fate. Immediately after this message, the wall was breached by a minotaur that had just discovered its victims. With a loud roar and a lust for killing in its eyes, it began to flee rapidly. Are you going to fight this time too? Began Hannah to Jean Hayak, just tell me where I can hide, hurry up, he's getting closer. Miss Park Hannah, how cheeky you are, uttered Jean Hayak. Even more recently you tried to send me away, so why should I even tell you anything? Heck asked the logical question. Why, you ask, the girl hesitated, but you've been doing it so far. The conditions of copying have been fulfilled. You have succeeded in copying the skill contact, see. A system notification appeared, after which Heck smiled ominously. Ah, that. Now you're not needed. Heck issued threateningly. Wait a minute. You're going to regret it, aren't you? My older brother in the Crow Guild, but the Minotaur, who had clearly not been taught that interrupting is not a nice thing to do, especially not with an axe. Hannah barely dodged it, while Heck looked as if he had been waiting for it. He wanted Hannah to look at him carefully, because he was going to show how big the difference between him and some stupid guild was. The boy struck the Minotaur with a crisp kick to the neck. TSK, not deep, the boy remarked. But the damage, as well as the benefit of pumping breach, was there, which was already good news and couldn't help but be happy. In any case, killing the Minotaur will not be possible yet, so it will be enough to create a similar situation. After another series of dodging the monster's attacks, the guy activated the fire skill. Activated fire element LVL1 informed the system notification. However, it was as if the fire was wiping out the monster without touching it. So, the guy cut the tendons in the monster's knees and the monster, unable to stand on flat paws, fell off with bent legs. Don't rage too much, said Heck, intercepting the dagger into a more comfortable grip. As you build muscle, the meat gets tougher. It was almost time for the Minotaur to use his last card. A terrifying monster howl echoed throughout the maze and a system notification appeared, Maze Guardian Minotaur activates Rabies LVL10. With quick and precise blows, our hero struck the Minotaur from behind, hitting its tendons and thus immobilizing it. The hero prepared himself, knowing what awaited him next, as he had passed this test before. The Minotaur used his last trump card and activated a level 10 Rabies. His muscles grew larger, much like himself. He was aggressive and very angry. His axe began to glow green in color. Our hero stood confidently. The girl did not understand how such a creature could even be defeated. The rabies that activated the minotaur meant that for 5 minutes, Vic's strength, speed, and movement speed were increased by 30%. An additional time option was activated, intelligence was increased. He could speak fluently in the human language. The human said to the Minotaur, I will tear you to shreds, stomp you into dust, and sew you into Dagji so that you can no longer encroach on this place. Our hero felt the mana effect improve slightly from what it was. Now he was ready. Attack! He shrieked. The Minotaur was possessed by the power he had. 
They clashed, blow after blow being thrown by the Minotaur. Our hero easily blocked them. The girl who was standing behind them watched them and couldn't believe her eyes. With such strength, even if an entire crow guild fought against the Minotaur, they wouldn't win. And that crazy guy, how could he smile in such a situation? Thinking back, it seemed like he was stuck, but he hated with every fiber of his being the reality that made it seem like no matter how hard he ran forward, he was still treading water. In this unchanging reality, he felt helpless, whether in reality or in a game, the complexity was like hell. However, this world was now reacting to him more strongly than before. Our hero was good at fighting the Minotaur, they had been fighting for a long time. He didn't attack much, only dodged. The Minotaur was furious, you're so strong, human, you can't even leave me a scratch. With quick movements our hero jumped in different directions, and the Minotaur could not keep track of him. And now almost the Minotaur's strike reached its goal, but suddenly there was a notification that 5 minutes of the Minotaur's rabies was over. Frenzy was a way to show all your strength in 5 minutes, even more. It was the Minotaur's raven card, but a penalty would follow where he would go into anabiosis for 24 hours. The hero knew this with a smile, as he had passed through this maze before and had died here more than once. Standing near the mammoth, he counted his pack points gap. If you look at it that way, the difference of 19 levels is quite manageable. With 20 days left, our hero's goal was to reach 100 points. The frightened girl stood and asked our hero, finished already? To which she heard in response that the rabies was over, but he only got rid of the minotaur for a while. When the maze changes, it will be 24 hours before he reappears. I thought he said he was going to be here for a month, only 20 days left. It's over. After 20 days of battling the Minotaur, attack after attack collected stats of 10 and 15, and eventually his values reached 100 points. The longer you fight, the weaker you become, said the hero and knocked out the Minotaur with one powerful blow. But as he stepped on its head, he said, it's time to infuse, calf. All that remains is to figure out what to do with you. From that moment on, our hero was gathering the interns into the company of old men, but the girl's soul had no desire in her eyes, which made our hero a little embarrassed. Therefore, he got a little angry, however, the girl immediately began to correct herself and said that she was very interested in it, and she had wanted to join something like this for a long time. The hero asked what she could be useful to the company in the future. I have my personal contact skill, she quipped. I'll be useful in running the company. But our hero already had that skill. And that's it, he replied. She didn't give up hope, however, and suggested that she would never betray him. It was a total disappointment. She had already despaired, begging on her knees for him to keep her alive. It was then that she remembered the Brahma ring. Her elder brother had made a contract with China and as payment they would give him the ring. It was an interesting offer. The Brahma ring had fallen into the hands of the Black Crow Guild. It was the best item one could obtain on the first floor. It increased movement speed, provided resistance to magic, and also allowed one to restrain the mana of monsters. Be that as it may, she wasn't lying. The only thing left to do was to sign the contract. The girl, after hearing this, was able to squeeze out the words, do we still need to sign the contract? The hero began to read the memories of the world and, using the skills of fire and contact, create the contract. It's going to be a little hot, he said. The girl watched in horror as he pointed directly at her with his fiery hand. She thought the seal would be on paper, but no such thing, the hero thought otherwise. Congratulations on joining the Black Enterprise in turn. A level 1 soul brand was carved on the girl's face. Soul branding level acquired, it carves a brand on an object. The object branded must obey the skill owner's orders completely. Any actions that harm the owner are forbidden. In case of violation, the entire body is ignited and a horrific pain appears. The doors opened and our hero and the girl climbed out to the surface. We're alive. We're alive. Exclaimed the girl with relief. The maze of the first floor was passed for the first time, so the guys would be on the honor roll for one day, and each player would be awarded 5,000 coins as a nice bonus. This will be a reward for the torment, the girl thought after seeing the coins, but the hero immediately cut her off by saying, trainee, get the dough here. At this point, no one had such a sum on their balance as our hero. At the last moment he told the girl to bring the ring in three days, to which she replied, three days, I can't make it that fast. But the hero didn't care, he just clenched his fist and activated the seal, 
and the mark of his hand began to ignite on her face. In a week's time, Korea's strongest guild, Tangan Guild, plans to defeat the third floor boss. The Tangan Guild is the strongest guild in Korea. Also fighting in the tower are the United States, Europe, and Japan, but the stakes are very high for Korea. So far, there is still no announcement from the Chinese about help from another country. Wouldn't it be better to try to capture the tower on our own? I believe that the Tangan Guild can do it without outside support. It was an interview on a large monitor in the center of the city. Our hero was walking with a girl and watched it. But he thought they were in such a hurry to act. Although not understanding what was there and how, he understood why they were in a hurry. They want to get as many good resources as possible. Each floor is given 90 days, in other words, there's no need to go to the third or even the second floor without reinforcing the rear. They wouldn't be able to handle the level of difficulty that would await them ahead, and there would be no second chance for humanity. The hero was already home, and he needed to gather information from the last month to find reliable information amongst the gossip and lies. He needed to go to people he knew and could trust. Through his phone he logged into the community of the challenge tower and in a search he found the guys he needed. The first was a guy with the nickname Bald Head and a girl Wounded Fist. Kim, the guys are nothing like even their characters. And I played with them two years in a row. He never imagined that his first band would be set up like this. The hero applied the eye of truth and saw that the guy has no major flaws. And the magic is powerful and the ability is useful in large-scale battles. The girl, on the other hand, has the ability to fight in close combat. They turn out to have the same level, it looks like they fought together, although they got along quite well before. The conditions to copy their techniques weren't so easy due to the fact that they were longtime comrades. They needed to reach the 20th floor of the challenge tower together, and then the conditions would be met. Now it was our hero's turn to tell about himself. My nickname is Captain Zanid. Lowering his head he said, he was a little embarrassed. So why did I create such a nickname 11 years ago when I was 27 years old and I was live streaming on Paprika TV? So, are you a streamer? The guy asked. Not anymore, the hero replied. He was tight-lipped, but the guy said, relax, after all, we've played together so many times, and yes, we'll be more comfortable. How sociable they are, he remembered that there were those who wanted to betray and use him. He was so tired of being among hypocrites. Next to these guys he felt comfortable for the first time in the last month. This was how our hero found out what was happening while he was in the maze, the development of the main guilds of the world, the tendencies of streamers, and the Minecraft collective that was creating a factory and kidnapping people. Han, you've been missing for the last month or so, so you didn't take the test, right? The guy he was sitting with asked. But Han didn't understand what test he was talking about. Our company was riding in the car, and on the way a conversation arose about when the tower first appeared, a flood of players rushed inside. But from the second floor the number of deaths increased, so it was decided that those who passed the test would be able to climb to the second floor and higher. But there is not everything so simple, and the system cannot be deceived. So the confirmation code the head of the Association of the Awakened used to reduce the victims and collected people with powerful abilities. But in such a situation, the hero planned to use the created scheme of the association for his own benefit. After the association scheme was created, players who received a grade lower than F could not pass to the second floor. However, players who received a high grade were immediately invited to join the strongest guilds in the country. Therefore, there were three types of people gathered at the testing site, those who frantically wanted the right to enter the tower, those who met those who had obtained high ranks for the tower and those who wanted to show off their power to enter to the entire world. Park Han from the Dark Crow Guild and Park Han Jean, the rising star of that guild, but the one walking behind was Kim from the Fighting Fathers Guild, but those who were there wanted to get rich and famous as soon as possible. I don't have time for that. I'll clear a path for myself now. The reporters are waiting for me, and I can't waste much time here. I came here because of you, so try your best before I get angry, he stated. Don't worry, we can handle it, they quickly began to disperse everyone. Give way, come on hurry up, what are you standing up for? Shouted and shoved everyone. Who are you, can't you hear me? Shouted one of the big man's subordinates in the direction of our hero. Move over for me, will you? I got my number and I'm waiting in line, why should I move over? Stated our hero. And then a magical rising star appeared with shouts, 
Why can't you get rid of some asshole? With a swoop at our hero, I don't know who you are, but you're making a mistake. If you don't move, you're gonna get hurt. The situation was heating up, everyone was whispering around. It was brother Park Han, the hero, who had activated the Eye of Truth. Seeing his abilities, he was offered copying conditions. By raising the copy target's interest to the maximum, one could copy an ability, and by raising the hostility to the maximum, one could copy one skill. After reading this, our hero became inflamed. What? Just need to be provoked? The girl who was in the maze with our hero earlier saw her brother pointing his finger at our hero, but she didn't realize who it was yet. The brother turned away and said that there was one who had mistaken the shores. At that moment, our hero breaks the bully brother's finger. The guy grabbed his finger, with the words what a freak, started to pull out his weapon and go to fight, but our hero was faster, throwing water at his opponent. With the speed of sound he kicked him in the leg and he fell down. No one noticed what had happened, they thought he had just stumbled. Ira couldn't believe her eyes when she recognized our hero and wondered why exactly he was here, what was he doing here? From behind, someone shouted contentedly. The big guy, our hero baited the eye of truth, but there was a failure, the scan was rejected due to the difference in levels. The big guy's level was over 20. I didn't know he had a babysitter, our hero told the big guy, he needs an eye on him. But that's okay, he's a useful little guy, the big guy replied. Useful? You say that's what he's shipping to China? Isn't that Bark Dynasty ginseng? How about asking the right question, like how to get rid of side effects? The hero said. Enough! Shouted the big guy and activated a level 3 dungeon skill. A cube began to appear in the building with only our hero and the big guy in it. He asked our hero, and he just stood there and watched as a protective wall formed around him, necessary to restore mana, eating the ginseng item of the Kore dynasty. But if you just eat it, there would be a side effect of magic poisoning. You must be agonizing over it right now, right? But our hero knew how to solve the problem. There were three items needed for this, the juice of Karasin, the moonstone, and most importantly, the mandrake root. I think you're on the lookout for Mandric Root. I'll tell you where it is. Everything the hero said matched the scouts. Cold cream, this guy wondered, big guy. Okay, I'll believe you, but there's one but. I'm warning you, no tricks, or you're gonna get hurt. I will wipe you out. Our hero asked for ten of the most valuable dungeons. It was an excessive, high price. The big guy didn't like it and decided to end it. But he didn't seem to realize that this deal and his life were now in our hero's hands. Outside, the hero's team was massacring the big guy's team left and right. If they keep this up, it's not going to end well for them. The dungeon skill was cancelled, and here our hero was already walking towards his team. Are you okay? Shouted the guys. You were simply kidnapped, I'll kill them all, you just say the word. Don't worry, we're fine, we've found common ground. At this time, a guy with a broken finger walked up to the big guy and started yelling, Are we just going to let him go like that? Let me get ready and I'll bury him. The big guy took him by the throat with one hand and lifted him up, saying, You're not his equal, so don't move, and if you ever do anything like that again, I'll kill you. What had happened in the Nutri dungeon, the guy wondered. He was so angry that his eyes were turning red. After saying I'll kill him, the copying condition was fulfilled. Our hero had copied the stealth skill. This meant that he gained a passive skill, he could control his breathing and heart rate. The control depends on the level of the skill. Now it was time to pass the thelf. Looks like my trainee has seen mountain ginseng or something, here we go, next. Come on in, our hero is here. The test is very simple, you have to hit the magic stone as hard as you can. All items and skills can be used. The hidden power of the stone is revealed during the attack. After the explanation, the hero will only use a dagger. That should be enough. The guy with glasses who was following the procedure said, Whenever you're ready, you can begin. But our hero wasn't so simple and went straight to the supreme stone. But the guy wanted the hero to hit the middle stone. That was the starting stone. Simple players can't even activate the middle level stone, he said. But that didn't stop the hero, he instantly activated the power surge stat. Well let's see what all the effort in the maze was worth. With lightning fast power, he chopped the stone in half. It's not possible shouted the guy with glasses, most of the players don't qualify, 
because they don't have enough magic power to attack a small stone and break a medium stone in half. He didn't even know it was possible, congratulations you got rank C, the guy yelled at the departing hero, wait I have to report this to my superiors. Report back in a week please, asked our hero, what? Answered the guy you want to ask for a postponement? For personal reasons in a week you can report anywhere, said the hero, I know a few worldly wisdoms? One of them is the law is far away but the fist is near you all understood said the hero with his blade in his hands, after these words to the guy definitely understood. After that our hero stood in the corridor and then came up, the trainee with whom he was in the maze, she held out her hand in which was a ring here is what you asked for, she said. Brahma ring difficulty of obtaining A, resistance to magic plus 10, speed of movement plus 25, ability suppression plus 20, it could suppress the abilities of monsters. It came out even faster than I thought said the hero, in response the girl with a hot face screamed I kept my promise to remove this stigma from me. But our hero only anointed his hand and said that he would look at your behavior and decide what your rank F cannot be I thought you would have more than us, with surprise said the friends of the hero. To which he replied that this is a temporary result in a week you need to retest. But he needed information on this he said not to worry and that they should go to the tower and he will write to them a little later, the first test determines the rank based on magical power. And whoever passed the first passes to the second, the task is very simple to pass one of the dungeons of the tower, restrictions. In complexity there is no need to only choose the difficulty and opponents, then at will goblins or orcs all the same, but the place where our hero will go is the ruins on the first floor. Neither for those eleven years that they played in the tower, nor now when it appeared yet no one has not managed to pass that forbidden zone. The last time, the hero was there was at the abode of the fallen. With an F rank, he couldn't go there alone because the guild guarding the ruins wouldn't let him through. The best option was to go there as a porter. Earlier, the guy he was walking with asked how he got here. He had to explain that he needed money to survive. Everybody needs it, the guy replied, I'm here to feed my wife and kids. The hero immediately realized he was one of those suicide players. With our rank, we must be extremely careful. Where they point us, that's where we go. There's no machinery inside, and the ambulance won't come. Don't worry, our hero started to calm the guy he was walking with from the beginning. The ones in here will at least get home unharmed. Thank you, he replied kindly. And you're braver than the others. Finally the quest for the raid team begins. It was difficulty C, which had the conditions to kill the location boss and free the prince who is deep in the ruins. The reward was a choice, however, if the boss was not killed, the choices were limited. After traveling a long way, they have finally reached and will be able to rest until the raid team arrives. The hero stood as if nothing had happened, but then there was a special reward for the first conqueror of the tower. It was only visible to our hero. Next he was given a reward, it was luck and adaptability, which increased by 10. Also received a cold heart, the ability to remain calm even in a critical situation, but there may be problems with the appearance of emotions. A passive monopolization skill was also obtained. If the hero completes the quest alone, the reward for completing the quest will be the highest possible. The smile was up to my ears. How awesome was this? Although there are many incredible rewards in the tower, getting even one was a huge amount of luck. With a pass like this, I basically don't need luck either, the hero thought. Suddenly, a bright light appeared, and hunters started to appear, led by the leader, who immediately after appearing started saying, Oh my head, I can't get used to this. There were 50 of them, quite a large number for such a raid. Our hero immediately used his eye of truth to see who the leader was. His name was Song Chong, and he was 29 years old. At this moment, his level was 14. The copying condition for our hero was to gain his trust during the raid, but it would be difficult for him. Wait, I can't believe the head of a top 10 guild only has that level? The main thing is to make sure that no one reveals our hero. If someone finds out about his power, everything will definitely fall apart. It got darker at first, and some magician in a hat started saying to follow him. If someone got lost, no one would look for anyone. He activated his level 1 lamp, the entire come down lit up with a red light, but what was it? There are arrows in the head and torso. Once inside the cave, the group was horrified to see the swarm of the group underfoot, who had killed many monsters, spreading out quickly and without any trouble or casualties. There was a frightening atmosphere in the cave that made goosebumps run down the body. Some guy waved his hand to the porters, here they are, they've arrived. He said.
Our hero looked at the swarming group that had been fighting before they arrived. It was somehow strange that they had killed so many monsters without any casualties. The leader's strategy was somehow strange. What's frozen? Someone shouted and punched our hero on the shoulder. What's frozen? Go hand out water. Said the guy. All right, I'm a porter. Our hero immediately realized and turned his attention to the guy in gold armor. It was a foreigner. What is that sign on his shoulder? He wondered. That's right, it's Shaun Guild Warriors, some fragile creatures. Maybe I'll be able to make friends with someone? With confident movements, our hero presents a cup of ice and says, You've done a good job, drink up, chill out. At this point, he activated his level 1 communication ability. In response, it was received that our hero was shown interest. The man started to remove his helmet, but who was there? It turned out to be a very beautiful girl, our hero did not understand it once, but then it came to him that it was the youngest daughter of a family of aristocrats, Teresa of Europe, a versatile player connected with divine power, with skills of attack, defense and healing. The hero who saved Amsterdam from chaos, one of Europe's famous players. Now it was clear to our hero why they had suffered no losses, since she is best at dealing with all sorts of undead and other evil things. The hero could not understand why she was here, because now everyone wants to climb as high as possible in the Tower of Trials, and if I'm not mistaken, now there is a raid on the boss of the third floor. Teresa was very happy after quenching her thirst, the hero wasted no time and applies the Eye of Truth to see what this girl is all about. But suddenly there was an error, the application of the skill was impossible because of the difference in level. It turned out that Teresa had level 20, but because the hero had recently gained the stats of luck and adaptation, he could compensate for the level difference. The Eye of Truth was now level 2, and he could look at players who were level 20 or higher. Now he could evaluate Teresa. Well, let's see, she would have excellent skills. After what he saw, the copying conditions were as follows. Teresa was among the top 100 players in the world. If our hero could rescue her from a dangerous situation, he would be able to copy one of the skills. Looking at the statistics, the hero understood why everyone admired her. That's it. That's what the career choice test is, that's why she came here. Teresa gave thanks for the water. It had sufficiently quenched her thirst. I should thank you, whispered our hero, for an ability that is highly prized by warriors, he would have the opportunity to receive the patronage of the heavens. The only thing would be to find out what situation could be dangerous for this paladin, and how he could save her. This was quite a heavy condition. Zhang Huan, urgently come over here, some person shouted out. The head of the raid came running over and saw that all the sentries had been killed. But who could have done this? Some kind of object is flying in the air. A notification appeared that the ruin guards were watching for trespassers. The time remaining is 10 minutes. It was a security system, a dormant bomb. It only activated when trespassers appeared, and when activated, it could summon guards. If it's left untouched, nothing happens but some idiot activated it that way. It doesn't matter now, it's in battle mode, there's only 10 minutes left. So little time. The guild leader knew that fighting the guards was suicide. At least half of the raid could die in this battle. He could have evacuated the civilians in 10 minutes, but he didn't want to. In his panic, he didn't want it to end like this before it had even started. After all, they had just gotten here and couldn't leave with their hands clenched. He had worked so hard to become the head of the guild to leave it like this. We are continuing the raid as ordered by the guild head, but the guy behind us replied they haven't even gotten halfway there. There are guards there who will attack from all sides. Sweat was running down the face of the guild leader. He was both angry and agitated, but he didn't want to go back. He shut the mouths of those who arose and ordered them to follow him, if anything, he would take full responsibility. Even without a second team they had a chance of success. After all, they had Street Teresa with them, a girl who was in the top 100. She is strong and brave. She will help us. At this time, a group of people who were vacationing heard someone running toward them and saw a guy yelling, What are you sitting there for? Didn't you hear that the guards woke up? The guys calmly continued to sit there. They had faith in the guild they came from and began to calm themselves down, thinking that with such a strong guild, there was nothing to worry and fear. After all, they had probably already dealt with all the guards. But suddenly, a large hand appeared from behind the guy who had come running. 
With one sweep of the hand, the guy flew off. It was the guards, they were big, and flames were erupting from their equipment. The guys were surrounded by them and realized they were all in trouble. The guards began to advance, and the main forces of the raid team began to prepare for battle, the tanks were put forward, and the porters were sent back, thus forming a platoon. The tanks were handed out buffs and the hitters were ordered to get ready. The guild leader didn't waste much time and immediately activated level 3 steel defense and level 2 combat concentration. After that, the mage who was behind activated the level 2 song of angels. The guards were approaching, and the battle began. The first blow came at the leader. At this time, the solo players were surrounded and had nowhere to go. They asked for reinforcements in the large group that was fighting ahead. The leader started telling them that the solo players were in a dangerous situation, but the guild leader didn't care. He didn't even want to listen as he thought that there would be casualties anyway and there was no time to think about the solo players. Unlike players who act cohesively, solo players in such situations are immediately lost. The guild leader heard everything, but still left them behind. It would seem that the solo players are finished, but suddenly Teresa appears and activates a level 4 cross skill and kills the guards in one move. Teresa, thank you, said the solo player who was barely standing on his feet from fear. Teresa stood and assessed the situation. Two guards had passed through the rear of the raid group. That meant that the non-combat units were in danger. She was right, the porters had been defeated. The last one left was sitting under a rock and saw the guards coming towards him. It was the end, he thought, but our hero appeared with the words, What are you carrying, old man? I told you you'd come home alive. A porter shouted from behind, seeing the guard approaching. At this moment, our hero activated the fire skill. Hitting with a fire attack, the guardian shattered into pieces, but our hero didn't kill him, as he needed to stay at the first level. How did you get such power? Asked the man who was saved by our hero. In response he heard only that he was just lucky. The hero wondered who could have awakened the guard, but it didn't matter anymore. At speed, Teresa flew by and took the man away from our hero. She thought our hero was bad after noticing him threatening the porter with a knife. And perhaps it was you who woke the guards? She asked. You're under arrest, she said. Our hero stood there in shock thinking, who am I? She started to attack. She didn't mean to hurt him, but our hero fought back well. Teresa got more than a little pissed off and didn't listen to what our hero was saying at all. Well then, we'll have to do this. The hero in one motion shifted and shoved Teresa so that she crashed into the wall and there he was with his blade near her face. I didn't wake the guards, and if I had to, I would have killed them with my own hands. That's when the peddler started yelling, Miss Teresa, why are you doing this? He saved me. Teresa realized with a goofy look on her face that she had made a mistake and started apologizing. But the hero said it was okay, he realized his actions looked suspicious. Your name is Jean Heck, what reason are you hiding your identity? Teresa asked. For the same reason as you, replied the hero. To apply, you invited the Shan Guild, you want to secretly obtain the Treaty of St. Peter for a profession quest. I, too, need some item that no one must know about. Our hero knew all the strategies for traversing these ruins. He offered a condition to Teresa, with her skills, she must help him, and the items he needed were in one place. So, how's the concordance? The hero asked Teresa. Later, there was a conversation between Teresa and the head of the guild. Teresa suggested that they could continue on their own while she excused herself for a bit. But the head started complaining that it would be hard for them without her. However, Teresa said that according to our map, they still have 20 kilometers to go, and the strategy is known to everyone. Not having her won't change anything. Besides, according to the agreement, before the boss battle, all the squad leaders have the same rights, don't they? She asked. Here, the leader had no answer. He agreed on only one condition, that she would return before they reached the room with the boss. Teresa promised to join them before the battle started. She also asked to take one of the porters. Do as you wish, the head replied. At this time, the porters stood aghast and whispered, it's a one-way whitewash. Boys, the main thing is, don't look her in the eye, or she'll pick you out for sure. Someone raised his hand with a shout, I can, I'll go with you. Replied our hero. The boys began to dissuade the hero that they knew for sure, if he went, he would die. 
No matter how beautiful Teresa is, don't go with youth. No matter what our hero says, they definitely won't understand. But if that's the case, then, when you were young, did you ever have that moment when you were on fire with an idea? Right now, it's the love in me that's giving out, he shrieked. Even if I lose my life because of my weakness, everyone was shocked to hear. And so began the journey of our hero and the young beauty Teresa. They went forward. But as it turned out, they didn't have far to go, and it was all because the hero knew everything about this dungeon. They stood on the balcony and saw a lot of unclean things walking around the sarcophagus. Teresa asked, is this the place? And the contract of St. Peter was in that sarcophagus. But they realized that they still had to remove the protection. Suddenly they got a notification that the master of the abode of the fallen was watching them. Our hero wondered, they were talking about the boss, but he had never been interested in the players and now he decided to show himself. Teresa and the hero realized that they both see it, it's definitely from the boss. But what do the words mean, Teresa asked the hero. Does he see us as enemies? She asked. The hero immediately replied that, as expected, he recognized it and is watching. Jean Hack asked me, a question for you. You said you know the way to pass? Yes, I have known for a long time, replied the hero. Then I must do it, Teresa replied and jumped straight to the monsters below. There were a lot of them, they spotted her right away, but Teresa activated the level 5 battle song skill. It helped triple her stats for 10 minutes. The hero asked her beforehand to attract the undead's attention, and the battle began. All the monsters noticed her terrifying power and rushed at her. Teresa released all the energy and thus attracted almost all the monsters that were nearby. Teresa activated the power of a level 5 saint, emitting such a bright light that all the monsters started to disappear in the vicinity. And so she swung her sword, chopping the undead in all directions until all the undead were gone and our hero began to take action. Thanks to her control over the mobs, our hero won't have to engage in battle and thus won't raise his level. A bright red lightning bolt flew towards the hero. The elite undead appeared, and thus the special dead rose. It was finally a mini-boss for our hero, and that was good news. Striking from the front was a guardian, but from where it came from the hero wondered. Most likely it was because he came with Teresa and the conditions had changed. The hero would need to take that into consideration next time. The daughter is using dark magic and thus hurting her own guards. The hero could deal with the guards easily, but here was a flying monster mage, you had to be careful. The dark mage started to attack the hero, but he didn't even realize that the hero was deliberately luring his attacks in his direction so that he would miss. The attack went directly into the sarcophagus, magic level 5 was destroyed. The mage screwed up, the hero moved forward slightly, thus scattering the guards. He stopped. So, he said, Teresa will be done soon too, only you, the skeleton, are left, but what is it? Someone chopped a skeleton in half. I finally found you, some guy said as he stepped his foot on the skeleton's head, thus destroying it. Someone who reads all the monster's movements like an open book, I was sure you'd come. Long time no see, the guy said, pointing his sword at the hero, but the hero didn't even realize who was standing in front of him. You don't recognize me? The hero applied the eye of truth to find out who was in front of him and the player's status was revealed in front of him. Young Yu Song believes that he is the best swordsman. Defeat him in a sword battle by breaking his self-confidence. The hero also noticed that the guy is holding an iron sword from the Chenlong dynasty, the same weapon that went missing from the museum. If he took it, back when the tower challenge became a virtual game, that guy lost to me once. His bootstrap got short-circuited, and time after time he wanted to fight me. Wherever I was, he challenged me again and again. This battle-hungry warrior you're the damn stalker who was chasing me. The guy understood why he didn't recognize me, the game had become real, and the character had changed. That's why he reacted the way he did when he saw me. He's underestimating me, the guy decided. The character remembered him back at the museum. Leave me alone, the hero said, you're a pain in the ass, constantly challenging me to fights just to play. This time will be different, said the guy standing in front of the flushed hero. We're at the beginning now, so you won't have an advantage, the hero decided. Since he wants to fight so badly, there's no point in discouraging him. But can you handle it? The hero asked. My partner won't just stand by and watch, she'll smash him like snot on a tree, he added. 
That streak Teresa, that's an interesting partner you have, said the guy. She won't be able to stop us. Zhang Xiang applied a level 5 field selection, taking his sword, he slammed it into the ground. At this time, our hero was standing near the sarcophagus, and he found what he came for. From a slit in the sarcophagus he pulled out a small ball, the space from the technique started to change and Teresa who was looking at it heard only two words from our hero, we will meet again. A moment and they disappeared, all that was left of them was a bright light that flew upwards. Teresa didn't realize what was happening and stood there confused. And lo and behold, they appeared in a different place. The guy who challenged our hero to a duel pronounced that no one else would stop them. I am the world's greatest swordsman, I challenge you to a fight, he activated the chitin technique. It was a level 5 duel. Because of her, all of his stats were increased by 10%, but his hero stats were conversely reduced by 10%. His special skills, field selection, and dueling had weakened him. The situation for the hero became extremely disadvantageous. However, special conditions for skill synthesis appeared. Simply put, when copying is not advantageous, the conditions are adjusted to the changing situation. Copying is possible after a skill is obtained. Thus, our hero has copied the opponent's ability, class C Sword Song. The swordsman's skills are enhanced by 200%, and the hero's body begins to use sword fighting techniques, which also greatly enhances his perception. The enemy began to advance, shouting, you're ignoring me again. Don't melt or I'll kill you in one hit. The hero meanwhile pulled out his dagger and began to fend off the enemy's attacks. The opponent didn't understand and asked, what are you counting on? You're fighting at a medium distance after all. Why are you only using your dagger? But the hero thought that it would be enough. After all, sword fighting was also interesting. After saying that, the guy started going crazy, shouting the same thing, you're underestimating me. With that, he activated another skill, the level 6 sword soul. The guy became more than a little angry and started attacking the hero with sword streams. Aren't you trying too hard, using higher techniques to fight a newcomer? Asked the hero to that scary guy. Ha, huh, but that made it even more infuriating. It's you, newbie, what kind of nonsense are you talking about? began to stupidly yell like a slashing, funny moment. The hero turned his attention to his sword and noticed that if he continued to parry his attacks, the dagger would be finished. That meant it was time to use it, a skill that could counter the sword. He began to combine the sword song and the demon soul. With a movement of his hand, he performed an out-of-rank synthesis, combining the abilities sword song and demon soul. Oh, and how hot it became. The enemy couldn't look in the hero's direction because of the bright light coming from the blade. The hero had gotten a little overzealous and gained a unique C-class ability. It was like a graveyard of swords, the hero's skills became 500% stronger. The body now only used the most effective sword techniques, and perception was at its maximum. One of the abilities required to obtain the title of demonic swordsman. The ability that the hero received gives out barely a tenth of the total power. He realized that he doesn't have enough mana to control this power. The hero's next goal would be to increase its supply properly. The enemy was dumbfounded at how powerful it was. He chose the most convenient battlefield for him, and yes, he tries not to fight at close range. However, why couldn't he defeat him now? That was the only thing that was of interest. What would be the opponent's next move? 1-1, one, 1-1. One, one, one. Both in and out of the game, he was doing everything to win. The hero developed strategies that were supposed to help him, but nothing worked, time after time he lost. Sitting in his apartment and looking at the wall with posters and ropes, he kept drawing and writing out what move he would use. Asked many questions, grumbled, but the bottom line didn't change. Why can't he top it? I will not accept this. Our hero's opponent started attacking more and more, but he didn't expect the hero to be able to parry his attacks. Although with the big difference in level, the hero was many steps above his opponent. He had already fought opponents that far surpassed his opponent in strength, but now he was bored with this battle due to the fact that he was faster than a bullet. The hero moved behind his opponent's back. Swinging his dagger, the opponent wanted to block the attack, but no such luck. His sword instantly flew further away, and his opponent fell to the ground with a great crash. Our hero defeated him again, he couldn't even remember how many times it was, but his opponent counted each defeat. 138 times he lost. 
This battle was the 138th. Kill me, he said, but the hero didn't want to do it. Then there will be a 139th victory in the future, he said. You know yourself that the Tower of Trials is no joke. Even the strongest nerds sometimes die here by carelessness. Life is hard, any way you look at it. But we need strong players, and persistent ones like you even more so, the hero said and held out his hand to his opponent. The guy sitting on his knees couldn't understand what the hero was saying about him and whether he was a strong player. But the hero started trying to befriend his attacker for a reason. He needed another 60 days to copy the player's abilities once more. Why would he waste his energy looking for him when he can make sure the target to copy is always nearby? And the hero activates the ability to communicate. The guy, as he got up, immediately turned around and started walking away. In response, the hero started saying that he admits defeat this time, but wants the guy to remember that next time, the outcome will be different. I'll wait with a smile, the hero replied. The effect of the battlefield selection skill was cancelled. By the way, I still don't know your name, do I? The guy said to the hero. And why would you? Replied the hero. But the lad did not like that answer, and to what was said he said, then I'll call you what I used to call you. Like before? No, don't you dare. Began to shout at the hero. Stinky, his in-game nickname had been misinterpreted before. Teresa, hearing this, smiled. But the hero didn't really like it, so he decided to tell him his name after all. The squad leader heard one of his soldiers start to say that the scanning artifact had detected something unknown. And although he was sure that there shouldn't be anything left after they had destroyed all the monsters, they started to see an object moving towards them. As soon as they raised their heads, they saw an iron golem with a strange creature sitting on its shoulder. The squad leader, as soon as he looked at it, realized what the image was. It was a supreme vampire who descended from the goblin's shoulder and began to worship them, thus welcoming the dear guests who had come to their home. After he greeted the players, he began to say that his name was Belus, and he was accompanying the owner of these ruins, Lord, one of the blood relatives. The boys immediately bared their blades and pinned the vampire against the wall. Why did you come here? They asked. You didn't just decide to meet us, did you? The leader of the group asked. The vampire didn't like that and immediately surrounded me. What's with the ill-manneredness? He said. He arrived at them with a suggestion, either you follow me without bickering, or half of you will come with me and I will eat the rest. At this moment, he activated his blood plague skill. What's wrong with my body? Shouted the leader of the guys. The vampire was quite strong, with a smile on his face and red eyes he captured everyone around him. Here we are shown another squad that was in another building. Tony was sitting and Teresa was using her level 5 saint's power skill. With the ice tear, she could enhance magic when absorbed, but if she didn't apply purification, she could seriously injure or harm players. Obtained along with the demon soul, the ice tear is quoted and cannot be used immediately after receiving it. But thanks to Teresa's holy power, our hero had already gotten 12 stats, and everything worked out, our hero was satisfied. After the invitation from the master of the abode, Teresa and the hero received the description, if you want to save the members of your group, go to the farthest room. Upon accepting the invitation, all monsters will deactivate. Teresa couldn't believe that the entire squad had been taken hostage, it's mind-boggling to kidnap an entire group. Teresa sprang into action, if she could save even one person, she could not hesitate. Teresa wondered, would they be able to defeat the Lord, or would they simply fall into a prepared trap? Without the raid team, it would be impossible for them to defeat the Lord. Teresa regretted leaving them behind. What would have happened if I had stayed with them then, she thought. She had joined the squad as a paladin, she just wanted to protect the players, but as it was, she had made the wrong choice. The swordsman who was standing to the side had seen all of this too, but it had nothing to do with him. So he was about to go. But before leaving, he said a few words to Teresa, if you're having a hard time making a decision, then think about what I'm going to tell you. That man doesn't have an ounce of honor, he's simply selfish. He can't even recognize his opponent. That's why I hate him so much, but I can guarantee you, if anyone can defeat the Lord, it's him. I've told you everything, now I'm leaving and you don't die out there. Teresa immediately smiled. She appreciated that swordsman's advice. She approached our hero and said she would accept an invitation from him. But the hero questioned, will she overpower him? His services cost a great deal. 
But she didn't care, she was willing to pay everything she had just to save the squad. Our hero was in agreement, the quest was accepted, and the monsters that were on their way to the boss room went into hibernation. They approached the boss room, and there was such a volume of mana that Teresa felt uneasy. But the hero said that she shouldn't be scared. After that, they got a glimpse of the enemy. It's not always the strongest wins the battle. Teresa asked the hero if he had a plan, and heard that he knew what to do, no matter how it happened. She must trust and believe in him. They entered the Lord's room, where they saw many vampires standing in a circle, with Lord Alice Vaughn sitting on a throne at the very end. Here we are at last, she said, I was so tired of waiting for you. The hero immediately asked if the people she had kidnapped were alive. With a snap of her fingers, she said, see for yourself. A squad appeared, sitting tied up and with their eyes closed. The hero looked at them and used his abilities, thereby realizing that it was the leader who had awakened the guards. Lord began to say that she invited the hero to visit her because of the smell that came from him. The sweetness she felt for the first time was the smell of his blood, which couldn't be compared to the smell of other people. It was a very sweet smell that turned her on. The hero is a bit dumbfounded as to why she is talking about the smell of blood, after all, there was never anything like that before when he was here. Are you alarmed? asked the lord to our hero, to which he replied, how can a vampire talking about blood be calm after hearing that? The lord began to reassure the hero not to worry and told him that she would enjoy him slowly. He would live for at least 60 more years, which meant she would be able to use it for a long time. The hero thanked her for her concern but said he didn't want to live like he was an expensive lunch. With a quick movement, the lord struck a blow that made the hero's cheek bleed. Your opinion doesn't matter, she replied, you just don't have a choice. No one gave you a choice, she repeated. Are you okay? Teresa asked. The hero was scared, the hero began to explain that he wasn't just talking. He's willing to give the lord something on sweet blood. Teresa didn't realize what the hero was doing. The Lord smiled and said that no matter what he sucked up, nothing is more important to them than blood, and no matter what he offers, her opinion won't change. You confidently replied with a snide smile, Hero, even if I offer you freedom, the vampires that were in the audience started screaming in one voice from hearing that, how dare he say that? Yes, we'll tear you to pieces, you little bug. They were ready to attack the hero, but the Lord stopped them and told the hero that he had better back up his words with deeds before she finally finished him off. The hero began to explain that if he wasn't responsible for his words, he simply wouldn't have come here. Lord began to listen to his words and decided to hear him out after all. My name is Kong Jean Heck, the hero said. And as the representative of the mains, I swear that I will set you free. The mains were those who turned their backs on the humans because of money, revenge, and personal beliefs. They prevented players from climbing the tower and helped the monsters in the mazes and ruins. The Lord was interested, he had heard of them, and when he saw our hero putting on his mask, he asked, you mean you are one of them? The hero replied that he had made the connection to the temple on the 27th floor and that it was here, and knew how to cheat the barrier that covered the ruins. All of this was told to him there in the temple. Teresa couldn't believe her ears, what that could mean, and more importantly, why he said he was a main and why everyone got excited when they heard about the temple. The Lord immediately replied, since you know about the temple, then it's not a bluff. The hero thought she believed him. She rose abruptly from her throne, and the blood that was at her feet began to rise with her. What does it matter if you remain or not? For centuries, the higher vampires have remained locked up here, so it's all just talk. And since she doesn't like talkers, he'll have to die. The Lord started to activate the blood orb skill. She decided to finish off the hero with the words, your blood smelled so sweet, sorry about that, die. A thousand bloody swords started flying towards the hero who was standing in front of her, but suddenly Teresa appeared and activated the power of a saint, thus creating a barrier. Teresa held back the lord's attack and ordered the hero not to come out. She believed her barrier would hold, but the bloody pikes and swords were very much in evidence. Teresa was putting her full weight against the lord's usual attack. The Lord was starting to get angry. She hated everything holy. That's when she decided to activate the blood blast skill. Thereby destroying them in one blow, Teresa didn't know how long she would last. The Lord's usual attacks were strong, but she believed it was a stab in the back gene heck shouted she. Our hero stabbed her through with his dagger. The Lord, seeing this, smirked. The hero stood next to Teresa who was lying on the floor bleeding. 
If I prove to you that this is simply not a bluff, will you believe me? How interesting, said the Lord, you betrayed a comrade who protected you. But that is not enough. If you prove it with something else, then perhaps I'll believe you. Teresa, bleeding, took hold of his leg and said her last words, we promise to save the squad members. Is this your plan? With that, the hero swung his dagger and finished Teresa off. The Lord was ecstatic at what he saw. Not bad, human, she said. Now I realize you're on my side. I trust you. Now you have a chance to explain yourself, said the hero. And began to explain, which would fool the barrier that was preventing them. He prepared a special spell, what I hold in my hands is the Brahma ring, and if we place your soul in this ring, we can cheat the barrier for a little while. Lord didn't understand, this was the first time she had heard of sealing a soul. The reason why the hero gave up all experience points and stayed at level 1 was because the soul traveling skill could only be activated by a level 1 player. The hero had traveled such a long way to be here and to do this, he started to activate the soul relocation magic circle. He could only seal the soul once, and the recharge of the skill was 365 days. Everything was ready, all that was left was to get the Lord's consent. The hero stood in the circle with his arms outstretched and said that if in a minute this magic circle would disappear forever, if you gave your consent, the spell would work. It was up to you to decide what you would choose. The Lord stood and turned to her loyal servant, ordering him that she didn't trust him completely yet, so if he did anything suspicious, kill him and destroy the magic circle. The Lord had one last step to make, she was reluctant to put her life in his hands, but she had lived too long in confinement, it had been over a thousand years. If not now, she may never get out of this dungeon. The Lord asked one last time, can she trust a hero? To which she heard, if you trust me, you will not regret it. The Lord extended his hand to the hero who bowed his head in front of her, at which point the hero specifically applied the communication skill. The target immediately showed interest in our hero. I, Alice von Ataraxia, authorize the soul transference. After her consent, the process began to take place and the Lord's soul was imprisoned in the Brahma ring. The process was complete and the Lord thought she would be uncomfortable in the ring, but it turned out to be cozy. The hero picked up the ring and was pleased that she liked her new home. Fiction's new home, she said. Immediately afterward, the ability Heaven's Protection, activated in Teresa rose from the floor. Welcome back, the hero said towards Teresa. He knew of her skill that could bring back the fallen. Instant death being the exception, the recharge of the skill was 240 hours. Teresa slowly got to her feet and came to her senses, with a smile on her face she approached the hero. The hero began to turn his mask into a regular monochrome mask, as he didn't need it anymore. At this time, the lord who was imprisoned in the ring began to resent how dare he speak to her like that. Bemis, kill the vile deceiver. She shouted. Teresa had many questions, but she realized it was better to ask them later, to which the hero agreed, as now was not the time or place. Bima sprang into action with the words, foolish humans, do you think you'll stay alive after betraying my master? He began to activate the blood moon skill. The hero and Teresa were in danger, you would think, but, the hero activated the fire element skill and hit back with the same force as the enemy. The hero then asked Teresa to take care of the squad members while he dealt with the vampires. Teresa used the cross skill to free the squad that was bound by the spell. She started with the guild leader, and after she freed him, he was happy to see them. The guild head asked what was going on with the vampires, and Teresa pointed to our hero who was dealing with them alone. Bemis attacked the hero, but couldn't understand how he was able to repel his attack. The hero explained that his magic and fire extinguished the enemy's attack. However, he did not yet realize that once their mistress, probably the guild leader, was imprisoned, the situation became more complicated. They had already lost, enough talking, it was time to call it a day. The hero started to activate the unique ability Graveyard of Swords, but the vampires didn't want to give up. Meanwhile, Belmus activated the dark martial arts skill and replied, shut your mouth, he said. You shallow blood belly. If I couldn't succeed in killing you with magic, I'll succeed with a sword. He ordered the entire ring to be smashed to free their lord, and the vampires began to attack, but they were so unsuccessful. They were nowhere near as strong as our hero. Meanwhile, the guild leader was standing with Teresa looking at all this, and asked Teresa, who is this guy? Teresa thought for a moment before answering and realized that if the character was still wearing the mask, then he didn't want to reveal his identity. 
She said that she met him by chance and didn't know much about him. The hero approached Teresa and heard her say that she was in pain, it was the first time she had died so also at the hand of an ally, but they fused and that's what matters. She thanked the hero for keeping everyone alive. The hero had saved the life of the owner of the unique ability patronage of the heavens, and so the conditions were met. The hero had successfully copied her ability, which meant that the divine power would allow him to escape death. Teresa started to sob, but the hero said that it ended well and there was no need to sob. She didn't know why that was, but the tears were pouring out for nothing. Teresa asked the hero, so it turns out you knew I was going to be resurrected? To which he abruptly turned around and walked the other way. He said he was glad she survived. The hero offered to already take the relics and get the hell out of this dungeon, but then the raid group leaders showed up and started saying that the rights to the relics from this raid belonged to the guild. The hero got a little angry and said that he saved their lives, and he is also asking for relics. But the head immediately backpedaled and said he misunderstood and would pay him for them, in money or whatever. You won't be shortchanged, he said. The hero didn't like the leader. After defeat, this leader still acts cocky, but if that's the way you want it, take it, but don't complain if the result doesn't satisfy you. The leader rejoiced and ran to the relics, and first lying first was a fragment of Merlin's staff. Although the large raiding party of grooms seemed to be held hostage, the chapter thought he could regain authority by bringing a good loot. The head touched the staff and felt as if he had been electrocuted. What is this? He said, seeing the cross on his hand. What curse? Replied the hero. Though Merlin's staff is a precious relic, it bears a curse, if Alice were to disappear completely, it would be safe. However, Alice is currently trapped in the ring. Aston, with me, the head said, and held his head. Teresa, seeing this, was shocked. The hero knew what was coming next, so he took Teresa's hand and said, let's go to the exit already. At this time, the department head and a bunch of press stood near the exit of the dungeon and waited for the raid team of grooms that was to return. The head of the awakened association stood near the exit of the dungeon and said that they had received a message that something should work out. The girl standing next to him interrupted him and said that the experts had reported that the raid would last at least another three weeks. The boss remembered the words of the guy who said that the takeover of the ruins would be over soon, but the boss didn't tell him to believe it. Suddenly, everyone standing there saw the notification that the ruins of the abode of the fallen had been cleared. The group began to exit through the teleporter. Oh, it's the party guild. Everyone shouted, congratulations on clearing the ruins of the first floor. The reporters wanted to quickly learn about the strategy you used and who became the most valuable player of this raid. The raid leader who had all the hair on his head fall out after the curse and, yes, his eyebrows fell out too that was the laugh. Everyone wanted to know what happened back there in Nutri, right? Gentlemen, Teresa said, the ruins weren't cleaned up by the Sun Chanwa raid, did the Shaun Guild do that? No, she answered. Our hero came out last and said that this person was compared almost alone and we were in fact just watching from the sidelines. The head of the association immediately wanted to inform the leader. Barely survived, we could have just died, but if not for that masked man, it would have been. The broken raid team was walking and thinking. The next day, the news was all about who the masked player was and where he came from because he single-handedly cleared the ruins and all the guilds started commenting on the situation because he single-handedly cleared that dungeon but at the same time Gene Heck was making himself a tasty noodle and watching the news he found out that it was going to be a topic of discussion but he had no idea that it would get so big. Delicious noodles and watching all this news and he knew it was going to be a topic of discussion but he didn't realize it was going to be blown out of proportion. And it's a good thing he was wearing a mask and no one recognized his face. But the only one who saw her face was Teresa but she promised to keep it a secret. So Gene Heck decided not to worry about it. And as soon as he'd eaten the rest of the news he decided it was time to deal with the locked vampire sitting in the ring. And as soon as he put the ring to his ears he heard Alice start to tell him how dare he put her. Put her in a dark and stinking pocket because he should have known who she was well. For a second Gene Hack got bored with her talking and he started twirling the ring around in his hands and Alice started screaming at him to calm down because she was getting dizzy. As soon as she was quiet, Gene Hack stopped twirling that ring that was on the chain and started asking her if she had come to her senses. But she, who was sitting in the ring, started telling him to put himself in her shoes, think about it, and remember that vampires never forget a grudge. 
However, he didn't like what she said again, and at that very moment she realized he wanted to do it again and started ordering him to stop. But Jean Heck, with a horrifying smile, began to twist once more and tell her that she still hadn't realized who was in charge. So another explanation is needed, and he started spinning this ring at an unrealistic speed, saying that this is the carousel of death. After three hours, he put the ring on the table and Alice started telling him to stop because she was about to die. But at that same second, Jean Heck started telling her to stop roaring and finally went outside. He started to release Brahma from the ring, and that very second she appeared in front of him. As soon as she realized this, she began to say with a smiling smile that the time had finally come, and she would give him back this pain a thousandfold. But what she didn't expect was that she was the size of a small child, and looking at herself, she couldn't realize what was going on. But Jean Hack first told her that he had only taken out and materialized a part of her, and now you could call her a mini version of Alice. Jean Hack went on to tell her that she could now only use 1% of her power, and even though he had put a restriction on it, it was still stronger than a normal vampire. But she started to sit on the floor, sobbing and saying, what kind of life is this? But Jean Hack started telling her not to roar, but to listen to what he said. In ruins to me are empty words, she said, but she didn't want to hear it and started telling him to shut up, because this wasn't the kind of freedom she wanted. And Jean Heck said that he knew, for freedoms were unspeakable, and he would give her real freedom. But she didn't understand what that meant. And he went on to say that if Alice would help him, he would destroy those who had betrayed her and give her back her place as head of the Ataraxia family. And a little later, a new video was added to the honor roll, and Wright, who should have failed. However, the masked player who appeared changed the situation completely, and some viewers watched the video. Even though they already knew the result, their hands were still sweating, and some viewers were scared as he was standing alone in front of the vampires, and they lost knowledgeably from it. But some onlookers noticed that his movements and actions didn't look like a beginner, and his magic and sword techniques were of an incredible level. Our hero, who was reading all these comments, was already standing outside near a large building. Looking at this building, he began to realize that many kids, after all, had a lot of money. And, seeing such a big office, he realized that they did. And as soon as he started to put on his mask, he knew that he wasn't going to get involved in the guild's affairs or the squabbles between them, because he didn't care about them. And as soon as he put his mask on, he kicked out with his foot. The door that started to fly to pieces, and he didn't want to do it, but now he had no choice, for he knew that this guild wanted to kill him and forgive, he wasn't going to do it. After all, for such a thing he would tear them to shreds. And just as our hero began beating up all the staff and all the guards that stood behind those broken doors, the head of the guild was sitting on the upper floors of that building. He started to greet not one of his underlings, but that he was a jerk and made it clear to him that he should die in those ruins. And what did he do? Woke up the guards and ended up accomplishing nothing because of some asshole they can't handle. They can't be allowed to lose their reputation and maybe cease to exist altogether. The guild leader stood up from his desk and started walking towards that subordinate. He kicked him off his leg, saying that he was a lowly jerk and couldn't do anything properly. And at that same second, the two guards who were standing near the door in the guild leader's office started to hear some kind of knocking on the door. And in that same second, the door exploded from the fire flame that Gene Heck had applied. And as soon as those two guards flew aside, Jean Heck started to go inside the room and asked if he was the master of this guild. But the head at that very second started ordering his underlings to grab him. Suddenly, the guy that the head had recently beaten with his feet appeared. He realized that this was his only chance to restore his honor and his reputation in the face of the head, and he would be called Pak Hajen, Super Hands again. And just as he flew towards our hero with his dagger, Jean Heck suddenly took off his mask and said to that guy, Hi. And as soon as that guy got confused, Jean Heck kicked him in the head, which made him fly into the nearest closet that stood near the wall. Suddenly, the guild leader started yelling that they lost their position in the association because of him. If you think you can just strut around here like this, you're wrong. But as soon as Jean Heck heard those words, he sat down on the chair across from him and began to say that this wasn't what the guild master had to worry about. But suddenly, the guild master started to reach out his hand for the katana that was on the table, and in that second, he started to use his level 5 sword flash skill. As soon as he took the katana in his hand, he jumped up, stood on the table and started saying, are my hero that his sword is about to be his. And he's sitting so relaxed, and as soon as the sword almost touched our hero's face, the guild master's sword was snapped in half. He didn't understand how this was possible, or how he did it, but Jean Hayak had checkers near him, and he started throwing them with amazing speed and power. 
Once he saw that the guild master had calmed down, he planted his feet that he was ready to start them not talking, and the guild master started shouting that he had come to take revenge because he had ordered him to be killed, and that was the only reason he had destroyed the building. And as soon as the guild master stopped shouting towards Jean Heck, another checker flew straight at the guild master's head, causing him to lose his balance and fall off the table. Jean Heck held out his hand with another checker in it, and he started to say that he didn't think such words were out of place. But the guild master started to say for him to stop it, for it was enough. But Jean Heck didn't understand why he should stop when he was only in the middle of what he had started doing, and the guild master started telling him to be more objective. After all, they had so many rankers who were now in the tower ready to fight. And even if he kills the guild master, many will be after him for revenge and he doesn't realize what that means. After all, blood for revenge breeds revenge, and until one side asks the other, there will be no end to the bloodshed. But Jean Heck, with more at checkers in his hand, began to say that although it sounds strange, it makes sense. Blood and revenge. He began to think that he would interfere with a restful sleep, so he decided to end it right now. At this very second, Jean Heck's hand that had a lot of a checkers in it started to ignite, and he said that we will take revenge, and let the guild side ask and end this war. But the guild master didn't understand what was the point of this, and Jean Heck said, how could it not be understood? After all, this is the guild master's logic. In that same second, our hero started releasing many fireballs that flew towards the guild master. And just as they began to reach their target, the window that was behind the guild master shattered. The master himself began to fly into that window. A second later, Jean Hack walked over to the window, looked through it, and began to turn around. At that same second, the guy who started attacking him with the knife in the beginning was lying near the window. Jean Hack started telling him that he would let him live because of his little sister, because she had done him a lot of good. The hero started telling that guy that he'd better not get in his face again for the rest of his life. At the same second, Gene Hack turned to the other guy and asked him to stand up and not play dead. And once that guy who had stood for the day was fully up on his feet, Gene Hack started asking him if he could prove himself useful to keep him alive. He had a story to tell about himself. That guy started to say that his name was Kim, he was 26 years old, and he was doing general work in the guild. He studied information technology and accounting at Stanford. He assured me he could get anything he wanted. After that, Gene Heck started telling him that he was hard enough, and as he could see, the situation here wasn't good. Destroying a guild like this isn't particularly profitable, so he wants to hand it over to him. Kim started to get nervous, because he didn't understand what he was talking about at first, but Gene Heck immediately started to calm him down, telling him not to worry, and to just become the official representative. Kim replied to him that even if he became a guild master, no one would follow him, and that was correct. An ordinary member of the organization suddenly getting a high position would cause controversy. Jean Heck turned around and added that Kim didn't have to worry about those who wouldn't agree. Kim didn't understand what that could mean and started to ask if he could handle these problems himself. But Jean Heck picked up his ring hanging around his neck and started to say that why would he need to worry too much? He would just lend him something so Kim wouldn't have to worry. At that moment, all the guild members started receiving messages on their phones with information for those guarding the tower. Everyone was supposed to gather on the top floor of the base. The highest ranked guy who was outside Ilya's office started to get angry because the guild master knows that everyone is busy, and suddenly called everyone to the meeting. After all, he was on a raid, and although they were servile people, but this was too much. It pissed him off a lot, but suddenly, as soon as he started walking towards the office, he saw a lot of people gathered near some kind of car, and he wondered what was going on there. And as soon as he walked over and shoved all the people around to get a look at what was there, he saw that the guild master was lying on the hood of the car, and he realized that he was dead. He started to get even angrier and as soon as he got to the top floor he started yelling, who gave the order? And suddenly he saw Kim sitting at the desk, and at that very second that guy started attacking him with words about what he was up to. And as soon as he came to the table and grabbed Kim by his tie, he started ordering him to tell everything without leaving out details. But Kim started to say that there was a new owner, and suddenly that guy saw a little girl standing by the window. It was Alice, and she was standing there looking at all these guys, not realizing if she needed to start this conversation. But that guy kept standing his ground and yelling, what is this nonsense? After all, that little girl can't run a guild. And at that very second, Alice heard her being called Petty and her eyes lit up red. She asked that guy if he was the one who called her Petty, and at that very second, an explosion sounded inside the room. 
Gene Hack, who was standing outside, saw the building he came out of explode and another explosion went off inside. He realized it was Alice, and holding his head up, Gene Hack said, I like that, for she gave them a fight back from the start, there to destroy everything, and it had been about two months since the tower had appeared, and the world was changing fast, and people were quickly adapting to the changes. A masked man was shown on the news. He sparked interest by single-handedly mopping up ruins that large units couldn't handle. And only two people knew who was behind the masked man. The former porter, indeed, was Gene Heck. And one of those men was the leader of the porters, Uncle Kim. He asked him to keep it a secret. Teresa also made a promise to keep his secret. Now there are two people, the one with the mask and the one without it. In this way, it will be easier for him to act. A little later, in the Awaken Association, all the preparations were finished and there were no more restrictions. Once inside the Awakened Association, player Gene Heck decided for himself that it was time for his power to come, with which he would do whatever he wanted and no one would be able to stop him. A little later, when Gene Heck received his certificate of being an Awakened One, he was assigned rank F. He began to look at this certificate, and it appeared to be quite simple to him. But at that moment, he heard someone call out to him. And as soon as he turned around, he saw his friends standing downstairs, and they started to say that they were pumped up a bit. Plus they noticed that the guy standing next to him said they knew him. So they talked for a bit and Gene Heck said he could officially introduce them. He started to introduce Alice and said she was a player from Northern Europe. But he didn't really want to tell them that she was a vampire, because that might cause a panic. The second was Kim, who had been appointed as the guild manager of the Black Raven Guild. He would be exploring the dungeons and helping them with pumping. Kim started to say that if they all knew Director Kong, he would help them in any way he could. And at this point he cried, for he began to compare to how he was exploited by the past guildmaster. Now for him to be treated like this was simply a reward. And Gene Heck started telling all the guys that if they needed anything, they should ask him. But his friends didn't understand how he was able to become the master of the Black Raven Guild. Gene Hayak answered them that according to the documents, the guild master was Mr. Kim, but it was actually him. Immediately after saying that, his friends were excited about this information and began to rejoice that they were friends. As soon as they approached Mr. Kim to talk to him, Jean Hack was alone with Alice and started asking her why she blew up the floor of the building. But she started to get nervous and replied that they were the first ones to start it and she didn't want it to come to that. But Jean Hack started telling her that in her opinion it was okay to destroy a building just because she was called a baby. But she started shaking her head and saying that after living thousands of years, you can't hold your own and no one just dared call her that. And at the same moment Gene Heck told her that he understood and suggested that she go out and hunt. Alice, however, was not thrilled with the idea. She began to ask why he couldn't go and hunt alone, to which Gene Heck told her that it was a pen hunt and he needed support. But Alice didn't know what he was talking about, or what a pen hunt was, or if there were any places left to hunt. And Gene Heck started telling her that there were still places left, even though the third floor had been cleared and the fourth floor hadn't been opened yet, and the most valuable dungeon was under guild control. And everyone thought that there were no more good places to leave, but Gene Heck still knew one more place. And soon he was already on the first floor of the Moon Lake Tower, and this place was known for having the most beautiful scenery outside. But for that reason, no one came here anymore, and as he walked along the beach, Gene Heck noticed that he hadn't been here for a long time, and the fate of all mankind was hanging in the balance. And there was no way to enjoy the views, so he thought. I'm walking down the beach, but Alice started to ask that it's scenic, right, but how does he want to get together to hunt here? And Jean Heck told her to just look, but she didn't want him to go into the lake, because she thought the water might get in the ring too. Decorating the calm moon lake, and there were 12 statues, but Jean Heck walking through the water started looking for just the right statue. And as soon as he saw the statue, he realized that it wasn't just a decoration, it had another function. Alice started to ask if there was some secret button in this statue, but Jean Heck told her that if only it were that simple. After all, there are only three players who have discovered this secret, and very rarely do they share it in the community. But no one had been able to find the right key, and that was understandable because it was an unusual key moonlight. Using your fingers, you have to adjust the amount and angle of the light, and when the system starts to react to the reflection of the light, you have to push a little, and then slowly the entrance will start to open. And just as the passage to the lower floor began to open, Gene Hack along with Alice began to walk inside. Once downstairs, the system let them know that they had gotten to the minus first floor of the testing tower. Alice began to look around, 
for she didn't know what could be underneath the tower. This was the kind of thing and she hadn't felt it in a long time, it felt like forgotten freedom. Jean Heck, who came up to her, began to ask her how she felt, and was glad she had made the contract. But she turned around abruptly and started to say that she was willing to have a little faith. Walking down the stairs, Jean Hack began to apply heaven's protection and activated the sacred power, preparing for the second stage of unfreezing. Frozen tears and his mana immediately increased by 18%, but he would only be able to use it again after 24 hours, and he only had 70 attempts left. He began to realize that after reabsorbing the icy tears it was easier to control Alice. And if you think about it that way, what does she think about their hands being in the tower? And while most know that the game has become a reality, Alice, who has lived for 1000 years, thinks she is only part of the game. Jean Heck decided to ask her something, and just as he wanted to say something forbidden, his body started to change and his words were jumbled. He realized how it was happening, and what was concerning the tower was blocked. Jean Heck realized that this attempt was not in vain, for at least he realized that he could not discuss with those who lived inside the tower. At the same moment, Alice began to notice that something was approaching them. And as soon as Jean Heck turned around, he saw some strange tentacles that began to appear out of the darkness and move towards him. He used to call the minuscule first floor of the tower a spawning cave, and the reason for that was because a lot of monsters were hiding in those caves, in every corner. And wherever the player's foot went, they would immediately attack him, and tore him to pieces. And as soon as Jean Heck used his fire magic, he saw that a multitude and endless stream of monsters emerging from the abyss began to move towards him, and their number couldn't even be counted. After all, they were everywhere, above his head and on different sides of this cave. And one of those scarab beetles, who was level 25, started running straight at our hero. Alice, noticing this, started yelling, What is that, very nasty? And Jean Heck told her to get behind him. And at that very second, he activated his unique ability Heaven's Protection, and a huge explosion sounded at that very spot. All monsters within the range of this skill began to lose their physical defense by 30%. Jean Heck at that very second started asking Alice to show her power, but she didn't understand why a noble vampire should have to fight such nasty monsters. And as soon as he started twirling his chain in his hands where the very ring was on the chain, Alice realized that it was better not to argue and started doing everything. She activated her blood path skill, and as soon as all the scarabs were blocked by the vampire's blood, Jean Heck sprang into action. As soon as he pulled out his dagger, he began to use his leap skill and slashed all the scarabs that were in his range. As some scarabs died, his level began to rise very quickly, and Jean Heck thought about how hard it was for him to hold back while he remained at level 1. He had so much stress accumulated. Those scarab beetles surrounded him, and there seemed to be no escape anymore. Jean Hack began to activate his unique sword graveyard ability, and a terrifying energy appeared around our hero. He was very happy about the appearance of these scarabs, because now he could pump at an amazing speed. But at this time, a meeting of the Olympus Guild was taking place in one of the palaces. One of the guild members started to say that he felt like almost everyone was gathered, so he decided to start. The head of the Titan Guild was Frederick, and he began to speak, everyone already knows that the 8th floor could not be conquered. Out of 100 people divided into 15 squads, there are only 20 people left alive. The boss of the third floor is quite ordinary, but he summons thousands of statues. We need a way to defeat them. And just as the factory finished its work, he heard a loud thumping of his hand on the table. It was Tung, the head of the China Guild, and he started to say that they had failed even by using the divine artifact. He didn't understand how they could get rid of those damn statues. But Maria, who was sitting at the table with him and was the head of the Olympus Guild, started to say that the second and third floors were passed too quickly and the players had too little time to pump. And if there were more players above level 15, they would easily pass the third floor. Beck, the head of the guild's third squad, agreed that everything was correct and not because they were having problems. He added that you couldn't, for example, monopolize magic crystals like China, but guild leader China started to object, saying that these were serious accusations. However, Beg didn't realize what he said wrong, and guild leader China went on to say that they were just passing the tower for the sake of humanity and wouldn't tolerate insults. He added that those weren't even excuses. But the guild leader Olympus ordered them to stop, because the only thing they needed was infighting. They all gathered to solve another problem. And yesterday he got a message from Maine. If they fulfill one condition, they will help them. 
but the other guild heads didn't really want to cooperate with them. After all, they were all internationally wanted, and they couldn't work with lowlifes like them. But Teresa, who was standing nearby and was a loner, began to think about the fact that they were all afraid to interact with Maine, and it was no wonder. After all, the influence of the guild was already above that of the government, and the greater the influence, the more important morality became, and they should all act with that in mind. But suddenly, the entire guild leader and Teresa heard some voice saying that they were all lowlifes, and they didn't like hearing it. The thing is good, and from the fire that was burning in the fireplace, some object started to appear, which attracted more and more attention, and the guild heads. And some strange man appeared who was dressed in black and had a hood over his head. Because of that, his face couldn't be seen. He started telling the whole guild that they already knew they couldn't do it on their own. One of the heads started talking to the man, how the hell did Maine dare to come here? If he came here by himself, then he should be killed. Immediately after saying those words, he threw the table towards that mysterious man who had appeared. But suddenly that one was intercepted in midair and cut by some other player. That player started to say that he was agreeing with Mr. Beck for the first time. The mysterious man stood up and began to speak, all of you are hotheads. But after hearing the proposal, you will change your mind. You must cooperate with the group, because that's the only way you have a chance to deal with the third floor boss. However, the man who threw the table continued to shout that it was all nonsense. He believed that even by teaming up with 100 people, they wouldn't be able to deal with a huge army. But the mysterious man began to say that it was possible to create that number, and suddenly he began to use his skills as the guardian of the black graveyard. Right from the floor where all the heads were standing, some skeleton-like creature began to appear, and a multitude of skeletons followed him. A mysterious man, a mysteriously thundering warrior, there were a lot of useful corpses here, and as you can see, there were many strong ones among them, such as the necromancers of the Needle Guild of Olympus. Looking at all this, Olympus didn't understand how a necromancer could summon so many soldiers. But suddenly he saw the staff held by that mysterious man, and he began to guess what kind of staff it was. After all, it could be created with only 99% of the material. This Staff of Greed If you combined the necromancer and the Staff of Greed, there might be a chance to deal with the third floor boss. But the girl who was standing next to her started saying that they were all carrying, after all, how can you mess with the bloody minds? And the guild leader, Beck, started saying that they know everything in Maria is right and it would be right to kill him right now. But if the public doesn't find out about the pact, then the game is worth the candle. The one standing next to her realized that there was no other choice now, because things had turned out this way. Collaboration with Maine is impossible. It felt like everyone in this room had lost their minds, and she thought about the fact that if player Gene Hack was here, none of this would have happened. And she began to think about what she could do. I mean cooperate with them or not? Or was there no other choice right now? But suddenly, she saw a notification window in front of her that said there was a request for a video call from Gene Hack. As soon as she took the call, she saw Jean Heck, who started to ask how she was doing and if she was rocking slowly. But suddenly he saw some strange situation that was in that room where Teresa was. And that mysterious man heard Teresa talking to someone on the Isvestco video, and he started turning around in her direction, asking who it was. Since he had already raised his voice, he should show his countenance, and Jean Heck began to switch the call mode on the conference call. Suddenly, everyone in the room saw a mysterious guy who was wearing a mask. I didn't realize that it was that person, that unknown person who had cleared the first floor dungeon. The incredible player who had cleared the dungeon single-handedly and remained unknown to anyone had become the object of interest of major guilds from all over the world. They were eager to get their hands on this player. And so, this super rookie appeared in front of them. They made considerable efforts to contact him. Everyone concerned had their mouths dry with joy because of his unexpected appearance. But the mysterious man began to smile. He was curious. He too had heard about the masked guy, the one who had cleaned out the first floor dungeon. And he began to tell what he knew about the fact that there would be an attempt to capture a completely different boss this time. Gene Heck asked him if it was true that he wanted to defeat this boss who had settled on the third floor. The mysterious man replied that it was correct. He started to point out that there were a lot of conscripted soldiers outside the window. He decided that it would be enough. Also, the heads of the guilds gave their consent. But Gene Heck was surprised by this, and he began to ask the mysterious man if he was sure he could handle this single staff. After all, the heart of the holy prison formation was dipped in ale, 
and he had created it without these two items. But the mysterious man continued to remain silent and listen. Suddenly, the head of the Olympus Guild intervened in the conversation and asked if he had proof that this was the case. Jean Hack began to say that real staffs of greed have a red stone under the skull, and the open floors lack some of the materials needed to create a real staff. Everyone should take a close look at the summoned zombies, these soldiers are too weak. They can't even last a quarter of a day in the boss's room, and he thinks that in case of danger he'll just leave everyone behind and run away with the loot like a typical rogue. But the man's puzzled face changed drastically as soon as he heard this, and he started to say that Gene Heck is a cheeky guy. And at the same moment, Gene Heck started to use his staff of greed and said that they would all regret not accepting his offer, and would they all be just as calm the next time they met, because he would be watching everyone. And as soon as he finished, all the soldiers who were around and he himself disappeared. Guildhead Skirting stood there not understanding what they should do now, but Gene Heck explained to him that they could leave the third floor to him and they wouldn't have to cooperate with the miners. He's taking responsibility for the operation, and the head realized that what he meant to say was that he could handle it alone. And Gene Heck confirmed that's exactly what will happen. And the guild head standing in that room reflected that even if he didn't succeed, he would at least be closer to them, and unlike the main deal, this had no serious downsides, and one shouldn't miss such a good moment. And all the guild heads, as if the clutches had snapped, began to offer their payment as a sign of help. They kept arguing over who would financially support the mysterious masked player, but Gene Hack replied that he didn't need anything. After all, if they all restricted the entrance of other players and let him go through alone, then he didn't need a reward. But the girl didn't understand why he needed it. After all, what he said made them doubt, and they wanted information on what the reason was. And Gene Hack answered them that the reason is because he is just doing what he needs to do, but also for the sake of other things, for his co-workers and Teresa. As soon as she heard this, Teresa started to blush. But on the other side of the screen, Gene Heck was uncomfortable, as he didn't want to squeeze out so much mental pathos. And one of the guild heads began to tell him that he admired such camaraderie and as a guild representative, he had nothing to add. After all, the masked player's words had touched him deeply, but Gene Heck realized that ordinary players would have asked for a good payment. But here, it was worth thinking about the prospects, after all, a player who sacrifices the reward for the sake of his comrades would be able to get much more than what he would have been paid thanks to those words. He's not allowed to conflict with girls, so he uploads this video, editing out the moments with Minecraft. And once the video was finished, Gene Heck started looking at his stats and realized that even though he had only been spawning for a day, his level had already reached 12 and things were going better than he thought they would. But suddenly he heard Alice's voice and as soon as he turned around, he saw her running away from those bugs and started yelling that you can't leave everything on her. But Jean Hack began to tell her that since she had the strength to bicker, she wouldn't die, for she was too awake to die. Suddenly Alice started acting like an actress and saying that they were not an equal partnership, slavery. But Jean Hack thought that slavery was a baseless accusation, and he started pointing at the system window, saying that he wanted to buy her mana replenishment, but Alice told him that it wasn't enough. That alone wouldn't replenish her powers, and besides, if she ran out of mana, how would she help? Suddenly, her face changed and drool flowed from her mouth. She began to say that she must restore her mana in the traditional way. Jean Hack tried to step back and calm her down, but she came even closer and bit his finger, causing him pain. As she drank blood, Jean Hack became dizzy and wondered how much she had taken in such a short time. But Alice interrupted him, saying that she had recovered her mana, and asked what they would do now. Gene Hack replied that they had to stock up first. And as soon as the shopping was done, Alice started to say that he had bought some obscure junk, but Gene Hack answered her that although it seems like it, even junk is useful sometimes. And from now on we will have a lot of things to do. And we have to clean up the minuscule floor in a day. And as soon as Alice sat on his shoulder, he started telling her to hold on tight, and that very second Gene Hack ducked into a stray hole. And just as they were flying, Alice started asking if he knew the depth. And since he just jumped like that without thinking, but Gene Hack has jumped into that hole over 100 times, so he definitely knows. And once Gene Hack realized that they were almost there, he ordered Alice to use his reverse gravity skill and they landed on the ground that very second. Alice started to tell him that he was so reckless and she didn't know if it was luck or skill at work, but Gene Hack didn't want to stand still. At that very second, he walked over to one of the torches, activated his element, and after that, he started telling Alice that everything was fine. After all, they had come to the right place, and such weak insects that are in this dungeon would not be able to defeat them. 
Jean Heck stood in front of the large stone statue and began to tell her not to make him stand up, let her better decide for herself. And you have heard, there was a hound running with a Chinaman in the desert, whose name was Anubis, and he had great power that ordinary players would never be able to handle. Anubis began to tell Jean Heck that he was the first man to come down here, and universal. He wanted to have some fun first, but he was nearing his death, and Jean Heck began to answer him that he didn't come here to chat, but was waiting for him to attack. After saying that, Anubis started laughing very loudly and said that magnificent Anubis would personally engage him in battle. Yeah, he's funny, but Alice flew up and said that he was very dangerous and she would try to deal with him. Jean Heck had better leave. Those words made Jean Heck smile that she cared about him, but he didn't care. He started to tell her not to worry, and that he was standing in front of a huge Anubis. He began to talk about the creature he had made a pact with. But it was entertaining for Anubis, and he began to activate his ability Anubis judgment and ask questions. Jean Heck did he learn about Anubis from that vampire, and Jean Heck always knew he was using this ability on an opponent. When you answer his questions, the absolute negotiation of Anubis's court is activated, and the notification system has shown that the conditions of the occupation are to destroy Anubis's incarnation, the receptacle of his consciousness, and take him out. Jean Heck began to realize that if he took himself out of balance, he would gain the power through which he could ask questions and did not have to answer them precisely, short answers would suffice. He said that was right, because how would he know about this place, I began to ask a second question, why did he come here for the hive? Jean Heck answered that of course he was after it at the black market, they would give a lot of money for it. Asked the last third question, if he came here about her on his territory and if he thinks he can stay alive. Jean Heck said that if he couldn't win, the only thing left to do was to throw away all his belongings and die. And at the same time, all the conditions were met and Anubis judgment began to activate, and all of the player's stats were reduced by 50% and abilities and skills were sealed for one minute. And suddenly, Anubis began to say that a representative would now be needed for the judgment, and Anubis chose a mantis that was standing nearby and appointed it as the representative. And the big mantis who was as usual on what to pretend to be a huge monster, and it without beginning said that he was going to pass judgment on him. But Jean Hack had a backup plan up his sleeve and began to tell Anubis that this was impressive. And at the same moment, he summoned a musical instrument and started saying that it would still be enough for him. It was a magical gramophone and it plays the selected music once and cannot be turned off until the music is over. But it didn't understand without comprehension what kind of human music it was and whether it wanted to cloud the representative's mind. But Jean Heck began to answer Anubis that the mind should be given to him entirely. The perfect music he found by trial and error, and a rhythm that fit the attack patterns of the mentis perfectly. And as always one must follow the rhythm and control this battle. But he couldn't believe the fact that he was leaving the pot attack. Using the music. And it's definitely a failure, it's a precise calculation, and Gene Heck, although tired, he started to realize that about now it was almost one minute past, and he could use his skills again. And the restriction time was up, and he easily started to destroy that mantis, cutting it into pieces. But he knew that he wouldn't be able to destroy it completely, after all it regenerates in seconds, if he with a new passion his powers would come to an end. But that was the plan, Gene Heck began to speak. After all, right now he can't kill this praying mantis, but he can make it not want to live. And as soon as he began to cut off its large paws, the mantis began to scream with a terrifying scream. And Alice, who I was watching all of this, began to realize that Jean Heck was just playing with Anubis. Even though she knew he was powerful, he wasn't that powerful. And she began to think that maybe if it was him, he would help her exact her revenge. Alice's thoughts were interrupted by Anubis, who started yelling throughout the cave about what he was doing and why he wasn't fighting him. But Jean Heck, who was slowly approaching the mantis, began to say that he is the proud warrior chosen by God, the representative and the last stage. He is destroying his great warrior, the belief in his own invincibility. It is humiliation and provocation. As soon as he sat on the head of the mantis, the notification system showed that the representative of Anubis had been defeated, for the mantis could not win, and he could not accept it. And so, as he was fed up with it, he cut off his head. And right after that, his level increased and the notification system showed that the magic tome and the duchy of Palantris were items that allowed one to learn ice magic after studying it. Jean Hack bent down to pick up this magic book, for he knew that such items could only be found in the middle of the tower floors. And he was only able to obtain all of these things because of monopolization. The notification system showed that he had obtained a level 1 ice creation skill. 
these were not bad gains for him. At this very second, Anubis started to speak and recognized that he was no ordinary person, but he was sure that he couldn't defeat him with this ice. But Jean Hack didn't understand what he was talking about there, because he can't even attack directly and is holed up there on his 42nd floor. And he's talking without beginning, as he realized that only an incarnation is standing in front of him. Why is he challenging him then? What is the reason? To which Jean Hack replies that he's just having fun. And right after saying that, Anubis starts losing his temper and saying that he is nothing more than some kind of fun for him. And at that very second, Anubis began to unleash the hive. It was a huge captive hive with countless insects living in it, and he began ordering them to kill this defiant man. As soon as the insects began to fly up, our hero sprang into action, attacking them with his ice magic, but he had fire magic in his other hand, and he began to combine skills. Once the merging was done successfully, he gained a new skill, daylight, and a bright light illuminated everything around him. As a result, all the insects started flying in different directions. No one the bright light swept through all the insects that had flocked together in one pile. The bright beams of light scattered to different corners of the abandoned cave. This was the finest skill our hero could obtain, and its name was daylight. This skill, which compresses and releases magical power, is highly powerful and also limits the enemy's field of vision. It gives more advantage in battle, and it, without a turn, began to think about whether he needed to change tactics, and he activated the chosen creature in the hive. The one he summoned began to butt a strong individual and flew towards Gene Heck. The hero began to apply level 1 ice creation, and he was able to destroy the large hornet that was rushing at full speed towards him. But that wasn't the end, because the chosen individual didn't die, but simply multiplied, and there were already several of them. Anubis started to say that no matter what skill he used, it didn't matter, but Gene Heck started to smile as he looked at his opponent's face, for he knew that he was finally able to get his hands on the enhancement pill that increased the size of objects by 10 times, and he threw that pill into the hornet's mouth with all his might, and the effect of the pill was to appear in one minute, and in the meantime, he started destroying all the other big hornets that were flying over his head. Suddenly he grabbed one of them and started flying on it. This caused Anubis to get angry and start yelling at his hornets about what they were doing. After all, they must kill that man as soon as possible. Hornets don't die, they just multiply, and this feature will drive any opponent to despair. After all, in horrible and absurd conditions, the enemy cannot assess the situation sensibly. Gene Heck, while flying on one of the hornets, jumped off it and started activating an obscure cube. It was an ability meter, sticky glue, forest web, snot of a two-headed ogre, and four items combine and amplify obscure abilities. This way, through endless repetition, one could understand the tactics and then intelligently assess the entire situation. And as a result, one can come to an unexpected decision. After all, the reinforcement pill began to act and, by the way, became an equal opponent for the boss with a huge army. It is necessary to maximize the number of these pills, and they endlessly multiply. Monsters help in this regard. Gene Hack was able to get not only a bunch of experience, but also items, as well as Anubis's excellent farm pile. The one was watching all of this, but couldn't understand what was going on and how he was able to prepare items for the merge beforehand. He also learned about the hive's ability and created a trap. Suddenly Anubis realized that he had been provoking him all along, and because of this he became even angrier. Striking with his big fist, he started destroying the hive. Our hero didn't like this, as he was just getting into the swing of things. Anubis started talking like a human and laughing that he was being treated with such disrespect. He couldn't believe that this was even possible, and pointing his staff at our hero, he started telling him that he owed it to him to survive and go up to the 42nd floor to see him. But Gene Heck replied to him that he might as well not yell like that, he was planning to do it himself. Anubis then decided that he would punish him for his disrespect. At that moment, the notification system showed that Anubis' receptacle had been destroyed and the conditions had been met. Our hero was able to obtain Anubis' judgment skill, the conditions for which were to ask three questions. After that, the enemy's strength is reduced by 50% for one minute and all skills and abilities are blocked. This skill can only be applied to one person once. If used more than once, Egypt will punish him. Suddenly, the notification system still showed that some of Egypt's gods were showing interest in him and some were feeling hostility. Gene Hack realized that Anubis had already managed to snitch to his cronies. Yes, and the gods had been quite picky before. 
And Alice, who had been watching this show the whole time, couldn't understand what had finally happened. But Gene Heck, looking at his stats, realized that this was the first time he had risen a few levels in this place, and he didn't know what was ahead of him. He decided to pump all the skills at once. As soon as Alice sat on his shoulder, he received a request for a video call, and he began to move her aside so no one could see her yet. And as soon as he picked up the phone, he saw Young Yu Sung and started asking him why he suddenly decided to call him. But Young Yu Sung started asking him in an aggressive tone where he is now, since he doesn't know the place. But Jean Hayak answered him that it's none of his business and asked him again why he was calling. It was because he wanted to make him an offer, because in 24 hours, a martial arts tournament was going to start in the Awakened Association, and a rank and above players, including him, were invited. And they decided to have a tournament even though there are more important things than the third floor boss. Gene Heck couldn't understand why he wasn't doing it, but Johnson started to tell him to enter the tournament and fight him again, but Gene Heck didn't understand why he should go there. Why he should waste his precious time on it, unless he had skills he could copy, but Johnson insisted that he couldn't refuse because he had a pass to the black market. As Johnson explained, the black market is not a place where players can buy something with coins, but a secret market where invited participants can purchase items exclusively with real money. The Tower of Trials had become a reality, and people were now holding such auctions. Gene Hack decided that he just needed items to go after the third floor boss. If this secret auction was for the rich, he might be able to buy a lot of good things. In addition, the notification system started congratulating him because his video was a hot new thing and he was already being discussed on a video uploaded to a new channel created by an unknown person where you could see Jongsian in disguise and Teresa, as well as the leaders of the major guilds. He edited out the moment with MYN, and no one expressed negativity about the guilds. In any case, it's not favorable to conflict with such big guilds. Some viewers started writing their comments on what was going on and whether it was real that he wanted to go solo against a level 3 boss. Some thought he was just strong, but it turned out he also had a pretty good character. Everyone was on the hunt for the fact that he was single-handedly risking his life. And Gene Heck knew that people would react predictably. A player hiding under a mask was the center of attention, and an unknown in front of the heads of a guild that had failed several raids. He confidently declares that he will go it alone, and that can't help but be interesting. Considering that the same video can be watched only once a day, 50 million views is not a bad figure, because 100 coins for 10,000 views, so for 50 million views he will get 500,000 coins. If we take into account the commission, which is 90%, he will get 50,000 coins net. The commission is unbelievable, but the amount is still not bad. After he finished calculating how much he would get for that video, he felt a sudden urge to sleep. After all, he had been sitting and watching the players fight in the tournament, and he was sick of it. He wanted the damn tournament to be over already. The organizers had selected 24 players of rank AA and above after several failed raids of the third floor of the Awakened and Major Guild Association. They decided to widely distribute the footage of this tournament to show the village and the greatness of the top players to the public, to put on a show and lighten the mood. Even though not everyone watched YouTube, but this was an opportunity to showcase the player's abilities and a good way to lighten the mood. And at the time Johnson told Gene Hayak if he agreed to fight, he would give the invitation to him. But Gene Hack told him to stop, because he hadn't reached AA rank yet and couldn't even enter the tournament. But Johnson blatantly started to ignore him and still said that the winner of the tournament has a choice, he can choose a replica relic from the National Museum. And he could also invite a player who wasn't in the tournament to fight and fight him. But Gene Heck was somehow uncomfortable about this tournament, and Chanson started saying that this time he would defeat him in front of everyone. While watching all the players fight, one of them saw a strange creature behind his opponent's back. And then the ghostly creature appeared and started beating up the players that were in its path. Gene Heck noticed that those two from the museum were also here, and they turned out to be pretty good. Some spectators began to discuss this, saying that they were strong, and one could sleep well knowing that there were players like them as well as many participants that could be recruited. But the head who was sitting in the audience started to say that he only had his eye on one player, Jung Song. He had black luck in his eyes, and he was gorgeous. He noticed that that guy had control over the battle and a wide view. And most importantly, many types of attacks. When they first suggested to him if he wanted to join the guild, he refused, because he wasn't interested. The head realized that he was an ambitious guy, not like the other kids. And all of a sudden he noticed that someone started talking about him behind his back, that it doesn't make him feel better. 
and he can't look at it anymore, because if he participated, he would handle everyone and make the one who refused to join the guild kneel. That was John Hen, a player who had a AAA rank, and the guild leader replied to him that he should not be thinking about the fights of this tournament, but about the upcoming interview, because he had invested in all of this not so easily. And John replied to him that he shouldn't worry, because he knows how to shine in front of the cameras. John Hen has all the potential to rise to S rank in three years if everyone recognizes that he has cultivated a rising star. The prestige of the guild would increase a lot and one would certainly like to keep him from shining unnecessarily, but at the same time, a terrifying aura appeared at the training championship that caused all the players to start falling to the ground. It was Shanson and his offensive attack swept away all the players and eventually a winner emerged. And the girls who were riding the subway and watching the live broadcast saw the winner. To them, he was a total hottie. And the rest of the viewers who were watching it on the big screen outside thought that Jonsian had decided to choose the right to choose his opponent. But the viewers thought that he would fight some guild master. Everyone was wondering who he would choose. But suddenly, Johnson started pointing his sword at a player who was sitting in the audience, and Zhang Yun blew up. The one who was sitting near the guild head. Black luck, he was happy that someone picked him and challenged him to a duel, but the guild head started telling him to sit back down in his seat, because he didn't pick him, and he has to look at the tip of his sword and the direction of his gaze. He looks a little higher, and Chan Siang started telling him not to pretend he doesn't understand and to come out to the battle site. The guild leader was sure that other than him and John Hen, no one could match him, and as soon as Gene Hack stood up from his seat, he began to say that he knew how to harass people. And as soon as he lowered his sword, all the spectators realized that he had really picked that guy. The managers who were sitting near them started quickly punching Gene Hack into the database. And once they found him, they started reading that he was a rank F player. If he had challenged 10, a rank AAA, the duel would have been quite spectacular, but he had chosen a rank F player, and he wouldn't get any benefit, quite the opposite. Maybe he just wants to publicly mock the weak one? The main thing was wondering what he was up to, but standing in front of Jonsian, Jean Hayak, started telling him that if he loses this time too, he should just give up, because it's about time he learned to admit defeat. John Sun replied that he was saying that after seeing him win, Jean Hayak started teasing him that he had definitely gotten stronger and seemed to be training hard. After saying that, John Sun got angry and said that he didn't stop for a second, doing everything he could to catch up with him and get that ticket. Jean Hayak had to fight him at full strength. And as soon as Johnson started to use his sword soul skill and second stance, Jean Hayak took his head, because he realized that that guy had taken up his game again. At the same moment, our hero's face became more serious, and he decided to fight him for real. And just as the battle began in the great hall, an explosion sounded, and a huge hole formed in the wall. Ice shards lay on the ground where the battle had taken place, and Johnson stood, completely crushed. He didn't realize how dangerous his opponent was or how much skill he had. No matter how many times he fought him, he couldn't defeat him. As he fell to the ground, he lost consciousness from the injuries his opponent had inflicted on him. Gene Hack slowly walked over to him and began to take what belonged to him. Although he had promised to give this card to him, Gene Hack decided to just take it himself. After all, he would gladly take advantage of the invitation to the black market. The onlookers who were watching all of this couldn't realize what they had just seen. After all, it was a huge ice shell. In addition, they had yet to notice that there was some bright beam that appeared and blew the ceiling apart. Some viewers started discussing what one of them said as if this guy was a rank F, but other viewers didn't believe it. The video showed that such a low-ranked player couldn't fight that hard. Gene Hack started to approach the guys he hadn't seen in a very long time. After all, this was their first meeting since the day at the museum. He started to say that their first meeting was a little rough, but it was all in the past and he decided to get along with these guys. He could see that they wanted that too, because they kind of hated having an enemy like that. Jean Hack turned to Yuri and said that since they had already decided to live peacefully, she should listen to his requests and give him her number. However, she hesitated something and didn't want to give her number, but after that, our hero warned that if she didn't give her phone number, she wouldn't be able to deal with the consequences. After these words she immediately started showing him her phone number. Let's go at the same moment, one of the players abruptly jumped down from the hall and started approaching Jean Hack. He was confident in his abilities and started telling our hero that it was amazing and he thought that since rank F would fight, he would lose quickly. 
but he soon realized that he wasn't that simple, and Gene Heck started to use his eye skill that second and started to see the conditions of the buy that the object had a hidden intention and he had to figure it out, so he could copy the giant's hand skill. Gene Heck began to think about this hidden intention, after all, the system determines the object's intention and desire every time, but it was unclear to him. Isn't it beyond the capabilities of artificial intelligence? But Gene Hack started to raise his palm up and told our hero not to look at him, so after all he doesn't want to fight. Gene Hack started to ask, why did he come down then? And he started to answer, it's simple, because they have the same field of work, and he thinks that they will have to run into each other often, and he will treat his co-worker well, with whom he will be standing shoulder to shoulder. He's just being polite. But Gene Hack saw that insolence and knew he was lying, looking straight into his eyes. The hero once again began to apply his eye of truth skill and saw that the system began to show that Gene Hyen's words were a lie. After all, behind such a calm face, there are dark feelings, anger, rage, hatred, and reporters who were just waiting for this. His hand reaches out to shake it, and John Han's ability is the strength of a giant. Gene Hack began to realize that this was what he expected from the head of the Dark Fortune Guild. Surpassing the rookie overpowered winner, he wants to defeat him in front of reporters and draw all the attention on himself. Our hero began to realize that he is reading him like an open book, and the notification system shows that he has identified John Han's hidden intentions, and the buy condition was fulfilled, and our hero was able to get a new skill, Giant's Hand. Now he will be able to use the power of a giant, due to which his grip strength increases, allowing him to lift objects that weigh 10 times more than him. When Tower of Trials was only a game, there was no way to copy this skill because there were very few users who possessed it. But now that the game was a reality, the skills that others were having a hard time obtaining were now available to collect. Gene Hack started to speak to that guy coming out. This was a greeting on behalf of the Dark Luck Guild. That guy started to reply that of course he agrees, since he doesn't seem to be a member of the guild, and started to suggest our hero to join them. With a smile on his face, Gene Hack said that if he joined, he would be given a deposit. Our hero began to smile and agree to those words, only asking for the amount. When they were about to shake hands, our hero decided to ask him one last question, did he think he could defeat him with bare strength alone? And John Hen with a smile on his face with a look on his face started to say that of course he could. And at the same moment he began to activate the hand of the giant of the fifth level, because with this skill he thought that he would be able to defeat his opponent, who stood opposite him. But our hero started to activate Anubis judgment, and the strength of his opponent immediately dropped by 50%. That guy started to realize that he couldn't fully handle his strength, and after a moment he started to kneel down. Our hero continued to squeeze his arm even harder, telling him that it was holding up well and he should recognize it, and started asking him that he seemed to be confident in his strength, and if he wasn't ashamed of squirming in pain like that, and where was his pride, and as soon as Gene Heck squeezed his hand even harder, that guy started yelling for him to stop. After all, if he keeps squeezing his hand so hard, he'll turn out to be a slasher, but our hero didn't like his last words, and he with all his might hit him in the stomach, from which he began to fly several meters, and as soon as Gene Heck saw that he fell and did not move, began to tell him, clenching his fist, that they are certainly not colleagues, and do not need to do what he wants, just to make friends, but events didn't end there, and our hero saw something start to land on the sparring ground. He immediately activated his eye of truth, and it was the head of the guild, who came down behind his subordinate and started yelling towards our hero, how dare he beat up Khan, after all he had put so much effort into this day. Our hero began to see the terms of the buy that the notification system provided, and it said that he must break Hong Dok's ego. If he successfully completed the task, he would be able to copy the blood rage energy ability. The hero started to say about the head that he realizes that he is evil, but one could be more restrained. However, the guild head started to get even angrier and said why on earth should he restrain himself? Gene Hack began to reply to him that he had no plans to defeat the guild master just yet. After saying that, the guild master became even angrier and was already ready to attack. As soon as he jumped into the air, he began to activate his blood rage energy ability and told our hero that they thought it was possible to overpower him, but at the same moment, Gene Hack activated his daylight skill and a bright beam of light began to shine straight at the guild master. The spectators who were watching this couldn't understand what was happening. After all, they couldn't see anything. And at that very second, our hero started to pull out his blade. As soon as he activated his power surge skill, he was given 99 points as the level difference began to shrink by 
The guild master began to realize that even his energy was reflected and thought about how it was impossible. After all, on the raid of the second floor boss, in the Divine Warrior raid, he was the leader of the vanguard. How could a mere F-level player consider himself his opponent? After all, it was ridiculous, and as soon as they clashed in a serious battle, someone started shouting for them to stop, and right after that, he activated his level 4 Arbiter skill and said that in a tournament watched by the entire population, they should show themselves trustworthy. After all, they were all awakened. That was head Han San Jin, and Jin Hayak, looking at him, began to realize that this was the head of the Association of All the Awakened in Korea and the leader of the Awakened Association, Han Sang Jin. The guildmaster started complaining to the head, saying that he had arrived on time, and then pointed his finger at our hero and said that this guy had turned into a wimp after meeting a player from their guild. However, the head of the association walked past him with words to calm down, because this wasn't a show, but a tournament, and of course you could get injured here. As soon as the association head walked over, he started saying that he was happy to meet player Jean Hayak and introduced himself that his name was Han Sang Jean and he was the chairman of the Awakened Association. To be honest, until 20 minutes ago, he didn't know anything. But the director in charge of the tournament, Director Park, had urgently contacted him and told him that he needed to come as soon as possible, because something incredible was happening on stage and there were many inconsistencies. So he rechecked the test results and started telling our hero that it turns out that he had influenced the examiner. Immediately after saying this, the chairman of the association started bowing and saying that he welcomed and congratulated him on receiving the 16th S rank in Korea. The association had mistakenly given him the wrong rank and they apologized, taking full responsibility. And as soon as the reporters and spectators heard about this player and the fact that he is S rank, they kind of griped and started running towards our player, urging the others to call out to those who are now in the conference room. And the head of the Dark Luck Association looked at all of this as the reporters started running towards that guy, and he didn't understand what was going on. After all, this tournament was supposed to be the stage for the Dark Fortune Guild. But that guy had simply trampled on them, and he decided that he had to take control of the situation. He started shouting towards the reporters, taking one by the arm, and started saying that he had to report that their guild was planning an attack on the third floor boss. But the reporter threw off his jacket to free himself from the guild leader's hand, and as he ran away, he started saying that next time, sometime later, let him contact him. And after saying that, the guild leader stood there as if he was a down camel. I don't understand anything, and at the same time, our hero was basking in the glory. After all, all the reporters were chained to him and started taking pictures of him. And as soon as the guild leader turned around and left, for our hero, the notification system showed that all the conditions had been met, and he was able to obtain a unique ability blood rage energy. And a little while later, all the news and social networks began to discuss the fact that there was a new strongest player, and such a reaction of the public pleased our hero. He recalled that the chairman of the association began to say that he had heard that he was going to Las Vegas, and as an apology they could provide him with a plane. The next day, sitting on the plane, our hero understood why everyone wanted such a high ranking, because the attitude was drastically different. When he saw a woman start to come up to him and apologize for bothering him, he immediately afterwards got his delicious breakfast which she put on his table. And so, as soon as he started eating this delicious food, Alice started telling him to pay attention to that guy who was talking to the stewardess. She noticed that there was a weird odor coming from him, and he had a foul smell of blood. She doesn't even want to taste him, but our hero didn't understand why she was complaining. But Alice kept insisting that this is no joke, and that guy is not an easy man. After saying that, Jean Hack had a thought. After all, if Alice, who thinks people are bags of blood, says such a thing, then there really is something about him. And he began to activate his skill, the Eye of Truth. He couldn't believe what he saw. After all, the conditions for cupping were that depending on the degree of closeness of the subject, one of the skills could be copied. However, to maximize the degree of closeness, he would need to join the main association. And Jean Hack couldn't imagine that that guy was one of the mains. With a nonchalant face, he walks right in front of him, and it was quite hard to believe. But this is the moment, as that guy started passing by our hero and paid attention to him, he started asking casually if he was a player named Jean Hack, and the fact that he was ranked S in Korea. But our hero realized that it was not a mere coincidence, that he had gotten on that plane on purpose. And it comes out that after the news of receiving a high rank, it's not only the big guilds that are interested in him. And the hero started to reply that he had recently gotten a high rank.
The guy started to say that he had seen him at a tournament recently and was surprised, but suddenly he started apologizing and saying that he had lost his manners somewhere. He pulled a business card out of his pocket and introduced himself that his name was Alex Jadro. He then proceeded to say that it was fate to meet and whether the hero would like to have a drink with him. After all, in a long journey, nothing helps to pass the time like alcohol. And Gene Hack decided to play along and replied that he was right about that. That guy took out an expensive cognac and began to talk about himself, how his cosmetics business was progressing and what difficulties he had experienced with the appearance of the Tower of Suffering. But Gene Hack realized that he knew it was a smiling and telling from his teeth story about himself. It was just a ploy from Maine, for our hero knew who he was. Alex started to say that in truth he didn't come to Korea because of the cosmetics business, but he wanted to expand his business and do business with the Awakened Ones. But our hero didn't understand why he wanted to associate his business with the Awakened Ones. So Alex replied that he wanted to keep up with the times, but he had a problem. He started to say if Gene Heck had heard about the masked player and Gene Heck told him that he kind of saw him suggest attacking the third floor boss and asked if Alex had anything to do with him. And Alex replied that they wanted to participate in the third floor boss raid too, but he got in their way and an unpleasant situation arose. Even though he said it was for the protection of his comrades, but he turned them down with the words that he had some things to do alone so they wouldn't get in the way. Gene Heck asked Alex that he seemed to know the unknown man personally himself, and Alex said that you could say that, but Gene Heck realized that he was just sitting there lying with that calm face. He continued to play along with him and started asking him what John Doe was. Greedy, however, and Alex replied that that's right, he's overly greedy, and so if he goes with them to the third floor to the boss's room, it would be a big help. Gene Heck started to reply to him that John Doe had said he would fight alone, and Alex started to reply that since rank S is given discretion, no one would hurt him, and thus Alex. And in addition, they will be able to get items from the third floor. Gene Hack thought about the fact that even the major guilds allowed John Doe to go through the floor alone. They would be blocking the entrance to the boss room, and Alex wants to get there through him. Isn't their request too serious? The hero started to ask Alex, after all he just got a high rank and they already want him to go against the decisions of the big guilds. But Alex started to answer that he is a businessman, and if he asks a lot, he offers a lot. And he started to show something strange in his hand and asked if he had heard of it. Even if you get an incurable disease, even if your heart stops, there was a medicine that could cure it. It was an elixir that could handle any disease. And Gene Hack wondered what the Magician Association had accomplished that they were able to get their hands on this rarest of things. For it interested him and Alex started to say that this elixir is wanted by many and he will give him an advance if he signs this contract. Alex started to activate the contract with the dead man and said that this opportunity is very rare. But our hero, looking at this contract, calmly began to see that from the looks of it, it is an ordinary contract. But if you do not fulfill the terms of the contract, the curse will come, and with it, death. But if you don't sign, you don't have to worry. Gene Hack starts telling Alex that he can't sign it, and he's very judicious, and going up against the big guilds is a bit dangerous. Alex's face changed and he started to say that it seems like it's not enough. It was a pity that he was relying on Gene Hexan. At the same moment, he started to reach his hand over and take the elixir, saying that he could forget about the elixir, but our hero wasn't going to give it back, and Alex didn't realize what he was doing. But Gene Heck was sensible and also still greedy, and he is bound to get what he wants. Well, Alex started to get angry, because he thought it was some kind of nonsense. Gene Huke was greedy and could always get what he wanted, but Alex thought that was nonsense. And at that very moment, the plane started shaking. Alex began to wonder what he was going to do with so much mana, and he soon realized that he wanted to cause the plane to crash. At that very moment, the airplane's pilot in command started telling all the passengers who were on board that their plane had encountered sudden turbulence and all passengers should take their seats and fasten their seatbelts. Gene Hyuk started to tell Alex that if he heard the warning, he should return to his seat. But Alex began to tell our hero in a rude tone that he knew from the beginning what he belonged to. To this, Gene Hyuk replied that he had guessed and that he was playing his role well. However, Alex started shouting that he didn't advise him to annoy them, because the unknown would make him pay the appropriate price for this situation. Gene Hyuk turned around and said that he was being ridiculous. After all, it's a lie, and he was kicked out of the Olympus meeting. He said he was on the same side as the unknown. After these words, Ola could not understand who this guy was and how he knew all this. 
he couldn't possibly be familiar with the masked man. And he started thinking that it could be a bluff. After all, the big guilds could have shared information with him after he was given a higher rank. As Jean Hayak walked away, holding a bottle of potion in his hands, he began to say that if he behaved well, he might share information about the masked man. But this is for later. And as soon as the plane landed, our hero saw luxurious and very bright places around the area. A little later, Jean Hyuk went with Alice. She began to ask him if this city really belonged to humans, because she really liked it here. Jean Hayak replied that she should be quiet, otherwise he would have to send her away. But he was grateful to her because she had helped him find Maine. In gratitude for this, he let her out using his current mana, limited to 1.50m. At the same moment, our hero began to call upon the memories of the world. With this, he merged the Eye of Truth with the energy of Blood Rage. As soon as the merger was successful, he gained a new skill, Greedy Gaze. It was an improved version of the Eye of Truth skill. In addition to being able to view the status of any player and even disassemble hidden spells, this skill also allowed for vision sharing and mind reading. Due to the peculiarities of the Blood Devil's energy, the owner's personality could change if the skill was used frequently. Sight division and mind reading could only be applied to lower level players. But Jean Hayak wanted to combine this skill with a safer spiritual skill. He needed to do this urgently, but there was nothing he could do about it, and his thoughts were interrupted by words that said she wanted to go elsewhere. As soon as he looked up, he saw that she wanted to go to the casino. He told her that he didn't agree and they would go somewhere else. After all, they hadn't come here for fun, because in his lavish casinos it was forbidden to use skills. While it would be possible to take the money by force only to spend it at the auction, it is not possible to take the earnings of ordinary people, including Alice. She began to ask where they would go, and Jean Hyuk began to answer her smilingly that this place was nothing like a regular casino. It was a private and cozy house in the mountains, but Alice did not like this building. The previous ones were more to her taste, colorful. Jean Hayak repeated to her once again that they were not here for fun. At the same moment, they noticed the guy start telling the other guy that he had seen someone use skills with his own eyes and trick him. The other guy didn't want to hear it, so he kicked him hard in the face. He started to say that he had used the skills himself, and now he wanted to imagine things differently. At this point, Alice and Jean Hayak started talking. I decided to say first that those who are deceived like this are complete fools. Jean Hyuk agreed with her words. As soon as they went inside, Alice saw a lot of interesting things and started asking Jean Hyuk what made this place different from the others. He explained that it was a casino where magic could be used. Then he picked her up and sat her down at the bar. He told the bartender that he was paying all the expenses and she would be served any drinks she wanted to try. She didn't like that because she hadn't been out for a long time but he made her sit down and started telling her what he was going to do in private. When Jean Hyuk drank the drink the bartender gave him, he started to say that he came here to make extra money. The hero began to approach one of the tables, where one dealer began to use the blocking skill. The main player targeted by this skill is not affected by other skills, and the skills applied to the target remain in effect. A dealer named Pedro dealt cards to all the participants, and when Jean Hyuk looked at his cards, he realized that this dealer had a good hand. Because of this, he had already lost $500,000. It was dangerous to lose more, and he decided that this time he would win. After all, he knew that this time he could win. As soon as he saw the big amount, our hero decided to bet all in, as there was about $5 million on the table. All the spectators standing behind the money started to wonder why he decided to bet such a large sum. Our hero was confident in himself, as he was sure that everything would be fine despite the large amount of the bet. But as soon as he picked up his glass, he saw that it was a bit dirty, and he started to wonder which guild controlled the place. The dealer replied that the janitorial guild invests and controls. But as soon as the dealer started thinking about the fact that he had been silent all along, and the other guy started asking questions about whether it was even possible to ask so many questions, at the same moment the dealer realized that the player playing with him could read minds with his skills. And at the same moment, the dealer began to reveal the cards, because he knew that it didn't matter. After all, if he changes the cards at the moment they are revealed, he will not be able to do anything. So the dealer began to use his sleight of hand, switched the cards on his own, but he failed. After all, he saw that there was the same pair of coats, and he didn't understand how it happened. After all, he used the skill and switched the cards, and it was impossible. Our hero was happy to have two kings in his hands, 
and it was a great relief for him. After all, he won and began to thank the dealer for giving him a pair of kings. With the help of his greedy gay skill, our hero was able to read the dealer's thoughts, and for him, this ability was quite good. And as soon as our hero started to take the chips he won, someone from behind started running up to him and telling him to wait. And as soon as they ran up, a man started saying that he didn't know what skills he used to get such a win. But he would have to follow him, and Jean Hyuk didn't like that, because they don't treat visitors well. But one of the men started to say that they don't call visitors those who take away such a prize, and he started to shout to his friends to take him to the room. And as soon as he turned around, he saw that he was being run over by the big bullock that had come with him. When he turned back around, he saw our hero, who was annoyed that he had started talking. He heard these words and remembered something he had heard at the entrance. It said that those whom he was beating were complete fools. And now he would break the faces of those guys who came to take his money, which he had won in an honest way. At the same moment one of the guards shot at our hero, but the shot was a miss, for our hero dodged and jumped aside in time. Immediately afterward, he attacked the one who had shot him and nailed him to the earth with one blow. The other players who were watching this battle were happy to see this, because finally someone was able to put these guards in their place. Alice, who was sitting behind the bar, began to ask the bartender, what's the name of that drink she just had? The barmaid replied that it was a cocktail called Kiss of Fire and it expressed the budding love between lovers. But Alice somehow didn't like the name of it and thought it was some kind of nonsense. Jean Hack kept beating up those guys, and one of them started yelling to his subordinate, when is the management coming? And he replied that the guild would be here in about 30 minutes. At that same moment, that guy realized that something had gone wrong, and even though they were now in a criminal area, and even here it's hard to find such an unstoppable fighter. One of the security guards started showing the manager a phone and saying that they had a problem and the manager needed to see this right away. And as soon as he picked up the phone, he saw the pictures and realized that this person had recently received an S-rank in Korea. Immediately after that, he became nervous, because he realized that there were even about 20 or so top-ranked players in America, and now one of them was right in front of him. If he continued to ruin everything here, he would just destroy the casino. Immediately, the manager started yelling for everyone to stop. He started to take off his jacket and kneel down, telling our hero something that he apologizes for not recognizing him and acting so uncontactable. Gene Heck would have to apologize to them this time, but Gene Heck didn't understand why he suddenly decided to apologize, or if he realized he was wasting his time contacting him when he recognized him earlier. But the manager didn't mean it, and Gene Heck replied to him that it was absolutely true, after all, wasn't it originally the case that the one who gets beaten is the fool? And he made a bet, won the average amount, but they intervened, and therefore also caused moral hazard. So all things considered, $10 million dollars would be enough for him, or the manager would have to close his establishment. A little later, when everything has already calmed down, Gene Heck stands on the street and sees that $10 million dollars came to his account. He realized that this amount would be enough to buy the right item at the auction. Soon it should be their turn. But at the same moment some car started approaching him. And as soon as he stopped, the driver, who had rolled down his window, began to ask, are you guest number 117? Gene Hack replied that that was correct, and the driver began to say that he would take him to the auction room. And as soon as he got in the car and started driving, in the back seat he began to wonder about the fact that it was impossible to see where he was going. After all, all the windows were tinted, and from the outside it meant that the auction venue was being hidden. He was full of anticipation, and soon they finally reached the auction venue. The driver wished our hero a good time and started to drive away. And as soon as the driver pulled away, Alice started to ask Gene Heck if he had forgotten his promise, but Gene Heck started to tell her to wait. After all, he was purposely leading them to an inconspicuous place, and she should not be cranky. A little while later, as they continued to drive further and further away, Jean Heck started to ask if she liked the place they had come to. Alice replied that she liked everything, for it was a place fit for a noble like herself. And as soon as they started walking towards the door, Alice started asking if they were going straight to the auction now. Jean Heck answered her that it was about time, for they were already late, and she should try not to attract attention. After all, there would be too many eyes here. Once they got inside, our hero heard a conversation where one of the guys was telling the girl that he's been here 175 times, and every year he participates. But this time he is more worried than usual, and whether there will be items related to the tower here. After all, according to rumors, this auction will feature an ichthosaurus heart. This is all thanks to the appearance of the tower and magical energy.
Many lost ancient jewels will be revived again, and he is all in anticipation, even if he won't be able to acquire at least a look at them. At the same moment, Alice began to feel some kind of malaise and covered her nose with her hand. But our hero did not realize what was going on. All this was because of that man, who began to tell our hero that he was glad to meet and began to introduce himself, that his name was Zadrik. And started asking Gene Hack that he had probably already guessed that he was the teacher of that worthless fool he had met on the airplane. And our hero began to speculate about the fact that that guy even brought his teacher, but apparently he got a good smackdown. After all, he returned without results and elixir, and Gene Heck began to use his skill, greedy look. And as soon as the skill worked, our hero saw a notification window from a guy whose name was Cedric. And by doing so, he was able to see the skills of the guy who had the executioner's wall ability and the commander's order. Gene Heck began to think about what he had envisioned, the guy's necromancy ability was awesome, and his skills were a perfect match. With minimal mana expenditure, he can use a lot of magic. That's why everyone wants to get their hands on this skill. Soon, another notification window appeared that showed the copying conditions. Cedric was very angry about his student's failure. Learn dark magic from him and get an A grade. Then you can copy the ability or skill. But these copying conditions didn't suit our hero, and he didn't understand what they were. After all, the system seemed to have clearly gone crazy. And as soon as Gene Hack approached Cedric, he began to say that he had gotten a rare item thanks to his apprentice, and the flight was interesting. To which Cedric replied that praise the heavens if that's the case, and he had come specifically to recorrect the information he had about that unknown masked man. This is a big problem for them, and Gene Heck, realizing that this old man is straightforward, started to say that they are in such a beautiful place now, and it should be discussed another time. But suddenly Cedric stopped our hero with his staff and started to say that he is sorry, but there will be no other time because he needs to deal with the unknown masked man as soon as possible. But Jean Hayok didn't like his tone, and with her hand she pushed his staff away, and began to say that he seemed to have missed the point where it became his concern. He started to walk away, and Cedric's students started to get angry about it. But the teacher stopped him and said that there would still be ways to deal with him. And as soon as our hero and Alice got a little farther away, Alice started to say that these stinky people are so annoying and maybe she should get rid of them. But Jean Hack started telling her to leave them alone, because it's not worth making a fuss here, and it's better that it doesn't, because he just came here to buy the items he needed, that's all. And as soon as they approached the main stage, they saw that the announcement of the start of the auction had begun. Gene Hack decided to go and sit in his seat to hear everything in detail, and the man on stage started to say that they were finally starting the 175th black market auction, and the first item would be a meteorite that fell on Arizona in the United States, and it has been emitting strong magic ever since the Tower of Trials appeared. This item starts at $100,000. As soon as it started, our hero saw that some people started raising their signs and wanted to buy this meteorite already for $200,000. But he knew that at the moment there was no craftsman who could process the meteorite, meaning there was no way to use this item right now. And this was an opportunity to buy it cheaper. He held up his sign and asked for $300,000 for the meteorite. And after that, Gene Heck relaxed because he realized that he had gotten the meteorite for pennies. But at that moment, someone from the back rows raised his plaque and said that he was willing to pay $1 million, and our hero was surprised by this. But as soon as he looked up, he saw that old man with his student. And immediately thereafter, the bidding began. The second lot was a sealed catalog of all the hospitals for $100,000. Everyone began to raise their license plates and said they were ready to give $200,000 and even $250,000. Our hero raised his license plate and said he was ready to buy it for 300,000. But Cedric raised his number again and said he was ready to buy for 1 million dollars. All the other buyers were shocked to hear such an offer from that guy again was unbelievable. They couldn't believe that he immediately raised the price three times. The lot was sold to an elderly gentleman named Gene Heck for 1 million dollars. Gene Heck, who was sitting upstairs, began to realize that this guy wanted to buy the whole thing out. He had his eye on him and began to contemplate how he could outsmart him, conceiving a plan of his own. And the man on the stage began to talk about the next year, which was found in South America. It was a relic of the Mayan civilization. As soon as Gene Hack got up he asked 50,000 for it and Alice started asking that he didn't even finish the description and decided to buy it. I'm not being unreasonable either, but she didn't even realize that Gene Hack had a plan. 
So Cedric raised his sign again and asked for one million our hero was not stopped by his actions and Cedric raised his sign again saying three million and he was taking it. And as soon as Jean Heck lowered his plaque, that lot was sold for three million to an elderly gentleman. And once the lot was presented, the plates were raised by only two people who haggled amongst themselves, and eventually a few artifacts were sold to Cedric and the man on stage. A speech began about how the next year was also great, for when Columbus discovered the new world, a magical book appeared, and Cedric's apprentice began to tell his teacher that he might as well back off already. However, Cedric slapped him in the face with his license plate and started saying that he's a complete fool and can't let that cocky guy get what he came here for. They don't want to suffer a loss as they have enough money and they should get everything that guy is aiming for. They blame it all on an unknown masked man. And the man on stage started talking about next year for the real connoisseurs. He began to introduce the first chessboard, and some people in the room began to whisper that it was a trinket. They decided to save their money for next year, which was the heart of their tesaurus. After all, they didn't understand who would give up such a board, since it didn't even have any figures on it. And at the same moment Alice noticed that our hero began to raise the plate and said that he was ready to take it for $50,000. But Cedric raised his plate and said the bid was raised for 100,000. They subsequently started raising their bids higher and higher, from 150 and the price went to the 8 million that Cedric requested. The other players started to think that there might probably be something they don't know about. After all, that sick person is purchasing some dim item for 8 million. Gene Hack started to get nervous, picked up his plaque and said that he was giving 10 million dollars for it. And at the same moment, Cedric started smiling. And he jumped up from his seat shouting that he would pay 30 million dollars for the board. For he realized that 10 million dollars was our hero's limit. And he finally found what he really wanted and started yelling that if he wanted to get his hands on this thing, he would have to go on his terms. At that very second, Gene Heck took his head, for he didn't understand where he got so much money from. After all, he had already spent a lot, so how much did he have left? What had happened here was contrary to his expectations and he began to think that he needed a new plan. And just as the man on stage began to say that number 56, the first chessboard was being purchased by an elderly gentleman for $30 million. At that moment Alice began to say that she would pay $100 million for that board. Cedric couldn't believe his ears. How could anyone pay such a large amount of money for an ordinary board? And who is that little girl sitting next to Jean Hayek that made Cedric nervous? After all, he's already spent over 10 million on all sorts of garbage. If he stopped, it would be a total defeat. He started shouting that he was willing to give 110 million. But at that moment Alice interrupted him and said that she was ready to pay 200 million dollars. But Cedric didn't like that and started telling her not to cross the line. After all, who could believe she had 200 million dollar dollars? The man on stage started saying in her direction that it's not that they don't trust her and started asking if she could provide a statement of her account balance. And then Alice started conjuring a portal behind her back from which a lot of jewelry and gold items started falling out. As soon as the staff started checking all those treasures that fell out of her portal, the man who checked the crown started saying that it was worth over $500 million and Cedric couldn't believe his eyes that this little girl might be an unusual person, but more dangerous than this Jean Heck girl who keeps this mysterious girl near him. He began to guess that he might have an adversary who would be a problem unbeknownst to him. And as soon as the situation changed, Sadrick turned to Jan, telling his apprentice to go to plan B. The apprentice began to approach with a goofy grin and said that he had finally waited for those words. And at the same time, our hero was approaching that board he bought and the man who was standing on the stage started to say that he congratulated and they were ready to hand him his first chessboard. But Gene Heck, of course, is grateful. But it's a little over the top. And Alice replied to him that she didn't care, she was already planning to take this junk apart, and more importantly, she couldn't stand to see these fools looking down on his contractor. And after saying that, Jean Heck realized that this little girl had a way with words worthy of praise. But suddenly, there was a loud explosion behind our hero, and the entire room began to collapse. All the players started to get out of the room, which was collapsing. They were running away with all their legs to escape as quickly as possible. If they stayed here for even one minute, they would all die. But out of nowhere, Cedric's apprentice appeared, and using his sword, he cut through several people who were trying to escape. He started to say that they were just victims he needed as raw material. 
Alex started to use his skill of melting magic, and at the same moment the people he wounded started to have a very bad headache, because of which they couldn't move from the place. Our hero who was standing nearby saw all of this and started saying that he was out of line, a freaking psychopath. And at the same second Alex started to pull souls from those people who fell on the ground, and afterwards huge red monsters started to appear, which obeyed Alex, because it was his ability. But for our hero it turned out to be some kind of abomination, and Alex did not like these words. How can it be an abomination? Alex said. Look at them, they are beautiful. And as soon as Alex turned his head, he was surprised that our hero could stand on his feet even in front of such a strong influence. And he remembers very well how he insulted him in the airplane, and after the order of elimination he no longer needs to hold back. And at the same moment, the monsters that Alex summoned started running towards Gene Heck and attacking him. And as soon as one of them approached and hit Gene Heck, he was able to jump aside, thus dodging the blow. Alex, who was standing nearby, noticed that our hero was nimble, and started asking where that little bratty rich girl and Jean Heck had run off to. He realized that she didn't like those nasty guys, so she ran away a long time ago and her body disembodied as she would need all the magical energy and the damage would gradually accumulate. The player realized that there was no time to stand still and wait now, as the huge monsters were already closing in on him and he needed to finish the fight as soon as possible. At that very second, he activated his graveyard ball skill and was able to cut those big monsters. But as soon as Gene Heck got close to Alex, he disappeared and then appeared behind him. And as soon as he appeared, he started saying that he was excited that he couldn't even keep up with Gene Heck's speed. But he was pleased that the amount of resources was more than expected. After all, these people were all his puppets that were lying on the ground, and with their souls, he was able to summon more and more terrifying monsters. Gene Heck watched as more and more monsters appeared, and he began to guess that Alex wanted to prolong the battle and exhaust him. These monsters fed off the strength of these people and stayed in formation while the enemy ran out of mana. It's their standard tactic, it's how necromancers fight. Well, he bounced to Gene Heck's side and began to realize what trump cards Alex had. Deciding to burn the monsters before they recovered, he began to use his daylight skill. Bright beams began to shine directly into Alex's eyes, but Alex knew about this skill, and he had already analyzed it by watching videos from the tournament. He knew to attack before the beams of light combined. But suddenly Alex started to notice that something was wrong with this technique, and he couldn't understand why the rays of light weren't moving, and why his monster's feet were frozen, but Alex realized that Gene Hack had unlocked the ice skill with a flash so he wouldn't see it. At the same moment, our hero used a terrifying technique that illuminated the entire house they were in. Eventually Alex fell to the ground and couldn't move. And as soon as he raised his head, he saw the impossible, his monsters were burned to the ground, and behind him was Gene Heck, who started to say that his cutie was a bit blown away. And as soon as he turned around, Gene Heck inflicted ice damage on him with his hands. After the dangerous blow, Alex started to turn around and run away, for he realized that he had lost. Although he had a huge advantage, he realized that he had to run away and find his teacher. But at that very moment, the blade was already in Alex's back, causing him to fall to the ground. As soon as he turned his head, he saw Gene Heck who threw his blade at him. Soon after, Gene Heck started approaching Alex and saying that he was the one who created this chaos. He was now planning to escape and began telling Alex how he was going to die. In the next half hour, blood will build up in his lungs and when they fill with blood, he will begin to suffocate. Death by fire would probably come first, but the agony would be no less intense. Still, he could make sure Alex didn't suffer that long. After all, if he told about his associations with Maine, who would be able to survive with the elixir? And Alex started to say something, but nothing worked, because he was choking. So he decided to write something about Maine on Earth. But at the same moment Gene Heck's foot stepped on his arm, and he started to say that if he didn't want to report anything to him, there was nothing he could do. I, Alex, realized that he wasn't going to listen to her from the beginning, and I was going to leave. Gene Heck pulled the business card he'd given him on the plane out of his pocket and started to say that he didn't need it now and he could take it back, and also do him the favor of dying as long and painfully as possible. But after stepping a couple steps away, our hero noticed something interesting lying under his feet, and there was a safe created by Michelangelo and an ichthysaur heart. Our hero realized that with this combination, he could create a subspace for objects. He began to combine the safe created by Michelangelo and the heart of the Ichthosaurus, 
and was able to successfully create a huge inventory space that gave him plus 5,000 kilograms. But suddenly his joy was interrupted by the gratitude that came from the man who was standing at his back. He started to tell him that he had saved them and also saved the son of the visionary, but Gene Heck thought about the fact that he just needed those items and now he would have to pay for them because the host saw that he had taken them and started to tell the host that he wasn't taking them for nothing. But the presenter replied that it was okay and he saw him before he passed out. He had saved their lives, including his only son, and he had no intention of denouncing him. And Gene Heck turned around and started to walk away after seeing how he was able to save the leading his son. He had a kind of strange feeling, after all, the fact that he was saving someone was the first time for him, and such a feeling was something he enjoyed very much. At this time, on the third floor of the Tower of Trials in the Cathedral of Hate, the girl began to enter a room that had a lot of traps. Because of this, she was very nervous, for they annoyed her a lot. And she couldn't understand why they put so many defenses here. They have to go through it every time. But her partner started telling her to stop complaining. After all, he was already in a bad mood because of an idiot named Alex. These words made the girl even angrier and she started to turn her head and pulled out her dagger, which she pointed at her partner. After that she started to say that she shouldn't worry about his mood, but suddenly some third character appeared and started telling all three of them to stop fighting. The hooded man with the weird mask was saying that he couldn't even believe they had survived together for over 10 years. And why were they like cat and dog all the time? As soon as they sat down, he started saying that the reason he called them is because there is a new character that needs special attention. That person is Gene Hayak. The girl immediately began to reply that Gene Hack had probably played this game before too, but that didn't mean he was stronger than the other rankers. As soon as she finished speaking, the hooded man began to tell her to be vigilant, for it was possible that he had already risen above them. The girl replied to him that those who had climbed a floor higher were considered cool, but she didn't think he was able to climb higher. The partner who was sitting next to him replied that he thought she was worrying for nothing. Using the unpopular virtual reality, they chose this ordeal to hide from the surveillance of the international police. Therefore, they are very familiar with this tower. The partner sitting next to him fully supported him. There was no pressing reason for others to get involved, but perhaps he was playing this heartless game out of pure idleness. Only a person sick in the head would keep going through this game. The man standing near them with a hooded mask on his head began to ponder the fact that they weren't taking his words seriously. But it pleased him that they at least understood each other. Still, he knew that Gene Heck could not be underestimated, and the threat needed to be eliminated. With a clap of his hands, he began to disappear, uttering, those of you sitting in the pew should follow Cedric and help him to avoid a fiasco this time. And as soon as that mysterious figure began to disappear, the two turned around and wove their way away. The girl said at parting that he was a very troublesome old man. At this time, Gene Heck's friends were practicing at their house, and the girl kicked her partner in the head with full force, causing him to fall to the ground. His helmet came off and started flying off to the side. As soon as he fell, the girl started asking if he was okay. He raised his hand and showed her with his thumb that he was fine. A little later, when they had already cleaned up and got out of the shower, the guy started calling for Nuna to come over to him and look at the video he had just turned on. And as soon as she walked over, he started saying that he was watching the guy in the mask and he didn't think he was that easy, but the girl took her head to the side, because she wanted to reach for the remote to turn on the TV, and started saying that he might just be bluffing like the other guys who were sitting near her. One guy who was sitting next to her started saying that it was possible, but there was something special about him. That spot in the video was very popular. The girl realized it was the temple of the tree of man in the third floor boss room. And if you answered the three questions of the tree of man, he would give skill items as a reward. But the problem was the complexity of the questions the tree asks, and the video showed our hero standing near the tree. And the comments under the video talked about how some viewers started posting that didn't the entrance to the third floor close because an unknown solo could get through. In some viewers at the beginning appeared a question, and they were wondering how to get there unnoticed. And at this time our hero was standing near that tree, and it began to tell him that it had not had any visitors for a long time, and he had come here to give him riddles. Gene Heck started telling it to give him the most interesting one, and the tree went on to say that if he answered three questions, it would give him a leaf of his choosing. However, if you get it wrong even once, it will punish him, and the tree began to ask the first question, what is the optimal depth and temperature for Kelgarnov to live in seawater? The guys who were at home watching the live broadcast couldn't understand this question, and who would even be able to answer it. 
The girl, who also did not understand who could know such a strange question, but she is a hero, started to speak and the tree said that the answer is simple, after all, the depth is 175 meters and the temperature is 1.5 degrees Celsius. A guy and a girl were sitting by their TV watching a live broadcast. They couldn't believe their ears when Gene Heck started talking to a tree, asking it to ask the next question, but the tree answered him that he hadn't told him if that answer was right yet. But our hero was sure that the answer was correct and the tree should ask the next question. However, these words began to annoy the tree, which began to ask questions that were not easy. Next, the question was about the second way of using the sponge body in the phylum. Gene Hack began to answer that one must boil the salt of the sun desert and the holy water of a priest who had changed professions for five hours on a slow fire. After that, once the answer was correct, the guy and the girl couldn't understand what the words meant and why the masked guy was carrying this set of words. Then the tree asked the last question, the giant eagles from the heavenly plateau only mate once a year, when? To which the guy, hitting the red button, began to explain that the answer was simple, when the first snow falls in the tower. After hearing this answer, the tree laughed loudly and confirmed that the answer was correct and that he was the first one to answer all his questions. But our hero was also interested, he is always happy to talk about the tower. The live broadcast continued, and chaos reigned in the chat room. After all, most of the viewers couldn't figure out if what that guy was answering all the questions was real, and without even thinking about it. And so the tree began to say something, as he had promised, he would give him a leaf, which he would choose. But the choices were red, yellow, or green. Red was a fire modifier, and yellow was a defense enhancement. The guy sitting at home in front of the TV started to say that he knew, or rather heard, that green increases the speed of movement. But the girl sitting next to him also guessed something and started to say that there would be a long fight with the boss. And perhaps he would choose movement speed, because that's what she would choose. However, our hero turned to the tree and said that he didn't want those regular leaves, he wanted something else. As soon as he got close to the tree, he started telling it to give him the black leaf he was hiding. The tree could well understand how this guy didn't know about the black leaf. The girl and the guy in front of their TV couldn't understand what the black leaf was about either. A little while later, the tree started saying that he can't give him black leaves and offer him extra green leaves if he chooses red. After all, it would be more profitable than those useless black leaves. Gene Hack started to turn around saying that the great and honorable tree said that it would give him the leaf he wanted for correct answers. I mean, he's talking my teeth in. And at the same moment our hero's mood changed, and he began to say in a serious tone that this tree would not talk and give him the black leaves if he wanted to avoid being considered a dishonorable liar. The tree began to reply, what happens if the property managers find out about this? And at the same moment, the notification window showed that the Dwin had kept his word and Gene Heck was receiving his chosen reward. He received black leaves and when used on armor or weapons, a special decomposition effect is added. When attacked, it deals additional damage equal to 1% of maximum health and target. Every 3 minutes, the damage is dealt only to the enemy and does not affect the caster. Our hero was happy about this, for the last piece of the puzzle was complete and he was ready to start his game. But at the same moment the big wooden monsters began to attack him, and our hero, guessing, decided to deal with them right here and now, for he had been ready for this all his life. I you big monsters are no problem now, he thought, because he simply with one swing of his blade he would be able to chop them all to pieces. At the same time, in another place, there was one guard standing guarding the entrance to the third floor. One of the guards tapped his hand under the other's shoulder and began to say, Did you hear that the unknown masked man has already started rapping on the boss of the third floor? The other player replied that he started quickly and he didn't expect it to start so quickly and they could just sit this one out and then go home. Another of the guards started to say that there was no point in them defending the entrance, since only a crazy person would go to the third floor at this point. But they had no choice, because they were ordered to, so they must stand on the defense, just do their job and listen to those who tell them to do it. After all, as a non-guardian, I knew that they probably had a plan of action, if it was too fanciful, nothing would happen. Well, at that very moment, dark energy began to appear near them, and the guards turned their attention to the ones sitting next to them, they disappeared somewhere. And at the same moment dark energy began to appear near their feet, pulling them inside. And as soon as they were bound, a mysterious masked and hooded man appeared, beginning to tell them to let his power absorb and store their energy, for they needed everything. It was Cedric who was leading the group and heading towards the third floor portal. At this time, on the floor itself, our hero was fighting huge stone statues. 
With ease he maneuvered between them, his mobility was impressive. He broadcast his game live, recording the events so that everyone at home could see how he planned to get through the third floor alone. Some commentators started writing about getting goosebumps. After all, would he be able to successfully tackle the boss in the final room? Other viewers noticed that they started watching the broadcast as soon as it started. They were now interested in the mysterious masked man. Our hero didn't care whether the viewers believed him or not. After all, he had already had so many difficulties, and he did not want to be distracted by nervous comments anymore. Walking up to the camera that was recording everything that was happening on the third floor, he began to say, if you want to watch, watch. If you don't want to watch, you can leave. Many streamers encourage viewers to watch in order to increase the number of views. From the beginning, if you focus, you can do anything. Some viewers couldn't understand why he was nervous. Our hero knew that if he gave in to his emotions, a fandom would form of those who would enjoy that focus. And so it began. He progressed further and further, but suddenly he heard a loud sound coming from the moon not far from him. Immediately the thought occurred to him that there was someone else here besides him. From that moment, he began to complete his live broadcast. And as soon as the broadcast was completed, various third floor monsters began to appear near that large explosion and began to fight against the group of main who had just entered through the third floor gate. Here they had already performed their spell to quickly defeat all the monsters that were in front of them. And the huge army began to fight against each other, and all this was watched by our hero who stood on the slope. And he began to guess that the Mayans seemed to have appeared unexpectedly. But as soon as he looked closer, he realized that both sides were equal in strength. And once a few minutes of battle had passed, our hero began to notice that Main's faction was a bit stronger than the monsters. This was noticed by some of the sorcerers, who started telling each other that the blow was going to be directed at them. They needed to push a little more to complete the spell. At the same moment, ice projectiles started flying at the sorcerers, and they couldn't figure out where they were coming from. Soon they realized that it was a long-range attack from the enemy and they began to unfold their shields to cover themselves from such strong blows. But they still couldn't figure out where exactly the attack was coming from. And as soon as the smoke cleared, they started shouting to their fellow skeletons that he was alone and needed to be eliminated quickly in order to continue the attack. And as soon as the skeleton archers started firing their bows, and the arrows were already flying towards our hero, he started moving to the side to take cover from the enemy's arrows. And at the same moment he activated his heaven's protection skill, and the monsters that the faction had summoned started to get out of their control. Some mages began to realize that they couldn't control him through the holy skill, and decided to focus on mind control. However, this didn't help them, and a large summon mutant began crushing everyone, both outsiders and their own. As a result, they started scattering in different directions, and some of the mages started running away from there to report to their master as quickly as possible. Cedric saw everything, and our hero ran from side to side at this time, starting to come up with a plan. Four teams had been created to effectively control the undead, and one of them had already been destroyed. If the first one was destroyed, the network would break and the control would completely collapse. Just as he began to run further and further away, he noticed a huge stone monster standing in front of him. He began to attract its attention with his fire skill, for he knew that this big monster with its speed would not be able to catch him. The main battle statue started running right behind our hero, who was running towards one of the main squads with all his speed. Noticing that the huge statue along with an unknown, masked figure began to approach them, they began to panic and were already ready to stop them. But suddenly our hero was behind the back of two of the mages and began to tell them that they would not be able to stop him. At that moment a huge stone monster jumped into the air and flew towards a large group of enemies. As soon as it landed on the ground, there was a huge explosion that caused all the enemy statues and mages of the mines to fly in different directions. At the same moment, one of the mages began to tell his master that the first team had also been destroyed. If this continued, they would find themselves surrounded. But Cedric understood everything, because he stood at a distance and watched the whole situation, seeing everything happening with his own eyes. He started yelling about what kind of enemy they were facing, and every time this guy messed it up. And just as Cedric got completely pissed off and started using his pyramid keeper skill, the other mage behind him started telling his master that if he used this skill, there would be no mana left to attack the boss. But Cedric didn't care and ordered him to shut up, for he decided to concentrate all his power on destroying the unknown masked man. He began to summon huge beings called guardians. As soon as they appeared, Cedric got down on one knee, 
for he was a bit overworked, and told his ward to come closer. At the same moment he began to draw the life force out of him with his black magic. At that very second, all the life energy started to leave the guy. And thus he became stronger, and he started telling that guy to hold still. Because if he flounders, the pain will only get worse. Our hero, who was watching this, couldn't believe that he was absorbing his comrade's energy. And as soon as the energy ran out, Cedric began to say that he was back on track, and he had been waiting for this for a very long time. Now he was ready to start the fun. After these words, the necromancer's army began to move towards our hero, and Cedric began to say that it was the most powerful of his armies. Her mummy soldiers can freely use bandages as strong as steel, wield both defense and attack, and he couldn't be stronger than the undead. He should have held them back to fight the third floor boss, but he wanted to finish off Gene Heck right now. And this game was worth that kind of waste. Cedric was willing to give anything to kill the masked scum. Standing not far from the battle was a couple who had recently been to the castle and had been ordered to help Cedric in the battle against the unknown masked man. They stood and watched the battle, amazed that for the first time they had seen Cedric put forth his best effort to overpower one man. In addition, it began to catch their eyes that the masked man was behaving strangely, and the guy standing next to the girl said that the masked man's plan to destroy the base was certainly good. But to stay on the battlefield after that was at least foolish. He had clearly misjudged the balance of power and would pay for it. After seeing the skeletons, knights, and death, he probably thought he could handle it, but that was reckless. Cedric had a lot of problematic abilities. The guy decided that there was no point in interfering in this situation. However, the girl's attention was suddenly drawn to the mysterious masked man, and she couldn't understand what he was doing. Jean Heck, who had dodged the necromancer's attack, began to remember the old times and the experience he had when the man told him that his sword was strong and sharp. But he was getting very tense, and his mistake was dissipating his strength. He should have paid attention to the rope that was in his hand. After all, a true master is able to strike a good blow using a minimum of force. He should have imagined it moving freely, like the wind responsive and pliable, not constant. And at the right moment, he would release the energy of her movement, which would be able to do critical damage at a time when his life might hang in the balance. And just as that old man was finishing showing his technique, he began to ask Jean Hayak if he wanted to teach him the spiritual art of Sword Chohanamu. And at the same moment, our hero began to apply part of the spiritual art Sword Chohanamu skill, and at the same moment, the necromancer's energy began to be drawn into Jean Hack's spiritual energy. But that wasn't all, our hero still began to apply the spiritual sword art skill that was rapidly growing, higher and higher, and he began to become even stronger. The necromancer who was standing nearby couldn't understand what the point was and why the vortex of his spiritual art was so strong that it was attracting everything around him. At the same moment, Cedric began to see a terrifying power in front of him, which began to transform into a fifth dance, a type of sword in which was the destruction of the soul. All of his necromancer warriors began to die and chaos began to happen around him. Cedric didn't realize what to do, but suddenly he began to use his double counting skill. He hoped that he could escape from this terrifying attack that Jean Heck was using. Cedric couldn't understand how that mask scum was able to obtain such power. After all, it had only been a year and a half since the world had changed. But his thoughts were interrupted by our hero's attack, which destroyed the staff he held in his hand. And thus his double shield was also destroyed, and Cedric flew off to the side, began to realize that he should quickly run away, because he cannot win in this fight, and started shouting, to the rest who were lying on the ground, for at least someone to apprehend the unknown masked man. He began to order everyone, but no one responded, because most were unconscious. And as soon as our hero came closer to him, he began to say that the apple does not fall far from the tree, because he is just like his student, and at first boasts of the advantage. And when they realize that he can't win at once, he runs away. Though he's already learned that from his mentor. And suddenly the kindergarten began to change what he remembers, these words that he just heard, and began to guess that this mysterious masked man turns out to be that guy Gene Heck, who began to tell him to say hello to his student. And at the same moment, our hero started to apply his fire element skill and massacred Cedric. And while it was burning, Gene Heck started telling him to tell him that he was worried that he would be bored alone. So he sends his teacher straight to him, and as soon as Cedric died, the entire necromancer's village started disappearing and all the summoned monsters he had summoned started falling to the ground. The mages who were standing near them and could understand what was happening to the summoned ones soon began to guess that it was likely that their warlord Cedric had lost. 
The monsters that were still on this floor began to massacre the remnants of the MYN warriors, who had nowhere else to go and were all surrounded. Especially without their strongest player, they had nowhere to go. A bit later, when things had more or less calmed down, our hero began to move on towards the boss room. He began to realize that applying soul destruction on this level was not an easy task for him, and he might even be a bit overworked. But it was a good thing that he had purchased a mid-level mana recovery solution beforehand. He began to replenish his strength using the mana bottles. Suddenly, he saw that there was a shield on the ground that had flown off from the battlefield right here. That's when he remembered that he used to be fond of swords. Stepping with his left foot on the shield that flew into the air, he was able to catch it with his hand. But as soon as he raised his head, he saw in front of him. These were the guards of the Temple of the Lord of the Four Beginnings Temple, who were doing what they did to guard the entrance. To ensure that no outsiders could reach their third level lord, our hero, who was standing in front of them and looking down at them from earth, was ready to massacre them right here and now to finally finish this battle and defeat the third floor boss. The huge guards began to attack our hero, who began to defend himself with his sword and skillfully dodged their large swords. He initially knew that he could handle them, and as soon as they attacked him, by his count, he started telling them that he liked their silence. And at that very moment, he jumped up and started slicing them with his blade, and lastly told them to finally spit out their key already. After our hero defeated the guards, he was followed by the others who began to attack him. However, he managed to destroy them, and once he dealt with one of the guards, Jean Heck began to wonder if they had some kind of pattern. But suddenly, another guard appeared who had the key to the door in his hands. That guard started doing something strange, and as soon as he squeezed that key with his big hands, the notification window showed that the key leading to the main hall started to react. Our hero couldn't understand what even that could mean. And suddenly another notification window appeared, where the system began to show that the entity behind the gate had responded to the call. And then our hero began to realize that he had decided to act for sure. The guardian, who had started to do spells, began to summon his older brother. And at the same moment, the embodiment of Buddhism, the infinite state of all Buddhas, appeared. And the great many armed Buddha began to say that it had been a long time since the four great heavenly kings had called her. And she didn't think that there would be a person among the visitors who would make a threat enough to use the real key, at the bottom of which Jean Heck started to answer her that all it would do was just destroy. But it was amusing to the Buddha. And she began to say what an interesting man is standing in front of me, and she's not sure about the rest of it. But his bravery she recognizes, but Jean Hayak was not interested in hearing this, and he started telling her that she took it as a joke, and he wants to finish soon, because he is very tired. And Buddha replied to him that she would like to continue talking to him, but he was apparently not in the mood, and jumping up from his seat, Jean Heck told her to leave the statues alone. He was having such an amusement. And at the same moment, the large statue began to have a weapon in each hand, and she began to say that every moment in life is the greatest gift and he was too stupid not to recognize that, and could enjoy right now. If he could withstand her attacks, he would miss it. And that's why the moment. And as soon as the talking subsided, the large statue began to shoot out huge beams from its hands, which began to attack our hero. He was able to block one of them with his shield, but the impact was too strong, and he realized its immense power. When he was just blocking the blows, it felt like his body was crumbling, but he didn't know that he just had to be patient, for there would only be one chance to deliver the decisive blow. The statue standing at full height began to smile and said that he was able to resist the sonic attacks as well, and naturally it was becoming more and more interesting to continue this battle. Gene Heck began to activate his ice creation skill, and a huge block of ice began to appear in front of him, then flew towards the large statue. But she, using her hands, started to reflect everything that flew towards her, and after that, she was not happy that this kid started using western magic. However, all of a sudden, the shield that Jean Hayak had was flying towards her out of the smoke. She was able to catch it and retorted that he was foolish to try to attack her with such pathetic tricks. But suddenly, one of her hands started to light up with red flames, and as soon as she noticed it, she was angry that he was pulling his cheap tricks again. That blade he threw at her was useless, since she wasn't affected by the poison. Jean Heck stood there, realizing that it was called blood energy, if one wounded once, one could continuously deal damage. The statue answered him that it didn't matter, for such a trick wouldn't work on it twice, and it began to tear off one of its large arms and threw it to the ground, then began to ask our hero what he would do. After all, he had only taken one of her hands away. And as soon as that hand fell to the ground, Jean Hayok started walking over to her, stepped on it with his foot, and started saying that she was right. 
After all, this obviously won't be enough to deal with her, and he knows he won't be able to use the same method on her twice. He began to reach down to the sphere that was sealed in the palm of that hand, and once he got it out, he told her that he knew if she knew that he had gotten exactly what he needed. At that same moment, the large statue began to realize that this boy had been targeting her hand with the gem from the very beginning. And as soon as she lowered her gaze to the ground, she saw our hero begin to bring together the grimoire, the principality, and the gem. And a moment later, the golden dawn of Lemitan was created. The description of this book was as follows. This book is magic written by the great Solomon. It contains descriptions of 72 demons and allows you to unleash magical abilities to the limit. Demonic abilities are not fully manifested, which limits the maximum growth of abilities. That was enough for our hero, and he began to use them. And just as his gaze began to act, he saw the conditions of the test. Avalokiteshvara hated western magic to the point of being creepy. In the allotted time of 5 minutes, he must piss off his opponent using ice magic and create a beautiful statue for him. Appropriate music and attire are required to fulfill the conditions. And as soon as Gene Heck read the conditions, he couldn't believe it because it said, after all, if he got it right about the song and the statue, the system is getting more and more crazy. But he knew he could do it anyway. However, the statue that was looking at all of this couldn't understand what he was doing. So Gene Heck started to take out his playing instrument and said that although the conditions were strange, he couldn't give up. If we take the lower 25 floors, he can only get the mandala here. As soon as the music started playing, Jean Hayak started telling her not to ask anything from now on because he's not aware of what's going on either. And at the same moment, golden hair began to appear on his head. The big statue started to get even angrier and decided that he was going to make a joke in front of her here. The large statue began to activate its mandala skill, and at that very second, a huge and powerful weapon began to appear in its hands. And as soon as the weapon appeared, she began to swiftly step on our hero, screaming for him to feel the pain that follows a million samsaras. But Gene Heck was already prepared for this attack, and he began to activate the ice creation with his book. A large block appeared right in front of him and began to serve as a shield. And once he successfully blocked its attack, he began to realize that when you pump ice creation, the result was just fine. Because of this, the large statue began to get even angrier. At the same time, there were two people watching this fight, a guy and a girl who had watched the previous battles. They were looking at all of this and couldn't believe their eyes. That guy with the big statue had turned on the music, and they could hardly believe that his magic had reached such a high level to overcome it. They wondered if he was sick or a genius. But the girl began to stare at Jean Hayak and wondered, is that a wig on his head, or is that his real hair? After all, it looks like the kind that sells for pennies at the store. But her partner stood up and said that his actions could not be predicted, for he was an unknown who had defeated Cedric, and was now fighting a powerful stat. The power of this stat is huge, and it's hard to deal with even after reaching the 10th floor. She is called the second boss of the 3rd floor, and this guy is fighting her beyond the capabilities of ordinary people. The girl, after hearing those words, started to wonder if they could defeat him if they started the battle right now. But the guy replied that it would be difficult, and the girl decided to back off. After all, they wouldn't be able to pull it off if they only got the support of the leadership. But the guy disagreed with this decision and started saying that their place in the hierarchy, which they had defended so stubbornly, would be jeopardized. The girl turned around and asked what he was going to do in such a case. He replied that he was willing to take the risk and pulled out a coin from his inventory, saying that it was time to use it. And at that very second, our hero fighting the large statue began to notice that dark energy began to appear on the slope near him, and he realized that Maine had not only sent Cedric to fight him, but while he was thinking about the situation that happened on the hillside, the large statue was able to wound his leg with her lasers, and she started to tell him not to dare to turn away from her and while crouching on one knee. Jean Hack started to use his fire element skill and told her that he was combing his hair so he couldn't concentrate and started to activate the ice creation again. And at the same moment, he started attacking her with his ice projectiles and telling her that he was even a little worried thanks to her. With that, the big statue started to get even angrier and started attacking him back. But it wasn't enough for that, so she activated her trap barrier after saying fool. A large dome began to appear around them, and now Jean Hayak had nowhere to go. The large statue began to realize that he could only defend himself, and where had his confidence gone? And it started attacking with its lasers in different directions, causing its lasers to start bouncing off the barrier, flying in different directions. 
and at the same second, Gene Hack began to activate the ice creation once again and defend himself from the large lasers that were flying from all directions. After all, he was prepared for such a development. The large statue began to fold its arms and tell the hero that it was useless to resist. He was going to die now, and her large hands began to extend outside the dome, squeezing it. Immediately afterward, she activated a divine spear that appeared in one of her hands. As soon as she swung it, large blocks of ice began to fly in different directions from the powerful attack. She was about ready to admit that she had finally defeated it, but she suddenly began to notice something strange. And now, it seemed so strange, Jean Heck was already in a different place and was approaching it. Using his ice creation skill, he began to freeze the large statue, turning it into an ice prison. After all, he knew that she couldn't stand ice magic, and it was hard for her to imagine him acting so offensively. The small statue trapped in an ice trap couldn't understand why someone who had reached nirvana through self-development would act so prejudiced. And Jean Heck at the same moment, using his ice magic, began to create a large hand that showed the statue a middle finger, and by doing so, he began to annoy her very much. And from within the confinement, the statue began to utter that it would send him to endless suffering and make him reborn into an insect thousands of millions of times. At this moment, the notification system showed that the copying conditions had been met and he was able to copy the mandala's ability. Only their harmony with themselves and the world could use the skill to create a weapon of special power. By undergoing training of the spirit and mind, one can gain the ability to determine the direction of an attack. As soon as our hero dropped the wig from his head, he started talking to the statue so that it wouldn't waste its powers. He began to apply his mandala skill, and the big statue couldn't believe his eyes. How is this even possible, and how could he get this ability? After all, it had taken ages of meditation before the mandala opened before him. How did a mere human being manage to get it? Jean Heck replied that he would make sure that the potential of her skill would not go to waste. And at that very second, he began to destroy her with his skills. As soon as his skill reached its target, she began to shatter into different pieces. Correct the text for errors, because right after that, Gene Heck's level started to increase and he approached the destroyed statue. He started looking for a key, and eventually was able to find and obtain a stone key, the description to which stated that regardless of the situation and his level, he could summon the boss of the area. However, this could only be used on the third floor. Immediately afterward, our hero began to move out and contemplate the fact that he now had a problematic boss to defeat. And this proved to be more difficult than in the game. As he passed by the burnt Cedric, Gene Heck began to feel that he was a bit overworked, so he decided to spend stats on mana. As soon as he increased his mana from 71 to 77, he felt immediately better. On his next attempt, he decided that he needed to prepare to use X-ray mana, as it was always in short supply. And just as he was about to head to the boss room, he remembered that he had some things left to do. The Tower of Trials is a place with a special atmosphere. As night falls, the temperature drops rapidly and the aggressiveness and strength of the monsters increases. Therefore, at night, most players leave the tower or stop hunting, looking for a safe place. Our hero, as soon as night fell, sat in the forest and cooked himself a meal on the fire. It was a huge shrimp, it can only be caught in the river near the temple, on the third floor of the Tower of Trials. As soon as he started to eat it, he began to remember that the flavor he couldn't enjoy before was incredible. He tried this dish again, and next time he might have to learn some cooking skill. But suddenly, he noticed a rustling in the forest and saw two people approaching him. It was a couple who had been following him for a while. The girl started to say that they might have to spend the night here, and she asked if they could join him before dawn. After all, they were supposed to leave before dark, but they never did. Gene Heck agreed and suggested that they sit down near the fire, for it was warmer here than in the deep woods. As soon as they sat down, the girl introduced herself as Milena and the guy sitting next to her turned out to be like Aga. They were happy to meet each other. At this moment, Gene Heck started asking them what they had experienced and what difficulties they had to overcome. He had quite a lot of things prepared. So they could treat themselves. The girl who held out her hand was already ready to take that food and start eating. After all, she was looking at it, and it looked so appetizing. But the guy who was sitting next to her started to say that they appreciate such kindness, but they don't eat what a stranger offers, especially from a person hiding their face. Jean Heck started taking the food back and putting it on the ground. She decided to ask why they were bothered by this mask. After all, it is very popular nowadays. But the guy sitting across from our hero started saying that masks are worn when they want to hide something. 
Jean Hayok replied that if they are uncomfortable, he can take it off. They are all, after all, sitting around the same campfire. The guide and the girl were surprised, but Jean Hayok went on to say that it wasn't interesting to just take it off and suggested playing a game. After all, everyone here wants to get to know each other more, and it is necessary to ask everyone three questions. If everyone gave answers to his questions, he would immediately take off the mask. Corrected text, correct the text for errors and just giving an answer to a question means that you don't necessarily tell the truth, and in any case you can't know the truth. The words of the guy sitting opposite our hero did not make it clear what he was up to. But still he came to the opinion that it would definitely not harm them. Not everyone agreed with this, and at the same moment the girl began to flip a coin, saying that then all this could be solved with a coin. And as soon as she flipped the coin, everyone realized that Gene Heck would be the first to start. However, he began to notice that there was a faintly visible magic in that coin. It was Caligula's coin, and one had to choose a target to infuse magic into the coin for five minutes so that one could influence the opponent's mind. The girl began to ponder on what to ask, me or the guild, though he probably wouldn't answer. Suddenly, she realized what she wanted to ask, so she asked our hero a question. Are any of his comrades here? Jean Heck realized that it was a practical question, and she just wanted to know the number that might be hiding somewhere in the forest. He started to answer that he came here and says now the question is, he came and now he was on his way, and they seemed to be going to hunt the boss. But why were they only watching? After all, it was clear that he was fighting. The girl started to answer that they were waiting for the right moment to enter the temple. The place had a bad reputation and one had to be careful. Immediately after answering, the girl began to say that it was her turn to ask questions, and began to ask, why did the masked man come to the tower for money or something? Jean Heck realized that if their interests aligned, she just wanted to get him on her side. And he started to answer, what he wants, I don't even know, if he talks about what he wants, they can fulfill those conditions. And the girl replied, agreeing that if their interests aligned. After all, they are actually capable of many things, and our hero began to ask the last question. If they answered, he would take off his mask, as promised. And the girl was wondering what he wanted to ask last. And Jean Heck started to say that the last thing he was interested in was whether the main association really thought that the two of them were enough to stand up to him. The guys were immediately discouraged, and the girl started to say that it was as she thought, because he already knew their true colors. They had seen with their own eyes how strong he was, for he had tackled the large statue single-handedly. And she went on to say that he was suffering in that period anyway and they realized that he had weakened too much, and as she swung her arm, she said that they had enough to straighten him out. And just as she swung her hand to fling with all speed towards our hero her coin, something happened. She stood there without moving, and she couldn't understand why that coin wasn't working. At the same moment, the hero started to get up and said that this coin was fine, she just couldn't use it now. After all, our hero had used their Anubis judgment skill back when they started asking questions and their power was reduced by 50% and was blocked for a minute. The guy started yelling that they were unlocked and they need to go to plan 2 and apply skills, but the girl yelled back that none of her skills were working. Our hero, who had placed his food on a nearby rock, began to say that they were in such confusion. At the same moment two large pillars appeared, and the notification window showed that the gods of the temple were pleased with the offering. Our hero was to choose a subject to hold the judgment of Anubis. At the same moment, Jean Hack chose the totem pole of the great warlord who would be the victim's opponent. The girl who stood and looked up at the large totem from below could not understand what it was, for she had never heard of such a thing. There were two guardians of the land nearby, a great warlord from a huge warlord army, who were already approaching that couple to destroy them. That guy standing beside his partner began to wonder if the sacrifice had awakened the pillars. Which meant it wasn't just a turnabout, but a real manifestation of power. And at the same moment, he saw Jean Hayak lay down and began to say that he was very tired, and it was better not to move rashly, because they wouldn't be able to escape anyway. After all, at this moment, the afterlife warlord started to activate the exit ban. But that guy decided to act for sure and told Jean Hack that if he killed him, it would be until the two pillars disappeared. But Jean Hack repeated once more for him not to move, because at this moment behind that guy, the great commander started to activate the warning. And as soon as the warning was carried out, Totem's big hand struck that boy with all its force. He lay on the ground, pinned down by the big hand, and couldn't move. Face was able to let out the slightest sigh from the fact that he had nothing to breathe with such a huge force that came from Totem. 
As soon as he pushed even harder, a huge explosion sounded and all that was left of that guy was a coin that flew out of his hand. The girl standing nearby began to shake with fear. After she saw what happened to her partner, the thought immediately arose in her mind that she should run before it was too late. And at the same moment that the totem was about to nail her, our hero stopped him and started telling the girl that they had already dealt with their situation. Now he could move on to the conversation and started to activate his stare, but immediately the notification system gave an error. The action of the skill was cancelled because of the difference in levels, and our hero did not like it, because he realized that even the luck stat did not help him this time. He began to tell that girl to look at her partner and realized that from now on she would answer his questions sincerely. Or the girl, after what she saw, asked Jean Heck what he was interested in. He started to say that he had heard of the Minas, but couldn't understand why, if they didn't climb the tower, humanity would disappear, and why they were interfering with the players. And just as the girl started saying, what if, this guy showed up. Turns out he was still alive and started yelling at his partner to shut her mouth, because you can't say that. But Totem, who was behind him, saw that guy start to move again, and with all speed he swung and finished him off. The girl who fell to the ground couldn't believe that her partner had been dealt with right in front of her eyes. Gene Heck went on to say to be true to an idea to the end is cool, but only at the right time and place. And she must remember that he doesn't leave alive those who make attempts on his life. Only if she tells the right information will he keep her alive. The girl interrogated if he would keep her alive for sure. Gene Heck, who was approaching her from behind and holding his blade in his hands, started to say that everything is right, because information is precious, worthwhile, but not as much as a life, of course. The girl started to say that she didn't know the real names of those who were sent to kill him, but they all refer to them as the cursed relics. Also, there are 11 others, but she's in a group of assassins, so I don't know. And once Jean Heck activated his skill once more, greedy gaze and realized that her words were true, started telling her to continue, and the girl started talking. The management said that if they collected the 12 cursed tower relics, even if humanity disappeared, they could survive and get more rewards. She didn't know anything else about it, that's all. And as soon as she finished speaking, our hero once again verified with his skill that she was telling the truth, and began to think about the fact that this was all he could find out about Lancelot and the twelve cursed relics, and the purpose of the mines is to summon the devil, and will survive even if humanity disappears, and will need to act with this information in mind and after thinking about it. Gene Hack started to thank the girl for the information he needed, because it would come in handy for him. And the girl immediately began to ask if she could leave already, to which he replied that she could not, but she didn't understand, for he said he would keep her alive if she told everything she knew. And as soon as Jean Heck stood up, he began to tell her not to worry, for he would keep his promise, but only after the contract was made. And as soon as he got close to her, he started to activate his. The contract stated that she would now listen to him, and that was 100 times better than death if he could survive of course. And as soon as the morning came and our hero gained strength, he started posting on his social media accounts that the raid on the third floor boss would not be broadcast and he would upload the video a little later. Whoever was interested could watch it. And as soon as he put up the notification, some viewers in the comments were annoyed because he had drawn them in and now they would definitely wait for the video when he defeats the third floor boss. At the same moment, he started walking to fight the third dungeon boss and he started pulling out the key he had in his pocket. Using the stone key, he started to open a portal to the place where his boss was already sitting and waiting for him. And as soon as he inserted the key, the large interdimensional traveling gate began to open, and the notification system showed that the third floor boss was responding to his call. A large gate opened in front of our player, from which a huge stone statue began to emerge. Immediately behind the third floor boss army, the man that was the boss appeared and began to speak, who dares to disturb him. At the same moment, Gene Heck began to activate his greedy gay skill and began to see the characteristics of the third floor boss, whose name was Fly. The notification system began to show that copying conditions due to the level difference was impossible. Mukon, who was sitting on one of his large statues and drinking tea, began to say that many had tried to fight against his army, but only he had summoned him using the key. He began to ask, where is his army? After all, this fight won't be fair and among the third floor boss consists of 100,000 stone souls. At the same moment, after those words that were said by the third floor boss, our hero began to take out a chessboard from his inventory. It began to appear under his feet. And at the same moment, magic chess pieces began to be summoned, there were 2,851 of them. 
Mohan, who was sitting on a large stone statue, looked on in amazement at what was happening. To him, this idea seemed interesting, because it was possible to replace an entire army with this method. He wondered what this little thing could do. Jean Heck answered him to wait, for he wasn't done yet. Their numbers began to appear, also 2,851 chess pieces. And they began to apply to the magic pieces. And immediately, huge chess soldiers began to appear. They began to grow several times taller and stronger with the help of these pills. The boss of the third floor was surprised by what he saw, and began to recognize our hero as being different from those who came before. After all, now the battle will become much more interesting. And a little while later, Jean Hayok's friends were preparing the figures to fight the third floor boss. They were carefully polishing and preparing them. The old man, who had already been sitting for a long time, started to say to his partner Yuri, why, even though his formulations are sore. We need to prepare a few more pieces. But Yuri didn't understand, because if they were at least given a target, they would know how many were left. As it was, they were just told to make sculptures. The third girl standing beside them said, there's no time right now. And as soon as she applied her magic saturation skill on the figurine, she began to say that there wasn't much left. After all, they had already made over 2,000 pieces. And if Jean Hayok didn't like this demon, then they would be finished. And since that was the case, it would be to their advantage to be on his side. And they need to get to work fast. Once our hero's memories dried up and he was in front of God, he began to speak to him, wanting to hear a confession from someone who was just sitting on his third floor, hiding behind rumors and not even intending to come to him. This caused an uneasy feeling, but Mohan, who was the boss, didn't understand what was meant. A player named Jean Heck went on to say that if our hero had indeed defeated the weaker players several times and was now pretending like he was tough, he was stuck on the third floor due to his lack of abilities to advance higher. The monsters guarding the floors of the Tower of Trials use energy to protect themselves, and it's not just players who can't climb the tower and increase their power. Immediately after saying that, Mohan started laughing loudly and told Jean Hack that he thought he couldn't climb higher than the fourth floor because he didn't have enough strength. To which Jean Hack replied that it was alright, for he was bound for the third floor. Mohan stood up to his full height and began to say that you can think whatever you want, but the difference in army size and level of tactics is obvious. It was simply impossible to win with such forces. The third floor boss began to give orders to his third battalion not to start moving forward. At the same moment, our hero started thinking about the fact that his vanguard has 1000 statues and he wants to see how they will react to this. And Jean Heck began to activate his skill. The first chessboard, the attack and defense of the chess pieces on the battlefield increased by 30%. And he began to give orders, the outermost pawns should take three steps forward and the front row prepare for defense. At the same moment, the chess piece, a pawn, began to activate its wall of chess bills, maintaining the battle formation. They began to wait for the enemies to come closer to deal with them using excellent tactics. And as soon as they collided, there was a huge sound and the chess pieces that were in front started to move back little by little. Our hero began to yell for them to stand back, for at the same moment the other chess pieces that were behind began to fire their crossbows. The shooting game flew straight at the opponent, and as soon as the arrows hit their target, most of the statues began to crumble. Immediately afterward, the elephant chessmen began to activate their wave of fire. And a huge wave of fire flew towards the opponents, who began to fly aside and burn. Even stone statues couldn't survive such a bright flame that burned them. And Mohan was impressed that he had handled an advanced group in a second, and that was decent. But he began to order his second and third battalion to move forward. As soon as they moved from their position, our hero didn't sit still either and started ordering his figures and horse to attack the enemy's flank. And as soon as Jean Heck started to flank while sitting on his horse, he activated the wedge formation and upon collision, the damage would be increased by 200%. He was determined to break through their formation faster than lightning. And just as the enemy figures began to turn around, they saw a huge army flying towards them and began to destroy them all. For a moment, Mohan thought about the fact that this guy he started fighting with was quite experienced at leading an army. After all, a modern switch to attack or defense requires precise and coordinated orders, and everything was planned. But the third floor boss couldn't figure out what the hole in his formation was, and it looked too appetizing, like a poison treat. Mohan started to activate his weakness detection skill, and the notification window showed him three options. The first option was that if the crown was destroyed, the figures would stop moving. 
The second option was that only the king or queen could possess the crown. The third option was that a king or queen without a crown would increase all their stats by 100% while in battle. He realized that if he destroyed the crown, he would have victory in his hands. Immediately after these thoughts, he started laughing out loud, for he realized why this guy was so cocky, and he thought he was making mistakes that even beginners don't make, but this wasn't the case. And the queen was Alice, who was standing behind and waiting for the right moment, and Mohan at that very moment realized what he meant then and started ordering his soldiers to start the assault. Jean Heck, who was breaking through the flank, began to notice that about 3,000 soldiers were there, including giants about 15 meters tall. They began to break through to the queen as soon as he stepped back. At the same moment, Jean Hack started shouting for them to ignore that direction, as the enemy now had 3,000 fewer warriors on the defensive, and Mohan, who was standing behind his army, began to realize that he was being lured by opening the center and showing the bait in the form of a crown. And it was not a bad trap. At the same moment, the 3,000 warriors that had been sent to destroy the queen began to fight the chess pieces. Although the chessmen fought and counterattacked well, it wasn't enough. In fact, the huge 15 meter tall statues began to destroy them, and eventually, they were slowly approaching the queen, who was uncovered and standing in her place. And once the last of the chess soldiers who stood guard were destroyed, she was left alone against the big giant statues of her opponents. They already wanted to destroy her, and the boss of the third floor, who was watching all this, was pleased that he would now see the end, for the queen would now die. At this time, our hero was learning all sorts of things, making his way through a huge number of opponents to the third floor boss. The one stood on the largest statue and began to tell Gene Heck that he had gotten this far, and now he was praising him. After all, he had gotten to him with a handful of warriors, but Gene Heck began to answer him to stop talking nonsense, for he knew that he had left a trap in the passage on purpose, and Mohan couldn't understand how he knew it was a trap. He decided that enough was enough though, after all he had given that crown to the little girl and made his way to him with so little effort, but he wouldn't get more than that now. For from this point on, Mohan started to get serious and decided to end this right here and now. He began to summon two great deities that appeared to the right of our hero. These two deities knew how to talk and began to communicate with each other about how there were no better warriors among mortals and not even a single person with perfect proportions. As soon as Mohan saw the smile on our hero's face, he began to ask him what made him lose his mind in the face of defeat. And he wondered why he was laughing in such a situation. But a little while later, before the fight even started, Jean Heck was talking to Alice, and she started asking him if he was really going in there alone, but he was wondering why she was worried. But she replied that she wasn't worried, because she saw that the third floor boss wasn't weak. And Jean Heck started laughing after saying that. After all, it was the first time she said that she thinks someone is strong. So he decided to ask Alice if she thinks that third floor boss is stronger than her. But right after saying that, Alice started to get angry and told Jean Heck how dare he say that he was comparing the Lord of the Night to that oakhead. If she hadn't been imprisoned, she would have destroyed him in an instant then. As it was, she didn't care right now. And lastly, Jean Heck started telling her that meant he could leave this plot on her. To which Alice started to say, of course, yes. After all, even in her current state, she could easily handle tens of thousands of these statues. And Jean Heck started telling the boss of the third floor that if anyone heard what he said about her, she would definitely get angry. And Alice started activating her blood spear skill and screamed that they were all insolent. After all, at least they realize who they're trying to kill. In an instant, using one of her strongest skills, she began destroying the 15 meter tall statues. After her attack, they started flying apart, but suddenly Alice jumped up on the mountain and started activating her blood blast skill. And as soon as she finished activating the skill, after the only word she said was die, a huge blood blast flew towards most of the 15 meter statues. And as soon as Theslat ones were destroyed, Alice descended from the air and stood on the wreckage. The boss of the third floor, Muhan, couldn't believe his eyes at what he had just seen, for he thought it was impossible. And anyway, how could such a fragile girl have such strength? Our hero, who had already come close to Muhan, began to tell him that he, thinking that he would defeat the queen, let him come closer. It was his mistake, for she was beyond the teeth of such an ordinary third floor boss. And at the same moment, Gene Heck began to activate his skill, Blood Rage Energy, and Black Leaf began to react to this Blood Rage Energy. After the fusion, our hero was able to gain a new attack modifier, Mind Destruction. He can now deal sustained decay damage and hit a target by orienting them, however by doing so he ceases to distinguish between allies and enemies. 
With full force, Jean Hack began to throw his spear sideways. And as the spear came closer and closer, it began to activate and all the enemy statues began to obey Jean Hack. One of the two large divine statues that were standing nearby began to obey Jean Hack and tell his brother that he didn't like him from the beginning with his smarmy face. Oh, and also, that press got him sick of seeing him, and with great force he punched his brother in the face. As a result, he started flying away and all the other statues started fighting each other. Muhan couldn't understand why his army suddenly started fighting against each other. His two tacticians were simply out of commission, and it was all because of one man. Everything was ruined. He couldn't believe that he was losing. Jean Heck sprang into action, approaching at close range, and began to tell him not to be nervous or he would look really pathetic. He then activated his ice creation skill, which made him able to cut the rear of the enemy army. Muhan didn't understand what kind of nonsense this was and how it was even possible. He began to apply a desperate move and ran away. But Jean Heck was already prepared for this and started making an ice bow with his ice magic. After all, he wasn't going to let go of someone who wanted to escape and thus escape from imminent defeat. The Muhan who was running away and shouting for his soldiers to stop Jean Hayak as soon as possible. And immediately after saying that, one of the biggest statues of the third floor boss started to attack Jean Hayak and hit him with his big fist. As a result, all the chess soldiers started flying apart like puzzle pieces in different directions. But that punch only destroyed all of our hero's soldiers. And Jean Heck himself was able to bounce to the side and began to activate his skill, Mandala. After all, he realized that barely smelling fried, Muhan left everything on his servants and tried to escape, just like in the past. And as soon as the ice creation and Mandala began to work in unison, Jean Heck fired his bow, and thus made a move and checkmate in his game of chess. And as soon as the arrow flew out, it made a hole in the huge statue's arm and started heading straight for his head. Also, after the shots in the head, it went through and began to fly towards the boss of the third floor, who had no place to go, because he was running away with all his legs. Well, she was much faster than our hero. And a few seconds later, the arrow reached the target, hitting her directly. From this, the third floor boss began to glow with a bright light and thus disappear. At the same moment, the notification window began to show that the third floor boss monster had been defeated. At the same moment, all the players and ordinary spectators who were watching all of this began to see their notifications on their computer monitors and TVs, informing them that the third floor boss had been defeated, and there were 90 days left to conquer the next floor. And as soon as it was over, our hero's level started to increase, and immediately he decided to put all the stats into mana. Immediately after that, he looked at the drop that fell out to him. After all, the treasures that can be obtained after eliminating a monster are divided into rarities by color, and from the first 10 floors only red items fall out the lowest. But suddenly, he saw that there was an orange-colored chest in front of him. Perhaps it was due to the effect of the monopolization skill that triggers when he gets the reward alone. And as soon as he started opening it, different rewards started falling out from the outside of the chest. And he was able to get a pink diamond, a paramount right, a soft grain, a living water, a sun family and a snail, and a spewing fire. Our hero was surprised at what he got. So many things, and he started carrying everything into his inventory. But the last thing that came out of the chest was very interesting. After all, with this he could safely pass the fourth floor. And Jean Heck began to rejoice as the monopolization effect was incredible. And Alice, who was standing beside him, still couldn't get used to the expression on Jean Heck's face. But she was still glad that she was able to help him. And a little while later, various guild members gathered in one of the rooms and began to discuss. What was interesting was that the masked man turned out to be a real hero who was able to overcome the third floor completely alone. This was the beginning of the emergence of a new hero. They were given another 90 days to prepare for the next floor, or they were to pump themselves up. However, one of the guys started yelling at the guild managers, accusing them of being idiots and thinking as if the success of this raid was only beneficial. After all, he got all the loot and rewards for his efforts. Teresa, standing next to him, couldn't understand what he was talking about now. After all, he was the one who helped them deal with the boss when they couldn't handle it themselves and almost teamed up with the Minas. Thanks to the unknown masked hero, humanity was able to get another 90 days to prepare without the intervention of the Minas. He gave such speeches after the unknown masked hero had helped them deal with the crisis, and as soon as Teresa finished, everyone else began to fall silent. And she couldn't understand why they weren't saying anything. But it turns out this guy wasn't the only one who thought so, 
and everyone else was also in the same situation. They just couldn't say anything. Teresa started to say that if nothing could be done, she declares that she would leave their association immediately. The girl who was standing next to her began to say that she was serious about leaving, as she needed to think again about how much had been done for her to be able to join here. The head of the guild, who was sitting at the head of everyone else, started to say that their association is not a place for random passersby, and you can't just join and leave like that. Only people who can actually protect humanity are invited. All the elite of the world are gathered here, and if they leave they will never be able to come back. And does she really trust that man with her future? And as soon as she turned around and started walking towards the door, she answered that yes, she was trusting him with her life. At this time, Gene Hack was walking along the beach and started to think that he had money to spare and could go to a nice hotel. But suddenly he heard his phone start to vibrate, and as soon as he took it out of his pocket, he saw that Wa was calling him, and he started to tell her that when she called, he was in the tower and couldn't pick up the phone. Wa started telling him that their grandfather wouldn't open his eyes, and Gene Hack immediately started asking where she was so he could drive up as soon as possible. Wa, aka Firefist, granddaughter of the legendary martial arts master Chun Hyun, a grandmaster from the Korean martial arts field, and on top of that resilient, active, and cheerful, stood in the hospital and looked at Jean Hyok with tears in her eyes. It was the first time he had seen her in such a state, and he came closer and began to tell her to tell him what had happened, quickly. And she started to say that it started around the time the Tower of Trial appeared, and he remembered the incident in Inochi. It was when he was in the maze with Park Han and he saw something on the news. And she started to say that Grandpa was there then and Grandpa defeated the monsters that had awakened after the outbreak. And he was badly hurt and he wasn't getting better. And now he was even worse, and Jean Hyok began to look at the man who was considered the strongest in Korea. He was lying senseless on his hospital bed, only he had activated his eye of truth. He saw how to copy that man's skills. He was currently between life and death, and if he could save him, he would be able to copy one of the skills. And Jean Hyok was surprised that this man who had never entered the tower suddenly appeared in the ward. At the same time, a man started to come in and asked the girl what had happened that she had left the ward so abruptly. And the man who came in with her turned out to be a fighter who, except for fighting, didn't know anything, and he didn't know what the reason was for coming in. But he began to warn our hero that even the man with the highest rank wouldn't be of any help here. Jean Hyok began to tell him that he had known Mrs. Eun Wa for a long time and had come to see if he could do anything for her. But Jean Su, who was a rank a hiller, started to approach the patient and apologized for the misunderstanding. He was embarrassed and thought it was the famous Jean Hyok who decided to become a genius healer as well. Eun Wa began to tell him that she was so desperate that she called her mentor, who, although not a healer, is powerful and the best experts in the field are here. Except for some reason Grandpa isn't getting better at all. She began to take off her glasses and wipe them clean. And they say that they are doing everything they can, except that even with modern equipment, there is no way they have time to investigate the diseases arising from the tower's influence. He hopes that they will realize that they are doing their best and everything that depends on them. And after hearing this, Yen started to apologize and say that she gave in to her emotions and started to tell her mentor that they can go out so as not to disturb the doctor's work. But at the same moment Gene Hack started to activate his skills, looking greedily and with great anger towards those doctors and hearing their thoughts, where they were thinking about why this rancher appeared here. And they were here catching freebies, and now he will interfere with them, and the fact that he really wants to sleep, and until when should he do it? I mean, it's like he's practicing medicine. 10-10-100-10, and Jeans should approach the patient and explain that the reason he went into a coma was a conflict of energies, his own techniques and the tower's magic. They plan to use a treatment method using the magical stones they are currently researching, but the cost of the raw materials for this method is very high. Grandpa's granddaughter asks him not to worry about the financial costs, as she is willing to sell everything she can just to make Grandpa recover. She is willing to sacrifice money for his health and the rest does not matter to her. When the doctor agreed to the treatment, he starts to hear our hero saying something negative. He calls him a fraud who is trying to extort money. However, the rest of the doctors side with Jinsu, asking what the doctor is talking about and what kind of extortion is involved. They believe that our hero is making absurd accusations and resent the fact that he is insulting them seriously. They believe that he is talking utter nonsense just because he is a guest in the lady's house and cannot say everything that comes into his head. And Jean Hack started to keep listening to that lousy doctor's thoughts, and he thought about what had happened. Could this rancher be bluffing and testing them? 
After all, even if they get caught registering fake account names for cryptocurrency wallets, he wouldn't find them, even if he were God. And right after that, Gene Hack started talking about heaven being holy, Bolsheviks, accounts, and even cryptocurrency, and how far he had already gone, but grandpa's granddaughter couldn't understand what he was talking about now, and what other accoutrements. That doctor started shouting in the direction of our hero, what is this brazen lie? Is he talking now, and does he have proof? A misunderstanding arose and he tried to denigrate them, but there was still a misunderstanding in the mind of the doctor alone. For he began to think about who this guy was and how much he knew. He began to wonder, did he really know that the Black Luck Guild had been in contact with the Dweller? And our hero couldn't understand what he was thinking right now. The Guild and they were in contact with the Dweller. After all, he couldn't believe that the Tower Dweller had made contact with humans. Even with those nasty Guild players. Black Luck. And somehow, it was strange that the Guild leader Hong Diok was in contact with the occupant. Humans were a serious external threat to the tower's inhabitants. He wondered what they were up to then. But suddenly, the grandfather who was lying on the outside bunk started to get up worse and worse. And at that very second, the doctor started running out of the room. But just as he started to open the door, the girl's foot stopped him and he didn't know where to go anymore. And she started to ask where he was going to run away to, and you could see that something was really bothering him. He's in a hurry to escape, and if grandpa dies, he shouldn't think he's going to get out of here alive. But Jean Hack starts to ask her to calm down. After all, the most important thing right now is her grandfather's treatment. The doctor starts to turn around and says that of course he was just about to go get the necessary medication, but now he doesn't understand what he should do if this is what they are doing. After all, only thanks to him the grandfather is somehow holding on, but our hero did not understand why he says this. He's already screwed up and he's still talking nonsense. And he began to tell his partner that she could hit him once, and immediately after these words she jumped up from her seat, and kicked him in the head with her foot, causing him to fall to the floor. At the same second our hero began to approach his grandfather and reflect on the fact that he was overwhelmed by his mom. Yes and look, it's hard now, after all, the usual person has long ago gone to the other world, and he cannot leave him to die. The hero began to pull out an elixir from the inventory, and at the same moment the doctor, who guessed behind the grandfather, was surprised to realize what it was. Our hero started telling him that if he really knew what it was, then he also knew what the result would be. And even though he was going to use it on a special occasion, but he has known Hua for a long time. And besides, he can't miss such a chance and not copy the skill of someone like Yu Chen. Only he poured over his grandfather's body. His sickness started to leave and he felt good at the same moment. Our hero's partner, who walked over to her grandfather, couldn't hold back her tears. After all, she was so happy that at last her grandfather would recover. At the same moment, the notification system showed that the conditions had been met, and he was able to copy the heavenly flower cultivation technique. The description of the technique was that the technique developed by Yuchun was able to absorb magic from the atmosphere while using the mana recovery speed, increasing it by 30%. People using this technique looked young and old. The doctor who was standing behind couldn't believe how this was possible, he was actually cured. Deciding that he should leave quickly, the doctor was about to leave, but suddenly our hero gave the doctor a kick in the ass and said that the assistants could leave, and this doctor should be talked to separately. After a few seconds, our hero threw this guy who was pretending to be a doctor into the same room. But that guy didn't understand what he was going to do with him. And was he really going to kill him? But Gene Heck started saying he wasn't killing him, he was just going to make him pay back the money he stole. He'll let him go if he pays back the money he's stolen in the meantime. After all, it will be the most favorable offer for him and his partner. He'll explain himself, so there's nothing to worry about. But that guy thought it was suspicious that he'd be let go for nothing. And at the same moment our hero's face changed and he started saying with serious intentions that he didn't want to live or something. And at that same moment, 36 million won came in about our hero's partner. That was about 28.7 million dollars. And all the people who were in the hospital started to see that the doctor started to run with all his legs straight into the street and screaming that he was alive. And our hero, who was standing on the hospital building, and Alice, who was sitting on his shoulder, started asking him what he was going to just let him go. But Gene Heck had a plan, and he asked Alice to follow him and find out where he was going in such a hurry. After all, even pushing these sixes wouldn't get much information, and they needed to find out where their base and leader were. 
and if she realized that, she could get started already, and keep a low profile. And as soon as she flew, our hero began to turn around and leave, I mean, about the fact that she became so joyful. And as soon as she returned to the chamber where grandfather and his partners were, he asked her if she could come out for a bit, because he needed to check on the elixir's absorption. And as soon as she agreed and closed the doors, Jean Heck thought everyone had left. And immediately grandpa woke up and started to ask Jean Heck what she knew, that he was faking it perfectly, but his breathing gave him away and he started to apologize. Getting up from his bunk and saying that he didn't mean to trick him, but it was okay now. And Jean Heck started to say that he suddenly appeared, magnified him and understands his wariness, because he would treat himself too. And suddenly grandpa started laughing and saying that he understood people so well and he was so guessing. And at that moment, the hero realized that he no longer felt like it, he was quite healthy. His granddaughter was worried about him, and she usually doesn't ask for help, but this time she even wrote to him and her grandfather. It became clear that he seems to be friends with his granddaughter. Gene Hack started to say that he wanted to ask him something when he woke up. Grandpa immediately replied that since he saved his life, he was willing to answer any question if he could. And Jean Heck started asking what happened during the breakout and Grandpa started showing his scar on his chest and said that he was on his way to a conference when it started. He saw a huge rift and from the car and didn't realize where it was coming from. Immediately huge creatures, or rather monsters, began to appear from the rift. The policeman couldn't do anything about it, but as soon as one of the monsters approached the policeman to deal with him, he was able to quickly run over and save the policeman from a horrible death. And right after that he started telling the policeman to evacuate the people and he would deal with the monsters himself. Some strange man, or rather creature, appeared on the side of the monsters and started saying that there were some good shots among the people of this world, and he was ready to play with them already. But soon, when grandpa was able to deal with the huge monsters, he decided he could handle them too. But there were some he couldn't handle. And then a monster in human form, with a blade in his hands, decided to come straight at him. And no one knew what this monster had in mind, or what it wanted to do, or where it came from. And so grandpa decided that there was no way he could defeat that man when he wounded his chest. Well, that blow was too hard, and he had feelings at the time that he was going to die. And now grandpa started to say, that's the last thing he remembered. And he had never seen a man so skillfully wielding a speed sword in his life. Our hero began to reflect on the fact that he was long-haired and was dressed in Asian clothing. This probably meant that the Murum forces dominating the 21st floor had begun to behave in an extremely unpredictable manner. They were persistent guys who used every possible way and method to get their way. When he was still playing the tower because of them, it was a bit difficult to pass further floors. He wondered what they wanted to accomplish by getting out into the outside world. And Gene Heck. After much thought, he began to tell his grandfather that the one who attacked him was a resident of the tower. He didn't think that they would get outside the tower, and it looked like the situation could get seriously complicated. My grandfather started to ask Jean Hayak that he said that he had known her wa for a long time, and since that was the case, she had good friends and they could have a wedding right away. However, Jean Hayak started telling Grandpa that they are not in that kind of relationship. Grandpa remarked that he might not be very smart, but as he got older, he started to become quite good at many things, including people. They say it takes at least 10,000 hours of practice to become skillful in any field, and he believes there is some truth in those words. At the same moment, Gene Heck looked at his time in the game with 50,000 hours and realized that he was already a genius back then. After all, the tower had only appeared a few months ago, and waking up in it, which was considered by experts, was often overrated. Grandfather began to speak, except that you, Gene Heck, are different. And, how can I put it, it seems like you've been through this a million times. And the bitter taste of defeat and the well-deserved victories, the experience gained through all sorts of trials. And the amount of effort you put in to achieve those results. But Gene Hayak started to reply, that old man is exaggerating. But the old man started to smile and said that he was also humble. It's only impossible to hide the fact that he's a master of his craft. And began to put his hand on his heart and told our hero that he wanted to repay the one who had saved his life, and began to ask how he could be useful. But for our hero, the gratitude of Korea's most prestigious martial arts master was only a matter of time, and he started to say that he could ask for anything. The old man replied that he didn't have to worry about that and ask for anything, and a little while later in the night he started to leave the room and met his partner. And she started to ask how grandpa was doing and if he was okay now. 
Jean Heck answered her that the elixir had penetrated the body and had begun to take effect. In a few days he would be healthy. After these words our hero's partner was very happy and started to ask our hero how she could thank him for his help. But Jean Hayak said that everything was alright, his grandfather had reimbursed him in full. And grandpa at this time was in his room looking out the window. But the tears that rolled from his eyes let it be known that he didn't think that guy would ask him for it. And a little while later, Jean Heck walked out of the hospital and started walking back home. As soon as he took the elevator up to his apartment, he stood by the window and began to look out at the evening city, thinking about how money was a good thing after all. If you get to a good place, you can use money to feel like a king, to order any food you want. And as soon as Jean Hayok's food was brought and he started eating it, it was like he was filled with life, because he hadn't felt such flavor emotions in a long time. That flavor was great, the food he was eating was directly melting in his mouth. Just a few months ago, he often had to settle for a quick ramen, and Alice, who was lying on the couch, began to tell our hero that he was an appetizing eater. But Jean Hack replied to her that people used to watch him eat and even pay money for it. At the same moment, Alice turned on the TV, though there was a program through the Tower of Trials going on. The girl who was running the program started to say that they had invited experts on passing the tower, and today's their guest was Jan Ranker, the guildmaster of Korea, the strongest in Korea. Once he was greeted with applause by the entire audience, he sat down and the girl started asking him questions. She asked what was the key point and he began to answer, the most important thing is to become strong as soon as possible. There are two methods you can use to do this. The first method is the most common and well known, raise your level and skill level. What about the second method? Can we use coins? The girl asked what he meant, and he replied that it was about money that could only be used in the tower. And the guy went on to say that being able to buy useful and powerful items is unquestionably the best method for a rancher. And while the world's dominant currency used to be the dollar, the tower coins were now the main currency. The fourth floor opened thanks to an unknown, and only so far no one had entered it. Not the girl was wondering if he could explain why. The guy continued that it was because the third floor was being cleared, and whoever cleared the third floor would be able to get to the fourth floor the very first. The fourth floor was a special dungeon that needed to be endured and cleared from the attacking waves. The key to clearing it is to capture and hold the base. And the problem is that if the player who enters fails to defend the stronghold, the fourth floor will be completely locked down for 20 days. During that time it will be impossible to enter, and there is a huge risk that something irreparable will happen. If the floor is not cleared within 90 days, there will be the possibility of irreparable consequences. Therefore, he feels that such an action is not well thought out, and it is likely that within 90 days of clearing the dungeon, the destruction of humanity could occur. It seems to him that the tower system is capable of such a thing, as it is currently the supreme ruler of the world and ignores the principle of causality when viewed from that perspective. A scenario where humanity disappears looks likely, so it's worth sticking around for at least a month. To boldly go to the fourth floor of the tower out of the allotted 90 days, at least a month should be spent in preparation. Therefore, it is worth planning a vacation elsewhere this month. Immediately after the interview, the guy got into his car and a window notice appeared in front of his face, which said that an unknown player had announced the start of the fourth floor. The organizers ask all participants who want to take part in this procedure to prepare themselves, as the first wave will start in 8 hours. This guy with all speed started driving and telling his co-worker who was sitting on the side to get everyone to gather all the rankers. After all, this is an emergency, they're going to be screwed if they don't absolutely prepare. And there's only 8 hours left. And that guy didn't understand what the unknown man was thinking, or he was doing it. Our hero at this time began to wake up, because he slept like a baby after he finished the massacre on the third floor. His bed, with the morning sun shining right in his face, he decided it was time for him to move out. After all, it was 1 hour and 37 minutes until the first wave started. On the fourth floor of the challenge tower of 100 zombies, both regular and special, players can take it two ways. Build different kinds of defensive towers or choose a base where they can effectively hold the defenses. But, as a rule, everyone does exactly that. But our hero is ready to do things differently. Now he started to pass the fourth floor of the Tower of Trials first, while other players will have to wait 20 minutes to get here. He went ahead and felt that it was a bit scary here, as it always is. And time was very short, only 20 minutes, so he decided he had to hurry. And as soon as he approached the World Cup Stadium, he decided that this was where he would exercise his right to set up the base. 
And as soon as the installation was applied, Sanam World Championship Stadium was chosen as his base, and immediately afterward he began to sprinkle soft grains, plant five sun seeds, and apply living water. At that point, plant growth accelerated by 20%. And once the preparations were more finished, he decided that he needed to return. There were many players gathered at the starting area of the fourth floor, some were warming up and some were just standing still, while others were looking around the area and searching for places where they could take shelter or set up their base. And a little while later, Jean Heck was sitting on the high ground and looking at the fact that all the known guilds had sent their players to this place. But suddenly, he noticed two of his comrades standing below him. Also Teresa had arrived at the place and they waved to each other as a greeting. But as soon as our hero's friends saw Teresa, they were surprised. But Jean Heck began to tell them not to be surprised, for it was he who called her, and began to apologize for the confusion. He had to act urgently, there was no time to explain, but one of his friends began to say that he certainly understood everything, and they responded to his request. Teresa, who was no longer restricted by anything else, came too, and as soon as she turned around, blushing, began to say that it was better to be with Jean Heck already than with that stupid guild. And at the same moment, the other players started to notice that there was a group of guys standing near them who were quite famous. And then there was Teresa, and some of them even subscribed to her YouTube channel. And now they get to see her live, and also standing next to her is new Korean star Jean Hyok. And even though it was a little small, the players were here. Our hero started asking his friends if everyone had prepared well. You, the girl, started to say, well, but will it really be enough to deal with the huge zombie force and the waves of zombies here so strong that it's sickening? The guy who was standing beside her started to say that his summoning skill level wasn't high enough and it would be hard. But Gene Hack started to say that if it's going to be easy, it's no fun at all. The stadium, but his friends, as soon as they heard the word stadium, started asking that they hoped it wasn't Sanam Stadium, because it would take at least 100 people to hold such an area. The girl started to get angry at her mentor, for this is no fun at all, she said, and will not play anymore, and if he dies, he cannot be revived. The guy began to tell our hero that he could see from his face that he would not change his habits, because it already smells like masochism. And Teresa, who was standing next to him, started to say that it turns out Jean Heck is a pervert. But our hero started to tell her not to get so killed, because the stadium is the best place to destroy ODS opponents. But his friends were against it because they knew that only he could fight like that, and it's too hard for them. But suddenly Teresa walked up to Jean Heck and began to say, can she ask him something? And he agreed. She raised her hand and started to say that she had heard that it takes at least five people to protect the base, and there were only four of them here. But Jean Heck told them not to worry, because the fifth man would be here soon, and at that very moment, the official fifth man appeared, out of nowhere. But he was somehow angry and immediately started yelling towards our hero that he would kill him, the bastard. She was like that. After all, a little while later he was practicing in the mountains and wanted to correct his new ball technique. But suddenly he saw a strange notice that appeared in front of his face. And it said he had to come within an hour to the fourth floor starting area, but he thought it was ridiculous, like he was coming just because he was called, and decided he'd rather give his time to his coaches. But the next notice that appeared in front of him, which said that if he came, he would fight him and he wouldn't use his left arm and right leg. Still, he decided that such a stupid provocation wouldn't work on him, because it was kind of childish and he wouldn't fall for it. And he knew that Gene Heck would lead him around by the nose again, but the third notice that appeared in front of him changed his mind. It said he would also close his eyes. And this guy decided that anger would be the fuel for his future revenge. In fact, he decided to kill him right on the spot, and now he approached our hero and began to say with a serious face that he was a scumbag and he would finish him off. But Jean Heck was glad that he had finally arrived, and noticed that he was holding an attribute sword, an item that conducts elemental magic, allowing him to eliminate the main weakness of swordsmen, long-range combat. And our hero knew that he would choose that particular sword, because it was very easy to read. And that guy started telling our hero what those notifications were and why he asked if he would be afraid, because he didn't look like someone who would chicken out. And at the same moment, he decided to stand up and use his sword, saying that Gene Heck was very wrong. Well, our hero waved his hand and started telling him that this was all well and good of course, but was it really true that he was going to fight with that unfinished sword? But that guy didn't understand what that meant, so Gene Heck went on to say that an attribute sword wasn't a bad thing but only in its completed state does it reveal itself as a weapon to its fullest extent. And the random drop of this floor just contains an item that will complete the sword. Does it need the fire attribute? 
Our hero correctly asked that guy. That guy started getting angrier now and telling our hero not to bluff, because random drop is just that, random, and you never know where it's going to fall from. But Gene Hack, well, what to tell him? He knows he has his own methods of getting what he wants. If he joins the base defense, he'll give him an item and he can pump his sword. Then they can definitely fight. And right after saying that, that guy put down his sword and as he passed by our hero, he started saying that the item is coming out and it's a good thing. And right after that, the notification system showed that it was Saturday, the group of five was assembled, and the minimum number of players to defend the base was assembled. They began to move out towards the terrifying zombies that were soon to appear. And on the way to Torres approached our hero and began to ask him, will everything definitely be alright? After all, your son was, to put it mildly, in a bad mood. But Jean Hayak answered her that as long as the agreement is in effect, then he won't be able to betray them. And although the impression he gives is creepy, because he is a man of honor, and one of our hero's friends began to say that she almost forgot, and took out of his hands a katana, which began to give Jean Hake. They were paired dragon swords, and because of the Tower of Trials, the ancient relics received magical powers comparable to the power of artifacts. And to hold such a thing in his hands was incredible to him. Iwad started to say that Grandpa asked her to tell him how he treasured them so much and how he was able to get them. But Jean Hayak replied to her that he was just being nice to him. And as soon as he got the balls, he saw a note where one of the balls had betrayed by the wedding written on it. Jean Hack realized that Grandpa had a pretty good sense of humor. Once they had already reached their base, what couldn't believe her eyes that the five of them would have to defend this huge base. His friends realized that he was being his usual self, but he started to reassure them not to worry. After all, he has a plan. But suddenly some voice from far away started saying that he was wondering who chose the stadium, and a strange guy with a sword started coming out of the darkness towards our hero and his team. And Gene Heck started to look at that sword that had a familiar pattern on it and looked up. He saw a guy who was standing across from him and started to address him, asking if he was the same Gene Heck who had recently obtained the S rank. And as soon as that guy started approaching, our hero noticed that he recognizes this pattern he has on his katana. It's one of the Murum members from the 21st floor, and first there was the Dark Luck Guild. Now it's the Triad. It turns out that the occupants of the tower are actually getting out. Suddenly some guy started yelling for our hero to answer if he was Gene Heck. The hero replied that yes, he is, and the triad guy started saying that his name is Gunshin. But before he could finish, Gene Heck started telling him that he doesn't even want to hear it. After all, if he wants to introduce himself, he shouldn't, because he knows pretty well how fucked up the guys in the Nam Gung family are. Well, right after saying that, that guy was riddled with frustration and couldn't understand what he was so angry about. And Teresa, who was standing near our hero, started asking what was wrong with him, and what was wrong with these Nam Gum people, and if he knew them. To which Gene Heck began to say that were somehow familiar and the clan of masters of the world Murim, the inhabitants of the XXI floor of the tower, the family Nam Gum. They are elite warriors with simply incredible ego. And as soon as that guy started to say something towards our hero, Gene Heck interrupted him with a stupid expression on his face and said back, What are you? You lowlife? Do you even know who I am? How dare you insult the Nam Gong family? I will destroy you and all your family for this. And please, let's skip that part. After all, he was already tired of these somewhat sort of villainous phrases, and did the Nam Gong clan still have any pride left to protect? All they have is their name and those words. The triad guy got really pissed off and started saying that he didn't know how Gene Hayok knew about them, and at the same moment he started yelling that he was a jerk. As soon as he started pulling out his sword, the notification system started showing our hero the copy conditions, and that he had encountered the Murin residents in the triad. There are other residents hiding, and if he found them all who could copy one of the skills, our hero realized that there were others from the triad here besides this guy. If they just wanted to get a little closer, this was overkill. Teresa started to ask what they were going to do, and Gene Heck started to say what difference does it make anymore, and what's their mission there, because he just has to copy their skill, and started to tell them to get ready for battle. Some of our heroes group started talking. One of the guys started to say, girls, noon, I'll take the left side, and she'll take the right side, and activated her king of machines skill. The skill started summoning mechanisms that folded into a huge machine. The girl began to activate her skill, not a step back and the damage she received was reduced by 15% until she stopped fighting. Teresa, who was standing behind her, started to say that she would be covering the rear. 
The last of our hero squad started saying that every time he sees him in action, he realizes that he doesn't care about the circumstances. And Gene Heck, in response, started telling him that it would take him about three minutes to see if he could stall. To which that guy said that he wouldn't even need three minutes, because he decided to deal with all the enemies himself, and Teresa started activating her skill, Sacred Enhancement and Battle Song. For 10 minutes, all the stats of their group started to increase by 5%, and right after that, the projectiles that the guy summoned on his car flew. A lot of projectiles started to fly into the target, causing other enemy players to start flying in different directions. The girl with her fire karate started fighting against the others. Teresa, who was covering the rear, started fighting off everyone who was coming towards her. Those guys who were the villains started discussing amongst themselves that they couldn't believe how strong they were. But before they knew it, one of the group, Gene Heck, dealt with them and approached that triad guy. But suddenly that triad guy started attacking him, and he realized that there seemed to be more than just small insects here. He started to defend himself. But that guy was a little stronger and he noticed that he had a good reaction. It looked like he was good at something. But it's just that you can't become a swordsman without knowing the techniques, he told him and he personally decided to show him what the sword art of a true master was all about. The guy from the triad started using his emperor sword skill and attacked the Gene Heck group member with his heavy blows. This guy realized that compared to the triad guy, he was many times stronger, because it was very hard to defend against him. He was a true master of his craft. But as soon as that guy wanted to make a control strike, Teresa, who appeared out of nowhere, was able to protect him from the fatal blow. And right after that, our hero appeared and started saying that he was finally ready and now it was his turn to fight, activating his fire element skill. Lots of flames started flying at that triad guy. And a huge ring of fire surrounded that guy and the man had no place to go. But he started to say that this weak magic could not defeat him. But at the same moment our hero was already in the air and that guy decided that he was a fool and he couldn't dodge his attack in that position. But suddenly that guy's left leg started to be covered in ice and he couldn't move. And at that moment, our hero started attacking the opponent with his daylight skill. As soon as the bright rays almost reached that guy, and one would think that he was already finished, suddenly some other player appeared. Able to repel Gene Hex attack with his cross striking skills. It was one of that triad guy's partner who was standing there watching all of this, but suddenly decided to intervene to protect his comrade. Our hero didn't understand where he was coming from. And as soon as that guy landed, who came out of nowhere, started saying that it was because he was expecting it, and started telling his comrade that he figured he couldn't do it alone. And suddenly three more of his comrades showed up. And once the whole group got together, one of those guys who showed up started saying that he didn't think there was anyone outside the tower with so much internal energy. But our hero was glad that they finally showed up. At the same moment, the notification system began to show that he had found all the residents inside the triad and the copying conditions had been met. He had successfully copied the infinite step skill. Now, infinite step and ball graveyard had combined, and he had a new skill, demonic sword king steps. When this skill is applied, his movement speed is increased by 70%. When you concentrate mana in the skill's pillars, it can be used to attack, and Gene Hack was happy about it. But those guys who appeared started asking their comrade if he was alright, to which he replied that it was just a trifle. And right after that, the other guys started making fun of him. After all, it was the first time they had seen their brother disconsolate, and it seemed to them that he was not at his best, because of which he began to get angry and tell them that he was and did fine on his own, and who asked them to interfere in the first place. But they started to say that they didn't doubt his skills. Only he mustn't forget that the head had ordered to reach an agreement, not exterminate everyone around him. The girl who was standing next to him began to say that her brother's words were right and if he was going to continue working with them, it was simply not worth fighting. The guy started to answer them that he already knew. Only he already knew they came from the tower. And once they heard that, they couldn't believe how so. And how could Gene Heck know about them? And one of the brothers started to say that regardless of their plans he should be killed, because he disliked him so much. But suddenly another one of the brothers started telling him to calm down, for he understands his feelings. After all, there is a large wave of zombies approaching from the right, and they only have three minutes left. As soon as Jean Heck started to leave, she started talking about them getting out of here quickly, after all, the stadium is their place and they should find another one. To which one of the brothers started telling him that they wouldn't have chosen this horrible place anyway. 
After all, they already have a base and a place that is much better than their huge outdoor stadium, and they should try to hold out. Then, after the first wave was over, they would return. One of the brothers started telling his comrade to hurry back to the base and organize the defense. This is an order for everyone to move out. As soon as they started to leave, he started telling our hero to know that he was lucky, because next time he will fight at full strength. Well, our hero stood unperturbed, for he had such empty words heaped upon him, and the girl from his squad began to say that she was a bit tired, for they already had to fight before the wave began. They actually need to conserve their strength, they need to get ready too. Let's get going at the same moment. Our hero started to see that those guys have settled in a supermarket. There are strong walls, plenty of groceries and an optimal place for a long defense. But, however, there was one drawback there, but that's just the way it is. And Gene Heck decided to move out, because at this time already a drone flew over the road and noticed a lot of zombies that were coming in their direction. The guys who were watching all this began to ask Gene Heck if they were sure they could fight them off on their own. And wondering if he had purposely chosen a strange place to enjoy the extreme like in the past, but Gene Heck started telling them not to worry and showing them the sunflowers behind his back. He said these things were more useful than they looked. Teresa, who I looked at first, said it was the first time she had ever seen such big flowers. Now Gene Heck began to explain the plan and purpose of the base defense to prevent the capture of the flag. He placed the flag in the center of the stadium so that it would always be in sight. Their stadium has four entrances, northwest, east, south, and west. He planted plants in front of each entrance. If they kept these plants, they would be able to protect their large base. Due to its size, they would be able to count on the maximum number of kills. His comrades couldn't believe how strong the plants were and started asking what they should do. And Gene Hack went on to say that the plant will wipe out most of the zombies, but they periodically need to be given about a minute to recharge. And during that time they would have to hold back the zombie hordes. The swordsman who was in the group started to say that he would take over the western direction, but Gene Hack responded by telling him not to overdo it and let the zombies bite him. To this, the guy started to get angry and said that he thought some pieces of rotting flesh would be able to overpower him. Our hero replied to him that he had literally just said that he got something similar from a guy in Nurem, but the guy replied that it was a different matter. Gene Hack started ordering the rest of the guys to cover them, staying in the center, assessing the situation and remembering to use the drones, keeping an eye on all directions. The other girl started to say that she would go north to hold the southern direction. Once everyone began to take their positions, our hero began to look at his paired swords and finally rejoiced that he would be able to use these dragon swords. Once the preparations were over, the notification system showed that the zombies were already approaching. Everyone was already near their strongholds and was ready to fight to the end just to not miss a single zombie. And at the same moment, a huge crowd of zombies began to run straight at them from different directions, and the sunflowers began to emit sunlight, and huge fireballs began to fly towards the zombies that had infiltrated the stadium due to the heavy blows. The zombies started to fly off and die. And as soon as the huge explosion sounded, the girl who was guarding one of the entrances could believe what kind of power it was because it was no match for ordinary defense towers. And as soon as the recharging of the flower began, she realized that it was now her turn to defend the entrance. Gene Heck, who was in charge, started telling everyone that the real battle was about to begin and they needed to hold out for a minute. As soon as he looked at Teresa, she began to remember that in times of danger, Gene Heck has always been there for her and they will get through things by trusting and having each other's backs. And she's doing what needs to be done for the sake of those who... After these thoughts, she took her incredible stand and began to apply her strong skills, because that's why she trusted Gene Heck completely this time. After a long battle, the first wave finally ended, and the notification system showed that the second wave would start in three hours. Some players were standing without strength, because they had a very hard time in the first wave. But there were also players who were supporting each other and started telling them not to overexert themselves and rest more, because the second wave would start soon. The Tangan Guild, led by John Wan, began to motivate their comrades to think about the items and experience they would receive. And if something goes wrong, they can just run away and be careful. At the same time, the notification system started showing that there would be a popularity vote and the best moments from each team's bases would be broadcast. Some players have started to take notice of the supermarket, the base of the Triad Guild. They are said to be using a new type of tower to protect the narrow passageway, and they are doing very well. One of the players pointed out an interesting fact to their leader, there is a team that has taken Sanam Stadium and they only have five members. 
And as soon as he looked at his face, he was overcome with incredible amazement, the fact that five people were on such a huge base was something amazing. He couldn't believe his eyes, what he saw was new to him, after all, he didn't know what had to be done to plants to make them so strong. But plants were okay, and as he began to look at the guys who were fighting the zombies, he began to realize that the zombies weren't as close as they might have seemed. They were outnumbered and some of the players began to realize that all the notable newcomers had gathered. But suddenly, the guild leader Tangan took a closer look and noticed the strange girl he had seen earlier. And as soon as he saw that it was Mrs. Doreza, he was very happy, because he remembered that once in one of the dungeons, she had helped him and prevented him from dying. From that moment, after he saw his mentor Teresa, she started telling all his comrades to vote for this video sooner rather than later. His comrades realized that as soon as he saw Teresa, he immediately went crazy and they decided to hold him back so he wouldn't go crazy until the end. But Teresa was the best for him and had to blow the place apart. At this time, our hero looked at how the sun energy was counted, and he got 1800 points of sun energy. He was very happy about this, because this energy could be obtained when killing zombies. It was needed to strengthen the plants, and then it would become much easier for them to defend themselves. As soon as Gene Heck noticed that he had two more flowers left, a stone plant and a berserk plant, he started saying to plant one cannon flower each in the east and south, and they should have an ice plant in the center and a stone plant in the west. I remained the last flower that Gene Heck was holding, but suddenly his comrade began to tell him that this plant could just be planted in the ground. But he began to answer him that it was not. After all, if you just plant it like that, it won't grow in the right amount of time, and he realized that his friends were impatient, so he started explaining things to them. After all, they need a special fertilizer to grow fast. And as soon as he combined all the ingredients, the notification system began to show that the plant seeds began to shiver in anticipation. And they're licking themselves because of the incredible flavor they've never experienced in their lives. And once everything was ready, Gene Heck began to feed one of the plants with that amazing energy. He told it that it was doing great, and it needed to eat more and more to grow as fast as possible. But his friends were watching him at this time and started whispering amongst themselves that he was some kind of different person today, like he was crazy. How long does it take to turn into such a person? The other comrade of our hero was angry. After all, because of this jerk, he always loses. But Teresa, who was standing behind him and walking all the time, kept repeating that Gene Heck was a pervert. A little while later, Gene Heck started telling his companions that in general, if you give the plants fertilizer, they will grow quite fast, and they need to take care of them until the next wave. But Teresa began to wonder where he was going to go now. To which Gene Heck began to say that he needed to clean up the area a bit. But she still didn't definitively understand what he meant by cleaning up. And a few minutes later, he started walking out of the stadium and noticed that all the other players were busy gathering supplies for the battlefield and preparing for a long battle. But he knew they were fools, for it was all for nothing, for only prostatics prepare for a prolonged battle. And as he started to walk up to one of the buildings across from the supermarket where the triad was located, and as soon as he stepped inside, he realized that he hadn't been there in a long time, about eight years. Oh, and there's also a lot of cobwebs in the corners, just like before. Yes and the view was still the same, and he began to topple the tablecloth that covered the large mirror. Gene Hack wasn't surprised that the thing wasn't going anywhere either, and he began to proceed with the plan he had prepared from the beginning. And as soon as he touched the mirror, he began to pass through it. At the same time, he began to appear in the supermarket where the triad was located. And as soon as he came out of the mirror, he started to hear that some of the triad gang started to get angry. And one of them slammed his fist on the wall and started saying that he would kill Gene Heck so he wouldn't be alive. He would certainly not keep him. The girl who was sitting nearby started saying that she usually disagrees, but this time she thinks her brother's words make sense and they need to increase their influence. But it's not necessary to team up with someone who can't be controlled. But her brother was somehow surprised, because he couldn't believe that she finally took his side, and their new ringleader started to say that they had many secret meetings with people outside. But unlike Gene Hack, no one could reveal them. He wondered how he revealed their identities, and perhaps if he took him out like Han said, there would be no cause for concern. Come on at that very moment they started to feel some kind of explosion and couldn't figure out where it was coming from. But the guy who ran in to see them started saying that something had appeared in the warehouse and there was a huge flower that came from nowhere. Our hero, who was standing nearby, started saying that he had taken a housewarming gift, it was a red gourmet flower. And he started saying that he was sorry, 
but this flower set all their non-food that was in the warehouse. But the guys downstairs couldn't understand how he was able to get in here, and they started yelling at him that they didn't know what he was up to, but he should, for starters, stop right now. But Gene Heck didn't understand why he had to listen to him, and one of the Sangoon members started telling him that he was very brave and though he realized what he was doing right now. Our hero started scratching his ear and said that he was referring to the queen now. And as soon as all the Sangun members heard the word queen, they couldn't believe how he knew about the queen. But Jean Heck, sitting on the big flower, went on to say that if the base, which was defended by over 200 people, fell before the third wave, the mistress of the fourth floor, the womb of the dead, nicknamed the queen, would emerge. And he kept thinking how he would fulfill these conditions, did not realize that they just chose this place as a base. And the girl who was standing at the bottom interrupted our hero and began to say that the queen cannot be defeated, even united, and why the one who knows about it wants to summon her. And Jean Heck with a smile on his face began to answer her, I'm just too lazy to mop up those fucking zombies a hundred times, just too lazy. And as soon as he hit the flower, it started to rise up and said that he wished them a good death. The guys below started yelling back that he was a fucking creep, and suddenly appeared out of nowhere and said he wanted to come back and fight them and now he had to run away. But a few seconds later, the notification system started showing that the supermarket base had been destroyed. His comrades who were in the stadium started to feel some vibrations and couldn't understand where they were coming from. But one of the guys started saying that a supermarket was collapsing. This was the same supermarket and the base that they were fighting, the triad had chosen it as their base. And they hoped it wasn't related to their comrade Gene Heck, but their intuition told them it was. And at the same moment, the notification system began to show that the conditions had been met, and the unique event began. At this time, there was a queen underground who began to hate the wretched humans even more and was ready to punish them. From that moment on, she began to join the battle. After a while, the notification system began to show that a unique event had begun and the boss of the fourth floor was traveling to them to punish the weak. All the players, including our hero's team, started to see the notification that the fourth floor boss was coming up to them. It was hard for them to believe how this was even possible, as all they had to do was defend the waves of zombies. While the others didn't understand the nature of what was happening, one of the squad members, Gene Heck, realized that it was the mentor's doing. It wasn't clear to him what he wanted to accomplish by this, but Gene Heck, who was standing on top of the building and looking at the stadium, began to tell himself that this was a wonderful place. The item he had gotten after killing the third floor boss turned out to be the solar eclipse stone, a divine relic. It is used in ceremonies, it can cause darkness by covering the sun, and enhances a skill with the darkness attribute by 100% while relaxing a skill with the light attribute by 50%. And at the same moment he began to apply it, and the stone began to activate. And a solar eclipse appeared, and soon after that, all the zombies started to feel this power coming to them. They started to get even stronger and mutate, and while the zombies were screaming at the top of their lungs outside, Teresa who was standing in the stadium started to feel her skills with the attribute of light started to weaken by 50%. And the other players who noticed that something was happening to Teresa started asking what was wrong with her. And she started saying that she couldn't believe that this was even possible, because her saint powers were suddenly halved. But at this time, the boss of the fourth floor, who was in the dungeon, felt that her darkness attribute skills had increased by 100%, because of which she started to get angry and said that it was an insolent person who was allowing himself. And the notification system started to show Gene Hack that the boss of the fourth floor was looking for the location he was in, and right after that, the next notification window appeared and it said that the boss of the fourth floor was directing the entire attack to Sanam Stadium. But our hero was happy with this result, because this was all part of his plan. And once it all started, he decided it was time to upload the video to YouTube. But elsewhere, other players started running in different directions. After all, they didn't realize where the boss came from and the information that there was a fourth floor boss hadn't come to them. And they began to run away quickly from the triad, for this raid had already failed for them. And while they weren't running away, one of the players started telling his head that if they failed the raid on the fourth floor, then it should close down and be unavailable for 20 days. But the chapter, who was running nearby, started saying that they shouldn't run away. After all, they need to survive first, and then they will think about it. And a few minutes later, the viewers who started watching the uploaded video by our hero started discussing what kind of plant was in that video. Failed even one of the first waves and everything, and the fact that the squad was over 300 members, not just, and made it so the boss was woken up. And it's a disgrace. 
and at this point in the stadium, his friends started to see that his video was in the top 10 in terms of views, and they didn't realize when he had already made the video and uploaded it online. Further, watching how many views he had already gotten, but suddenly their attention turned to our hero, and they started asking him if he had accidentally overdone it and if he was planning to bring all the zombies and the fourth floor boss straight to their stadium. Teresa, who was standing behind him, started to say that the second wave hadn't even started yet, and the destruction of the supermarket wasn't his doing after all. But Jean Heck answered her that who knows. And Swordsman, who was standing nearby, started telling Jean Heck that he did or didn't do it. It was good that a worthy target had emerged, and whether or not he had a way to remove the queen. And Jean Heck began to explain that there was one method, and Swordsman was glad to hear that he had some sort of plan this time and began to ask what it was. Jean Heck turned towards him, pointed his finger at him, and said that his role was very important this time. Soon after that, they started to feel a large pack of terrifying zombies coming towards them, and at the head of them is the queen, who is the boss of the fourth floor. And soon they had already reached the stadium and the queen began to feel that they were here. She began to tell her subordinates that Jean Heck was her prey and they could punish the rest. All the zombies started running into the stadium, and like locusts, they started climbing the walls and getting inside. Teresa, who was standing inside the stadium, started shouting to everyone else to go back, but suddenly they noticed some special zombies and started firing all the guns at them. After all, they were the biggest threat and the big fireflowers also started shooting big fireballs that flew at the zombies and everything around them started exploding. The queen who was standing near the entrance of the stadium started shouting for the fool to get out to her as fast as possible. After all, he was weak in front of her and she would punish him for calling her outside. But suddenly, as soon as she stepped inside the stadium, she saw something incomprehensible, glittering and large in front of her. It was a huge glacier, in which the entire squad of our hero was frozen, and the boss of the fourth floor could not understand what was going on here. Suddenly, some bright crystal started flying towards the fourth floor boss and fell near her feet. She bent down to pick it up, but as soon as she picked it up, she didn't realize what it was, and ten minutes ago, the swordsman who was in our hero's squad started getting angry at him and says that he won't die by his own death. That's right, because Jean Heck began to transfer his money to his account, and the amount that was 100,000 coins, because he knew how much money he had, and he did not want to spend his own, and he began to tell everyone else that from now on they were all becoming bait. But swordsman, who was standing behind him, did not like such words. For they sounded like mockery. But Jean Heck apologized to him and began to say that it seemed he had used the wrong word. It wasn't the bait, the amino trap he was holding in his hands. It was the little crystal that he had thrown to the fourth dungeon boss, which he was now holding in his hands. And at this moment, it began to glow brightly, and suddenly began to activate the ice creation. The large ice prison began to freeze the entire stadium and all the zombies that were inside the stadium. And after a few minutes, everyone was frozen, including the one after the fourth floor. She began to feel that she was extremely cold, at which point she activated her spellcasting skill, breaking the shackles that were restraining her. She then walked closer to the frozen Terraza and asked her to leave her house. But suddenly, she felt someone approaching her from behind. And as soon as she turned her head, she saw Jean Heck, who started to use his skill, silent breathing, and activated the Demonic King Sword Step skill. With all his speed, he began to run towards her fortress, but not before he briefly broke away from the queen. She started yelling at him that he couldn't go to her fortress or she would kill him. Pendragil is the womb of the dead, nicknamed queen, and her level, skills, and deadly poison attacks make her the boss of the fourth floor. She is strong in all parameters except intelligence. The essence of passing the fourth floor is to protect the base, and this rule applies not only to players, but also to zombies. And now, since the queen is in the stadium, it means that her base defense is weakened, and Jean Heck was running at all speeds straight into her lair to destroy it. But suddenly he turned around and saw that the queen started running after him, and he started to realize that somehow quickly she had figured out his plan. But it was already too late, because he had gotten off pretty well, and there should be enough time for everything he had planned. But suddenly, Jean Heck began to see that there were more zombies in front of him. Yes, mutated ones too and they were waiting for someone to approach them. And at this moment, our hero sped up and began to activate his sword graveyard and heaven's protection skill. Swinging, he was already ready to destroy everyone in his path. And in an instant, all the zombies were cut in half and began to fall to the ground. And as soon as our hero was done, he noticed that he had a drop of zombie blood on him. 
And for him it was just as disgusting as the last time when he passed the test in the tower and decided to finish everything quickly, so as not to get even more dirty. After all, the flag he wanted to destroy and thus defeat the fourth floor boss was about to appear in front of him. But just as he started to get closer and closer to the flag, suddenly something swung and a big red wave swept over our hero's head. He realized that there was finally a guardian to protect the Butcher Queen's flag. But Jean Hack didn't want to just stagnate in place and started running straight at him, even though he didn't know how to deal with him this time. After all, the big guardian Butcher was already looking straight at him and wanted to cut him with his big scissors. But as soon as he swung, his scissors hit the katanas that were in the ground and he could not cut them. And at this time, our hero was already in the air and started activating his fire element skill. And with all his speed, he hit the butcher right on his head with his fire, causing his head to start burning. But Gene Hack knew that he just had incredible regeneration. But he only did that to limit his view, and attack from below with his strongest katanas that he inherited from his girlfriend's grandfather. Here our hero started to slash him with all his might, but Butcher was confident in his strength and in his armor. He began to tell our hero that this would not kill him, and at the same moment, Gene Heck was already at his back and started activating his mandala skill, telling him that he was willing to bet that he was about to finish him off with one blow. And there was a bright explosion, from which half the city began to glow with a bright light. Immediately, as soon as the light went out, the notification system began to show our hero that his level had been upgraded and he was able to obtain a vengeance-hungry soul scissors. Gene Heck, who was standing there happy about his 31st victory over the butcher, began to walk over to the flag and call it a day with these battles. But as soon as Gene Heck approached the flag, he saw a notification window in front of him, and he wondered what would appear there. And soon it appeared saying that the Black Hound was showing his presence and a representative of the Egyptian gods was making him a business proposition. Gene Hack realized that the Black Hound meant Anubis, and he thought he would sit quietly for a while after expending his energies on the minuscule first floor. And it was entertaining, and he started telling him to listen to his suggestion, and the Black Hound began to let out a prolonged howl. But our hero didn't understand what it was, or why he was angry now. He decided that he would just take the flag right now. At this point, the Black Hound was at a loss and started asking him to calm down, saying that the Egyptian gods want to see the logical conclusion of the battle, as do those guarding the same place. The aforementioned they cannot accept that the sweep of the fourth floor will be completed without a boss battle. Or maybe they just don't like the cocky little man, and Gene Heck starts asking them why, or if he should accept their offer. After all, he could just take that flag and be done with it, but the Black Hound began to smile suspiciously and offer Gene Heck a treaty. But it wasn't that simple, and Gene Heck began to realize that this was some suspicious generosity. A few minutes later, the queen was already running towards her kingdom, and as soon as she landed on the ground with a huge thud and raised her head, she saw that the flag was there. And she didn't understand why no one had picked it up. But at this point Jean Heck started telling her that she was asking why he hadn't picked up the flag. Got it and didn't get it in an easy win. All because just someone made him fight her and he already got an advance. So he can't take the flag until he defeats her. But the queen didn't understand what the advance was, or who told him to fight her. And Jean Heck is about pulling out a huge pair of scissors and says he's very happy because he got the advance payment. And immediately after the spoken words of our hero the queen began to summon her sword. From the position I was in, the stance she started to say that he would regret it. But the fact that he dared to come to her, Jean Heck wasn't going to just stand there either and began to activate the heaven's patronage. His skills with the attribute of light were weakened by 50% due to the effects of the solar eclipse stone, and he began to realize that even with the maximum leap effect, he wouldn't even come close to having enough stats to kill her. But suddenly, he noticed that the queen had vaporized from where she was standing and was suddenly behind him. With a super-powered attack, she hit him with all her strength so that half of the building near him exploded, and she was already ready to finish him off. Once the dust settled, she realized that she couldn't damage him and he was able to block her powerful attack. Jean Heck started to activate his mandala skill and prepare to fight, but the queen started to take on her face and tell him why he wasn't going to die, started to ask him to disappear. But immediately behind the quiet words came a huge shout, disappear. And quickly, and with all her might, the queen began to attack. But our hero activated his skilled demonic sword king steps and with all his speed began to jump sideways to the side, thus escaping from her attacks, all because his movement speed increased by 70%. Immediately after that, he activated his ice creation skill, and huge ice blocks began to appear near the queen. With that, she began to freeze in midair, 
and with all his strength, he struck her. Little did he manage to catch her with such an attack, and as soon as he bounced to the side, Jean Hack realized that it wasn't enough. Immediately after saying this, the queen ran at him, for she was very angry because of this cheeky little man. And as soon as she jumped up the mountain and wanted to strike with her big sword, our hero started to activate the ice creation skill, and her eyes started to freeze. Because of this, she couldn't see anything, only falling to the ground and holding her head. At the same moment, Jean Hack swung with full force and dealt another blow to her head. Again only hurting her slightly. Because of this, the queen became even more angry and started saying that the annoying little man had made a huge mistake by attacking her and started attacking him back. With the strongest attack, our hero began to fly off into the air, and the queen, who was standing on the ground, began to activate her skills, funeral march and huge dark branch. At the beginning they were rushing straight towards our hero who was in the air and couldn't dodge, and the black hound who was watching the battle started to cheer. But now we will see how before the battle with the queen, the black hound started offering a jackal's fawn as an advance, and this item increased movement speed by 10% and attack power by 30%. Our hero was up for grabs at such generosity, but it still wasn't enough for him. And he would enter this battle if he agreed to his one condition. The black hound began to wonder, what are those conditions? And Jean Heck began to tell her that there was nothing special he would ask for. There's only one rank item, it's called the white branch, and he should give it to him. White branch, white branch, is mainly used for medicinal purposes. In fact, it's an extremely common item, and can easily be obtained on floors higher than tents. To Anubis on the 42nd floor, such an item is nothing but useless trash. The black hound began to accept the conditions, and as soon as our hero could get the jackal's fawn and the white branch, the notification window began to show him that he couldn't take the flag until he had the upper hand on the queen. But he wasn't going to take the flag, he started to combine the white branch and the jackal's fawn with the scissors, with a vengeance-hungry soul. And once they united, he was able to gain immense power. For the unification was successful, and a scythe appeared in his hands. And the dissection of the causes of their bonding and the complexity of this scythe was such that I could not determine. After all, it was an artifact of the great god that had the effect of absoluteness and could kill what could not be killed and dissect what could not be dissected. And as soon as he was able to get his hands on this amazing artifact, the system began to show him that the appearance of the divine artifact on the corresponding fourth floor had attracted system intervention due to the recalculation of the effects. The item can only be used once, and our hero began to smile, for he realized that this artifact was not appropriate for his level. Can only be used once, or so it became clear to him. After all, even one chance would be enough for him. And as soon as he swung it at the queen, she began to sense the danger, and realized that she wouldn't be able to dodge, but decided to attack him back with her last attack anyway. She bet everything she had and took her only chance. Her large sword flew towards our hero, who was also moving with terrifying speed towards the queen. As soon as their attacks collided, our hero's artifact began to destroy the queen's sword. And soon the sword was completely destroyed and the queen took a huge amount of damage to her body, causing our hero to start smiling. Anubis, who was watching all this, couldn't believe his eyes what just happened. The queen began to remember the fact that it was as if she was in a closed room where no daylight penetrated. When she saw the door open, she stood up to see who was about to enter her room. As soon as the door opened and the queen saw the bright light, she looked at Jean Heck, who started to say that the third floor boss was hiding behind the backs of rumors, but the queen was much stronger. And now he was ready to say goodbye to her, for the fourth floor boss had been defeated. And right after defeating the queen, our player's level started to rise, and the final system notification showed that he had successfully defended the base. And each squad member was given five random A rank boxes. And as soon as all the squad members started climbing up after the big glacier thawed out, Teresa still realized that she was able to pull it off this time, and she was very much relieved that she had helped him in some way. And the next day all the news started saying that it had been 24 hours since the fourth floor of the test tower had been breached, and they still couldn't believe it. After all, they expected it would take at least 20 days to fight off 100 waves. It was hard for them to believe that Gene Heck and his team had pulled it off in just one day. A little while later, when the news had calmed down and the excitement had died down, Gene Heck started walking into one of the establishments and telling his friends that even though he was late, he had to bring someone with him. It was Alice, who started coming in after him and saying that the banquet hall was pretty messy. The guys who saw Alice realized it was the same one they had met recently. 
Jean Hack started to say that he had brought her since she was also now a member of their old guy's company, although the name old guy's company wasn't particularly normal, said one of Jean Hack's friends who was standing nearby. But suddenly, our hero noticed that he couldn't see Teresa and started asking his friends, where is she? The girl who was standing near him began to say that she would be about an hour away and advised him to start without her. And at that moment, Jean Hack started to turn his head around and saw a familiar face. It was Swordsman, who was sitting at the nearest table. Jean Hack started to say that he didn't think he was coming, but he came anyway, and Swordsman started to reply to him that he only came to learn the secret method of getting random rewards. Jean Hack walked even closer to him and putting his hand on his shoulder, began to tell him that he would reveal the secret to him, so he should just sit down and have a drink with them. Immediately after that, the door started to open and the rest of the group started to come inside, who as soon as they entered, started bowing to Jean Hack and telling him that they congratulated their president for successfully completing the fourth floor. When everyone had already gathered, Jean Hayak started telling the guys to all eat as much as they could. After all, in honor of the cleanup of the fourth floor, Alice is paying for everyone with her two coins. A little while later a lot of meat and beer had already been brought to the table, and the whole group was already sitting and drinking at the table. Some were chatting among themselves, and some were just eating. But Alice, who was sitting at the table and looking at the meat, couldn't believe that she could eat so many delicious things for only two coins. And she started eating the meat, because she had tasted many kinds of meat, but the flavor of this one was on a completely different level. And as soon as our hero began to take one of the chicken legs with his fork, the atmosphere changed, and began to threaten Jean Heck. He realized that it was better not to annoy her, and told her to eat it herself. After that, she immediately became a normal, kind and little girl, and started to thank Jean Heck for that. After all, she would never forget such a kind act. But Jean Heck could only think of the fact that no one would say anything about her being one of the strongest residents of the tower. Some of the guys who were sitting nearby started discussing who was who. The swordsman started to say that he used to be a student in medical school. Although it was hard to believe, and at that very moment, Teresa, who was the very last one to enter the room because she was late. And as soon as the door opened, she walked in and told everyone else to excuse her for being late. Well, all the newcomers kind of went off the chain when they saw Teresa and started running up to her to take pictures. Jean Heck, who was watching all this, began to smile, because he remembered that in the past, when he went to the Tower of Trials, he was alone, but now he sees a lot of friends and good people in front of him, who will always help him. And Alice, who noticed this strange smile, began to ask why he was smiling. But Jean Hack replied to her that he was just glad to have friends. And when the party was over, Jean Hack sat in his apartment and looked at his stats. He was surprised that he had risen three levels. After all, he had thought he was on the most perfect path before, but now he was advancing so fast that he couldn't even compare to the past, and that was because of the changes he had received. After the game became a reality, and most importantly that he didn't go at a loss, he decided to look at the reward for the fourth floor. The first thing he saw was a high-level skill enhancer. He decided to apply it to the skill he uses most often, ice creation. Immediately afterward, the ice creation skill was upgraded to level 8. In the hotel after this change with the ventilation, cold air started coming in, even colder than it was, and the staff started complaining that someone had turned on the air conditioner. Now they were getting cold, but the manager said he was so responsible. If he is cold, he had better get dressed, because even he can't think of getting sick and shirking work. The next moment, Jean Hack decided to use the commoner item random, an item that could be obtained by scrolling. Level a random items. And as soon as he started spinning the reel, the notification system immediately started telling him to press the red button located in the middle. He had very little time left, but these were just cheap threats to him. After all, if he set the wheel to spin, the sound and visual effects would make the player anxious, as if something terrible was about to happen in his place. He pressed the button, but aside from him looking for bugs throughout and across, the bugs were deliberately implemented by someone in the system, and he kept spinning the drum. As soon as time ran out, he would re-spin it until he was spinning the wheels non-stop. On the 37th revolution, the wheel's spinning speed had decreased by 99%. When he demonstrated this to the swordsman and explained how he could trick the system, he couldn't believe it actually worked. He started questioning our hero about how far he was willing to go, but that was a whole other question. Gene Hack gave the swordsman the opportunity to choose his desired item this way. 
The swordsman began to rejoice that he would finally be able to fight at full power. However, this method had consequences, the improved item would disappear after a week. He was happy taking all the attributes, but Jean Hack couldn't wait to see his reaction after a week. And just as our hero was spinning his drum for the 37th time, the pills he wanted to get finally fell out, tricolored class A pills. He began to ponder that, given that he could only use them for a week, he decided that this was the best option for passing the next floor. The last and most important item he had for passing the fifth floor was the entrance ticket to the Great Magical Library. And as soon as he used the ticket, the Great Magic Library began to open. He found himself inside and began to realize that he hadn't been there in a long time. Should he visit that old man sitting in the very center? And as soon as he started to approach that old man, who was sitting at his table writing something, he started to say to our hero, what's all this about? After all, of course, he had heard that the fourth floor had already been dealt with, but he didn't expect to immediately see guests at his place as well. And as soon as he stood up, he began to say to our hero, Welcome, my name is Rick, and I am the manager of this library. Rick Hennessy is a mid-level influential person, the manager in charge of the great magic library in the Tower of Trials. Gene Heck was glad that he had finally met someone from the manager's side. After Gene Heck introduced himself, Rick began to say that in his long life, this was the first time he had ever seen someone come here so quickly. And not only was he able to come here so quickly, but he was also in the huge maze in the library. Found him right away. It's quite an interesting case, but Gene Hack started to reply that it was just that luck was on his side today. Once Gene Hack started to pull out one of the books, Rick told him that he could take any books he wanted, but there were no books here at the level he could read. To begin with, one must understand the rune language. But suddenly, Jean Heck interrupted Rick and started to say that the teachings on ascension to the sixth circle were written by the Imperial Palace Mage Telemos, and he was right. Rick immediately started looking at him with a hard stare and asked if he knew the language of runes. Jean Heck replied that he by nature liked to learn new things, so he knew a little bit of everything. Immediately afterward, Rick wondered how a player who was just about to get to the fifth floor already knew the rune language. He started to ask if he could ask one question to Gene Hexan, and as soon as the latter told him to feel free to ask his own questions, Rick started to wonder about the fact that he understands exactly how he is different from the other players, and at the very least in the fact that he managed to get here. Only he feels like he has some kind of special support behind him. And right after these words the Anubis court was activated and our hero started to say that it was true. The Egyptian gods were behind him and thanks to them he was able to get here and get information about the tower. But Rick couldn't believe how this could be possible, because he can definitely feel the energy of the god Anubis, which means he is already showing interest in the players. But Gene Hack started to say that he felt like he was a valuable player to them since they blessed him. But soon the notification system started showing that since no target had been chosen, Anubis' judgment was being deactivated. And then Rick started saying that a worthy person needs to be treated accordingly and started worshipping Gene Heck. He said that he seemed to have underestimated his dear guest and began to apologize profoundly. And as soon as he bowed, Gene Heck began to contemplate what this Anubis would see, he was sure his neck would seize up. Too bad he can't see with those eyes. Eric went on to say that he would give him one of the books as a gift to prove his apology. So Gene Heck asked Rick again if he could really choose any book he wanted? To which Rick replied that of course he could, because he wanted to give his precious guest a precious gift. And in that case Gene Heck started to say that he would take that particular book. But Rick interjected, is our hero sure? For surely it is a good grimoire. However, it is written in an ancient rune language, so except for those who lived in this era, no one can read it. Immediately after saying that, Gene Heck began to read the book, saying, what am I, a black dragon, writing? This is to commemorate becoming an ancient dragon for a thousand years. He researched methods of breaking the rules of the world and blah blah blah. Anyway, the book is written by some lizard with 8th grade syndrome. And he'll take it. After saying that, Rick started apologizing again and laughing loudly, saying what you'd expect from someone blessed by the gods. And clapping his hands three times, Rick began to fade away, and lastly said that from now on he would watch him, Mr. Gene Heck. I will look forward to the day they meet again. In the meantime, some guy was running away from those who ran after him, for it was horrible. The fifth floor seemed like a world with a dead civilization, and in this dead world, there were some strange fanatics who were trying to catch ordinary players. And the ones that were left were just fanatics mad with blood. 
the place turned out to be one big mental institution. And the news started showing that this hospital that everyone was talking about really exists, and they're talking about fanatics. And they didn't seem that threatening, but everybody was wondering why they were running away. They fought them. But the guy who was able to escape them started telling the news that he was going to fight them back using skills. However, there was a big obstacle on the fifth floor and there was a ban on using skills. He couldn't even summon his inventory. So this time, he offers them a special discount of up to 20% on the return stone and sells it for only 5,000 coins. And at this moment, Teresa started to turn off the live stream she was watching on her phone and told him to take her to the fifth floor with him. But Jean Heck began to answer her that he couldn't do that. And Teresa became unclear as to why he was saying that. After all, she began to explain that it was already clear that he was going to go to the fifth floor, but she couldn't let him go. However, Jean Hack didn't understand where she got such stubbornness from. On top of that, she had become so assertive, and he still repeated to her that he couldn't. No matter how much she asked to go with him, he would be able to sneak in on his own. Therefore, she must stumble. But right after saying that, Teresa took Jean Hack by his arm and started saying that he should promise her that he wouldn't try the impossible. And a little while later, Jean Hack was sitting in his car, holding the hand that Teresa had recently held onto and remembering her words about not trying to do the impossible. And it amused him, but at this moment, the notification system began to show that he had been sent a gift as aid from the Cladium Kingdom. And the Cladium Kingdom were enemies of the Murim power and Jean Heck was able to obtain muddy smell, which was a skill that allowed him to hide his own scent, breath, and even signs of presence. Thanks to the support of the higher powers, he couldn't imagine being given the ability to conflict with players of interest like Murim. He decided that he would make the most of this skill, and a little while later, he was able to enter the fifth floor of the Tower of Trials. He will now be able to start his walkthrough from a random location, since the use of the skill was blocked. He is given a random F rank item, and he only has one rule, survive and escape. But right after the bans, the notification system started showing that since he owns the Macedrian Grimoire, one of his higher skills has been unlocked and he can use Greedy Gaze. So he grabbed that book from the library and decided that he would keep it, because he would still need it in the future. And a little while later, he started to notice that a lot of players couldn't get up from the floor, because everywhere was dark. Most of them didn't realize where they were all going, and some of them didn't understand why it was so humid. Gene Hack realized that those who were at the same starting point had already begun to stay. And just as he decided to leave all the newcomers here and quickly move on to the next level, the notification window showed that a tracking scroll had activated on his hand. And the movement to the location of the Svetka object began. And at the same moment Teresa appeared, who was able to teleport straight to our hero. And as soon as she appeared, she started saying that she wasn't sure if he would keep his promise. So she followed him to help him pass the fifth floor of the Tower of Trials. And Jean Hack started to say, shake that he asked her not to follow him and what was she even thinking going here. But Teresa started to reply that he shouldn't scold the person who came here because she was worried about him. From that moment on, Gene Hack realized that all his plans had to be rearranged and his perfect passage went down the drain. After a few seconds, Teresa started to notice that all the players who were standing near them started to say that something appeared in their pocket. And as soon as she stuck her hand in her pocket, she saw that there was a flashlight in her hand. It found a hero, there was a pen, and it was kind of weird. After all, everyone had flashlights, and he only had a pen. But it was better than a flashlight for Gene Hayak because this pen could be used in a fight. At the same moment, another player started to light a lighter to bring light, because it was dark everywhere. And once the light came on, they could now see something at least. Teresa also wanted to turn on her flashlight to see what was going on in the neighborhood, but Gene Heck stopped her, for he knew what was coming next. All the players began to look around to see what this strange place around them was. To begin with it says how they should get out of here in such darkness. But as soon as the lights came on, the other guys in yellow suits started to notice those players who had a lighter in their hands. They started yelling that they were victims and moving towards them. As soon as the players realized that they had made a mistake, thus giving themselves away, that strange cult started yelling for everyone else to grab them quickly. And while there was a commotion, our hero and Teresa hid behind a nearby rock and watched everything from the sidelines. But suddenly Teresa called Jean Heck and asked if they should save those people. But Jean Heck started to answer her that since she had followed him, she would have to listen to his instruction and they should avoid unnecessary disclosures right now. Besides, Teresa is not ready for a direct frontal assault right now. 
But Teresa started to tell Jean Heck that he wasn't underestimating her too much, and she got her things ready too, starting to pull something out of her pocket. And as soon as it was needed, two stones appeared from her pocket, and Jean Haku began to tell him to take a look. After all, she had also bought a displacement stone for him, this item is needed on the fifth floor. But as soon as Jean Heck saw those stones, he realized that she had made a mistake, and he felt ashamed that such an amazing girl was so stupid. And at this time, the other players were holding back those yellow masked guys, and while some of them were holding back the attack, others started saying that at this rate of events, they would soon break through and everyone would have to pay to defeat them. But a girl standing nearby began to extract a stone of return from her pocket and said that she was going to leave this place. At last she added, have a nice day, you idiots. However, suddenly that stone in her hand started to fall apart. That girl didn't understand why this was happening. All the other guys who had this stone had the realization that it didn't work. No one gave any money for it, and at the same moment the door the players were holding exploded. All of this was caused by a huge man in a strange mask with a hammer in his hands. Due to fear, they started to fall to the ground, for they didn't understand how they could defeat such a big man without their skills. At this time Teraza, who was holding the stone of return in her hand, saw it fall apart in her hand. She could not think it was a trick. But our hero knew it from the beginning. How could anyone believe what's on TV? There are only crooks out there. Teresa was upset by this, for she had bought two stones to give one to Jean Heck. But at the same moment some strange creaking started behind her back, and she began to feel that some man was at her back and wanted her. Just as she started to tell Jean Heck that it was time for them to leave, that weird guy with the funny yellow mask on his head started yelling that the sacrifice for their god was ready and started waving his arms. But it wasn't that simple, and with the whole family, at that moment there was an explosion. It was the other countries that had already walked in on them and began to surround them. Faggot and Jean Heck realized that they seemed to have been exposed. Those strange guys in yellow masks started saying something strange. They were saying that some god wanted a sacrifice of holy blood, and together, they should realize the king's rebirth and eternal happiness. But Jean Heck didn't even want to listen to this. He took out his pen that he had in his pocket and started to use it, thus attacking all those strange masked guys. One by one they started falling to the ground, and as soon as Jean Heck finished beating them up, he started saying that someone else wanted to give him another sermon. But those guys started cowardly with fear and started backing away. But just as one of them took a step backward, he walked into something strange, and just as he began to raise his head, he saw a that health guy with the mask and the hammer on his shoulder, it was the deputy who came here at the strange sounds. That masked guy started to tell him that they were just scared, and the deputy grabbed his head with his big hand and threw him aside. At the same moment, Jean Heck started saying that she had played hide and seek before, and pointing his finger at that deputy, he started saying that this big-headed guy wanted to play with them, so she shouldn't hit him. And as soon as the deputy swung to hit them, Teresa along with Jean Heck started running away and playing hide and seek. And at this time, in one of the rooms in this room, a mysterious man was standing by the window, and his yellow-masked servants started to stand behind him and bow. The man who was the ringleader began to ask them what was wrong with the victims. The man began to answer that they were successfully catching them. Immediately after that, the masked man who was standing near the window began to say that the god wished for more victims and began to rejoice that now that the tower had opened and the how many ignorant players would come to them. The promised time of his rebirth had come. But suddenly that guy started saying in his head that he should look at the monitor screen that showed Teresa along with Jean Heck running away from the deputy. They were newly discovered victims, and it was the first time the head had seen the deputy in such agony. After all, they were far too agile for the victims that had gotten here. But the third man who was standing near them noticed that it was Jean Heck, and he was surprised when he looked at him and the head that was standing next to him started asking him if he knew the guy on the monitor. And he replied that yes, he did, and he started saying that he remained the most dangerous nuisance to their plan, and he needed to be eliminated as soon as possible. Together with Gene Hack, they continued to run away from the deputy who was running after them. He took another swing and hit Teresa with his big hammer, but it didn't hit. And as soon as Teresa bounced off, she started saying that he had incredible speed for such a body and he was not like those ordinary believers. The deputy kept swinging, but it didn't work, he couldn't hit our heroes once, and Teresa started telling Jean Heck that a fight with a big-headed man is impossible right now. They need to keep their distance first, and Teresa has to lend him something for a while. 
As soon as they were able to run around the corner and thus get a little distance, they decided to split up. The flashlight that Gene Hack had taken began to shine directly into the deputy's face, and he couldn't look long at that light, for it was too bright. And his patience crumbled, and he struck his big hammer with all his might toward the light. And as soon as he raised the hammer back up, he saw that it was an ordinary flashlight that was lying on the ground. Now he wondered where the two who were running away from him had gone. At the same time, Teraza and Jean Hack were hiding not far away and watching the deputy. After all, this way they could buy some time to devise a plan. Jean Hack started to speak so that she would listen to him very carefully, and he pissed that big one off. But Teresa didn't understand what he meant. After all, they had just gotten away from him, and they would be running from him again in the dark building. But our hero answered her that it was all right, for to pass this floor, they would have to run into him anyway, and while he was distracting him, she should find other people and evacuate. After all, they had come here by trusting on the stone of return, but now they couldn't get out, and he would try to clear the fifth floor as quickly as possible, even though it had become a bit problematic that she had come here. And lastly, Jean Heck began to speak, and just so she would remember something else just in case, what he was about to tell her. And a little while later the deputy continued to look for his victims. And at this point a small pebble flew into his big head, and our hero started telling him that he wasn't playing hide and seek too badly. But not a few seconds later, some deputy angrily started running after our hero up the stairs, and Teraza, who was watching all of this from around the corner, started remembering when Jean Hack had told her to take advantage of it at the right time. But she didn't realize when, but he replied with a smile on his face, when it comes, she will surely feel it. And at that same moment, she started looking for a weapon that was in one of the drawers and pulled out a large hockey stick. She decided, for starters, that she would save those people who were now in danger. Jean, who was running away from the deputy, started to think about the fact that the one had probably already gone far away, and he decided to activate his greedy gaze on the warden. But suddenly the notification window showed a warning that an action violating the casualness of the fifth floor had been detected, and the rotting heart began to show interest in our hero, triggering secondary conditions for a change of occupation. The rotting heart began to offer our hero to become his sword, and he could reincarnate as the black apostle. Accepted offer. The rotting heart was one of the absolute beings residing on the upper floors, similar to Alice, and here it is better known as the demon king. If one tried to somehow overcome the restrictions like this floor, places where the use of skills was forbidden by the demon king, it would attract attention. After becoming an apostle, one would be able to boast about their new abilities. However, it would have to be paid for by serving the demon king for the rest of his life. However, our hero knew that how can a tiger fall before some gang, and with a flick of his hand to his left, he declined the offer. The notice window began to show that the rotting heart was furious. The deputy, who was running after our hero at this time, began to feel an incredible strength. And at the same time, a tremendous pain engulfed his head. At this moment, something happened to our hero, for he began to receive the demon king's curse for the sinful act of refusing his offer. He had become a target for all demons, and the curse would last until his death. Kneeling down, Gene Heck began to feel a great pain in his chest and began to spit up blood. He realized that it was painful, but the believers in front of him heard Gene Heck say that they would stand like that and watch. And they were able to get close, and a little while later it was shown that some of the players were able to be caught and tied up. These players who were on the ground, Bound began to think that they had made a mistake and began to ask the believers to keep them alive. But the believers were pretty much crazy and started mocking the players, telling them that they were a sacrifice for God. But at that time Teresa appeared with her hockey stick, was already in the air and wanted to strike the believer who was holding the girl. As soon as she approached him, she hit him with all her might, causing him to lose his balance and consciousness. And while she was fighting the rest of the believers, she started telling the other players to take care of the others. But the other players, who were sitting on the ground shaking with fear, started saying that there was no point and they would die here anyway. They wouldn't be able to get out of here. Teresa realized that they were all terrified. But at that moment, one of the believers had already swung at her, but she successfully blocked his attack by parrying the blow. Then she kicked him with her foot with her chin, causing him to fall to the ground. And right after that, Teresa started telling the rest of the players who were shaking with fear not to give up. After all, they would all be able to get out to safety, and so they should grab their weapons and go up, because her comrade at the same time was now mopping up the fifth floor. But not everything was so simple. 
After all, at this time our hero was unconscious, and the deputy who carried him on his shoulders was walking along with him, and behind them were crowds of worshippers who were looking at all this. A little while later, those players who managed to get caught were locked behind bars. And they started shouting that they were all going to die here and they shouldn't have come to this damn place. But all of a sudden one of the believers struck the bars with his sickle and told them all to shut up or they would be sent to be tortured. And once he had silenced these players, he turned around and addressed his higher-ups to continue their conversation. And as soon as the believer stepped back, the head of the believers started talking and pointing at our hero. The guy who was standing next to him began to say that this was the first time he had ever encountered him in person. And Gene Heck, who was sitting locked in the dungeon, watched as some strange guys approached him. And as soon as he looked up, he saw a man with human mana emanating from him, and he realized that since he was at one with the fifth floor boss, he must be one of the minas. And at the same moment, he started to activate his greedy gaze, but the notification window showed that the status window could not be opened because the target was using high-level mental barriers. Immediately after that, Gene Heck started to take out a pill from his pocket and thought that he wasn't going to use it to fight the cult head, but apparently he would have to now, because he had no choice. And as soon as he used the white pill, due to the pill's effect, one of his stats doubled for 10 minutes, and his adaptation from the 10th year began to improve. And at the same moment, he realized that this was a knight of the round table and must be the very influential person of the main association that Milena was talking about, and much more influential than he thought. However, this skill is a mental barrier. It is so beckoning for Gene Heck to get his hands on it, because later it can be the foundation in defeating the deity. But suddenly, he started to see the conditions of copying it. And the first one is that he must make the object say his knight name. And the second is that until he learns the name, he must act like a schoolboy with 8th grade syndrome. And he can copy one of the skills in fulfilling both conditions. And at the same moment, Gene Heck took his head for he didn't understand what kind of stump was controlling the tower system. And he would only be able to fulfill them by dropping off a bottle of alcohol. But suddenly Floki began to ask our hero why he was silent. And Gene Heck immediately apologized to him and began to say that he was busy suppressing his powerful force of darkness within him. And at that moment those two were standing across the room and could understand what he was carrying. The head of the believers began to say that this was definitely the one he was talking about for he didn't seem to have his head right. Floki replied that he definitely was, and the head of the believers began to say that even he wasn't that crazy, and began to leave Floki alone with him. And at this point, Alice, who was sitting in confinement in the ring, started laughing uproariously at what Gene Hack was saying. He himself was also starting to cringe, so he started to pretend that nothing was wrong, and Floki went on to say that he didn't seem to fully realize the gravity of the situation. At least he's aware that he was caught to be sacrificed, but our hero started going even more crazy telling him that he thought he could hold on. It's so silly, but Floki was starting to suspect something, whether he was hiding some kind of trump card, and given the abilities he was showing, it's entirely possible. And so, after naming our hero's flocks I began to say that he was already aware of his power, except that he wouldn't be able to survive here with sealed skills. At the same moment, Gene Hack along with all the other players who were sitting in confinement began to hear loud sounds of screaming coming from below. Floki began to say that if they were hearing this, it was the sound of a sacrificial rite they were all participating in, and that they were in for an immediate and painful death that could not be endured in a sober mind. He could, however, give them these keys if they were told all about the unknown. But Gene Heck began to laugh, and answered Floki that he wished to know his true name, and that he would answer him if he would first reveal his name. Floki thought about the suggestion, for he realized that Gene Heck was going to die anyway, so he began to say that his true name was Floki, and he was also known as Lancelot. And right after that, the notification window showed that the conditions had been met and he had successfully copied the mental barrier. The description of the skill was that it was strengthening the defense of his mind, protecting him from seeing his status window, and also protecting him from all sorts of mental attacks. Floki went on to say that it was now his turn to tell the true face of the unknown Jean Hayak, who raised his index finger upwards and began to say that he would only speak once so he should listen to him carefully. Very quietly he began to say, I am John Doe. And right after that, Floki threw the key into the cell and began to say that he kept his promise. And immediately the flock started to turn around and walk away and lastly said they wished him a quick death. And as soon as he left, the guy who was sitting behind our hero noticed the key, quickly ran up to him, took it and tried to open the grate to escape. But he failed in this way, and there was no opening to insert the key. Our hero, lying on the ground, 
began to think that this was expected of them, and began to wonder what Teresa was doing there now. At the same time she was locked in one of the cages along with most of the players who had been caught. And as soon as the believers got her inside and closed the door, they started saying that this was the first time they had seen a victim who had fought back like that, and they thought she had overpowered about 20 people. They were sure that God would be pleased with a victim with such vitality. And as soon as the believers moved away, Teresa began to ask the others who were sitting locked up to tell her where the other players were. But suddenly she began to hear some shouting that it's all because of people like you. And as soon as she turned around, she saw one of the players beating up another player. And she started asking him what he was doing and for him to stop as soon as possible. But that girl started saying that she just didn't know that the one she was protecting was a tower resident. And Terrace immediately turned around to look at that little girl who was crying, forgotten in the corner. Those guys went on to say that if only they didn't exist, there wouldn't be a tower and they wouldn't be here either, and started yelling towards that little girl that it was all because of her. The girl at the same instant began to cry even more, and as soon as she saw that they were swinging at her, ran up and grabbed that girl by the arm. Started saying that it didn't matter if she was a resident or anyone else, and wouldn't the fanatics grab her just like the others? And that girl who was in the corner started to raise her head to see who was able to protect her. And she saw Teresa, who became serious. Holding that girl's hand, she began to get even angrier, squeezing it even tighter. A little later, one day, let go of that girl's hand. She calmed down a bit and sat down near the little girl and started asking her what her name was. But the girl continued to remain silent. Teresa once again began to say that it's okay, as long as her little sister is around, then no one will touch her. The girl immediately answered that her name was Maria. Teresa said that it was a very beautiful name, and Maria began to tell that recently she had once met believers who had come to their village. They said that if they sacrificed one person, they would keep everyone alive. And they told her that it was a great honor and they couldn't help it. Teresa began to hug little Maria and told her that this is it, as it should be. She is very lonely now. Even though she is a tower dweller, she is no different from an ordinary person. At the same time, the believers who were standing nearby began to whisper that they should already be preparing the next sacrifice, one from each cage. If they didn't choose anyone, they would all participate in the ritual together. Their hands began to shake with fear. They didn't want to leave the cage to be beaten and interrogated again, but suddenly they all started looking at Mary together and said they were ready to give her up. Still, she wasn't even human, and as soon as they stood up and started to approach Maria, Teresa stood up for her. She started telling them to calm down and wait. After all, there was no hurry now, and they should come to their senses. But the believers who were behind her were very happy about this and began to tell them to fight. Because of this, they said, God would be even more pleased. In another cage, a believer who was looking in was suddenly surprised to see Gene Heck raise his hand and start saying that he was willing to go if no one minded. The others were only happy about this and began to say with a nonchalant face that they didn't mind. Immediately after that, one person was chosen from each cage as a victim. They tied their hands and began to lead them somewhere. At the same time, our hero, who was holding a reinforcement pill in his mouth, took it out and spit it out to the side. At this time, one of the believers noticed something strange and started to turn around, but he only saw our hero whistling under his nose. He turned around and walked on. Gene Hack began to reflect that now everything necessary had been prepared. Teresa had been caught and was sitting behind the cage. With her temperament, he was sure that she was going to sacrifice herself. And as soon as he looked up at his window, the notification informed him that, though this was the first time he was passing this floor this way, everything was going according to plan. A hidden quest appeared, stating that fanatics who took people's lives would become enemies. For every enemy killed because of the cult head's elimination, 30% is added to the adaptation stats. Our hero realized that he was getting the stats as a reward every time, but he didn't expect it to be an adaptation. Just as they began to approach the huge door, our hero began to hear something strange. All the believers shouted in one voice as they watched the ordinary players being executed. They shouted that their god was weak and led their cries with the words glory of the rebirth. Our hero realized that there were many of them gathered here. Suddenly he noticed a player who was throwing up, and he began to wonder why this was happening. After all, it's not that bad here after all. And then the faithful began to shout for the next victims to be moved. When the big gates came down, the two overseers were already waiting for the victims to be brought to them. 
At the same time, the players and our hero began to be pushed closer to the stage. And as soon as their hands were untied, Gene Heck heard strange words from one of the believers with a microphone in his hands. He began to shout that the most majestic sacrifices give God the greatest joy, and this majestic sacrifice would emphasize the completion of their ritual. Pointing to the huge statue on which Teresa was hanging, he began to shout that she sacrificed herself for a child she didn't even know. It was the greatest act, and her blood would adorn the completion of their sacrificial rite. Our hero saw that Teresa was badly wounded, and it made him angry. He started to say that he was going to end this floor by getting all the stats. But he doesn't care about that now. He decides to kill all the believers on the fifth floor. At this moment, he activates the fire element, and his ingenious plan begins to take effect. The fire flies towards the pill he recently spit out. The pill begins to activate and his fire becomes even stronger. Huge flashes of fire begin to scatter in different directions in the room he is in. The other believers don't realize what is happening. They don't see that this is a real skill. It was impossible to use the skill according to the commandments. At this point, our hero pulls out his dagger and throws it towards Teresa. Teresa, hanging nearby as a victim, manages to avoid the blow. The dagger crashes into the iron ring that bound her. She frees herself and falls to the ground. Our hero jumps up and catches her, placing her on the ground. He checks to see if she's breathing. Her breathing is still there, but her wounds are furious. He pulls out another pill and says he doesn't care about stats or anything else. He intends to kill all the believers on the floor. He drops the pill into his mouth, biting into it. Dark energy begins to spread through his body and a black barrier is erected around him. This barrier engulfs the believers. They see nothing, as if black smoke has enveloped them. At this point, our hero pulls out his blades and activates his sword graveyard skill. The believers, who were in the black energy, could not understand where to go, for everywhere was dark. Suddenly, one of the believers threw his weapon to the ground, knelt down and prayed that the great god of darkness would answer their call. At the same moment, the other two believers also knelt down and began to pray all together for the almighty and great god of the demon king to lead them together. But at the same moment, they turned around and began to look in the direction where the incredible energy was coming from. They began to rejoice, for they thought it was the energy of the demon king god, and they happily got up from their knees, not thinking that he had answered their prayers. But things were much worse than they saw. It was our hero who at one point straightened them out. And the notification system showed that the boss had been destroyed and his adaptation stage improved by 0.1. Immediately after that, enemy number 2 was also destroyed, and the last believer didn't stay alive either. When our hero approached him, he died. In the midst of everything on the ground, Teresa was lying on the ground and began to come to her senses. And remembered that in the dungeon, the other players sent this little thing first. And it's not like she's even human. But Teresa didn't understand how they could say that. After all, you can't do that, after all, she's still a child. But the other players started to get angry about this and said that she's just an NPC and she should be given to them three times. But suddenly Teresa swung her foot and hit both players. They flew off to the side of the grid. She went on to say that they seemed to think that without skills, she was just an ordinary weakling. But they must not be mistaken for she is worthy of all of them, even if they pounce all together. But the one player who was on the ground and fell from our heroine Teresa started to come up and told her that she wanted to say that she was going to choose her own victim. To this Teresa replied that that was right, she was the one who was going to pick the victim. That player started to say that she pretends to be so kind, but in reality she is just like everyone else. At that moment, Teresa turned around and saw Maria standing behind her. Mary stroked Teresa's head and told her that she would be back again. She then turned to the believer standing behind the cage and said she would go as a sacrifice herself. The believer smiled and said he was surprised that the sacrifice had caused the sacrifice itself, for it was worthy of God. But now the believers who were then lying dead in the room. Teresa gradually began to come to her senses, and as she opened her eyes she heard words to the effect that she was again in such a situation after having tried to do the impossible. When she looked up, she saw Gene Hack standing beside her. She told him that she knew he was coming. Gene Hack released her hands, which were bound with huge chains. Once they were up, our heroes looked at the notification window and saw that he had only received 23 adaptations. Now it was up to him to deal with the head of the cult and get out. 
At this point, Teresa needed to go somewhere for a while. A little while later she was near the locked cages, freeing the players and looking for Maria. As she approached the cage where Maria had recently been sitting, she saw her alive and rejoiced. She ran over and hugged her, expressing her joy that she had survived. After showing Mary to our hero, Teresa began to explain that this was Mary, the resident of the tower. The believers had captured her, and they wanted to make her a victim or a believer. Our hero listened to Teresa's story, unable to believe he was wasting his precious ten minutes on such a thing. But suddenly he saw Mary and realized that this was definitely the tower's resident. Walking up to her, he asked her name again. Mary confirmed that her name was Mary and explained why she had not become a believer, for she had been sold as she had no parents. If there really is a God, he is the creator of this hell full of despair. If this was this God's plan, then he is definitely a freak. After saying that, Maria began to cry. Jean Heck told her that he didn't know if his words would comfort her, but they were similar. He told her about himself, how he was thrown into an orphanage, and that life without parents is hard. Teresa couldn't believe that Jean Heck was starting to talk about himself. Maria said that it was still true that the god of the cult still existed anyway. Jean Heck replied that it was true and they should go get rid of the cult head. He activated the soul brand on Maria. She became his partner. When Teresa told Jean Heck to wait, he didn't hear her and they should go get rid of the cult head. At this time, the effects of the ancient grimoire of Diana's brand had ended. All the hero's skills were blocked again. The cult head sat in his room, thinking that happiness and God's power awaited him. But at this time, our hero was walking down the stairs with Teresa and Maria. He started saying that the cult head is completely different from the other fanatics, and although he can't use skills like them, he's just as strong as the deputy. Tri started asking him if he could overpower him with skills like last time, and Jean Heck told her that of course he originally wanted to, but the time for using skills had passed. One could, of course, try to use an artifact like in that past case, such as a vase that devoured uncleanness, an artifact that killed the enemy with a spell with absolute precision. Teresa was already despairing, because she realized they weren't going to win. But Jean Heck started to say that he would take the first hit, and there is a cooldown between uses of the spell, and so her role here is most important. She should definitely overpower the head before he uses the artifact again. And once they got to the huge door that looked like a large safe, Jean Heck started asking if they were ready. When Teresa and Maria nodded, he started to open the door and told them to remember everything he said. Then they would surely be able to get out of here. As the door opened, the cult leader sitting on the floor began to turn around and began to say that the people who had messed up the ceremony had come to see him personally. It was quite interesting, but Jean Heck asked where his partner had gone. The cult leader replied that he had just left and got what he wanted. Gene Heck thought about how smart he was, leaving apparently to kill him right there. The cult leader started to say that he didn't know how he was able to use the skills while ignoring God's restrictions, but he would definitely sacrifice him to God and make him repent for his wrongdoings. At that moment, Teresa saw that the cult leader was holding the artifact that Gene Heck was talking about. Literally a second later, our hero ran towards the chapter. As soon as Teresa approached, our hero kicked the head of the cult with his foot with all his might. He immediately wanted to hit him on the head, but the cult head successfully blocked his attack. Jean Heck told her to cover his mouth with her blindfold, and Teresa was able to do so by sneaking behind his back. At this moment, while Teresa was holding him, Jean Heck began to approach the cult leader. Suddenly, the cult leader pushed Teresa aside. Teresa hit the wall. At the same time, the cult head started to attack our hero. Jean Heck could not dodge as the cult head's hand was approaching his face. But suddenly the cult head slipped and our hero was able to dodge and hit him with his fist with his chin. The cult leader started holding his face and saying that it was very painful. Jean Heck, who was standing nearby, began to say that he had fought monsters bigger than him with his bare hands, and if the cult leader thought he could defeat him in hand-to-hand -hand combat, he was wrong. Teresa, who was lying nearby, began to rejoice at the words of our hero, for she had expected such words from her mentor. But the head of the cult, as if he had gone mad, began to shout that he was glad that now he would be killed as a sacrifice to his god. Suddenly he pulled out an artifact and said that now our hero would be the first sacrifice. The artifact began to ignite with a bright flame directed at our hero. Jean Heck stood still, knowing he couldn't dodge it. Teresa, watching all of this, wondered if this was the spell Jean Heck had told her about. 
The last thing our hero was able to save while standing still was for Teresa to remember that the spell has a long cooldown and she must look into the eyes of the vase to determine when it is ready to be used again. She must also take care of the rest. At that moment, huge tons of blue flame struck our hero and he began to bleed. Teresa saw Jean Heck start to fall to the ground and the notification system showed that he was dead. The Demon King's curse had disappeared because of his death. The cult leader standing next to him was glad that he was able to win. He started to say that it was a fresh sacrifice and God would definitely be pleased. Teresa couldn't believe that Jean Heck was really dead. She hoped he would open his eyes. Anger over her comrade's death made her fight even harder. When Teresa looked up, she saw the cult leader coming toward her fast. He kicked her and she flew back a few meters. Maria, who was watching this, started yelling at Teresa to be more careful. These words only made her angrier as the cult leader found her location and started to approach to grab her. But Teresa ran up to him, jumped on his shoulders, squeezed her legs together and pushed off. The cult leader hit the ground. Teresa bounced off and got to her feet. She wasn't going to let him grab Maria. The cult head got up and started to say that Teresa still had the strength to fight and he was glad for it. He was ready to have some fun for a while while the artifact recharged. And at this time, our hero who was killed and Teresa who was beaten by the cult head, Teresa, who was lying on the ground, began to realize that it was impossible to resist him without skills. And at this point, the cult head started attacking her even faster. But Teresa was able to jump back and as soon as she was able to distance herself, she picked up broken VAZs from the floor by the lamp and started throwing them towards the cult head. But as soon as the vase bumps flew into the target, the cult head noticed that she wasn't aiming at him, but at the lamp that was lighting up this room. And he started telling her that if she thought the darkness was going to save her, she was wrong. And it's really funny. She kept smashing all the lamps that were in her way, because she knew that by doing so the cult leader's horizons must be diminished, and first she must take that vase away from him. And if he used that spell again, she would have no chance of winning. But before she could finalize her plan, the cult leader was already behind her and started swinging at her. But Teresa noticed this and bounced to the side. But she didn't understand how he was able to find her so immediately. And as soon as she bounced away, the cult leader started telling her that she was pretty nimble. But if he finds her again, she's finished. Her shiny hair catches his eye immediately, even in this pitch darkness. And Teresa immediately realized how he could find her and started hiding around the corner. But the cult leader starts looking at his artifact and says that after he knocks her out, he's going to find that hiding little girl, and when she wakes up, he's going to make her watch her fall victim to that vase with her own eyes. A little while later he was able to find her once more and hit her with all his might, causing her to fly off to the side. But getting up, she started to run further away and hid behind the next corner. But the cult leader was very strong and agile. And right after that he started to go further to look for Teresa who was hiding around the corner. He learned that it was just a matter of time to find her, but Teresa realized that it was impossible to waste the precious time that Jean Heck had won for her. And if she lost here, Maria would be lost as well. Suddenly, she began to remember what the cult leader had told her about her hair, and she turned her attention to the piece of sharp face that was lying beside her. And with that, she came up with the perfect plan to defeat him. And the cult leader, who was walking down the corridor and repeating the words glory to our lord and glory to eternal happiness, suddenly noticed Teresa's hair around the corner and was ready to come over and crush her. But suddenly he changed his mind and began to say that he would keep her alive if she would swear that she would become a believer. And he would make her a saint of the god of the demon king. So he can bring the little one with him. But as soon as he rounded the corner, he saw Teresa's hair tied to the rope. And he was surprised that he'd been tricked. And Teresa was already behind him at this time and, with all her might, running to retrieve the artifact. For she knew that compared to Jean Heck's sacrifice, her hair was worthless. But the reaction speed of the cult head was high. And Teresa realized it as soon as she approached him. After all, he was already swinging at her. But suddenly, a large vase flew at his head. It was Maria, who was sitting on one of the crates. And he realized it was the little girl who'd ruined everything for him. Teresa had already grabbed the artifact and bounced away. And as soon as she stopped, she thanked Maria for her help. But the cult leader standing in front of her began to ask her what she was going to do now. Was she going to sacrifice herself? But Teresa, who was holding the artifact, 
was already ready to straighten him out. For she remembered the words Jean Hack had told her to learn a few words, Paterial de Amario's tale Pabaricio. But she didn't understand what it was. So he began to say that it was a spell in the language of the runes, and she could use it at the proper time. When it came, she would surely feel it. And now she realized, holding the artifact in her hands, because now was the right time. And began to speak those words. After all, she realized that Jean Heck had known this from the beginning since he was able to trust her. But the cult leader began to shake with fear after hearing those words. After all, he didn't understand how she could know the ancient language of runes. And Teresa answered him that it was told to her by an old man who was the strongest in this tower of trials. And as soon as she finished the spell, blue tongues of dark energy began to fly toward the cult leader and devour him. But he, in turn, began to weep furiously. After all, he couldn't believe that this could happen. After all, he thought that the demon king god would be able to save them. And at the same moment, the notification window showed that the boss monster of the fifth floor had been defeated. And as soon as the second one threw the artifact on the ground, it ran up to Maria and started asking her if she was injured. Maria replied that she was fine, and right after that, they started walking over to Jean Heck, who was lying on the ground. And as soon as Teresa leaned over, she started telling him that she had made it. And he could get up now, and started apologizing for going with him without his permission. And she won't do it again. And so she begs him to wake up. And suddenly a notification window appeared, saying that the influence of the demon king god was gone. And due to the absence of the boss monster, the restriction on skill usage was lifted, and the patronage of the heavens began to activate. And he would be able to resurrect once if it wasn't instant death. And at the same moment, he began to rise, and Teraza along with Mary were very much overjoyed at this, and as soon as Jean Heck got up, he started to say that dying, however quite painful. But looking at Teresa, he asked why she was crying again. After all, it was the same in the maze. But Teresa, hitting him on his chest with her fist, started to say what can you do? If the tears are flowing on their own. But after the punch, Jean Heck started saying he was still in pain. And Teresa apologized to him. Because she had forgotten that he had just been resurrected. But Jean Heck started to tell her that the hairstyle looked good on her. And right after that, Teresa started to show the notification window and asked, why haven't they gotten the message to open the next floor yet? Although they had already defeated the boss, but Jean Heck, who was standing and pointing at the door, started to answer, because the conditions for clearing the fifth floor is to escape from it. And in other words, they have cleared the fifth floor, and if they go beyond that door, they can open the next floor. This floor has another highlight, Jean Heck started to speak while looking at Maria, and the highlight of the fifth floor is the monster boss's place. It can be transferred, and since the condition of the sweep didn't include eliminating the boss, whoever picks up this artifact will become the new master of this floor and the ruler's seat. Jean Heck began to charge Maria, who was standing beside him, and for she remembered that he had promised her that she would live in a world without a cult leader. And as soon as Maria took the artifact in her hands, Jean Heck began to tell her to live her life as she wished. No one could make her miserable now. At the same moment, the notification window began to show that the floor ruler's position had been transferred, and to match the ruler's rank, the body was gaining instant improvement. Teresa, who was watching all this, began to marvel at the fact that Maria had grown up to become a grown-up girl in an instant. Immediately, Maria jumped up to Jean Heck and knelt down and began to say that she, Maria, the ruler of these desolate places, was assuring him that all of the entities here, including her, would follow his will. The notification window began to show that Maria, the ruler of the fifth floor, had sworn her assurance, and he was the first to be able to receive allegiance from the monster boss. For that, he was registered in the Hall of Fame. But Jean Heck placed his hand on her head and began to speak, let her smile never leave her face. As soon as he finished, Maria jumped up and walked over to Teresa and started hugging her and telling her that she was the best sis ever and should visit her more often. When Teresa agreed, they started to leave the fifth floor and the notification window showed that the sixth floor test tower was open. The remaining time until the next floor was cleared was 90 days. The next day, everyone on earth began reading the news that the sixth floor was indeed open and the fifth floor had been cleared. They started writing in the comments on social media under each post that this is all real now, and don't the presidents of every country owe Gene Hayek at least some thanks for risking his life. Everyone, yes, he's the one going through it because he's a real old guy, a walking legend, and the fact that he pulled it off three times is just fire.
The criminal who was selling the return stones was beaten and jailed, and some players who managed to escape from the fifth floor treated their subordinates to a treat in honor of the fifth floor sweep. Their boss treated them to a beer and they all celebrated. The swordsman, who was sitting in his house and contemplating the fact that Gene Hack wasn't going to give him a chance to get close to him, suddenly began to hear someone coming to his door. And the cocktail aide turned around. He heard a loud explosion. His door shattered into pieces, and behind the door stood some strange masked guy with a sword. But swordsman didn't realize who else he was. That guy started to answer that his name was Kevin, and he went on to say that it was a surprise to him, because to the unknown man, this house was not unimportant. He asked swordsman, for he was expecting to see great luxuries. And as soon as swordsman heard the word John Doe, he realized that Gene Heck had set it all up. Because of this, he started to get even angrier. And right after that, in the same building, there was a huge explosion that made people start to fumble and scatter in different directions. But at the same time, in another building, our hero was scratching his ear and watching Alice, who was showing another girl that they should all put everything she bought in the places they show. But Jean Hack was looking at her and started to say that after all, inflation was now coming because of her. But Alice replied that let it come, whoever it was, and after saying that, Jean Hack realized that it was pointless to argue with her. After all, even though he had allowed Alice to enjoy a civilized life as payment for Maria's tuition, though it was more like she was just taking retribution. And a little while later, Alice was explaining to Maria how to live like a boss and stand like a boss. And the schedule for a boss to have, she was teaching Maria the basic knowledge that every ruler should have, sort of like leading in baseology. And Gene Heck was confident that he could reap the rewards of that in the future. But despite his stats, he began to realize that he was getting stronger and stronger and faster than he thought. And considering the points gained for the hidden quest on the fifth floor, as many as 78 of them, and even the Rangolia that raised his stats through the dungeon, should be around level 30. If you add another jump, a player with characteristics better than him cannot be found. And the item he received as a reward for passing the fifth floor, he didn't expect to receive. It was something he couldn't even imagine. This mirror shatters boundaries, it can enlarge and connects to any desired location in the Tower of Trials on the first 10 floors. And though this mirror has a 90-day recharge, the time to use it is 30 minutes. As the player grows, the floor allowed is added. Similarly, the time of use increases, and only one companion is allowed. Although Gene Hack realized that he still had a lot of things to prepare, he began to take out his phone from his pocket and call the person who was in charge in his guild. And as soon as he picked up the phone, he started to ask what his director was calling about, and Gene Hack started to say that he had a matter for him didn't ask if they were quiet. To which the guy started to answer that it's good so far, but he's become so popular lately that there's no channel left that doesn't broadcast about him. A lot of people come here just because of him. Right after that, that guy started asking how he could help him, and Gene Heck replied that he would send him a list and he should book everything there. Also get him a meeting with the Battle Fathers Guild. And a little while later, when the meeting was scheduled, our hero was sitting in a cafe drinking his milkshake. The guy sitting across from him, who was from the Battle Fathers Guild, started asking our hero if he had taken enough of a break. After all, he had been waiting a long time for his call. Gene Hack started to say that this wasn't the first time he had seen each other since that test, and indeed, a lot of time had already passed. Gene Hack, looking at that guy, realized that it was good for them to have strength after all. After all, he was as proud as a peacock during the test, and now he had become so polite. But Gene Hack started to tell that guy that he was apologizing for that Mandrick incident. And he was busy mopping up the tower. That guy started to reply that he understood, and Gene Hack could relax. After all, he had come to see him after all. But Gene Hack went on to say that as an apology, he would like to change the terms of the contract. And he heard that their guild owned 10 dungeons and the ranking system was on the third floor. And so, why don't they give them to him? And it turns out, instead of giving him 10 dungeons on the first floor, give him one and the rank system on the third floor. But that guy started to get angry and told our hero that he will never tell him the promised recipe for the antidote. But also raises the conditions. To what our hero with a smile on his face began to answer that it is so. This guy started asking on what grounds Gene Hack decided to change his offer. But our hero immediately started to answer him that the rise in inflation, the rise in raw material prices and the rise in labor remuneration. But that guy, after these words, began to get angry and says that they are not some charitable organization, and he did not come here to listen to his absurd demands. 
and he banged his hand on the table, said that he had only wasted his time, and started to turn around and leave, pretending that he hadn't heard anything. Well, no sooner had he stepped back than Gene Hack started talking in his back about the labyrinth, about the great temple he owns on the third floor, and they still can't get past it. And he's a guildmaster too, after all, albeit unofficially, and can get that kind of information whenever he wants. And he's heard that they won't stop trying to pass the great temple they've monopolized. But they fail every time, and now they suffer for it. And in that case, wouldn't their place of leadership be threatened as well? And so he would go through the labyrinth for them. But the fellow was surprised by such a proposition, and a little while later in Austria, in Vienna, at one of the orchestral concerts, began to clap joyfully for everyone who was on the stage. And when she got up, she started saying that it was such a beautiful performance, and she was touched. And right after that, the notification windows started showing that he had enjoyed the masterpiece of the era, and he had completed the quest. You were able to successfully copy the absolute hearing skill and successfully copied the skill of understanding instruments. And when the concert was over, Alice along with Jean Hayek decided to have a snack. And Alice first asked the waiter to bring two bottles of the most expensive stuff they had. And as soon as the table was set, they began to eat. Our hero started thinking that as soon as he finished his business here, he would go back to Korea today. There are three more items he has to do. It's to eat at three star and above Michelin restaurants, watch other chefs cook, and cook a dish of different cuisines. Well, Alice didn't understand and started asking Jean Heck why they were sitting so quietly and having fun. But Jean Heck answered her that in the future it will pass to their advantage, but for now they just need to enjoy while they can. After all, the sixth floor is the Tower of Trials, there will be a forest of elves, and it's a floor with a beautiful forest guarded by chauvinist elves. And the next floor will go to the next floor if you just spend 90 days there. And most players usually just mark their stay and go on to other floors to pump up levels. But each floor has its own purpose, as well as cultivator perks that can be obtained. And Gene Heck decided to prepare himself well this time. And at that moment, he started to see that the notification system started to show him that he had received a request for a video call. And as soon as he saw that man from the cafe who started to say that everything was ready and he could proceed, the next day, Gene Heck teleported to a place. It was the Profession Change Shrine located on the third floor, the most popular profession change center. And many people come here to see the priest who instructs them in their profession. Our hero continued on his way, but at one point he heard from behind him someone say to him, at last he has come. And as soon as he turned around, he saw that guy from the cafe and replied to him that he had quickly prepared everything, Commander Kim. To which he replied that of course he did. Because with something like this, it's best not to delay. And he started showing them the members of today's raid. And the guy who was standing behind Commander Kim started talking to Gene Hayok and introduced himself that his name was Johnny. And he's the captain of the second siege team, and he's been watching every YouTube video of him. And right after him, the rest of the team group started coming up to our hero and introducing themselves. One of them is in charge of the team's grouping, and one of them is the head hitter of the siege team. And they were all huge Gene Hayok fans. They started asking him for his autograph, but the commander who was standing over them started telling him in a rude tone that this wasn't a fan meeting of any kind, and he began to reflect that even the best guys in the guild had become casual fans in front of Gene Hayok. And the commander began to explain to his team that even though Johnny was still technically the captain, from now on the captaincy would go to the player Gene Heck. And from there he could take whatever he wanted, he didn't care, as long as he won. But Gene Heck stood there looking at him, started to think about the fact that he was planning to nail him and throw him out. But apparently that wasn't necessary and told them that in 30 minutes they would all meet in front of the entrance after the preparations were complete. And started walking up the steps and the priestess who was standing at the top and who was in charge of changing professions started telling our hero that to get stronger he needed to have a profession and she asked what path he would prefer to take. And immediately many professions opened up before our hero. And he began to reflect that he had tried all the popular professions through his other accounts, and began to tell the priestess to show him the most unpopular one. And immediately the unpopular and also difficult to learn professions started popping up to him. And clicking on one of them, he decided it was the most ideal, and began to remember about the swordsman, who in the museum and in the labyrinth so says, with his barrier skills, that he needs to stomp his pride well into the dirt. And from that point on, he accepted your lesser profession of barrier master. But as soon as he turned his head, he saw some strange situation below, and began to see that some strange group began to walk, 
and he realized that it was a guild of samurai, but the commander of the fighting fathers who was standing near them began to ask why they had come here again. After all, they had already said that they would not allow them to participate in taking over the Grey Temple. But the guy standing on the tray started to tell Commander Kim that he had any idea how many people were disappointed in the Battle Fathers that they still couldn't handle this labyrinth capture. So if he doesn't have enough strength for the good of humanity, wouldn't it be better if they all go together? And at this moment, the other guys who were standing near them started saying to look at the Samurai Guild. After all, they have been showing high growth lately, and they say that they are rising straight up like mad due to their fine-tuned organization and ability to gather information. And Commander Kim heard, realized that they had tweaked the society to suit themselves, and that's not good. But Gene Heck, who was standing behind, started telling Commander Kim that he was popular, and one of the samurai saw him, started to realize that this was the rancher from Korea, Gene Heck. And he couldn't believe that, could he really, he had something to do with the Combat Fathers Guild. And as soon as Gene Heck got closer, he began to say that as he listened to them, he wondered what they were saying, that the Combat Fathers Guild was failing due to lack of strength. But as he looks at it, they are no different from them. Immediately after saying that, one of the guys who was standing behind him started saying to our hero that he was a fool and what he had just said. But the head of the samurai guild stopped him and started telling him to calm down, because the S ranker is now standing in front of him. And started to reply to our hero that he wanted to say that they were weak. And Gene Heck went on to say that it's not that they're weak, they're not even up to par. And the samurai guild guy started saying that he deeply doesn't care what he's saying, and they have a strength that's not comparable to theirs. After all, they have an old man behind them who made it to the 30th floor in the Tower of Trials. And as soon as Gene Heck heard the words, that there's an old man behind them who made it to the 30th floor of the Challenge Tower, he thought about it, because it could be a problem in further passing. And now he realized what it was. No wonder they had grown so fast, and that samurai went on to say that they had information about lands that no one knew about. With it, they can prepare in advance for all the traps or they can prepare the necessary forces for conquest. Using this information, they will be the first heroes to save humanity from the Tower of Trial. But it's also nice to get rich along the way. And at the same moment, Gene Heck began to activate his skill, the Greedy Gaze, and realized that the object in front of him was telling the truth, and realized that at least he believed his words. Gene Heck decided to just find someone who was talking such nonsense. And after reviewing the many players in front of him, he still found the very one who was able to reach the 30th floor, it was Yamato. And as soon as his notification window with statistics appeared, our hero realized that Yamato possessed an amazing skill of incomplete foresight. And depending on the level of the wielder, he could see it even higher. And right after that, Gene Heck realized that things were about to get a lot more interesting for him now. After all, Yamato had looked at his comrades a little earlier, who had started to tell him that the trap really didn't work. And he was right. But it was true that no one knew yet that he had the ability of incomplete foresight. And he thought that if he hid this skill, he would get an even better reputation. Although, in the end, he was sure of it. After all, if no one found out that it wasn't a lie at all, then everything would be fine. But suddenly Yamato began to notice that Gene Heck was looking at him in a strange way, and it made him a little embarrassed. And Gene Heck started saying towards the samurai who was standing across from him that he didn't even know who he was, but he must be very strong since he had climbed as high as the 30th floor. And there is no information about floors higher than the 10th yet. Samurai began to answer our hero that he is well informed, because information is the most valuable weapon in our time, and asked if he would still take them with him. But Commander Kim began to get angry and told him that he would not believe this nonsense. But Gene Heck, who was standing beside the commander, began to stop him and tell him that the samurai should not have started with that, and would not have to drag out the conversation, and they would all go together. And the samurai got excited about this information, and started saying that he finally found someone he could have a normal conversation with. And as soon as he started walking towards Commander Kim, he asked him to make his face simpler. After all, they would at least raise their reputation if they won. And as soon as the samurai started to move out, Commander Kim started asking Jean Hayak why he let them go along with them. After a few of their no, that's enough, they can't just go inside. But Jean Hayak started telling him that he didn't even think of letting them into the maze if it wasn't for him, after all. But that's not the way to do it. After all, they really want to become the heroes of humanity. So shouldn't they be given a chance to participate? How easy is it to be a hero? After saying that, Commander Kim couldn't understand what that nutcase was up to. 
and right after that, all the other players started to move out. And as soon as everyone started to enter the maze series, inside they started to see the players who had gone into the maze first. And they were all turned to stone. And the other players felt sorry for them, and they started asking their commanders if there was any way to bring them back to life. But they said there was no way. And you can already consider yourself dead. If you cross your eyes with the boss, you'll be just like the others. And the samurai immediately began to tell his charges not to worry. After all, he had prepared well and was able to prepare and our hero, who was looking at all of this, realized that they had paid so much for this shield. And he was sure that they didn't even know how to use it properly. But suddenly he started to see that a notification window opened up in front of him. And it said that he had fulfilled all the conditions. And soon it was because he entered the maze right after getting the quest. And as soon as he accepted the conditions, he received the moon seal. And this ability will start to take effect after completing the profession change quest. And in addition, if he masters all the never lost forgotten languages in the tower, he will be able to learn the nameless barrier of passing quests. Upon changing professions, the places where one could learn a forgotten language would be displayed. Gene Hack began to reminisce about the old days. The fact that he had seen these forgotten languages when he passed the tower. But he had no way of knowing what they were for. And it turns out that it was all for the joy of the first conqueror. And he rejoiced that there were still things he didn't know about. But at the same moment Yamato, who was of the samurai, began to sense something. And immediately he went over to the samurai and started telling him to get them all ready for battle. And at that same moment, where do I come from? A giant cobra appeared and started attacking them. But since the samurai were already prepared for battle, they were ready to cut down with their fire magic with a smile on their face. And the samurai began to run towards the cobra. Spread out, jumped up, and with his shield, crushed the larger her. Only it fell to the ground. It began to disappear. And the other players who were watching it all realized that that samurai was pretty SOSO and whether they could do anything at all. And Gene Heck, who was standing near one of the players who was depressed, realized that these guys have a long way to go. After all, they're depressed just from that. And he began to think that Alice alone could do this in a minute. Though even a minute would be a lot. Meanwhile, in the tower on the fifth floor, there was a trial. Alice had explained to Maria several times that this was not the way to do it. So she decided to show her one last time, and told her to watch it very carefully. She must first look down, then raise her finger and say that she commands obedience. And after saying that, Maria started clapping her hands and saying, What did I expect from Alice? After all, this is a very different sensation. And Alice began to reply, of course it is, because I'm not too fundamentally different from ordinary people. And at the same time, a group of samurai could not figure out which side to choose. The child had just passed two forks, and the chief among the samurai began to ask Yamato which way to go. After all, there is the safe bright left side, or the right side where ambush can be expected at every turn. But Yamato began to ponder on the subject, that he had not seen such a thing in his foresight, and began to think about what he should do. Still, he chose the left side. Suddenly, Yamato noticed that Jean Heck, who was behind him, started waving his hands at something and saying, which was expected of a real old man. Normal people would have gone to the right, the seemingly more dangerous side, sensing a catch. But he seemed to realize that the labyrinth sends people with that mindset, and he started telling Yamato that he didn't know who he was, but believed him. As soon as Yamato turned around, they, along with the samurai, began walking on the left side. Gradually, Gene Hack began to ponder that Yamato's foresight was working worse than he expected. After all, choosing the left or right side, there is no right path. And whichever path he chose, both would lead them to hell. As they moved forward a bit and chose one of the tunnels, Yamato noticed something strange in front of them. They were laser-like objects, and they began to approach them. But Yamato started telling the other samurai that it was just a normal trap and they shouldn't worry so much. Suddenly more lasers appeared, and some players activated their mana introduction skill, starting to create a barrier around them. They hoped to block the lasers if they approached. But as soon as the lasers approached, they broke through the barrier and injured one of the players. The entire squad began to panic, and the samurai captain urged everyone to use more mana. Yamato, who was standing next to him, had to hide behind him, for he was the most valuable among all of them. Yamato, who was kneeling down, started to feel nervous about coming here because of Jean Heck's boyfriend. 
He thought about how he might not be seeing the full picture. But suddenly, when he turned around, he saw our hero start to put up a barrier around him. And at the same second, the imperfect physical barrier began to activate, and Gene Heck was able to fulfill the first condition of the quest. The huge lasers that were coming towards them could not penetrate this imperfect barrier. Simply, the lasers started shooting off in other directions. The players who were under this barrier could not understand what it was. After all, this was the first time they had seen something like this. But Gene Heck, who was standing and looking at his barrier, realized that this was his limit, and until he got a profession, the first condition of the quest was only to activate the barrier. So it didn't matter now, and he started telling all the other guys to stay inside the barrier. But the players who were with him started asking, our hero has where he's going? And coming out of the barrier, Gene Heck started saying that he was going to go back object, and by dodging the laser 300 times, you can get the object. But those guys couldn't believe it, because they heard it, and Gene Heck, as soon as he came out of the barrier, he started saying that if there were any people who wanted to join, they could come out, because it's not as hard as it looks. If you set the right view, you can simply dodge all the lasers that will be from straight on, not straight out. I think it's easier that way. I one of the guys who was in the barrier couldn't believe what he saw, because while the samurai guild is nearly beaten to death, screaming in pain, Gene Heck, in which it was as if he was dancing, just smiling, going through all the lasers, and he began to remember what his commander Kim had told him back then, that wouldn't they be at a disadvantage if they gave everything they could get their hands onto a player. Gene Heck, but Kim had replied to him that he seemed to be still young to realize that there are times when you have to accept even a loss. If he's not confident in his abilities, he might back down. After all, that's strategy too, and now this guy was beginning to realize that's why his commander told him so. And after a few seconds, Gene Heck was still able to pass all the lasers, and the quest notification window began to show that he had successfully completed the covert mission. And while holding his reward for the sweat he had spilled, he received a blazing flame. But suddenly, our hero began to hear the screams of other players. And as soon as he turned his head, he saw one of the players lost his arm. And some players from the samurai guild had died altogether. And one of them was a healer who was supposed to heal everyone. The chief of the samurai guild started shouting to all the others to stand up and count the number of injured and dead. But Gene Heck, who was standing near them, began to speak in surprise, how many are wounded? What are they going to do now? And that barrier was only for 30 people, and he can't let everyone in. But those words made the samurai very angry, and he started swearing towards our hero, that everyone was safe. And did he really know the traps? And our hero answered him that of course he knew. So what of it? But Samara didn't understand why he was saying that. Or else he says he at least realizes that how many people died because he didn't tell them about the trap. And Gene Heck started saying that he let them come in with them, only because he rubbed it in about the old guy who could make it to the 30th floor. So he has no right to even be mad, since no one even asked them to follow them. But as soon as Gene Heck turned around, the samurai started yelling that if he thought their samurai guild would ask him this term, he was wrong. But Gene Heck, smiling, started telling him that it was ridiculous and he didn't think it was the right time to say such a thing. And at that moment, the notification window started showing our hero that he had met a special condition, and at least 50% of the raid must be killed by traps, and he must get the coveted flame. And it awakens in the guards of the Grey Temple. And at that moment, the samurai, what they saw, and could believe their eyes, for before them was a huge cobra that was devouring the fire. And Jean Heck, who was standing near them, began to tell them that they should not relax. After all, it's only just beginning. If they wanted to tell him something, they should survive first. And right after that, the huge cobra A stood in front of the samurai squad who were already ready to fight. And the notification window showed that it was a snake, a favorite pet of the jellyfish, its very body composed of flames. This makes it impervious to all physical attacks. And the samurai guild that was standing around began to realize that they hadn't had time to build up yet and already needed to fight. But Gene Hack suddenly started telling the samurai that since he now understood his position, he could give him his artifact. The samurai started to make a fool of himself and pretend that he didn't understand what he was talking about. But Gene Hack told him again not to be a fool, because he was talking about the shield and it would be better to give it to him since he couldn't use it properly. But the samurai panicked and began to say that he was talking nonsense, because no sane man would give his artifact to another man. 
And Jean Heck turned around and started saying that there's nothing more to be done here. I, activating my ice creation skill, started to say then he will take it from your corpse. And at the same moment the flame-eating snake started to activate the fire spear, and a huge fire spear flew towards the samurai who started to hide in group up. The main one of them realized that this was a straight tunnel and there was no point in running here as well. He activated his shield and started telling his partner to hide behind him, and huge flames started burning everything in this tunnel. But as strong as that samurai was, in the end everyone died, and no one could stand up to the achromatic flames that came at them. That artifact that had fallen from the samurai's hands was lying on the ground. Jean Heck walked over to it, began to understand it from the ground and said that he had told him that he was using it wrong and what good was an artifact if its owner was brainless. As soon as our hero picked up the shield, the notification window showed that it was a Perseus shield and its difficulty to obtain was very high. The description for it said that it was a sacred artifact used by the mythical god Perseus in the fight against the jellyfish, and the shield's power increases in proportion to the owner's power level. The last one to survive was Yamato. He started telling our hero who he was and how he could act like he knew everything. But as he turned around, Jean Hack began to tell him if his foresight that he was so proud of was no longer helpful. But Yamato answered him that it was impossible, after all how could he see his skills and which one is connected to this tower. After all, there was no way he could see his future. And as soon as Jean Heck began to say something, behind him was that big fire snake, which began to spew its flames at him. Our hero didn't get confused and started to turn around, activate his ice creation skill, and a huge glacier appeared in front of him, blocking the fire that was flying at him. And once the fire calmed down, our hero got angry and started to turn around on that snake. He said that when people were talking, it shouldn't make so much noise and a huge glacier started moving towards that snake, causing the snake to completely freeze in the ice prison. Yamato, who was watching all this, couldn't believe his eyes. But Jean Heck began to tell further that he was asked how he was connected to this tower, and he began to say that he was actually the exiled god of the tower, an absolute being that ruled the upper floors of the tower. And that's what it was. Yamato couldn't believe it. But suddenly he began to think that this was why his abilities were beyond human possibility. And suddenly Yamato started bowing to our hero and saying that he didn't mean to dare to be so rude to God, and he had committed a deadly sin. But our hero started smiling and thinking that if he was really God, he would be prancing around here going through the floors. But immediately he got serious and started saying that he couldn't say that he was cast out in a human body. That's why he has that look now, but he thinks he seems useful. When he will conquer the upper floors, Yamato immediately went up and started to say that he is thankful that God thinks highly of him. Jean Heck immediately walks up to him and nudges him, telling him that he agrees to conquer the tower with him and be chosen by God. After all, this is that once in a lifetime opportunity. Yamato started to thank him, and he is extremely honored. He will try his best. But Jean Heck started to say that as a sign of proof, he will leave a mark on him. This mark would burn him to the ground if he betrayed him. Once the soul brand was activated, Jean Heck continued to say that it wasn't the time to reveal himself yet, so he'd better keep it a secret. And if he understood, he should nod his head. Once he nodded like that, he went to do what Jean Heck told him. And at the same moment, the imperfect physical barrier that our hero had created began to deactivate. Those guys who were behind the barrier began to walk up to Jean Heck and see that he had defeated the monster destroying all of her samurai single-handedly. They started to thank him for the fact that they were able to survive because of him. But the guy went on to say that only one thing was unfortunate, there was no help from them. Jean Heck interrupted him and started saying that it felt good to thank him, but it was too early to say that like it was over. After all, what lay ahead of them was not for those who would easily accept the death of their favorite pet. Everyone began to prepare for battle and not look at who was approaching them. The guy, who didn't fully understand what he meant, started to rephrase what not to look at. And at the same moment his head started to be turned in his direction by someone. And as soon as his head turned the other way, he saw a strange creature looking him in the eye. And as soon as he realized that it was a jellyfish and it wanted to start turning into stone, that very second the jellyfish destroyed him and started saying in a sassy tone that the people gathered here were not only invading her temple, but also dared to touch her baby. And just as she started to get even more angry, all the players started to feel so much magic flying towards them. But one of the players started shouting to the others to calm down. After all, this is what they came here for, to destroy her. And as soon as one of the players activated their general command skill, 
all the others began to move to attack. Their fear resistance and morale increased by 20%. The girl standing next to her began to activate her lightning discharge. As soon as one of the lightning bolts reached the jellyfish, she began to yell at it to watch where to aim. Swinging her tail, the jellyfish began beating up all the players, saying that she wasn't an idiot who only had the petrification ability. With only a few people left on their feet, the girl began to realize that she couldn't see anything with her eyes closed. She started to ask the others if they were okay, but the jellyfish was already behind her and started swinging at her to finish her off. Just as her big arm reached the girl, a huge shield hit her in the face and she flew off to the side. It was our hero who flew to the aid of the regular players at full speed and was able to hit the jellyfish with full force. As it flew aside and crashed into the nearest wall, all the other players started to get to their feet. Jean Heck, who was standing in front, began to tell her squad that the jellyfish was his target from now on. And once the other players left the tunnel and left Jean Heck alone with the jellyfish, it was strange to her that Jean Heck could look directly into her eyes and not thereby turn into a memory. But once our hero was able to activate his greedy gay skill, he became immune to petrification and sarcastically responded to her because she was too weak. Medusa began to tell him back that he was too brazen for a human and at the same moment, she began to activate her skills including the power of harmony. Her magic attack power increased by 30% and her movement speed decreased by 15%. With huge screams, the jellyfish began to shout at him that he would die so easily and melt into pieces. In fact, at the same moment, her snakes that were on her head started spewing acidic solution that flew towards our hero. But Gene Heck activated his demonic sword king step skill and started jumping from one side to the other with ease. His movement speed increased by 70%. Straightening up, he started to tell her how she was going to kill him when she herself could barely crawl. But as soon as he spoke, the jellyfish began to activate its skill-eating wind. In this strike, with full force, she began to reel in on our hero. But no such luck, our hero used his artifact to block her attack. In fact, the sacred artifact began to answer him to the call of his master, and physical protection and magical protection began to increase by 30%. Medusa couldn't understand how this was possible, after all, she had used even the power of Orgone, but her blows didn't go through. It was a second before our hero was able to touch her with his two fingers. From that moment, the sealed player barrier, the last condition to finally become a barrier master, began to activate. He needed to quickly lock the boss monster into the barrier. And once that happened and the jellyfish was captured, our hero rejoiced. The jellyfish started to get worried and screamed that she didn't think he could lock her in that miserable glass box. With all her might she began to bang on it and thus succeeded in destroying it. But our hero looked at her and realized that it wasn't over yet. He started to run away from the jellyfish, but it was still chasing him for a long time. Soon, Gene Hack was able to activate his giant's hand skill. He picked up a few blocks of stone in his hands and started throwing them in her direction. But as soon as the large blocks flew towards her, she was able to smash them and tell him that such a thing wouldn't work on her. So stop throwing it to him, because it was time to get smart. But suddenly the jellyfish started to realize that he was trying to throw rocks at her. It looked like he didn't mean to hurt her. He just wanted to lure her into his trap. But once she got there, Jean Heck started telling her that it was too late to reach her. After all, he was drawing damage with corpse ash and distracting her with rocks for now. At the same moment, the level 3 barrier, sealed player, began to activate, and a great binding force began to encase the target in shackles. Now there was no way for the jellyfish to get out. After all, our hero had put a lot of effort into creating it. As soon as he turned around, the jellyfish started screaming for him to let her out of there immediately. Jean Hack lastly asked her to calm down so that she wouldn't waste her strength in vain. At the same moment, the quest conditions were fulfilled and he was able to seal the monster into a barrier. The third condition for the barrier master to set up the barrier was fulfilled, and although it was difficult to lock the boss on the island in the barrier alive. After all, that's why people only catch the goblin boss from the first floor. But what if one catches a higher level boss and the notification window starts showing that he managed to catch the highest level boss monster during the quest? He will be able to change his profession to interpreter helm of the highest barrier master class, and he can realize the full essence of the crown, reinterpret it, and create a barrier that didn't exist before. The barrier created by the interpreter has twice the effectiveness of a normal barrier. 
And as soon as he finished this, he began to rejoice, for he knew that a secret profession would appear. After all, the more difficult the conditions, the more generous the reward. And Jean Hack began to think that if he kept digging, how much more he could get. At the same moment, the moon seal engraving on his body began to bathe, and the barrier activation time decreased by 25% and the barrier efficiency increased by 30%. He was greatly relieved that he had even been given an improvement, and he was already excited to torture the swordsman with it. And as soon as our hero approached the jellyfish, it started asking him what he would do with it now. Would he kill her? But Jean Heck began to answer her that he has not yet fully decided. Well, maybe make armor out of her skin, a third of killing monster bosses. That's common, after all, you can get experience points, rewards, and items from them. But killing a jellyfish gives nothing outside of the temple. Dos heads lose the ability while I'm gone, and the armor made of it is still there. Dealing damage to the wearer, and he began to think about which one from the jellyfish. Gathering the ingredients he had in his inventory, he began to think of something. And as soon as he finished cooking, he began to draw something strange on the ground. Suddenly, a secret line of communication was made through the magic circle, and a man who was in the library appeared. He began to ask our hero how he knew about his contacts. For he was quite surprised at this. But our hero began to answer that he only bought what came to his hand and mixed them. Now that's a coincidence, for sure. But the man from the library went on to say that it was useless to pretend. After all, even he hadn't shared about this contact with the gods, and he needed to find out how he had guessed it. But Jean Hack ignored his question in every way possible and started pointing his finger towards the jellyfish. He was saying, speaking of which, what's that bridge doing here? And as soon as the man from the library paid attention to it, he saw a live jellyfish. For our hero knew it would interest him. After all, he collects everything related to Greek mythology, and he wouldn't miss a chance like this and began to tell him that he was just about to get rid of it, and since he was already on the phone, he could watch it. And as soon as our hero had his swords in his hands, he started to proceed and activate his sword graveyard skill. But the man from the library started shouting at him to calm down, because killing such a jewel is in no way allowed. And the fact that he recognized his contacts. So what, and who cares about that anyway? After all, a good thing is a good thing. He began to say that he would open a gate for our hero that leads straight to him, and they would talk when they meet. After all, things could get more interesting with that meeting. And at the same moment, the barrier that connected this dungeon to the library began to open in front of our hero. But not everything was so simple. And as soon as our hero began to enter the gate, he began to see that this place was not a library at all, but a tower of trials on the 42nd floor of the city of ancient Greek gods, where he was already met by Rick and started telling him that welcome to the white oasis. And upon seeing Rick, our hero began to hear from him that he was on the 42nd floor of the Tower of Trials and that it was the city of the ancient Greek gods. But Gene Heck began to reflect that he didn't even think he would get to the 42nd floor so soon, and he feels like this is his first time meeting the gods without reaching level 100. After briefly thinking about it, he started telling Rick that he assumed he would get to the Great Library, but he didn't expect to end up here and started asking Rick if he was here on vacation. But Rick started to say that he would like to be on vacation, but he was here for work and lived here, which he knew. And they were just about to meet Gene Hayak. Everything worked out very well. But as soon as Rick turned around and started walking, our hero realized it was a manner of speech, and something tells him that he uncovered his lies under the influence of the Egyptian gods. And a little while later all the other creatures who were on the 42nd floor began to see that a man had appeared among them. But of course they had heard the humans enter the tower, but they had no idea that they had gotten to the 42nd floor so quickly. And as soon as Rick stopped, he started asking Gene Heck if he knew what was in front of him, and that a sphinx used to stand here. And although it's now just a huge crater, it came after it was revealed that it was covered in the name of Anubis. But our hero, bending down and taking one of the stones in his hands, began to say that it aroused some pity. After all, he had heard that this statue had high artistic value, and Rick was surprised that our hero was not afraid of the absolute beings who had great power and ruled the upper floors. Gene Hack began to answer him that he didn't even know if he should be afraid of them. After all, this isn't even the 50th floor. And after saying that, Rick started laughing very loudly and saying that he was very interested and Mr. Gene Hack still doesn't disappoint him. 
And a little while later they had already come to the great Egyptian gods, and one of them, whose name was Anubis, began to get angry when he saw a man on the 42nd floor. And he began to angrily say just look at this man. For he, Jean Heck, had insulted him, Anubis. And now standing in front of him, but Osiris, who was sitting next to Anubis, started laughing out loud and telling Anubis that he looked so funny when he was angry. And Rick Hennessy started to worship the gods and greet them, but Jean Heck, who was standing behind him, started to say that he didn't actually come to see Anubis, he was tricked into coming here by this guy. But after saying that, Anubis got even angrier and started yelling that Jean Heck was a damn cheeky man. And with all the anger Anubis wanted to stomp our hero with his big foot. But suddenly there was a barrier under his foot and Rick started saying that Mr. Gene Heck came here as his guest and he is not going to break the laws of the tower in front of him. And after saying that, he calmed down and sat back in his seat. But Osiris couldn't stop laughing and saying that Anubis was so funny today. And at this time, Rick, who was standing downstairs, started to reflect on the fact that Gene Heck didn't even flinch, as if he already knew the laws of the tower. But suddenly he started saying that since he couldn't kill him himself, he would do it according to the tower's rules. So he began to summon a warrior. It was the guide of the dead, the strongest warrior the sixth floor player could stand up to. Summoned the guide of the departed. And Rick began to realize that there was no way to win with Gene Heck's current characteristics. He wondered what he would do in such a situation. And immediately, a notice popped up in front of our hero, if he could last more than five seconds against the Anubis warrior, he would let him take one item from the treasure room. But after saying that, Gene Hack began to smile suspiciously, for he realized that he only needed to hold out for more than five seconds, and that was it. At the same moment, he started to enter the stock exchange and bought a royal bloodline there. Even though two million coins had been spent on it. And as soon as he activated his heaven skill, a door was created at the same moment. Gene Hack accepted the challenge to duel, and at that very second, he activated his demonic king sword step skill and struck the Anubis warrior with all his might. And at the same moment, the notification window started showing that extreme changes in stats were fatal, and the damage increased by 1,500%. And the Anubis warrior was defeated, and the proud Gene Hack started walking and saying that he didn't even need 5 seconds. At the same time, oh god Osiris, who was watching the battle, couldn't believe that the man from the 6th floor was able to defeat the Anubis warrior. Gene Hack began to say what he should choose from the treasury, but Anubis began to get angry and yelled for Gene Hack to stop playing his games for they were seen to be attacked immediately after accepting the duel. The real behind Anubis the sun god of the mountains started yelling at Anubis to calm down, for he himself had made a promise and was not going to break the rules of the tower. Anubis kicked his foot on the ground and started to walk away and told the sun god to do as he pleased. The sun god apologized to his guests and began to say that he would show them the treasury if they would follow him. And as soon as they arrived at the treasury, the sun god began to show them everything that was in that treasury and told them to choose whatever they wanted, for a promise is a promise. On the side the sun continued to say that sooner or later he would get here and began to suggest to our hero what about becoming a resident of this floor by choosing one of them. Then he would gain powers more valuable than all those jewels. This time he would really get their support. But Rick, who was standing beside them, began to ponder over these words, does the sun god really want to offer a player from just the sixth floor a once in a lifetime choice of power? And smiling, Rick realized that this was how Gene Hack was able to get the support of the gods after all. But suddenly hearing that Gene Hack started to say that he didn't need it, after all he was already going to conquer floors much higher, so does it make sense to get help from here? Therefore, as a gift, he chooses what lies where he points his finger. The sun god got a little angry after saying that, because he realized that this guy was pretty cocky. And a little while later the sun god went up to the floor above and started to approach Anubis, and he started to ask him if he was done. To which the sun god had already calmed down and started asking Anubis that he was in trouble as usual because of his temper. But Anubis was interested in what the wretched man had chosen from his treasury. And the sun god began to say that he had chosen the black ancient egg. But Anubis wondered if he knew what he was choosing. But the sun god replied that he did not know, for he could not verify it. But one thing was clear to him, depending on what he did with the egg, it could be a huge disaster for mankind. But a little while later, Alice starts telling Gene Hack why he chose the ancient egg, because he himself knows that if you hatch it wrong, there will be a lot of problems if he can survive. But what is Gene Hack going to do if the city disappears? Where will she be able to buy new things then? But suddenly our hero moved Alice back into the ring. But that made her angry, because she asked him not to move her back. 
So suddenly our hero's face became serious and he started telling her to wait there. For as he looked at that egg, he started saying that for the first time in how long he should concentrate properly and started pouring his mana into that egg. And as soon as Gene Heck concentrated to put all the mana he had into the egg, he began to remember that the only thing he knew about the ancients was one phrase said by the wacky adventurer Fessus. That delicious mana was the key to success. And at the same moment, our hero began to activate his skills, fire element, glacier creation, heaven patronization, heavenly flower cultivation technique. The ancient egg began to absorb mana from the air. It was very tempting for the ancient one, and little by little, the egg began to crack. And at the same moment, the egg began to glow with a bright color. And a small ancient creature appeared in front of our hero and started looking for the mana that Gene Heck had just tasted. He began to gather all the remaining mana to give it form. As soon as a small pile representing all of his remaining mana appeared in his hands, it was the first food the ancient ate. The notification window showed that the dissection of the seal on the ancient had occurred, and Gene Heck was registered in the Hall of Fame for a great achievement, the first taming of an ancient. All the tower dwellers were interested in their achievement, and he had to choose a name for the ancient to increase his pet's loyalty. Taking the ancient in his arms, he started to say what if he named him Batat, but suddenly Gene Heck started to realize that although he was cute, he didn't have the mana to feed him. And at that moment, he began to see in the notification window that mid-level manager Rick Hennessy had subscribed to his channel. Now it became like Messi's was reduced from 90% to 80%. The next day Gene Hack was in one of the buildings and the SWB TV executive started telling our hero that all he had to do was a routine interview. He knows that their program is the best in the field and they will guarantee him a 40% rating. But in response, Gene Hack started asking him what executives do in such a situation. The TV executive started to say that if it's about him, it's only natural for him to share some cool tips for getting through. People would love it, since passing the Tower of Trials was the only popular program that survived in their time on television. Gene Heck wondered why the head of the TV station didn't recognize him. Immediately afterward, he began to ask him what about payment, for he had decided to get an advance with Magic Stones. The telecom manager agreed and started to say that there were a lot of players asking for Magic Stones lately. Gene Heck started to say how much they could give him, since he wanted to take everything possible. But the TV executive started to say that they usually have pay standards. But for a superstar like him, they can offer him unlimited terms. There is a man who wants to star with him. If he agrees, he will allow him to receive unlimited magic stones from their company. Our heroes asked who this person was. But a little while later, director Hong Du Pi started to emerge from a fancy car at the SWB TV station. For him, the long-awaited day had arrived. The reporters who were near him started to say that they will really star in today's program. And was it true that the relationship between the Dark Luck Guild and Gene Hayak had finally gotten better? But suddenly, another person came out of the car. It was an S-ranked member of the China Guild, a girl named Chow. The reporters were excited about this, because with such a castaway, they realized that something big was coming. Tonight's program would blow up all the ratings. From the next car that pulled up, our hero began to get out. The reporters completely lost their minds. And as soon as he got out of the car, he approached the head of the Dark Fortune Guild and began to ask, did he chew well? To which Hong Dok Pi began to reply that thanks to him, of course he did, and he was very busy restoring his image after the terrible disgrace. Suddenly, Gene Hayok noticed that he had brought his friends over to brag about his connections. The martial arts master Hong Dok Pi started to say that they said he was coming, so he had to at least prepare somehow. Those two guys who were looking at our hero somehow looked at him with suspicion as if he was the number one target for them, but no one expected that along with Gene Hayok, the saint of Amsterdam, the strongest Korean martial arts master and the holy sword man John Yusung would also come. And as soon as he got out of the car, reporters ran up to him and started asking him that they hadn't heard that he had rejected all the invitations to join the guild. But why had he accepted Gene Hayok's offer? Was it because of him and not his comrade? But suddenly, he abruptly turned around with an angry face and started saying that they were no comrades at all and he would destroy him at the first opportunity. At the same time, those two ranked players who had come along with the head of the Dark Fortune Guild started looking at the swordsman and whispering that he was someone who should have died long ago. Saint Teresa and even Zhang Yusun were on Jean Hayok's side. At that same moment, they started to turn around and leave, but the guild leader of the Dark Fortune Guild started shouting after them where they were going. After all, 
They had agreed to star together in a program today, but the girl turned around and first said that their goal and they didn't have to fulfill the other conditions. At the same time, Gene Heck noticed this and started telling the Dark Fortune Guild head that if he wanted to brag about connections, he should have prepared better. The reporters who had been waiting for this chance for a very long time began to turn around and walk away from the Dark Fortune Guild leader, causing him to become even more nervous. And holding the reporter's pants in his hands, he realized that they had gone crazy and were willing to take off even their pants to interview Gene Hayak. At this time, inside the TV station, a swordsman started telling our hero that he was enjoying the desperation of the head of the Dark Fortune Guild right now. Our hero started to reply to him that he is grateful that he came, but he should stay out of his personal life. To which the swordsman began to get angry and replied to him that he was not prying into his personal life, and he was angry that he had lost his home because of him. But suddenly our hero felt uncomfortable, because he remembered that he told the Manas that he was unknown, and because of this his apartment was trashed. Started to say that he had no idea what it was about so he didn't wallow. And he only compared 16 videos of him that he made, you can tell right away that John Doe is you. And Gene Hack started to ask, no no way? To him the guy who was expelled from the main association. And how did their fight go? The swordsman replied that Kaiwan was quite strong, but compared to his duel with him, then it was very easy. That was all he said. At the same time, the martial master asked Teresa what their relationship with Jean Hayak was like. She replied that they are just comrades and he is the person she trusts the most. But the martial arts master told her lastly that she would have a hard time. But that was beside the point. And a little while later, the recording started and the TV host started saying that they had some special guests on their program outside the Tower of Trials tonight. And first she decided to talk in the direction of our hero about how he was gaining popularity because of his incredible passing speed, and she started asking if he might have any special tips. To which Gene Hack started to say that one piece of advice is don't stop trying until you succeed. After these words, the host of the show began to comment on how impressive the previous story was, and asked the characters if they could talk about the third floor. Gene Hack replied that simply avoiding the dangers on that level was enough. The host then asked about the fourth floor, and Gene Heck similarly confirmed that it was also important to be able to avoid dangers here and take some time. Shortly thereafter, the manager of the TV station showed our hero this report and questioned how it was possible to allow such a story to be shown on TV. He realizes that not airing even one episode could cause serious damage, completely ruining the reputation for which he is responsible. Moreover, he comes without shame or conscience to get paid. After fulfilling all the contractual requirements placed before him, Gene Heck took the initiative to politely ask the TV station manager to rise from his seat without disturbing the plan of action. Despite this, the manager began to object, arguing that such ideas were unrealistic. At that moment, Gene Hayak resolutely took the sleeve of the TV manager's suit and addressed him with a serious expression. He talked about John Su and asked if the manager knew who he was. Seeing the pictures spread out on the table, the manager realized that he was talking about his brother, the current director of the streamers. They were the ones who kept the streamers in fear with oppressive contracts comparable to slave shackles. One day the streamers banded together and came to the office to protest. Gene Heck was also among them, and through this experience he learned a lot about life. He realized how important it was to be able to advocate in order to avoid being dispossessed. At a time when they were suffering from fraudulent contracts, the superintendent spoke out to them, carrying a bitter meaning. There was no problem with the contract, and Gene Heck began communicating with the manager, emphasizing that he was still confident in his words. After all the arguments made, our hero together with the manager headed towards the safe where the magic stones were stored. After opening the door and going inside, the manager said that this was their company's magic stone warehouse. According to the terms of the contract, Unlimited use of these stones for two hours was granted. However, Gene Hack was dissatisfied that he only had two hours to do everything. The manager explained that this restriction was spelled out in the contract, albeit in small print in the corner, and that Gene Hack could use the stones for his own purposes. This would trigger an anti-theft spell, so trying to add the stones to his inventory would be futile. The manager began to ponder what he had left to do other than absorb the stones. However, the average time to absorb even a low-level stone was 5 minutes, and no matter how many he absorbed, the amount in 2 hours remained negligible. In the end, the manager suggested the possibility of going to the staff since the entrance here was strictly controlled. When Gene Heck turned his gaze to the two female employees standing nearby, he noticed that one of them was holding a cell phone with the camera on. 
This made him realize that the manager intended to undermine his reputation if he used force to obtain the stones. In response, he agreed and explained to the manager that although he only had two hours, he would make the best use of that time. The manager, as he left the room, wished him luck and informed him that he would be back in two hours. He asked the guys there to take care of Mr. Gene Heek. After the door closed, our hero said hello to them and brought to their attention that he had something amazing to show them. After a while, the manager sat in his office looking at the photograph. However, after offering his condolences for the accident in which his acquaintance had died, he put the photograph in a basket and as he left, he began to reflect on the fact that life must go on. He pondered why the one who had passed even after death continued to haunt him. It would be at least somewhat comforting if he could somehow reduce the expenditure of magic stones. However, the manager was interested in how to get rid of Gene Heck. He began to ponder the possibility of bringing in journalists to create a scandal around the matter. He decided to take it up as soon as he got out of this predicament. As he approached the safe and began to scan his retina to open the door, he turned to our hero with a smile on his face, asking if he had been able to use the stones in the allotted two hours. However, upon closer inspection, he discovered that none of the stones that were previously in the safe were there anymore. The smile from his face instantly disappeared. The female employee who was with our hero was sitting on the ground with him and looking at the yam that was on the ground with amazement. This yam had gotten on the ground after being devoured by the magic stones Gene Heck, who was standing nearby, began to question the manager about whether they had more magic stones. The little guy just really likes to eat, and after everything he saw, the manager fell to the floor, stunned from the shock he had experienced. Our hero began to mull over the idea that this might be his well-deserved retribution for the dirty deeds he had been pulling without knowing his place. And he realized that this payment would torment him for the rest of his life. At the same time, our hero noticed a notification appearing on the screen, which described the characteristics of the Batat. Its mana consumption during battle and the fact that the experience gained in battle is shared between pet and master. Gene Hack began to realize that the Yam was very powerful, and he didn't have enough mana for battle. After all, he only has 80 mana, and if he summons the Yam into battle, it will only be able to last for 5 minutes, if not less. Now all he has to do is strive to improve his skills faster than he planned. And at this time, there were two players in one of the houses, of which one was practicing. He had already managed to form an alliance with important allies. In response, she heard about a mysterious man who acted even faster than they expected. He thought that the swordsman was feuding with Gene Hack, but the girl noticed that he was reacting aggressively, but was having a hard time complying with his requests. That was enough to consider him a supporter of Gene Hack. At this time, the man started to say that nothing can be done anymore and everyone should be labeled as potential enemies if they are not on China's side. At the same time, Gene Hack began to question the swordsman about how he took what he had been shown. This mirror was a destructive tool capable of expanding in size. Its specialty was that it was capable of establishing a connection with any desired location in the test tower within the first 10 floors. The mirror has a recharge period of 90 days and is limited to 30 minutes of use. Only one companion is allowed, and as the player's progress increases, so does the available floor. Eventually they move to the Tower of Trials, more specifically the sixth floor, which is located in the Elven Forests. At this time, the swordsman approached our heroes, asking them about a way to increase their strength. He shared his intentions of becoming stronger and even wielding a powerful artifact that he intends to conquer. This begs the question, why didn't he try to solve this on his own? Gene Hack countered this comment by emphasizing that he cares and is interested in swordsmen. His desire is to help swordsmen become stronger so that he can bravely defy difficulties again. The moment our hero began to activate the mirror, swordsmen began to inquire about which floor they were going to continue on. In response, our hero informed him that they were heading to the tenth floor, known as the Warrior's Haven. This floor housed the warrior guards protecting the boss. Their numbers amounted to about 21 people. Gene Hack asked the swordsman if he could handle it. The swordsman replied that it was worth a try, except if the stone immortal, who was the boss of the tenth floor, awakened. Gene Hack continued by saying that what they would do is this, if they could get rid of all those guards and hold out against the boss for a minute, he would accept his challenge to duel. From that moment, the swordsman confirmed his agreement, started moving quickly towards the guards and shouted back to our hero that he would definitely fulfill his promise. And as soon as the swordsman began to attack, the warriors began to rise and answer him that this is a holy place for warriors, and only those who have been given the right can be here. 
but the swordsman didn't care, and he began to shout loudly for them to shut up and leave his path. In another place in a hair product store, Xian Zhanghua was sitting on a couch and suddenly saw a familiar face it was Teresa and she immediately said hello to him as soon as she saw him because it was the commander of the raid on the ruins on which she had recently fought and a little later in the store began to apply the technique of hair restoration and Teresa's hair total guy was restored in an instant and Although this procedure was expensive, but now their hair was as before and Xian Zhanghua began to say that he missed his hair so much, but suddenly the notification system began to show him. And Sun Zhanghua started telling Teresa that sometimes he thinks that maybe it's a curse to punish him for his sins because he was the raid commander on the first floor and what a success when he only acted out of greed and avarice that caused many people to suffer and he even thinks that losing his hair might be too light a punishment for him and Teresa started answering him that since his greed caused people to suffer. It's not good, but still the fact that he risked his life to get what he wanted she thinks it's pretty great and Sun Zhonghua afterwards. And after that he finally dealt with the last warrior that was in front of him, but as soon as he started to raise his head he saw that the boss of the 10th dungeon was left and even though the swordsman was very tired he had a serious battle ahead of him because he realized that if he could hold out for at least a minute he could fight Jean Hyok seriously and defeating Jean Hyok was something he was willing to risk his life for. And as soon as the 10th floor boss started to get back on his feet it was over very quickly and swordsman woke up in a hospital bed and as soon as he opened his eyes he couldn't understand how he got here and the girl who was sitting next to him started to say that he was in the hospital and as soon as swordsman saw her he started to say to her that she was his servant but she sighed and started to say that if she was just Jean Hex's slave. And she started to explain that the principal had ordered him to be taken to the hospital, that's why he was here and his condition was terrible. Jean Heck told her to give this to him when he woke up, and she started opening her briefcase to get the thing he asked her to give from there. And once she found it, she began to give him that rock in his hands. Immediately after that, Swordsman started to remember that he was fighting a 10th floor boss, and as soon as the boss activated his absolute vulnerability skill, the damage stopped going through him. The Swordsman began to remember that physical attacks rather than magic attacks were ineffective against him, and even his attribute sword was broken. But Jean Heck, that creep, began to tell the swordsman that he had only lasted 21 seconds, and he wasn't going anywhere like that, and he still had a long way to go. And as soon as Jean Heck put on his mask, he started activating the steps of the demonic sword king and started dodging all the attacks of the 10th floor boss. Oh, and also with incredible accuracy. The 10th floor boss realized that he couldn't get our hero and started activating another skill of his sanctuary. The force of attraction began to increase by 500%. The swordsman who was lying on the ground began to feel a terrible pressure on himself and told Jean Heck that even he couldn't handle it. He thought that this was the end for Jean Hayok and was waiting for it. But Jean Heck began to activate his level 1 barrier skill. The barrier began to strengthen. And the notification window kept showing that it was increasing the effect of spells on the back square at a rate of 1 second. Our hero began to tell the 10th floor boss that now it was time for him to become a stone as well. As soon as the barrier center activation direction setting was complete, the notification window showed that no damage was being dealt to the boss because of it. Like this time after time and eventually the 10th floor boss turned into a stone. The swordsman who was lying behind our hero couldn't believe that Jean Heck had defeated the boss. That's the last thing he remembers. But our hero was standing by that stone at that time and the notification window began to show that the boss monster of the 10th floor had been neutralized. The remaining time to mop up the next floor was 90 days, and the conditions for occupying the immortal giant stone had one of the absolute abilities in vulnerability. Our hero defeated the boss and was able to copy its ability. Once the conditions were met, the notification window showed that he had successfully copied the invulnerability skill, and the invulnerability activation time was reduced several times. At the same time, the swordsman who was in the hospital started talking to himself under his breath that he was bullying him again even now. At that moment, our hero was on the sixth floor in the forest of elves and started looking in his inventory. He saw that he had gotten the armor, crushing giant sword, and the giant shield. The achievements were entered into the hall of fame for two days and he was listed as unknown. Jean Hack began to realize that he was addicted to the Tower of Trials because of this victory. Suddenly, Alice, who was in the ring he was wearing around his neck, began to tell him that someone was following them and asked if he knew about it. Jean Heck started to answer her that he was aware of it, but she didn't understand why he wasn't doing anything about it, since it wasn't like him. Jean Heck explained that the place they were going to hated outsiders and they wouldn't get anything out of this battle. 
That guy who was watching our hero started to say that Jean Heck was heading to the Elf Forest on the sixth floor. At this time in Beijing, the China Guild and a player named Liko was standing in front of his boss. The boss began to tell them that not only did Jean Heck take the fifth floor, but he was also somehow able to get the tenth floor. He expressed his displeasure and disappointment in their actions. Immediately after saying that, the head of the China Guild, Gong Chong, swung his sword and severed the left ear of the player in front of him. He began to say that the player was pathetic and he had not performed any of the errands properly. He expressed his displeasure and remarked that he always had to intervene to get something to move forward. But all of a sudden, a hitman ran up to that guy and started treating his head wound, asking the guild leader to leave him alone. But the guild leader started saying that next time he won't get off with one ear and should remember that when he looks at the wound, he doesn't know for what reason Jean Heck stayed on the sixth floor. But they would be better off now, as everyone should head to the sixth floor and regroup and burn Jean Heck along with the forest and all the witnesses who can see it. On the sixth floor in the Elf Forest, the guy who was watching our heroes heard the guild leader's last words to keep Jean Heck in sight. As soon as the call ended, that masked guy continued to watch. But suddenly, an elf girl appeared behind his back and was already ready to finish him off. Everyone knows that the elf forest is one of the best resting places in the tower. After all, just by being there for 90 days, the seventh floor will automatically open. So many people come here to rest, but some players don't know the rules of this forest. One of the girls started yelling at the other players not to go further because it's the territory of the elves and it's very dangerous. But that guy continued to go further into the bushes. Because he saw a little horned rabbit there, but the girl didn't like it, and she ran up to him and started pulling his ears farther away, screaming, "Staff hates strangers. If he doesn't want an arrow in his head, he should go back quickly." But that guy wasn't happy about being treated that way. After all, he came here to have fun, and she's just nagging him. That rabbit who ran into the bushes saw who the masked man who was watching our heroes. The elf girl who had finished him off jumped back into the tree and began to watch behind our hero, who was walking quietly on his own. But she wondered who he was, since he was being watched, and it didn't look like he was up to anything. Suddenly, she realized that he was probably lost. After all, only the experienced can get out of this forest, and he would never find his way out. But our hero took a deep breath and realized that he had to go left. The elf girl, who was sitting in the tree, could not believe that he knew this road. After all, you have to spend a lot of time in the forest to be able to find the way by smell. How would an ordinary person have such knowledge about this way? But she figured it was no big deal because luckily he was approaching the illusion barrier. Once he hit it, he would walk in endless circles until he was exhausted, wandering through endless illusions. She decided to watch it, and when he passed out, she would carry him outside. But suddenly she began to hear the voice of our hero, who began to say, "Who does that anyway? There should be passive collateral here, not active collateral." After all, the active voice reduces efficiency by half, and he doesn't know who created it. But he seems to have skipped all his chromatics lessons. That elf girl who sat in the tree created this, and she started to get mad at our hero because she didn't realize who he was. But Jean Hack began to notice that a big elf girl was attached to him. It seems she was a newcomer, and since he noticed her, he started to take action, showing that he was hungry. Immediately, he activated the other world cuisine skill since he had such a great skill. He began to prepare the dishes, and the elf is sitting in the tree was impressed. After all, she didn't think a human could cook. Immediately, her drool started running because she wanted to try it. But suddenly, she jumped down from the tree, picked up a weapon, and pointed it at our hero. She shouted at him that the sacred forest of elves should not be offended because of cooking animal meat. Our hero turned around and started to show her that it wasn't meat, but just beans. If she didn't believe it, she could try it herself. But the elf stood her ground and kept yelling at him not to lie. But as soon as the smell of the dish came, she calmed down and admitted that it did smell like beans. Our hero knew that elves loved cooking and music in the Tower of Trials. However, animal meat is forbidden among them. But what if he gave the elfus a chance to try a meat-like dish? He asked her if she would be willing to try one of the best dishes. They couldn't contain their curiosity. When the elfus took the food from her plate, she questioned if it really wasn't meat. Our hero earnestly told her that she should not insult his devotion to cooking, 
And after these words, the Elphus began to eat. She tasted the food and her eyes lit up. She couldn't believe how delicious it was. She continued eating and confessed that she didn't expect our hero to be such a wonderful person. She introduced herself as Sylvia, a ranger of this forest. She apologized for her assumptions about him and asked what she could do to apologize. Our hero asked permission to visit the elf village, and a little while later he found himself in the elf forest in the main village. He introduced himself as Jean Heck and received a welcome from the head of the elf forest. He looked around and wondered if they really welcomed him. After all, all the elves in the room raised their weapons at him. An elf named Taslan told him that they did not expect a warm welcome from a human who came from an unknown place. He clarified that humans have no right to be in the sacred forest. Our hero learned about the notification system for copying Taslan's skills. Before he could finish his story, Sylvia Arrow released an arrow in his direction. But he reflected it back with his dagger and noticed that she was being too rude to her guests. He suggested she bring a gift with her next time. Taslan was impressed by the hero's reaction and said that the next arrow would fly at his head. But suddenly Sylvia intervened in the discussion and started telling Teslan to calm down. After all, she had brought him to the village as an apology for the attack, but he didn't want to hear that either. He started talking into Sylvia to shut up, after all strangers were not welcome here and they would deal with it after he was dead. But Sylvia kept insisting that she had invited him for a reason, because he was a talented cook and could cook real delicacies. And at this point, the head of the elves stopped Teslan, who did not believe that they could just change their minds like that. He went on to say that there was no need to rush and let him prove his words with deeds. But it was immediately obvious from Teslan that he was not thrilled with this decision. Elven figs are a special fruit containing Manu, and by eating them one can increase the power of one's magic. And the day when the elves harvest and thank the forest is called the Festival of Moonlight. And just at this time, Gene Hack began to activate his other world cuisine skills. Many dishes began to be prepared. And a little while later, when most of the dishes were ready and the table was set, Gene Hack began to invite everyone to the table. And holding a plate in his hands, he began to say that it was not meat, but only an imitation of soy, and all the elves began to eat the food that Gene Hack had prepared for them. After the first taste, they began to taste a wonderful flavor that couldn't be conveyed in words. Suddenly, Teslan, who had his head spinning, began to take food from his plate. Jean Hack walked over and took the plate away from him, saying that he wanted to shoot him, because he had no conscience. And so he would go around and not eat his food. While everyone was eating, Teslan stood not far away and was upset that he wouldn't be able to taste it. Eventually, when the elder finished eating, he said that it was marvelous food. And jumping up from the table, he cried out that the stranger had given them such a delicious meal and the atmosphere was only getting better. All the elves began to thank him for this wonderful food. Soon the festival of moonlight began. And as soon as the festival began and the music of the elves was played, the elder began to distribute the gifts of the forest to the rest of the elves. At this point, the players who were nearby in the forest began to hear that the elves had rolled up the feast. It was quite noisy, but the other players wanted to watch it. But one of the players told him not to even dream about it, because elves have a very bad temper. If he caught sight of it, they would want to finish him off. At the same moment, some strange guy started killing the other players. And as soon as the guy turned his head around, he saw in front of him a strange black masked killers who had already massacred his friends. And he couldn't understand what it was all about. Suddenly another masked man was behind his back and finished him off. Those criminals started saying to everyone to remember that they should not leave any witnesses. At the same time, the boy who was in the elf village started firing his bow. As soon as he hit the target, he rejoiced. Jean Heck, who was sitting near the elder, began to say that he had heard that marksmanship was in the elves' blood. The elder replied that it was true, for it was common for them. And he began to ask our hero how he liked the festival. After all, they rarely invite outsiders to this celebration, and because of the effects of figs, they are forced to hide in the woods. And he was sure that the Alphas loved entertainment and food as much as anyone, but above all they valued peace, and such elven wisdom impressed Jean Heck. But suddenly he began to hear Teslan behind him begin to ask how the stranger viewed their deaths, Jin Heck decided to ask him why he was offended because he didn't get any food. But Teslan began to say in a rude tone towards our hero that being able to cook doesn't change his race, and his being here is spoiling the holy elven forest. 
Suddenly Gene Hack started telling him to have an archery contest and the loser would leave the forest forever. To which Teslon got in over his head and started asking our hero if he was sure of defeating the elf. I eventually agreed and ordered the targets to be prepared, and all the other elves were thrilled to hear about the archery contest and started running towards them sooner rather than later. Gene Hack, who was standing next to Teslon, began to tell him that he was sorry he didn't have a cheerleader. And at that moment, our hero started to open his inventory, and from there a pet appeared, an ancient who thought he had been called to eat. Teslon, upon seeing the ancient, began to ponder that it was a pretty interesting pet, and proceeded to say that they were starting, and he would shoot first, and you have to hit the room that's in the tree. And as soon as Gene Heck fired, he hit, and Teslon, who was shooting second, began to draw his bow and say that it was very good, as for a human. But he still had a long way to go for his skills, and just as he was ready to shoot, his pet was right next to him and started activating his fear skill, causing Teslon to fall under the effects of its influence for three seconds, and in an instant all the elves who were watching this contest started falling to the ground. And as soon as Teslon raised his head, he saw that his arrow that he had fired hadn't even reached its target and had fallen near a tree. And he could not understand why. But our hero, smiling strangely, began to feed his pet ancient and said that victory is victory. And at the same moment the notification window began to show that the conditions had been met. And Gene Hack started scolding Batata and told him to be more careful. He should remember that and not do that again. Even if he's really nice, it's still not forgivable. The ranger who got up started telling our hero that he was a damn man, urged him to take pity on him. Because of that, he has no conscience. But Gene Heck answered him that he is not a Halam because at that moment he got a new skill, direct hit, and now he can master the bow. His skill had increased by 90%. A 5 second concentration boosts his accuracy to 100%. And the rangers started shouting that he wanted to spit, for he would never recognize such a victory. Gene Heck waved his hand and began to say that he agreed this was a warm up. Now he was ready to have the contest all over again if that was what he wanted. As soon as they got ready to shoot, Ranger started saying that he would execute him on the spot if he failed again. Ranger wasn't thrilled that they had lost so much time. At that moment, he activated the direct hit skill and fired. The arrow reached its target and hit the center of the circle. The rest of the elves were delighted with their ranger who was masterful with the bow. Sylvia approached our hero and asked him to stop before it was too late. He should apologize to Teslon so that things could be settled. He's better than both ranger and human at archery. But for Gene Hack, this was more than a test. He started to say that since he was the best among the elves, it was interesting. He then activated the ice creation skill. A large block of ice began to rise up from the ground with a target that he had to hit. The ranger couldn't understand what he was doing. Gene Hack explained that he was increasing the difficulty to match his level. He then started generating blood rage energy and released a scarlet magic shot. It enhances arrows with black flames. 2.5 seconds of concentration increased accuracy by 100%. Bow mastery increased by 145%. The ranger couldn't understand what had changed in him in such a short time, but he didn't fully understand what it was. As our hero fired his bow, the scarlet magic shot activated. His arrow shattered the opponent's arrow and it split into two pieces. The target was also shattered into two pieces. Right after that, Gene Hack started saying that the ranger had lost to a sneaky person. The ranger, who couldn't understand what had happened, threw his bow on the ground and said that he couldn't lose even the remnants of honor. He left the village and would not return. A ranger of the illuminated forest always keeps his promises. The other elves became frustrated as they watched their ranger leave. Gene Hack tried to stop him, but realized he was keeping his end of the bargain. The festival was in full swing, and he offered to change the terms of the contract so that the ranger would stay. But the rangers didn't understand what he meant. A little while later, as the fun continued, he stood very much pissed off and started to say that he was almost gone, and the other elves who were looking at him couldn't contain the smile on their faces. Gene Hack started to tell him that in his homeland only they wore such a thing and they called it a veteran's outfit. The ranger was actually wearing a suit. You're so weird, some of the elves started to tell him that no one would dare make fun of a ranger dressed like that, but those were just words and some of the elves started laughing really hard.
An elder, who was sitting near our hero and looking more amused at all this, started telling our hero that he had an interesting hobby. And that the ranger was so obedient to go along with it. But Gene Hack was beginning to hope that he wasn't overreacting, because exposing the best elven ranger to something like this wasn't safe, and should be handled with care. But the elder began to tell him not to be afraid, for it was good for him to taste defeat. His desire to protect the forest had already begun to weigh him down. That was why he was grateful for his fight, and right after saying that, Gene Heck realized that the elder was kind and wise. So he suggested to him, should they extend their punishment? To which the elder began to reply that it was necessary to harass him once, the opportunity arose, but suddenly someone's screams began to be heard from afar. It was one of the elves who started running towards the elder and shouting that everyone was in danger. The elder, upon seeing him, realized that it was a member of the outer garrison after all, and began to ask him what had happened. The wounded elf began to say that the outsiders had started an invasion, and masked men had appeared out of nowhere and started killing everyone. Their rangers, though they fought as hard as they could, but they couldn't fight them off. After all, the invaders were very strong, and even high-ranked rangers were not a hindrance to them. At that very second, the other elves jumped up to the wounded man and started telling him to save his strength, because he wouldn't last long in that condition. At the same moment, the elder began to get very angry and shouted for everyone to get ready for battle as soon as possible, and to dismantle their weapons, because the invaders had probably already surrounded the forest. And everyone must defend the forest, and without sparing his strength and life, the ranger began to shout to the others that there was now an urgent gathering of a resistance unit and the high-ranking rangers should go after him. At the same time, our hero, who was standing near all this commotion, began to get angry to the point where the air began to change color near him. The other players started to run away from those who were attacking them. One of the players, who was lagging behind another group, began to say that he couldn't run anymore and needed to stop and rest. And as soon as he stopped and turned around, he started yelling to those who were chasing them that they were just players, but they wouldn't listen. And one of the masked men massacred him in an instant, for they had been ordered to leave no witnesses. And he began to tell his other companions that everyone in this forest should disappear. And they proceeded to destroy everyone who got in their way, both regular players and elves. But suddenly arrows flew from the attackers and they realized that the enemy was already near them, but no sooner had one of them said anything than an arrow flew straight into his head and he fell to the ground. They were high-ranking rangers, and as soon as they came down from the trees they could not believe their eyes at what they saw before them. After all, their mother's children had been brutally murdered, and one of the rangers began to say that he had failed to protect them, and so they would have their revenge. And he went on to say, so that everyone would remember that if they met any survivors, they should evacuate them to the center of the village. There they would be protected, and any enemies they spotted they should finish them off mercilessly and avenge their brothers and sisters. And as soon as everyone heard the order, Gene Heck appeared and began to say that revenge was good, but he had a plan. While our hero was telling the rest of the elves the plan, the players from the China Guild who attacked the village were moving further and further away. Suddenly, they saw a notification that Sector 16 had lost two signals. I didn't realize that the elves started to retaliate, and the girl started ordering all the units that their main target was Gene Heck, protected by a barrier, and he wouldn't be able to call for outside help and they must send more scouts to the village, and they are obligated to discover the target. After accepting the order, the rest of the squads began to follow the instructions and act, for their forces totaled 150 men. And there are three people with S rank, and they start advancing deep inside. Although one squad will definitely detect Jean Hayak, and after receiving the coordinates, they will gather all the forces and attack the target. And no matter how strong he is, no one will be able to resist three of their top-level arms at once, and they are sure that he will disappear soon, and won't leave a speck of dust from him. But suddenly the girl who was moving through the trees noticed a hand that was reaching for her, and in an instant the mask was torn off her face. It was our hero who stood waiting for them on the branch. And that girl began to fall to the ground, and following this she heard the words of Jean Heck. He said thoughtfully that he was still wondering who the fools were that had attacked the village, and it was the China Guild, taking their chances near the TV studio buildings. And he went on to say that he hoped they would pay for thwarting him. But the girl began to smile, for she didn't think he would come to them himself, and began to tell the rest of the squads that the target had been located. And as soon as the second squad began to advance toward her, the, they didn't notice that the elves who had gotten close to them started attacking them and saying that where were they going, because they were their targets today. 
But the players from the China Guild weren't too happy about the alphas that had arrived on the battlefield, and at the same time, Gene Heck was fighting against the other players. And he began to activate his skills, Graveyard of Balls and Demonic King Sword Steps. And in an instant, he massacred several players, and the girl at the head of everyone started shouting for them to keep their distance and scatter. And as soon as the other players started running in different directions along the tree branches, our hero activated the ice creation skill and they were all destroyed in an instant. The girl, the one who was in charge, started hiding behind the trees and realized that he was much stronger than in the video and they could be interrupted before help arrived. She started to decide how she could do that to tighten up the timing, and at one point started calling out to Gene Heck and telling him that she didn't know what he was forgetting here, but she thought Gene Heck was here. He answered her, what business is it of yours, and stop stalling. You can just walk up, attack and be done with it, but the girl started to reply that they are wiping everyone out and narrowing the ring of encirclement while he is here then the others are already carving up the villages, and when it is destroyed, the coveted item will disappear from this world. And as soon as Gene Heck heard that they wanted to destroy the village, he began to smile. The girl who was behind the tree began to ponder that if what he wanted was in the village, he would return to protect the item and then they would have a chance to regroup. But even the hero continued to stand her ground and smile. It's not like she cared about the village, but he didn't want it to be exterminated. He realized beforehand what they were up to, but their plan is an unusual church, because at this time in the village of the elves. Those guys who attacked her couldn't believe what they saw. Right now it was Alice floating in the air. And she started telling them that she didn't care about the elves. Except they interfered with her partner's plans, and at that very moment she started activating the blood spear skill and lastly said that it was enough to kill them all. Those guys who were on the ground started to cower with fear, because they didn't see Alice waving her hand and telling them to disappear. And at the same moment a huge bloody replica started flying at those guys and ripping them apart. They couldn't understand where they could run away and take cover from such a powerful attack, but there was nowhere to run. After the bright explosion, the girl who was talking to our hero started to see in her notification window that the players who were in the village started to disappear. And the group that was in the village was defeated in an instant, and they all lay on the ground. But one of them managed to survive and started asking for help from his comrades to run to the village. But before he could even finish speaking, Alice finished him off and started saying that she was bored somehow, and she couldn't even call it a warm-up. And as soon as she got down on the ground, she started telling the rest of the alphas who were hiding behind a tree that whether they could make alcohol for her. And that girl who was with our hero started to see in her notification window that the name of the destination player was missing, and she couldn't understand if the main force had been destroyed, and how he was even able to do it. That Gene Hack started to approach her, shrieked for them to create a circle of blood demon, and in an instant a multitude of players from Guild China started to surround Gene Hack. She in turn began to activate an injection of psychotropic poison, and thanks to the poison, her troops began to gain resistance to fear. And at one point they went crazy and started attacking our hero without any fear. But this was not enough, for Gene Hack did not stand still and began to jump up and smash them all one by one. He overpowered them, and when he realized that they had gone completely cuckoo, he used his ice skill and froze some of them. But others still ran in his direction to destroy him. And the girl, who kept hiding behind a tree like that, watched the madness as our hero smashed her squad. And she began to wonder where her partner was, for they needed his help so badly. But at this time her partner was fighting against the elves, and the rangers started to use their arrow mastery skills and attack just the guy. He defended himself skillfully, but suddenly one of the elves started activating her captive roots skill and huge roots started binding that guy. And as soon as he was immobilized, one of the higher rangers started attacking him with his arrows and saying that he would pay for everything. And as soon as the arrows flew towards him, he started to increase his defense by 50%, causing the arrows to break right next to his barrier. At the same time, he saw many messages from his partner and was telling the elves that it looked like they just wanted to survive. With an even stronger effort, that guy was able to break the roots that bound him. And once the roots were completely severed, he was able to get out and immediately started attacking that elf girl who had bound him. Jumping up, he flew straight at her, and she didn't know where to go anymore. But suddenly there was a huge explosion, and the whole area was turned upside down. Many trees lay on the ground, cut open. Ranger Teslan Smoke arrived in time to save Sylvia, for which she was very grateful to him. As they looked up, they saw the terrifying manic coming from the man who was heading straight for them. Looking into his eyes, they realized that he was very powerful. 
At this time, our hero was finishing off the rest of the opponents who were attacking him, and eventually, their squad was defeated. He began to tell the girl who was hiding behind a tree that she could finally show herself. But she in turn smiled and began to reflect on the fact that they hadn't lasted until the others arrived. She realized that there was no point in hiding anymore. And as soon as she came out, our hero looked at her, and in the notification window he saw the terms of copying. A player working with powerful poisons, if he removes it while being poisoned, will be able to copy one of the skills. But it was a hard task for him, because with the poison scent, he wouldn't be able to fight for long. But like any condition related to one poison or another, he would be able to beat it. The girl started to tell Jean Hack that she recognized that he was satisfied with his strength. But at that moment, she activated her spiritual poison skill and shouted in his direction that even he probably wouldn't stay alive. After her attack, as soon as she threw her poison towards our hero, he dodged it. The poison that hit the tree began to burn it completely. Jean Hack, looking at it, realized that he might get hurt if it hit. But he would still need at least one skill like this. Seizing her by the shoulders, he began to say that he was an important decision he was trying to make. Hitting her from his knee, he activated a protective barrier and his defense increased by 50%. He realized that he could now ignore most of the physical damage. And as soon as the blow went through this girl, she realized that it was a very strong skill. As she fell to the ground, she couldn't move. Our hero started to say that you shouldn't stop people from thinking. But this girl lying on the ground was thinking that she needed to hold out until her partner arrived, and she needed to do at least some damage. And just as she started to get up and run towards our hero, he noticed it. Turning around, he wanted to hit her even harder for not wanting to listen to him. But suddenly she jumped over him and was behind him. And as soon as Jean Heck turned around and saw the girl who had jumped over him, he realized that she had stuck a small needle in his arm, which was poison. She started to tell him that she thought he expected her to be just a target to beat up, but she wasn't. Finally, she was able to poison her enemy. At the same moment, the notification in the window showed that he had been poisoned by the spiritual poison skill, and the circulation of his mana had been disrupted. And the attacker started telling Jean Heck that the eye thing spreads through his body, resolving mana channels and internal organs. It enters the body with mana, so there is no antidote for it. She was very happy because she was able to hurt him, because she knew that his life would now slowly and painfully fade away. But Jean Hiko didn't want to just give up and began to activate his heavenly flower cultivation skill. His mana recovery rate increased by 30%. Suddenly, the girl noticed that he was using an antidote, but Jean Hiko replied to her that who needed it, he wasn't an easy player and definitely not a weakling. He started running straight at her. And at that moment, she realized that it seemed like she wasn't going to get out of here alive, but her comrade was already running towards her. For she had made a good stretch of time, but it was not enough. After all, our hero began to beat her up and attack her in every way with his skills. And what she could not stand on her two legs and began to fall to the ground. At the same time, while Jean Hiku was swinging his sword at her, her comrade noticed this and started running towards her even faster. And just as he got closer and closer, he jumped up and managed to be in the air. In that very second, he activated his Sword of Abundance skill. And after that, a huge explosion sounded in the forest. After the explosion, Jean Hiku bounced to the side, and that guy started asking his partner if she could get up. But our hero noticed that since he was here, the rangers had lost after all. And looking at his opponent, he had the notification window open again with a copy condition. That guy is secretly in love with his commanding officer, and to save her, he's using the most devastating attack. If he can defeat him without getting injured, he will be able to copy one of the skills. After this notice, Jean Heck began to ponder the fact that the Sword of Plenty is useless against the Sword of Souls. Would eradicating evil be useful? And in any case, what would happen to the system, and how could it know about other people's feelings? And at the same moment something strange began to happen to our hero, as if he were a flicker, some kind of glitch. He couldn't understand what it was. At this time, those two attackers were standing there looking at him. They couldn't understand why he was starting to act strange. Until they had the chance to do so, and started thinking about regrouping. That guy started asking his partner where the others were. Was it really just the two of them? The girl nannied while getting up and started telling him that in that case, he should listen to her carefully. After the battle with Jean Hayok, she realized something. They wouldn't be able to defeat him. 
another strong player. That guy couldn't figure out if Jean Heck was really that powerful. The girl started to smile as she got up and told her partner with a smile on her face that she didn't think that they could return to the triad, and all that was left was to continue doing tasks. As soon as she stood up, she kissed her partner. It was at that same moment that our hero began to come to his senses. With a shake of his head, he noticed that the couple in front of him had started kissing. He began to ask them what they were doing here, for it looked very disgusting. As soon as that girl started to stop kissing her partner, food came out of his mouth. That smoke meant that she had activated her psychotropic poison injection skill. He gained resistance to fear due to the effects of the poison. At the same moment, he started running towards Jean Hayak. He noticed it in time and started telling them that it looked like they had decided to follow through, then he would get serious. He started to activate his graveyard ball skills and his sword or blade proficiency increased by 500%. And at the same moment, those two started using their skills, a form of colossal sword, a second technique, and a colossal split. The girl started using snake strike, and the two of them decided to finish off our heroes. But Gene Heck, in turn, began to activate the ball dance, the haunting soul, the eighth technique, which was one with shadows. After a few minutes of battle, the communication disruption barrier that was enveloping the forest was shattered, and a huge resolution reigned over the battlefield. The guy who had attacked our hero first was badly wounded, and he began to crawl towards his partner, who was also lying on the ground, slain. And at the same moment, Gene Heck saw a notification from the system that the 1000 poison and eradicate evil skills had been copied. He could now control 1000 poisons and had the detoxification ability. The extermination of evil skill was also copied, allowing him to select a target within a 10 kilometers radius, with its location displayed on the map, as well as a visible route. The copied abilities began to be stored in the world's memory. Turning around, Gene Heck began to walk away, saying that the eighth technique was still hard for him. It looked like his entire body would be sore tomorrow. He began to think about what he should do with the China Guild now. After all, this was how their guild's attack on him ended. A quarter of the elven forest was burned, many elves lost their lives. Teslan lost and was seriously injured, but thanks to Sylvia being by his side, his life was out of danger. And when Jean Hack arrived to them, began to thank him for stopping the attack. But Jean Hack began to reply that he should stop cowering under the coolie and better focus on getting better. And a little while later, the elder was in great shock. After all, he had only given orders without leaving the house. Alice had become an idol to the young elves and an avid drinker. But Jean Heck meanwhile began to activate the 8-star Great Fortress Barriers and the 3-star Dimensional Gap Barrier. When he finished, he realized that it was quite difficult. Now China would think 100 times before attacking him. After all, he hated people like this. At this time, China's guild headquarters had a combat unit of 150 people, including three high-ranked players, destroyed. And the deputy head of the China guild was sitting at his desk, nervous that they had lost everything. He started to say that that guy was very strong and that the total mana of him and the top two players was over 10,000. Even though they were strong, they were just above average in their classes. Since the early system wasn't fully worked out yet, any mana exceeding 10,000 was considered high-ranked. The girl who was sitting at the table started to tell me that Gene Heck was special and they shouldn't compare him to other high-ranked players. But another guy sitting across from her started saying that he could send assassins to his house with his mom and there would be over 20,000 of them. The man with glasses sitting next to him started yelling that they should send assassins to kill the player. But the guy replied that it didn't bother him, since he wasn't afraid of war. At this time, the patriarch of Mirima from the 21st floor walked in and started saying that they don't understand all the problems. When he sat down at the table, he began to say that the main battle is to assess the strength of the enemy. Since they don't even know that, they have many more times to lose. From this point on, the responsibility for Jean Hayak lies with them. He is communicating with Gun Hyun on his own. But suddenly, the deputy head stood up and started asking the patriarch why they can't let him handle it on his own. Suddenly, the patriarch covered his mouth and started saying that they haven't realized yet because Jean Hayak is on a completely different level. The last scene that made it to the video was a certainty that it was the eighth technique of the soul chasing sword dance. This skill is rare even in Nurima. It was only learned to the eighth level by the other worlder. He thinks they still have a chance to defeat him. The next day all the elves began to rebuild their home. As soon as they saw the elder come out, everyone rejoiced.
for they finally saw him here, and he came out to talk to everyone, and as soon as everyone was gathered, he began to say that everyone had suffered many losses. And despite the bravery of the rangers, many elves had died, but now all who were left alive must move on to rebuild their forest so that life here could flourish. And as soon as he raised his hand and began to speak, everyone continued the festival of moonlight, and they would all celebrate for the sake of the dead, to overcome their sorrow. And as soon as it got dark, most of the elves began to celebrate and drink to their friends who had returned to Mother Nature. Of all the companions, our hero began to activate his other world cuisine skill and cook a lot of delicious food for all the elves that were in that forest. At the same time, the elder was watching him and started saying to who would have thought that a companion randomly met in the forest would help them all so much. And as soon as Gene Heck finished his food, he began to invite all the children who came near him. But suddenly he saw one little elf. And the elves were known for their gluttony, but he looked at that little one and saw that he was sitting there with no appetite. And he realized that he was in for a severe shock, but suddenly Ranger Teslon appeared in his costume, and our hero began to tell him that he really liked the clothes and that he still wore them. To which he replied that he didn't. After all, he had always thought that strangers were a threat to their forest and assumed that they had come for the mana-soaked figs. But in fact it was just a massacre, and the one who stopped it wasn't him. And he's wearing these clothes because he lost a bet and volunteered to dress up in them. He's showing his respect, and after all he heard, Gene Heck wasn't so happy about it, because he realized he wanted to dress up in it himself and it's not so funny anymore. But suddenly Teslon heard someone laughing and took it off and as soon as he turned his head he saw Alice, who started laughing her mouth off and telling him how he had put it on himself. After all, she had never seen such stupid clothes before. With laughter she started falling on and laughing even harder saying that she had no idea who would agree to something like that. And following her, everyone else who was watching the situation started laughing. The rest of the elves started to have tears of laughter and they couldn't contain this joy. And at the same time an elder came up to our hero and started telling him if they could step back to talk. And as soon as they approached the huge tree, the elder began to put his hand on the barrier and the notification system showed that the two-star barrier had been unlocked. Inside, he began to explain that this was an old warehouse that held the village treasures. And no one could come out here without his knowledge. But Gene Heck didn't expect this at all, and he was very happy that he was able to get into this place. The elder picked up an instrument and began to say that they called it a decarton, and playing it could enhance the improved effect. Bowing his head, he began to give this instrument to Gene Heck and said that it was his thanks for saving him and he would always remember him. But Gene Heck, smiling, began to point his finger that he didn't really need the harp. If he wants to give a gift so badly, what about the one standing next to it? And as soon as the elder turned around, he saw that he was pointing at a Mueller and a Pentagriff's Fong, and began to say that they had been handed down from the time of their ancestors, and the elves had received them in gratitude for the healing of the god. At the same moment, the elder handed our hero the arch and began to say that he had no right to dispose of these weapons. But according to the prophecy, one day it will find its owner. Gene Heck, looking at them, realized that he was very sorry, because he could not think that they had such a thing. And at this time Alice was already quite drunk and started telling everyone else to raise their glasses. And what she loves is their forest. And one day, she will take over the place and make sure to save their lives. At the same time, while everyone was drinking to save their village, Gene Heck started pouring some strange liquid into the tank. And while everyone was drinking, he sat at the table and looked at the elder who started to raise his glass. But he didn't realize what it was. As he sat at the table, he began to contemplate that maybe he should take what was in the warehouse and just leave. And a little bit later he came to that barrier and he started to remember that it was, like, a two-star barrier. And as soon as he touched the door, he realized there was no barrier. At this time, all the other alphas were very drunk. And once the Brahma ring had absorbed the subordinate soul and Alice was already inside the ring, Gene Heck took the blade and bow and as he left, he began to tell the sleeping man that he was grateful for such a gift. And the next day, in the Tower of Trials, on the third floor, in Independence Church, the main guild gathered a meeting and began to discuss the fact that they can't go up to the tenth floor without the permission of an unknown person. And they're missing all the artifacts that are only available for ten days from the opening of the floor. And first there was the problem with Gene Heck. And now the unsub. And they didn't think they could use the items that way. But suddenly, Milana came up to the meeting and started to turn around and leave, telling everyone else that she was going to rest. And as soon as she was out the door, she started to ruminate on the topic that they're all idiots. 
and she doesn't know that Jean Heck is the John Doe, and just thinking about it makes her burn with shame, because she will die if she reveals such a secret. But suddenly she saw two strange creatures in front of her, standing and looking at her. And she ordered them to stop, taking out her blade. She asked who they were and what they were here for, to which in response those two began to smile, and their eyes were red. They looked like they were on vampires, and in a moment the atmosphere changed and blood was spilled, the main, and those two were able to take out the guards and the police with ease. At that very second, one of them started licking his sword and tasting their blood, saying that their blood tasted as shitty as they did. But her partner responded to him by telling him that she needed to stop shoveling everything she saw into her mouth. She was having a hard time finding someone with good blood, and Milana started looking at them that very second and realized that they were so fast that she didn't even notice them, and started thinking about who they were. But her thoughts were interrupted by one of them and pointed his blade at her, telling her that they needed to taste test her blood. But suddenly something began to change in that room. And in an instant, Lancelot appeared before them and began to bow and apologize for appearing in such a manner before the nobleman spawned by the noble knight. He began to ask how he could help them, and the girl began to remove her hood, which she stood against him, and says that finally there is someone who understands. Ninety days after the incident in the elf forest, the sixth floor was unlocked and the seventh floor was also unlocked. At the same time, it was time to prepare for the next stage. Our hero's partner sat on the bench and thought thoughtfully about her future. That she had at least one more year to go, and she should graduate. But by then the world might be gone. Suddenly she saw a notification from the system in front of her. It said that veterans' long-awaited shareholders meeting was about to begin. All employees should gather on the first floor of the tower near the Moon Lake at 1400 hours. They will also find anyone who doesn't show up or is late. After reading this, the girl started yelling for Jean Hayok to stop seconding her. A little while later in the trial tower on the first floor near the lake, Jean Heck was sitting on a rock and looking at his charges. As soon as he started to say that he was happy to see everyone, the girl across from him started to say that they had been working all night and making these horses. She asked if he could let them go now. The old man who was standing next to him also put in his few words and asked our hero to stop it. Jean Heck got up from the rock he was sitting on and began to say that if everyone wanted to, they could just leave. But they would have to pay compensation if they died. He asked them to give their bank account addresses. At the same moment, those two started saying that it was very difficult to find a job today. They were so grateful to Jean Heck and happy that their employer was so kind to them. When Jean Heck realized that no one else wanted to leave, he started to say that they could all move on to the topic of the meeting. First, they should have an opening round, let each of them tell the latest news. When he clapped his hands, it started. Kim started talking about being the chairman of the Black Crows Guild Workshop. The girl who was standing next to him said that her name was Hannah and she was running an errand for Jean Hayok. Kim started to say that he had learned that Chang Suk had moved to the seventh floor, and according to the informant, he was trying to find a certain feather. And the seventh floor test tower is the tundra. And if they make it from the starting point to the end, the next floor opens up. But the seventh floor is notorious for requiring long preparation for the raid due to weather conditions. And the feather must be this phoenix feather, the blessing of flame will help out when passing this floor. And Hannah's girlfriend started telling our hero that swordsman has fully recovered and has been discharged from the hospital. And he also asked to tell Jean Hake that he would kill him. And our hero realized that he seemed to be alright and started telling the next one to report to him. It was Takashi who bowed to our hero and started saying that he was from the samurai guild. And he wanted to meet Jean Heck again and talk about how he stole the item he wanted at the jellyfish temple. And proceeded to say that he thought he was furious with him because their national relic was missing. And as he picked up the sword, our hero began to realize that it was useless now, and it would be worth trading it for something worthwhile in the future. And the next one that started reporting was Maria. And she started to say that she was in charge of the fifth floor. The organization of power on this floor is complete, and left the players and appear rarely. She's setting it up just in case. But the other guys who were standing near her couldn't understand what she meant by saying she was in charge of the fifth floor. And Jean Heck started to explain to them that she is the boss of the fifth floor, and she must be really tired that she did such a good job. And at that same moment, after hearing that, all the other guys started shaking with fear and saying, why is the boss monster here? What is he even doing? And in a second, they started scattering in different directions. 
And despite all this, Jean Hack began to realize that Maria had grown a lot, and it was all thanks to Alice. But suddenly Jean Hack got serious again and started ordering everyone else to stop running around. And let the next one start. It was Milena from the Association of Demonic People, and he started telling her to stop being quiet and start telling her news. And she began to explain that there had been an important incident recently, and an association came to them from upstairs, who began to say that they were blood relatives of the Decasis family, who worshipped amulets, and that if the Minus could help them out, they would help them achieve what they wanted. For they had heard that they needed the relic from the eleventh floor, and Lancelot, who was standing beside them, began to reply that it was quite interesting. But what's more interesting is what they want from them. And those two started saying that a prisoner escaped from the ruins of the first floor, and they should help catch her. After saying that, Jean Heck started asking Milena that they gave the renegade bracelet from the eleventh floor in return. To which she replied that it was correct and their leadership didn't expect such a thing. And at that moment, the ring that was hanging on Jean Heck's chest started to glow, and he wondered why Alice was reacting like that. And right after that, he started telling everyone that the meeting was over for today. And as soon as everyone dispersed, Jean Hack let out of the ring, who at that very second started smashing everything that was around, and saying that they're freaks and they're the kind of scumbags that betrayed her. And she's going to find them and rip them to pieces. But suddenly she turns around and starts talking towards Jean Hayak, and she says that he's the one who's going to tear them to pieces. Because he promised he'd help her get revenge. Now is his chance. And lastly, she asked, will he help her? And he began to answer that it was a promise he would keep. And she shouldn't worry about it, they all need to be careful, though. And he doesn't have enough mana to fully unleash her power. And right now, revenge could hurt them themselves. And for a while, Alice needs to refrain from wearing the necklace. But Alice didn't understand how she could do that. And Jean Heck, looking at her, began to smile and tell her to please believe him. And right after that, Alice calmed down and started saying that she wanted chicken legs. And looking up at the sky, Jean Heck realized that he had succeeded in calming her down, but one must prepare for the next time. And a few days later, in the testing tower, on the seventh floor, in the tundra, in one of the snow-covered tents, there was a conversation about the fact that the eastern sea had also been blocked. Because there is too much ice there and the temperature is low and the air is humid. And there's no way to build a fire. And besides, the path to the gate is not visible because of the blizzard. And the second attacking section of the guild, Tangan Player Sock, looked at the map of the area and realized that this has been going on for too long. And he didn't like the fact that his subordinates were crying. So he started ordering them to look for other paths first. After all, they are obliged to pass the seventh floor by means of means. But suddenly another man came into the tent and started telling the captain that he had to see this. And as soon as he came out of the tent, he saw Jean Hayok in front of him. The captain started to ask Jean Hack what brought him here, but he heard back that he was here to clean up the floor and he could see that they did a great job here. The captain went on to say that they didn't need his help and they would handle it themselves, but Jean Hack started to reply that he didn't say he would help. So the captain didn't make up too much, he came after the first phoenix. They just happened to be in his path, but the captain was sure they couldn't take the spot, as it was exclusive. What he means to say is that he's trespassing on private property. In response, Jean Hack started to say that he was being rather ridiculous and someone really thought that the seventh floor was the Tangan Guild zone. The captain starts yelling at our heroes that this is a provocation, but Jean Hack replies to him that it's a fair competition. If he wants to stop him, let him try. The captain started to get even angrier because of this, turned around and went to his tent. A little while later, when it was getting dark, Jean Heck continued walking through the forest and suddenly came up to two guys who were warming themselves near a fire. They started telling him to stop. Suddenly they saw that there was no ordinary person walking towards them, Jean Heck, who very seriously told them that they were his big fans. They started asking why he was here and Jean Heck started saying he needed to take a look. He said you can't come here, because this area is very dangerous. At one point, he moved behind their backs and started saying that he was grateful for their warning. Don't let them worry everything will be fine. Those two guys didn't even notice Jean Heck walk past them. He was walking in the snow, and he certainly knew that the gate of the high-ranking ones was different from theirs. He started to tell his partner that he thought he should report it, and started to call the captain. 
Once they told him the whole situation, the captain ordered them to get a team together and start chasing him. The guy didn't understand why they had to go. The captain began to say that Gene Heck was heading for the pen and in other words, if they followed him, success was guaranteed. They must not take their eyes off him. That is the captain's order. A little later, our hero went further inside the forest and noticed the footprints of the men from the Tangan Guild. However, he didn't see any bodies. He started to look closer and saw a block of stone in front of him with something scrawled on it. He realized that this was the place. Suddenly, he heard someone walking. As soon as he turned around, he saw those guys and started asking why they were following him, because they had said themselves that it was dangerous here. Those guys started to say that they couldn't leave him alone in a place like this and thought he would need a guide. But Gene Hack thought it was quite the opposite. Despite those guys, he realized that they were freezing. At the same moment, our hero started to create a large ice tower with his skill, and inside with his fire element skill, he started a fire and they started to warm themselves by the fire. One of the guys started saying that they were lucky to be around a high level player. It was a very good relief for them that they could finally get warm. At the same time, our hero started activating his greedy gaze skill and after looking at those guys stats, he realized that they had very boring skills. After that, he started asking those guys why they followed him because of the captain's order. But those guys started to turn on stupid and pretend that they didn't understand what he was asking. Gene Heck started telling them not to lie if they don't know how to, and he probably sent them to go out on the first phoenix. If you look at how they got to this dangerous place, it's obvious that he's not blaming them or anything. And now there was trouble, as they all saw that big strange mark. It was the mark of an ice troll and the girl who was sitting next to it started saying that she had heard about them, and that they were the strongest monsters in the middle mountain, on the seventh floor. That sign belonged to the Ice Blades, the strongest clan of ice trolls. The guys near the campfire started asking our heroes what he meant to say, that it was their territory, but another guy sitting next to him started saying that their territory was to the west. And Gene Heck told them that he was embarrassed by their being in that area because it was unnatural. And the only route to the island with the first phoenix goes through here. They try to get the feather, ignoring Cole's resistance, and something doesn't seem to add up. But at that moment, our hero senses danger coming at them. Indeed, there were very large copies flying at them from outside, and Gene Heck started using the ice creation skill just in time. Those large copies began to fly away to the side, and the ice tower started to collapse. And those players who were with our hero started running to find shelter as soon as possible. And as soon as they hid behind the trees, they started to peek to see where they were being attacked from. But because of the snow blizzard, they still couldn't see anything. Suddenly, one of the players saw Gene Hack start walking straight from where the copies were flying from. And as soon as he got closer to the cliff, he saw bright bursts, but was able to dodge those attacks. He started to say that he should have realized by now that hiding wouldn't help. Suddenly two figures appeared on the hill, and behind them were huge creatures. And one of these two began to say towards our hero that he was that Gene Heck, and the girl sitting next to him, smiling, said that he was cute. And the ring that was on our hero's chest began to shake in different directions. But Gene Heck attached the ring with his hand and started to activate his visual gaze skill. And as soon as he saw its stats, he realized that the difference in levels was large, and that he would need a lot of mana to defeat it. The copying requirements were also difficult for everyone, so many penalties. Suddenly, one of those players who was hiding behind the trees started to approach him and asked if our hero was okay. To which he saw a smile on Gene Heck's face, who told him to take his comrades and get out of here, run out of the forest and call for help. But he didn't understand why, and he began to ask what about him, why he was trying to stay and fight alone. But Gene Heck answered him that he wasn't weak, and he just had to back him up after they got out of here. The other players took their friend by the hand and started saying that they needed to hurry up. The conditions of the copying were that he must survive after saying four or more words before dying. If he succeeded, he could copy one of his opponent's skills, and each word would block one of his skills. Thus, the 1000 poison technique was blocked.
Immediately after our hero was attacked on the field by huge monsters and started attacking him from different sides, he didn't stand still and started fighting them back. At the same time, two vampires who were sitting on a hill were watching this fight, and one of them started saying how such blood could smell so good and how he was getting more and more interested in this guy. On the other, a vampire started walking down the hill and as he got closer to our hero, he started telling those monsters to stop fighting. And as soon as Gene Heck turned around, he saw two vampires who started telling him that they had heard about him, here are the demonic people, that he is pleased, so and strong as well for a human, and they began to introduce themselves. One of them is named Baratheon, and he works with Decasis, the girl also began to say that her name is Ophelia, and she is related to Decasis. Gene Heck started asking them right away what their dealings were, ice trolls and kidnapping. But Ophelia was surprised that he got right down to business, and replied that yes, that's right, and she can see that he's not surprised, and he might think it's their trap. After all, they want to catch someone capable of spotting an anomaly in the tundra. The demonic people have given names to the survivors of the first floor of the Hall of Debauchery, Teraza, the Invincible and Unknown, Young Yusone, Cold Swordsman, and a certain strongman who pretended to be a porter, Jean Hayak. They believe that one of them helped Alice escape. Well, the first one to arrive here was Jean Heck. And they began to warn our hero not to rely on help from those who live beyond the forest. For at this time, there are demonic people behind the forest. It wouldn't be long before they got rid of those people, and if he didn't answer a couple questions, where is Alice now? They will kill him without regret. But our hero began to prepare for battle and said he didn't know who they were asking him about. But one of the vampires began to say that he had decided to play a hole in one and had thrown off his cloak and was preparing for battle as well. He said he would make him remember then. And so the battle began. That vampire started moving through the forest at a fast speed and approached our hero from behind. At the same moment, he activated his skill, Dark Battle Spirit, and huge waves of magical energy started moving towards Gene Heck, who was standing on the snowy ground. He began to fight off all the magical streams with his magic dagger. And at the same time Ophelia stood beside him and began to tell her partner not to forget that they needed him alive. Bartanon began to reply to her during the battle that he remembered everything. But at the same moment, he began to realize that Gene Heck was somehow smiling suspiciously and that he was better than he expected. That's when he decided to use his another skill, Blood Jade. At the same moment, our hero's vision was blocked for 30 seconds, and following that, the magical blood in such a vampire began to move towards our hero. While Gene Heck was immobilized and blinded, Bartanon started using bloody spikes that flew towards him. But our hero began to smile, for he didn't know where this was all going to lead. And at the same moment, he applied the skill of the elements of the day and was able to get rid of the effect that was blocking his vision. After all, he knew it wouldn't work on him. Ophelia, who was watching this, couldn't understand how a person could be so strong. After all, he was not inferior to her partner at all. Suddenly, she began to realize that maybe he was the one who helped her escape. Barton was standing across from Jean Heck and started to say that he wasn't a bad hunted rat, but Jean Heck started to reply that they had shared something interesting with him and so he would repay them. He already knew that they were coming for him, and at the same moment on those vampires' faces, Jean Heck went on to say that he had many sources of getting information. He now knew that an attack was being prepared on the people behind the forest, and while there everyone began to stand up to defend the position. After all, the enemy was advancing very fast. Three mysterious men appeared. As soon as they came closer, one of them raised his sword. It was Teresa, who began to remove her hood. At the same moment, she began to activate her skill, Holy Blessing. A bright light began to break through the dark clouds and she began to say that she would help everyone else. At that same moment, they should take their positions. The other players, as soon as they saw that it was Street Teresa, began to rejoice for now they would be able to deal with all the enemies that were coming at them. But suddenly another person appeared, and as soon as he swung his shiny new sword, something amazing happened. After all, a huge magical tornado appeared and started scattering the opponents. They were running in different directions. It was Swordsman, who began to say to himself under his breath that it would take a long time to clean the sword from that garbage. After all, that sword was given to him by Gene Heck. At the same time, in the deep forest, Gene Heck started talking to a vampire. He said that he had something prepared for them. If they thought it would be so boring, they were wrong, for they would enjoy such a show. A huge explosion sounded from behind the hill. It was the activation of the Monarch of Machine skill. 
and as soon as the shots reached the target, complete destruction began. All the opponents flew in different directions, and at the same moment another girl who was under the subordination of our hero began to move through the air. As soon as she activated her mana replenishment skill, her eyes lit up red and she started to destroy all the opponents on her way with her karate. But that wasn't the end of it. She began to cast divine reinforcement buffer. Everyone around her could not resist her holy power. The enemies on the hill began to discuss the need to retreat to regroup. But Lancelot, who was in charge of everyone, began to get angry that things were not going the way they had planned. After the bright flash caused by our protector Teresa in the forest, one of the vampires noticed the light. It was an unpleasant sensation for him, for they cannot tolerate divine power. This annoyed Ophelia greatly, and she began to shout to her partner. But he turned around and said that he felt it too. And at the same moment, he activated his new skill blood pool towards our hero. A huge bloody ball enveloped him, but suddenly started to collapse. Gene Heck continued to use his elemental magic skill and easily resolved his magic, because he had already told him that it wouldn't help. But then he saw that the opponents started to run away. And as soon as Gene Heck raised his head, he saw that lastly that vampire started to tell him not to worry, because he would definitely kill him with his own hands. But suddenly, the vampire saw that Gene Heck started doing something strange, it was the activation of a new skill, Daylight. A bright flash began to be created in the hand of our hero, and with pathos Gene Heck began to say that he was there to yell to him, and the bright flash began to fly straight at those vampires who were running away. A moment later, a huge ball of destruction formed in the forest, destroying everything in its path. But our hero didn't realize if he was able to get rid of them, and at the same moment the notification window showed that he had successfully completed the second phrase before the death of the day's elements. It was locked, and he realized that his cliché had not failed him. And at that same moment, the ring on his chest began to move. This was because Alice was inside and was getting really angry, but he started to calm her down and tell her that she still needed to be patient for a little while longer. And at the same time, the camp was going through total destruction and Teresa, who was standing in front of the rest of the players who started thanking her for her help, replied that she was always happy to help. And the captain, who was looking under his feet, saw a strange symbol. At the same time, the second task started asking him that the camp was badly damaged and the demonic people would definitely attack them again. And maybe they should retreat to the tower, as she and Mr. Gene Heck would provide a safe path. And at that very second, the captain turned around and was displeased that once again that guy was saving him. But before they could finish their conversation, Gene Heck was already approaching them and Teresa spotted him and started waving and the rest of his comrades started to approach him. Gene Heck started talking about how it was such an unexpected encounter and about thanking them for coming to his rescue. One of the guys started to tell our hero that he was sick of calling them out so suddenly, but suddenly they all started to turn around in the same direction. That's where Swordsman stood and he was disgruntled about something as always, but Teresa who was looking at him started to say that she didn't think he was coming either, and they were able to repel the demonic people's attack, but they couldn't relax yet. After all, they had yet to find out who was behind them, and the demonic people had organized such a large guild that such a thing was not possible at all. After all, they are cooperating with the supreme vampires of the upper floors of the Tower of Trials. Gene Heck went on to say that he thought they were up to something here in the tundra, and they needed to be stopped. And from what he's learned, it follows that their enemies want to get out. And the ice trolls defend the location with the first phoenix. Come to think of it, their primary attribute. It's possible due to cold resistance and generally, when symbiotized with the right item, it's possible to open a portal. But swordsmen didn't understand what this had to do with their escape, because it sounds absurd. And the fact that the members were kidnapped and many of them were already dead, it seemed to our hero that they wanted to unite people with the first phoenix to escape from the tower. But suddenly Teresa's hands began to shake with fear, because she realized that only not this. For then there would be an escape like the one in Amsterdam. But, putting his hand on her shoulder, the swordsman began to tell her not to worry. After all, it's not going to happen. After all, he thinks that Jean Hayek already has a plan and he should share it with them. And Jean Heck, smiling, started to say that he realized it because of his stalkerism. And at the same time, inside the ice cave, Ophelia and Bartonon came to their leader, who was sitting on his throne, sipping wine from a glass. And he began to say that that man, Jean Heck, was so strong that he was able to beat them, and they were unable to bring in the prey that they had trapped. He was very disappointed, and now he doubted if they could catch the fugitive. But Bartonon, who was on his knees, began to apologize. 
After all, something unexpected had happened, and that man, Gene Heck, was already waiting for them. And he also easily fought back against Bartnon. And their non-leader was surprised that he withstood their attack, and Ophelia went on to say that besides that during their time their commander was surprised by that. But suddenly he started to say that it turns out, now they will find her sooner than they thought. And smiling, he began to tell his charges that at least some good, but still there is. The next day, Min and Wa were to support the others in the forest and use the drones to lure the demonic humans. Teresa and Stalker split up from the group for another task. But as soon as Stalker heard this plan, he started to get angry. But Teresa started to pull him back and they started to leave. Our hero started yelling after him that he had no choice and why he even resented him if he was doing his requests anyway. The Tangan Guild must leave the camp and go to the outside of the tower. Although someone would have to stay here. It was one of the guys from the Tangan Guild. And once everyone had dispersed to their positions, Gene Heck started asking him why he was following him. That guy started to answer that they really don't know, because it's the property of the Tangan Guild and he's responsible for it. Then he started asking about the hero where they were going. Gene Heck answered him that they were going to the freshwater lake. It is the place with the highest concentration of mana. When the tribe is in trouble, the Ice Blade Chief comes here for a mana boost. But that's not the only reason. And soon they started coming to this camp, where huge ice monsters were already waiting for them. And they didn't understand why these people had come to them. That guy carrying a white flag in his hand began to ask Jean Hayak why they needed it. To which he heard the answer that he should bring it in normally and be of some use. Suddenly that guy noticed that the trolls weren't attacking them since Jean Heck told him. Just because ice trolls aren't savages, they value honor and family. It's a priority for them. As long as you hold the white flag, they won't attack. But this guy didn't know what he was talking about. After all, he knew these monsters were just ordinary mobs. And as soon as they got close to the leader, he started talking in the direction of our hero, that he had heard about him as a man who beat up tribe members with his bare hands. And that he looked strong. But the chief wondered why he had given up so easily. A second began to take the white flag from the hands of that guy, who was shaking with fear at the sight of such a huge troll. And he threw the white flag on the ground and started saying that he had been waiting for it. That he wasn't actually going to give up, just pretending to get here. The chief began to growl enormously, for he was angry that Gene Heck had lied to him and disregarded the honor of a warrior. Yes also stands confidently in front of all of them and after committing such a low act, the huge chief raised his big hammer and began to tell him to die with dignity. In the name of atonement for his guilt, exploring the traditions he, as the chief of the Iceblade tribe, demands. And as soon as the chief stood on his two big feet, our hero started asking the guy who came with him what he would still do to protect the honor of the guild. To which that guy started waving his head that he wasn't going to. And once Jean Hayak understood, he began to tell him to just watch what he was about to do. And at this time, in the Triad Guild headquarters, there was a man on one of the floors who started throwing things around, and he was very very angry, because he didn't realize what was even going on that all of his members, including S-rank members, had died in the forest. The old man standing in front of that guy started telling him that Gene Heck was not someone he could defeat. But that guy started asking the Lord to give him at least one more chance. But that old man didn't understand how much more he could humiliate himself, so he started telling him to stay away from Gene Heck, which made that guy get even angrier, shouting at the top of his voice, that Gene Heck was a scumbag and he would kill him when he saw him. But down below the office, on the street, there was already our stalker, who was also walking angry and muttering to himself that he would kill Gene Heck with his own hands. And now we move to where the battle between the chief and our hero is taking place. And no matter how much the chief swung his big hammer, our hero successfully parried all his attacks. But suddenly, the chieftain started to activate his chieftain's cry skill, and a huge wave started flying towards Gene Hayak. But no sooner had that wave flown before him than our hero began to activate the two-star distortion barrier. And now the direction of the attacks were reversed, and he thought every time that he was really strong against the troll. And as soon as he started to activate his ice creation skill, huge blocks of ice flew towards the chieftain. Which made the chieftain fall to the ground. At the same time, our hero was in the air and started activating his sword graveyard skill. Hitting the chieftain with all his might which made him start bleeding and he started screaming very loudly. He fell to the ground once more, and everyone else who was watching this battle couldn't believe their eyes. After all, it was impossible that Gene Heck had defeated him in five minutes. 
The chief, lying on the ground, began to say towards our hero that he was a mighty man, had lost, and was now asking to be killed with honor. But as soon as Jean Heck approached him, he began to say that he was not particularly aware of honor, but he was well aware of the traditions of the ice trolls and the complete submission to the winner of the duel, for it is an inviolable sacred rule. The chieftain knows what he was thinking after his loss. He is able to stand up to demonic men. So why then does he submit to them? He starts to ask what he says about Bartonon and Ophelia, and he's not obeying them because he lost the duel. It was handled by someone stronger than those two. That's why it's happening the way it is. His name is Michael, and he comes from a vampire family. Yeah, Cases, not even his whole tribe can stand up to him. And the chief knows that there is no hope left for him, not for his tribe, but now Gene Heck can grant him at least a dignified death. But our hero began to think about his words about the supreme vampire and now he began to understand and began to tell the chief that he does not need this nonsense about a dignified death, and decided to offer the chief to unite, and he will help him to return a bright future. And in return he would leave that man to the chief as collateral, and at this time, the scout drones loomed constantly in front of the eyes of the opponents. And for Lancelot, who was watching all this, it was somehow strange. After all, he understood that the spy drones were constantly in their sights, but there was one thing he didn't understand. Shouldn't espionage be covert? So he asked Michael, who was sitting beside him, what he thought about it, but he replied that it hurt, he was smart as for a human, and began to order Ophelia to head for the freshwater lake. After all, there has been no word from the Iceblade tribe for some time now. And it looks like Gene Hex got them on his side. And he thinks these drones are just leading them around by the nose. If the Caracal seems suspicious, she should kill them all. And once Ophelia realized her assignment, Michael started giving something and telling him to get it ready. And right after all of that, Michael started taking to the air and telling the demonic people that he would get rid of those pesky drones in a couple seconds. For which Lancelot thanked him and Michael began to activate his climate change skill. The weather in the forest started to get worse, and all the drones that were flying near them started to go off course and fall to the ground, collapsing. And at the same time, our guys who were in the forest realized that their drones had malfunctioned. And that they seemed to have been spotted. And at that same moment, the girl began to activate the culmination of the celestial flower. For she realized that it would be just in time. They would be here soon, so they should prepare to pair up with their partner and not start ambushing them right in the forest. And while Mrs. Wa was getting ready, her partner didn't sit idly by either and started activating the great fortress to prepare the mechanical plant. But it didn't end there. For already Lancelot and his demonic men were near the forest and they were preparing to attack. And Ophelia was flying toward the lake, reasoning that Jean Heck seemed to be trying to take the Phoenix Pie with the help of ice trolls. And that was a smart thing to do. And as she flew closer and closer to the lake, she saw that on Earth, Jean Heck had already managed to team up with the trolls, but thinking them fools, she began to summon her military headquarters, which she positioned in the canyon of Freshwater Lake. As soon as her storm of mana skill activated, she began to speak towards our hero that if in case of anything she would bury everyone in one fell swoop. Huge dark mana started flying towards the canyon, destroying it. And after a loud sound, rocks started flying in different directions. In fact, the impact was so strong that Ophelia, who was standing nearby, was glad about it. She already thought that she had overdone it, and the guys who were in the forest heard a huge sound to the side. Where is the location of their leader, Jean Heck? And began to wonder if he was okay. Out of nowhere, Jean Heck appeared and started scaring his comrades, saying that he was okay. And as soon as the guy bounced off and fell to the ground, his partner started asking our hero what the hell he was doing here. And she needs him to at least make a sound when walking. Suddenly she realized that since he was here, who was left by the lake? To which smiling, Jean Heck began to answer her. What, Ophelia who is currently by the lake is standing by the lake with a surprised face. After all, she can see the two-star illusion barrier in front of her, which our hero had started to cancel. And she couldn't believe that it was just an illusion and she was just tricked. But she asked herself, why? Suddenly, she started to turn her head and look at how Teresa was standing behind her back. And she began to activate her star blessing skill. Once the activation was successful, Teresa began to tell Ophelia that just like Jean Heck had asked, she wouldn't kill her. And if she gave up now, but Ophelia, smiling, began to realize that she was simply being lured into a trap, and calling for her hand and her blade, she began to say that she despised holy power. 
and at this time, the rest of the guys also began to prepare for battle. One of the girls started to approach the demonic squad with all speed. Lancelot, who saw this, started telling everyone else to keep their defenses up and attack back quickly. Immediately after that, the Lancelot began to activate its dark body projection skill, and huge dark flames began to fly in that direction. But she successfully dodged in different directions. As soon as she got closer, she saw the projectiles her comrade had fired above her. The projectiles flew straight at those opponents. He started yelling to her to move forward and he would cover her if anything. At the same moment, the mana shield was activated. Lancelot, looking at all of this, didn't understand why they would attack first if they were outnumbered. But suddenly, he raised his head up and saw that girl with immense power in her hands start flying straight at him. At the same time, Teresa, fighting against Ophelia, also started activating her skills. Even though Ophelia was able to dodge and block Teresa's power, but the sacred power was still very annoying for her. The snow trolls coming through the forest began to hurry, for they had a long journey ahead of them. And the battle had already begun, a battle they could not avoid. And Teresa continued to attack Ophelia, who couldn't hold back the last attack. This caused her to start flying back to the nearest ice wall, and as soon as the rocks crumbled, she started climbing out from inside the large block and saying that she was really pissed off by the paladin, and that she was the nastiest. Does she know that while she is here, Mina is attacking her friends and her comrades are really, really hoping that she will come to their rescue and save them? But Teresa began to smile and reply to Ophelia that she doubted it. After all, her comrades are not weaklings and they can stand up for themselves. At this time, the Wa girl, using her martial arts, began to throw her opponents in different directions. Lancelot, watching her, was surprised by what he saw in front of him. The girl appeared as if a monster, descended from heaven, and she fights with so many opponents, not even thinking about retreating. But only this time Street Teresa is not here, and they will be able to overpower the opponents. And as soon as they started to surround them, she continued to fight back, but she started to think about the fact that she should admit that she had an easier time fighting with Teresa and her buffs. After all, she was at her limit now. But suddenly she began to shout to her comrade to help her, and huge magical anti-tank mines flew over the heads of her opponents. Lancelot looking at this couldn't believe he had missed it, and immediately afterward there was a huge explosion coming from the magical mines. And taking advantage of that, the girl started to run away from the scene of the battle. But Lancelot noticed this and started shouting to his subjects to run after her and not let her go. How strange that she attacked on her own and now she is just running away. But suddenly Lancelot heard Michael's voice telling him that he was a fool and that it was a trap. And suddenly Lancelot began to stop his pursuit. And as soon as the girl reached the forest, she was met by her partner and began to say that it looks like Mina is retreating. But she didn't realize whether to rejoice or cry. Despite this, they still prepared traps for the enemies, camouflaged in the snow. Jean Hack didn't understand how the opponents knew about the trap and why they had left it so long. It was useless now. But suddenly he realized something and began to tell his friends to retreat to the crest of the mountain as soon as possible. And at the same moment, there was an explosion from the dark gravity well skill that began to destroy the entire forest. Trees started flying in different directions, and all the equipment hidden in the forest was crushed. Our heroes, along with their team, began to climb up the hill and got out of the forest. The enemy noticed this and began to circle the forest to catch up with them. Lancelot knew that they wouldn't be able to avoid the enemies through the snowy forest, but soon they were up there with their team. Though it was hard for them to run through the snow, they began to speed up. For there was a surprise waiting for them on the hill, Lancelot, who had almost caught up with them, was coming closer and closer. But suddenly he saw an unknown masked man on the hill, who was already standing and waiting for them. A little while later, at the Tangan Guild building, Stalker began to go inside the offices and drew his sword. The guards that were downstairs began to report to their master that they had something wrong. And at the same moment, an explosion sounded and an unknown masked man appeared and began to speak so that everyone would listen to him. He stated that the Tangan Guild was weaker than even the retired people armed with placards but daring to call themselves the strongest guild in China. He suggested that they give up, open a national food restaurant and stop embarrassing themselves. But the guy standing across from him didn't understand this ridiculousness. He said that the stalker in the mask of the unknown began to say that he was the unknown and would take away the sign of their guild. And if he ever saw them again, they would regret their act. The guy didn't realize that he had forgotten what he was saying here, and started to reply that he had barged in so abruptly, 
and he even had the nerve to go up to the seventh floor of the tower, and that the greatest and most inimitable gene hack will be waiting for them there. And that was the only way they would be able to resolve their differences. That guy started to get angry after saying those words and started talking harder, but the unknown masked man kept talking. He said that was the end of it. Immediately after that, a huge explosion erupted inside the building. Now in the snowy mountains, Lancelot looked at the unknown man and didn't understand where he came from and where such a huge army came from. They didn't know that the unknown had teamed up with someone, and Jean Hack started to approach the army that the masked unknown had led and started to tell them that they already knew what position they were in. Now. But the guy he answered started saying, what did he say? That there's going to be one? And that ended up leading to how many people gathered. And as soon as Gene Hack approached Stalker, he started saying that he made him give that stupid speech, and he'll still remember it. At the same moment, our hero started running away to another location and the masked Stalker started attacking the group of Minas. Everyone else began to prepare for battle. Just like that, the battlefield veteran created a few minor misunderstandings that made the Minas and the Tangan Guild fight, ignoring common sense. And of course, it changed the balance of power. At the scene of the battle, both guilds began to attack each other, and Lancelot began to activate his Knight's Oath skill at the same time. He ordered his army to deal with the others and destroy the unknown but real enemy. Opposite them was a guy from the Tangan Guild, who started to activate his Aura Blade skill and attacked back. He shouted for them not to linger here, for their goal was to kill Jean Heck. At this time, our hero was already retreating with his team to the top of another hill. As he turned around, he saw that there seemed to be something fun going on. Let them fight until they were blue in the face, removing the permafrost, this was a secret place that only he knew about. He began to tell his friends that this was the place to discuss their plans, and to warm up a bit. The chief sitting in front of them began to greet his guests, and said that he had waited too long for them here. However, our hero's friends did not understand where the ice trolls had suddenly appeared from. Gene Hack began to reassure them, saying that these trolls used to be controlled by vampires, but now the tribe was working with them in gratitude for their release. The chief began to tell our hero that he was skillful at luring others to his side. Suddenly Stalker saw that the guild guy was also here, and it looks like he is being held hostage. Teresa also showed up and started telling Gene Hack that she had lost Ophelia. But our hero suspected that catching her alive would be difficult, so he started telling her that she did a good job. The rest of the guys were interested in what they would do next, as the situation was more tense than they expected. Our hero began to explain that the enemies would be heading to the island beyond the Phoenix Feather. And thankfully, they moved on. Preparations must be made to meet the guests when they caught up with them. The boys didn't realize what exactly they needed to prepare for. Our hero knew that reinforcements from the portal would be arriving soon, they would be the ones to organize a hot reception. The chief began to pull out his soul essence and handed it to our hero. He said that he was collecting it to raise the rebellion against Michael. This essence allows you to use the accumulated mana inside for two hours. This treasure was found while building a camp in the lake valley. The chief began to say that this act shows his trust in our hero. Taking the essence in his hands, Gene Hack began to reflect that usually this essence was given out after subduing other tribes. But right now, he had gotten it for nothing. The chieftain went on to say that after seeing him fight for them, he realized that he could trust him with this essence. Our hero realized that the chieftain may have taken things a little differently, but suddenly the chieftain raised his axe and called on everyone to show what the Iceblade tribe could do. He called for no more bending their heads fighting for freedom. When all preparations were complete, our hero stood in the open where he had drawn some sort of circle. Suddenly Michael appeared, starting to say in the direction of our hero that he was very brave. He decided to show himself first. Mikhail had heard how our hero had gotten demonic people to fight ordinary people and convinced the chief to become an ally smiling, Mikhail told our hero that he was bright. It was unclear to our hero why he had done such an act, but before he could say anything, he had already started using the soul essence. His mana reserve temporarily increased from 113 points to 320, and the remaining time to use it was 2 hours. Looking at Michael, our hero started to activate greedy gaze, but the notification system showed that it was impossible to use the skill due to the level difference. Gene Hack realized that this vampire was too strong even after using the essence, and he couldn't recognize his skills and stats. And Gene Hack, who was standing still started to tell Michael that he guessed that he was trying to leave the tower with the phoenix feather. And Michael was surprised that he had guessed it, 
and it made sense to him how he had helped Alice escape. But, spreading his arms to the side, our hero began to say that he had no idea who he was talking about, and Michael went on to say that there was no point in playing the fool. After all, they are sure that it was he who had a hand in her escape. With a serious face he began to ask, where is she, and if he answered, he would stay alive. Vitya Filet was very interested in his blood. But our hero didn't understand why everyone didn't want to make a meal out of it, but swung his hand. Gene Heck said thank you, but he would refuse and better Michael should tell why they are so eager to escape from the tower. But suddenly, after these words, it was as if an earthquake appeared, and our hero began to stand badly on his feet. But as he looked around, he saw a bright red barrier that surrounded them, and it was a blood port. This technique uses blood as a material to create new creatures. It used to be easy to find victims, because they would come to him on their own. And the vampires call them blood golems. And Michael went on to say that they need the phoenix feather to send them outside the tower to get more human blood. And they will continue to create golems using all the blood available until they create an army capable of conquering the tower. Our hero looking at all this had never seen such a thing, and the existence of humans made some adjustments to their behavior. Suddenly, Michael began to order his bloody soldiers to bring him the phoenix feather. As soon as they rushed over, Gene Hack began to say that he wasn't happy with such nasty ones, but they wouldn't cause a problem. After all, he was the one who wasn't going to give the vampire the feather. And Michael immediately wondered what he could hide in that forest, since he was so confident in his powers. And in that forest stood his friends, who were already ready for battle. Seeing that Michael had turned around, our hero started to activate his daylight skill and pointed towards Michael, telling him to look at him. But Mikhail was successfully able to block this attack and smiling horribly in our hero's direction, began to say that very soon he would be begging for death. And at the same time our hero's comrades, who were in the forest, began to attack the golems, which ran straight at them. And one of the comrades began to activate his skill Unwavering Spirit, and from this moment for 20 minutes he will not get tired, continuing to run away. But what they didn't notice was that there were a lot of golems, and the girl who noticed this started telling her comrade that there wasn't a word about it in the meeting. While some were running away from them, others started activating their other skills, fire elements. The grandfather who had stood off in the forest began to say that he hadn't fought like this in a long time and it was like he was younger now. The girl was on voice communication with her friends and began to say that grandpa was doing pretty well against the monsters and she would say so, he's having fun. But it would still take them a while to contain them and eventually destroy them. The girl who was sitting on top of the guy started asking if he could run faster, because she didn't think he could last much longer. But the guy ran away and so with all his might and started to answer her that it's already dangerous and he won't be able to build up his stamina that fast, because he needs more time. And the rest of us need to hold out for at least a little while. But the girl who was sitting on top of the guy started yelling that why all the hard work always falls on her. Teresa, who was fighting not far from them, was holding back the full force of the monsters that were moving towards her. But suddenly one of the monsters caught her. She was in pain. But she didn't want to just give up and stood to the death. After all, she had activated her sacred tongue skill and in an instant she was able to deal with all the monsters that surrounded her. She realized that everyone was putting their best foot forward and the monsters would definitely break through if they gave ground. And she can't let that happen. After all, the most important thing right now is to hold back until their leader Gene Heck fights that vampire. And our hero realized that the battle would drag on for a long time yet. And seeing that his opponent Michael began to activate his skill Fist of Blood, which flew straight at him, but our hero dodged and was able to avoid that blow. But jumping into the air, he saw that many more of these fists began to surround him and, of course, eventually he was hit by them. But suddenly, another skill in the sky, Star Blessing, activated and was able to destroy the attack that Mikhail had made. Michael, who was standing not that far away, noticed that our hero could summon divine skills and he was very surprised by this. And as soon as our hero was free, he came down to the ground and started attacking Mikhail. Swinging at him, Michael was able to duck and avoid the impact of the blade our hero was holding. And as soon as he turned around, he began to say towards Gene Hayak that he was some kind of crazy and looked pleased. Although his attack didn't work, two of Michael's vampire subordinates appeared out of nowhere. They started to say they were done. To which Michael replied that they had done well, and now they should bear their blades and attack together. And as soon as our hero turned around, he saw that there was now going to be a three-on-one battle. Who began to say that they were doing a mean thing, even though they were noble vampires. To which Michael replied that he was saying so, 
and he himself had a smile, and our hero was given one last chance by the vampires to tell where Alice is now. And if he tells, they will let him live. To which they heard from our hero that he had already said a hundred times that he had no idea. And at the same moment a huge bloody fist started flying into Jean Hyok's back. But he was able to block it with his dagger and then the other vampires started attacking him screaming for him to tell them where Alice was. But Jean Heck answered them each time that he had nothing to do with it and he didn't realize how many more times to tell them that he didn't know. But suddenly one of the bloody fists reached our hero and striking him, he began to fly far away. And as soon as he landed, he regrouped and got to his feet. But as he looked up, he saw Michael attacking him with the same technique and saying he was just going to make a chop out of him. Suddenly he remembered and continued to fight. Our heroes endured many blows and wounds that came to them, but at one point his team was still able to complete the preparation of the shining pentagram, and Gene Heck began to activate the four-star barrier. When did he have time to create such a big barrier? To which Gene Heck started to say that they were all talking about Alice and missing her so much. And at the same moment, he started transferring mana into the ring he was holding in his hands and telling them that she was really freaking out right now. And now he was hoping that they would finally work things out. And as soon as Alice showed up, Michael, looking at her, started saying that she finally showed up. But Alice, looking at her hands, realized that the barrier's restrictions had been loosened, and the limit of her abilities had been increased by 20%. And at the same moment, it was as if she went mad, started screaming and experiencing the immense power that was embedded in her. The rest of the vampires couldn't understand why she still had so much strength, and this after so many years in the ruins. To which, as soon as the sound died down, the vampire standing across from our hero heard the words that her name was Alice and she had lost too much time and knowledge into the endless darkness. And they were all determined to make it all up to her, the filthy traitors. And at this time, the chief walked off through the snowy forest with the captain, whom he held on his arm. And suddenly the captain got a video call from Gene Heck, who started saying that now it was his time to be useful, and he should take it easy, because he really needs his help, and he needs to hurry. He doesn't know how much longer their people will last, and they ask that he find the magic crystals. They are the basis for a magical procedure with the chief. But suddenly they saw the golems Michael had summoned running at them. The chieftain was already ready for battle and started activating his white beast skill. Transparency was put on his equipped weapons and his attack power was increased by 15% and his attack speed was also increased by 15%. And with a single strike, he was able to deal with all the enemies that attacked him. But there were quite a few of them, and they began to guess that such monsters wouldn't guard the magic crystals. The chief had a couple of guesses, and they decided to test them right away. But the captain didn't understand why he had to work as some sort of assistant, after all, he was the second captain of the Tangan Guild. The chief noticed that the captain was nervous, and started telling him not to worry, for he would protect him. He can't lose the only one who can contact Gene Hack. Now the battlefield where the vampires fought against Alice and Gene Hack was full of bloody soldiers who simply honed our hero. But Alice was able to get out and flew up into the air. She flew above them and started activating her blood sphere skill. A huge spear appeared from the sky and struck straight at all the soldiers who were standing on the ground. In an instant, the half forest began to crumble and collapse in different directions. From such a strong wave, all the trees began to collapse. Jean Heck's friends and comrades who were a little farther away in the forest began to hold on and hide behind trees, ledges to hide from the shock wave. They didn't realize what it was, and where such tremendous force came from. In fact, some were simply being carried away. Teraza began to realize that this blast had come from the side where Jean Heck was currently fighting, and she was surprised that there could indeed be such a terrifying scale to their battle. And once the attack was over, Michael began to say that she had gotten rid of most of his warriors in one blow, and that was impressive. And at the same time, Jean Heck, who was hidden under his barrier, started telling Alice that it seems she has a lot to talk about. And she let her take on Michael and he would deal with the others and join her. To which Alice replied that he's saying that she can't beat them alone. But Jean Heck replied that no, he just wants to share her burden. After all, they are a team. And by the way, he'll tell her something interesting when they're done, smiling. Alice replied that that was mean. And at the same moment, the notification system started showing our hero that he had reached a new phase of tech. Epic phrase before death and the invulnerable technique were sealed. And while pointing his finger at the two vampires, he started saying that he would deal with them as small pawns. 
And as soon as they started walking towards our hero, Alice approached Michael, who started saying that they hadn't seen each other in a while, and how she, the former ruler of Ataraxia, was doing. But Alice, enraged, started flying straight at him, saying her name with her mouth. And after the attack, Michael still managed to block her attack and began to tell her that she shouldn't have left the tower. Mikhail began to realize that her limitations had made her so weak. And after all, she was once the strongest person in the world, and to see her so insignificant now upset him so much. But as soon as Alice heard those words, she began to get even angrier and ordered Mikhail to stop such nonsense. After all, she would destroy him right now. And immediately she started to activate her blood blast skill. But Michael continued to speak, in order to protect the balance in the tower and his pursuit of such a foolish goal. She has the power to achieve so much more, so why would she risk everything to preserve a meaningless world? Because it's so naive. And now it was his turn to show how much he had grown during this period while she was in the dungeon. But Alice didn't stop being angry, for she wanted to destroy him as soon as possible. At the same time our hero started to fight against two vampires, who started to say that this time would be different. But our hero answered them that it sounded like they were giving in last time. But one of the vampires replied that it was true, because he left them alive for information. There was no point in keeping him alive here. And Jean Heck answered him that if he was sure, he too would show them his true power. After all, they had only seen 20% of his true skills before. And as soon as he finished saying that phrase, the notification window began to show that the final phrase of the technique, the epic phrase, before death, 4 out of 4 had been reached. Mana absorption had now been successfully copied, and it allows you to steal some of your opponent's mana with a successful attack, 0.3 mana points per blank hit and 0.1 spirit status points per hit. Gene Heck put them alive and everything they said to gain this skill, and when fighting vampires, mana sucking is vital. If he combines it with the divine skill, he can get a new skill, suction from the soul. It allows him to steal some of the opponent's mana when attacking. If the subsequent attack is successful, he will be able to steal the hidden spirit fear and will gain 0.1 spirit status per hit. Suddenly, the vampires saw this and realized that it was energy, it was mana sucking. But they didn't understand where he got such a skill from. After all, only vampires could use it. The vampire's comrade started to say that it wasn't just mana sucking, he combined it with divine power. At the same moment, our hero started telling them to stop looking at him and started attacking them immediately, and ran up to them at a very fast speed. And as soon as he attacked one of the vampires, the notification showed that 0.3 mana points had been stolen thanks to the soul sucking effect. And using the soul suction effect, he gained 0.1 spirit status points. The spirit harmonized with all the stats he already had, infusing them with vitality. And the secret stat he had discovered by studying 62,000 different combinations of stats never stopped growing. Therefore, his development would now be on a different level. And while continuing to attack the vampires, our hero began to activate the Demon King Sword Step skill and attack them with even more force. After all, thanks to the effect of soul absorption, he began to steal their mana in large quantities, and they could not cope with such an attack, but suddenly decided to activate her skill Bloody Eye and attack our hero. However, he thought it was already not bad, but still dodged such an attack. When he looked back, he saw that there were many explosions where Alice was fighting, and he realized that Alice was now failing Michael. He must get back as soon as possible, and he didn't have much time. So he decided to forget about the stats for now and started asking the vampires to confess what Michael wanted. If they told the truth, he would consider letting them live. At the same moment, the sword graveyard skill was activated and the vampires couldn't understand what was going on with his mana. Was he really hiding his true power? And one of the vampires shouted out that they wouldn't fall for his pathetic tricks. But at the same moment, our hero approached him at great speed and managed to finish him off. From what Ophelia could not believe her eyes, what just happened, because her comrade was simply destroyed with one blow. And turning around, Jean Heck asked her, is she ready to talk now, Mrs. Ophelia? And she, standing and looking at him, could not understand what it was. At the same time Michael was fighting against Alice, and he had much more strength. Through that, he was able to attack her with his blood attack and pin them to the ground. And with him probably forcefully continuing to kill them into the ground, causing her to be unable to move. And as soon as he stopped countless attacks, Alice lay on the ground and began to realize that she was running out of mana. But at the same time, Michael was above her and started flying at a tremendous speed to attack her. 
and as soon as he got close, a huge explosion pierced the entire forest. At this time, Mikhail's soldiers kept running towards the chieftain, but he started to smash them in different directions with his skill. Eventually, the chieftain finally saw what he had been running towards for so long. But the stone was not only guarded by Michael's soldiers, but also by the soldiers of Mina's guild. And the chieftain began to realize that to win this war, the crystal had to be destroyed. He began to tell the captain that he would clear a path for him, and he in turn must run to the stone and destroy it. But first of all he must get through all those monsters and destroy that huge magical crystal. And once he realized that, he started saying, what's waiting for you is that I have a family to protect. But he just wanted to be popular with the women, he just wanted to become more successful. But the chief thought he was talking utter nonsense. At the same moment, huge numbers of soldiers started pouncing on the chief. And it was no problem for the chief to start telling the captain not to be dramatic and just do what he could at the moment. And scattering all the soldiers, the chief cried out, this is the credo of a real man. And he must go before everything was cleared for him. But as the captain moved, he began to remember how he had been congratulated on being the second captain of the guild. And now there was no better job than this. And he would have all the money, girls, cars, anything he wanted. And as he thought back to holding the sword the guild leader had given him, he wondered what he was capable of. And what he could do at the moment. But as he accelerated, he left what was in front of him, and with tremendous force, he was able to chop the magic crystal in half. Immediately, the notification window began to show that the source of the blood quarter's mana had been destroyed, and the magic circle that Michael had created began to disappear. Michael noticed this, as did the rest of our hero's team, finally the magic circle was gone. Thus our hero, who was watching this, realized that finally his team had finally accomplished the task he had set for them after all. And holding the vampiress by the leg he began to throw her into the cold water, and though his arm was falling off, he began to do so, asking, when is she going to start talking already? And as soon as he pulled out her SVD, she started yelling that the 29th floor, not targeting the 29th floor. But our hero didn't understand, how could it be, because that's where the power of the empire is. But Ophelia went on to say that Michael said that he wanted to get Balmont, which belongs to the empire, and that's all she knows. And as soon as our hero heard that, he cast her aside, because he got enough information, because it is the best sword for killing dragons, Balmon, and he probably wants to use it to kill the dragon on the 48th floor. And as soon as Jean Heck finished thinking about it, he approached Ophelia and, using his skill, touched her and thus left his brand on her, because of which she would now be. But before he did, he asked her to choose life or death. And then it was Ophelia's turn. She started sobbing loudly and screaming, why ask something so obvious, after all, she wants to live. And as soon as our hero was able to get the opponent's consent, the brand of grief was set on the opponent's body, and, leaving, he began to tell her that he would wait for their work together. And at the same time, Michael continued to beat Alice and while holding her in his grasp, he began to tell her that she had enjoyed her escape enough and it was time for her to go back. But at just the right moment, our hero showed up and told Alice that she had done a good job. And as soon as he activated his sword graveyard skill, he shattered the shackles that were holding her back, and Michael couldn't believe that his Wistia, that had withstood even Ms. Alice's attacks, was destroyed. And as Jean Hack came closer to catch her as she was falling, he began to tell her that she had done well, and now she could rest a bit, for now Michael's opponent would be him. But Michael did not stand still, and immediately began to fly with his attacks towards our hero, who stood in his place. But suddenly he jumped up and began to activate his skill graveyard of balls, answering Michael with his skills and skills. After all, thanks to the soul absorption effect, our hero was much stronger than before. This was noticed by Alice, who was sitting nearby. She began to ask herself questions, was Jean Heck always this strong? But she had been by his side the whole time, and then she realized that he had grown during the time they had been separated. At that same second, Michael continued to attack with the words that he was sick of looking at that annoying gnat. Swinging around, he was already ready to finish off Gene Heck who was standing there waiting for this attack. And as soon as Michael decided to destroy him, he sent his strongest attack at him. But as soon as the attack reached its target, our hero cut it into many particles. Mikhail couldn't believe his eyes. After all, in just a second, our hero had struck him back with his blades. But because of the mana barrier skill and too much difference in mana, the blow stopped hitting Mikhail. Our hero realized that it would take forever to catch up with him using soul absorption. In the meantime, our hero's friends continued to fight against the bloody soldiers who were very numerous. 
They were massacring them one by one. Stalker began to say that he was sick of being Jean Hexpawn, but suddenly he noticed the captain of the Tangan Guild standing nearby. As he looked closer, he realized that he had defeated all the bloody soldiers with his broken sword. He realized that the captain was tougher than he thought when he first saw him. Suddenly the captain began to shout to the other boys that the chief was dying and needed help. After all, he was a comrade who was protecting his life. At that same second Teresa, who was on the slope, started yelling that she was going. Jumping off of it, she approached and with her skill she began to heal the chief with holy healing. Once she was done, she told the captain that he was in no danger now. But the captain, as he approached the chief, began to ask if the chief could hear him and if he was alright. At the same second, Teresa, due to lack of strength, fell to the ground. Stalker, running over to her, picked her up and carried her over to the nearest tree. Looking at her, he realized that she simply lost consciousness due to fatigue. Remembering the words of our hero about not to come in any case and go to the appointed place as soon as finished, Stalker began to realize that whatever he was doing there, he should hurry. After all, everyone here was already on edge. But suddenly during the battle, Gene Heck was able to activate his greedy gay skill. And since luck and adaptation stats were on his side, he was able to look at Michael's stats. The requirements for copying were as follows. Michael is the hunting dog of the Decasis family and the supreme vampires who play the role of Black Wings. If he could survive a battle with this powerful vampire who usually only appeared in the higher floors of the tower, he would be able to copy one of his skills. Our hero was glad that they had at least shown these requirements. But Michael noticed the smile on our hero's face again and started to say that he was indeed interesting. At the same moment, he activated his skill concealing moon claws and started attacking. Mikhail, lastly said that he would see how long he could smile for. But Gene Heck, who was standing and waiting for his attack to reach him, started to activate the graveyard ball skill at the last moment. He cut this attack into several pieces. Immediately after that, Michael appeared and got very close and started attacking Gene Hayak. He said that one by one he would rip out each of his teeth. But suddenly, our hero threw his swords from his hands. In their place, a bow and arrow formed. As soon as the bow activated, the arrows launched themselves at Michael, hitting him right in the face and causing the vampire to fly backwards. Well, that attack only wounded Mikhail with a light scratch. And as soon as he got up, he started telling our hero that he has a lot of nice tricks. And although it's more of a naive childishness than a trick, but this attack made Michael very angry because of which he began to activate the skill Hellfire, destroying the world. And Alice realized that this was a very strong attack, and Jean Heck needed to get away from there as soon as possible, because he wouldn't survive if he got hit. But Jean Heck stood still and started to turn his head towards Alice and told her with a smile on his face that he finally needed to take a hit to survive. But Alice didn't understand what he was talking about and he needed to get out soon. And as soon as she finished speaking, she saw our hero activated a skill and the shield first appeared near Alice. And he started telling her to just watch, and as soon as Michael finished preparing his crowning hellfire attack, it started to rise very high, causing it to spread for several kilometers. And Alice, who was protected by a shield, started yelling towards our hero to get away. And as soon as the attack was completed, and Michael was standing in the same place where everything was destroyed, he started to look around, and saying to let our hero consider it an honor. After all, this was the first time he was using all of his mana against a human. And immediately he switched to Alice, who was sitting not far from him, and started to say that now that this little gnat was gone, they should continue their battle. But Alice raised her head and with a smile on her face began to look up as our hero flew straight at Michael, and began to counterattack him even harder than before. Because at that moment our hero activated an amazing skill, Invulnerable. And using a skill that goes against the norm expends more mana, and our hero started screaming from on high that he has no idea how much a second means to someone like him, and it's not enough to turn him into meat. And of course, only after sucking out her entire team. But as soon as the attack reached Michael, the notification window started showing that our hero's mana was insufficient. But suddenly the mana barrier was cancelled, and a huge explosion sounded at the spot where Michael was standing. And Gene Heck hit Michael with all his might causing Michael to bounce back and not realize what had happened. After all, I was there, impossible, and how could he even survive his hellfire? Further he remained unharmed and grabbing his weapon, he started to say that he recognized that he had caught him by surprise and he didn't even expect to use up all his mana. But as he swung toward our hero, he began to say, did he really think he was going to lose to someone like him? 
and the counterpunch that flew straight at our hero's head was successfully blocked by his right hand, and began to fly back many meters and immediately after that blow Michael began to fly towards Gene Heck who was lying on the ground and just as his blow reached its target, Alice appeared. She blocked his attack and Mikhail was stunned that she started to defend that guy. But Alice responded by saying that he was an idiot and that he thought she would just stand aside, he was wrong. Mikhail realized he was in a bad situation and started to back away, for that was exactly what he thought, that she would stand by and that they had hurt him. Turning his head around, Mikhail saw Jean Heck start to rise, and Alice, who was standing next to him, started to tell him that his mom was running out of time. And even though our hero was defending, he began to realize that in 10 minutes the soul essence would run out. And the chances of Michael winning. And at the same time, somewhere on the 39th floor, a group of higher vampires gathered in one room and watched our hero battle against Michael. And one of them started saying, did he really force Michael to use his best skills? And they're afraid that Michael might lose. And they can't miss Alice being under their noses. And wouldn't interfering on the lower floors be dangerous, given the amount of resources spent on this place? They owe it to themselves to do something about it. One of the hooded men began to ask Mr. Exanchin how they should proceed. To which he replied that they should continue to watch them. Then, as they are fighting now, and Michael is in a very bad situation, for Alice had grabbed his arm, and he didn't understand why she was on the side of the humans. And even though she had been dethroned, he still showed respect for her. And isn't that a betrayal in his fellow humans? To which Alice angrily began to shout back, Betrayal. She accuses him of betrayal. After all, they are the ones who betrayed her, and she is not on the side of the humans, but simply loyal to the one who rescued her from her imprisonment. After all, the one who saved her was already over Michael's head and ready to deliver the final blow. And as soon as he struck it, Michael began to fly back several dozen meters. And Jean Heck offered her bloody copies, and together they could deal with the mana they had left. And at that very second, a bloody spear began to appear in Alice's hand which she was already ready to throw towards Mikhail, who was lying nearby in the snow, badly wounded. And jumping up from her seat, she began to fly up the hill and with all her might threw her spear toward him. But he couldn't understand how she did it, how she was able to pierce his defenses. But flying even closer, Alice began to look directly into Michael's eyes and said that she knew that everyone looked through his eyes. And that they were dirty cheaters and should heed her words. For she would get revenge on them, by all means. And Michael, after all that had been said, began to reply that would she be strong enough to do that? After all, the spear didn't even pierce his heart. Well, Alice answered him not to worry. For that was taken care of by Gene Heck, who was already behind Alice, and with all his strength holding his shield in his hands, he struck a poke pill and was able to pierce through Michael with that spear. And as soon as the spear went through him, Mikhail couldn't believe it. And in that very second, a notification appeared in front of our hero that surviving the battle against Mikhail he had fulfilled the conditions for copying the skill, and was able to copy the claw's hiding moon skill. And immediately after that, our hero's level started to increase very much. And one after another notification showed that his level was increasing, and the blood portal was finally destroyed. Barely standing on his feet, Gene Heck started to say that it was frivolous and he ended up falling to the ground. But in time, Alice, who had arrived, managed to catch him and sat on his knees, saying that thanks to him, she was able to taste revenge and she was very happy now. Truth be told, a part of her didn't trust him and she couldn't understand the reason why he was helping her. But now she had completely changed her mind. At the same moment in that room, somewhere on the 39th floor, a man jumped up from his seat, causing him to topple over his chair. After all, it was unreal to him that Michael could be defeated and so the praised royal guard had also lost to a mere human. Oh, and the blood portal was also destroyed. And that would greatly hinder the gathering of strength against the empire. The other man who was sitting beside him tapped on the table and began to say that there was no need to shine. Even though the portal had been destroyed, they hadn't lost everything. Plus, Alice had been discovered, and from now on, he would keep an eye on Jean Heck. A little while later, in one of the secluded places where our hero lay, he began to open his eyes. The first person he saw was Teresa, who began to say that he was finally awake. They went in search of him, for he had not returned for a long time. He was then carried here while he was unconscious, and Teresa went on to say that there were only dead vampire bodies left in the area where he had fought. Keeping his hand on his ring, our hero began to realize that something was wrong. Turning around, 
he replied to Teresa that it was nothing and thanked her for fixing him up. And to everyone else he began to tell them that they had all done a good job and now they could have a good meal, because he was very hungry. It seemed like it was over, but it wasn't. The China Guild continued to fight with the main guild, and someone at one point shouted out for everyone to stop and no one to move. And he started pointing his finger at the guys who were standing across from him and asking, why did they attack them? Was it just because Gene Hack told them to? And to this the lanceman replied, what kind of nonsense is that? After all, they were planning a raid. But their plans changed, and they went after Gene Hack. But suddenly it came to Lancelot's attention that what was happening was pre-planned by Gene Hack. Both factions thought they were fighting against Gene Hack and Ophelia, who was watching it all from afar. She saw that it finally dawned on them that they were wasting time. As she ducked down, she realized that although she remained alive, she didn't know what to make of the stigma Gene Hack had placed on her. Every time she thought about it, it started to burn. Suddenly she heard the words someone said to her, this is hard to take. And as soon as she turned her head, she saw the girl she had recently met on the third floor, and she started to ask her why she was here. But all she heard was a sneer and an arrogant smile. But it looked like that girl had gotten a mark from her as well. But suddenly Ophelia got angry and started moving towards the girl with an angry expression on her face and said that if that girl was mocking her, she would soon say goodbye to her life. But suddenly she saw a notification that battles between slaves were forbidden and the brand of suffering was activated. And at that moment, their branding began to sting horribly. A scream spread throughout the forest. The next day, a notification window showed our hero that he had finally received the phoenix feather. The presence of the feather increases resistance to cold by 500%. Combined with the right ingredients, an item with a special ability can be created. Gene Heck knew that it would be easier to mop up the seventh floor with him than taking candy from a child. But he decided to eat first. When the table was set, Teresa, who was gobbling down the food, began to thank Gene Heck for the wonderful food, but he replied that it was just a basic skill. At that moment, the chief came up to him and thanked him. After all, his people were still alive because of him. He had no idea how to repay that. The notification window showed that he had been recognized by the chief of the Ice Click tribe. The copying conditions had been met, and he had successfully copied the White Beast skill. His speed increased by 15%, and within 5 minutes, transparency would be applied to equipment and weapons. Depending on the skill level, the transparency would vary. Gene Heck replied that no thanks were needed, he wasn't doing this for free. The leader couldn't understand what this was about. But he went on to say that they should pay him 500 magic crystals every month. It would be good if they would leave them at the floor exit. This made the chief as if petrified after hearing this, and Stalker, who was standing beside him, started saying that he was a devilish rascal. He was disappointed that they had chosen him as a rival. It didn't take long for him to respond, and Gene Hack replied that he was the one eating his food and telling him so. But Stalker replied that he eats because he's angry. His blood pressure goes up when he thinks about what he made him do. But Gene Hack starts to say that they can fix that if he wants to bet. There wasn't much food left, but Stalker didn't understand what kind of bet he was talking about. Gene Hack went on to say that the biggest fish wins and the loser has to make a video calling the winner mister and post it. At this point, it was like Stalker went crazy and started throwing off his clothes. And jumping into the ice lake, he dove to the very bottom, thinking that victory would be his and he would not back down and would definitely win. But the rest of the audience knew he was so easy, and fell for Gene Hayak again. And he was also so mean. When diving into that lake, suddenly one of the guys threw our hero a necklace and said she found it when he was out. And looking at it, Gene Heck realized that Michael wanted to use it on Alice, and he should definitely look into it. Thanking his partner for this gift, he began to ask where the captain was going. Did he really go back with his group? But the girl answered that she did not know. He had not been seen for a long time. And at the same time, the Tangan Guild leader was looking at the notification window, where it was written that the seventh floor of an important test had been passed and the achievement had been obtained. The veteran company was very angry because of this and expressed their displeasure that the captain had given Gene Heck so much support and came back empty-handed. Just useless. And what was he even doing there and how did he break his sword if he doesn't even know how much it's worth? The next day, there was a lot of buzz about the seventh floor being cleared out. And some people had seen it. 
The department head of the Awakened Association heard from his ward that it was Gene Heck again, and according to the Tangan Guild's report, there was a conflict with the demonic people on the upper floor on the seventh floor. And player Gene Heck and his squad fought them back, and started to ask the president if they needed to contact Gene Heck. To which he replied that they would just observe for now. After all, it's too stupid to reveal their intentions so quickly, and Gene Heck, whether he would side with humanity or be their enemy is hard to say right now. So for now just let them celebrate and the world situation is stable right now, but elsewhere, one of the men started shouting furiously about the emergency. And that it was VIP protocol. And like a madman, he started yelling for everyone to bring this information to the entire staff. And everyone should act like they're in rehearsal and spread the red carpet that's near the entrance faster and not damage a single part. And as soon as they saw Alice walking in, they started to say in one voice that they were honored. And they started wishing her a good day, and they would make sure her shopping experience was a success. And her very greeting warmed their souls. Because of that, she started handing out gold jewelry and diamonds to everyone, and telling them to take it as payment. Because anything she laid her eyes on would be hers from now on. And no questions asked. And as soon as she sat down in her chair, started to say that we can start already, but suddenly someone said that the general manager had just passed out. But others started saying to leave him alone. It's just a weird way of expressing your emotions, and when our hero saw Alice, he noticed that she was extremely happy today, and as he held that necklace in his hands, he saw the description to it. That this necklace was made by the high priest Porvate, and with the help of God, specifically for sealing, and it is effective against those with dark type skills. And with it, Michael tried to seal Alice again. But why seal her and not kill her? And if there's something he doesn't know about? After much thought, our hero decided to figure it out. But suddenly his thoughts were interrupted by a notice that came to him from Rick Hennessy. He sent him an invitation. If he accepts this invitation, he will be able to attend the Masquerade Ball, which is held on the first floor of the Tower of Trials. The Masquerade Ball is one of the events that take place on the 25th floor. When Tower of Trials was a game, Gene Heck attended as a guest, and of course, he was the first and only one to arrive. Therefore, he would just dance and entertain everyone around him. But this time things were different players from all over the world were to come. Our hero started saying that they have somewhere to go. The next day, they went on the first floor in the neutral zone of the unnamed city. Alice started telling Gene Hack that he promised to buy anything she just wanted. To which he replied not to make her angry. After all, they are here to visit one store and get ready for the masquerade ball. As soon as they opened the door of this store, they saw little gnomes in front of them who were dressing up stalker. As soon as he turned his head and saw our hero, he began to get angry and lash out at him. Gene Hack challenged him ridiculously and made him look like a laughingstock. To which Gene Hack replied to calm down for there was no reason to fight, and he had his mana. The goblins would soon retreat after smelling her. Some goblins were already unconscious when they smelled such incredible mana, especially on the first floor. Gene Heck continued to say something, but Stalker kept interrupting him and started to tell him not to try to change the subject, always chalking up some nonsense. But with a wave of his hand, Gene Heck started to tell him not to get angry, because he had a gift, a sword. But Stalker replied that he would no longer fall for his sweet talk. Gene Heck told him not to exaggerate, for he had told him how to move that sword, and it was true. It wouldn't break in a battle with a stone giant, he would use it for a long time. Standing behind Gene Heck began to say that if he was looking for a new sword, he would help if he stopped being angry. They would see each other already at the ball. Stalker turned around with a strange face and began to warn that to trust him for the last time. But from the expression on our hero's face it was clear that he was again plotting something. Stalker started to look at Alice and began to wonder what country she was from. Still, he realized that if she wasn't an enemy, it wasn't worth the trouble. Soon after Stalker left, our hero approached one of the goblins and apologized for the inconvenience. The goblin replied not to worry, as they understood everything. He started to ask that they were looking for a costume for the ball, and recommended that they choose the classic black one. But Gene Heck started to say that he was interested in something else. The goblin asked if he was looking for something specific. To which Gene Hack replied that an incense containing the scent of the snowy canola flower. He smelled it when he walked into the store. 
It wasn't strange for a goblin from the first floor to have incense from a flower growing on the snowy mountains of the seventeenth floor. The goblin didn't understand what our hero was getting at, as he had also noticed something entertaining earlier. When his friend used mana, all the goblins fell unconscious, but he was perfectly fine. As soon as Alice crossed the threshold, his features trembled, and he seemed to realize at once who she was. He was only pretending to be a simple goblin. He was actually a mid-level manager. After our hero recognized this, the goblin smiled and began to chuckle, calling him an interesting person. But he was wrong about something, he's not a mid-level manager. Rick works for him. Our hero's face changed and he started to activate the greedy gay skill, but the notification showed that his level wasn't enough and the attempt failed. It was Hasty, the top-level manager. The Tower of Trials is also a top-level control. This is Goblin, one of the seven creators. Previously, our hero had not met any of them, and Hastings starts saying that Rick told him that there's someone, you know, about the existence of controllers. And it turns out Gene Hack is a lot more interesting than he imagined. And of course he's gonna reward him. After all, he's found the hidden manager, and he's taking over Shum's tailoring. But with a smile, Gene Hack started to say that he didn't think he would meet a top manager in a place like this. This was somewhat disappointing, and at the same time, Hastings began to suggest that it was about time to discuss the outfit. But Alice was somehow unhappy that Jean Heck was pointing her finger at her again. And a little while later, Alice, who was sitting near the fountain, started asking our hero what he did to get an invitation for her. And Jean Heck replied to her that she knew he would accept, for Alice loves points. All of a sudden, Alice interrupted our hero and started saying that he has any idea how dangerous it is out there. These guys aren't shabby, they've made tower rules in their lifetime. She's only met a top-level manager once. But Gene Heck, after cooling his pet, started telling her not to worry, because he would be careful. But he wondered how dangerous and how useful they were. After all, he would be able to get a lot of buffs and notifications. At the window showed our hero that his suit and dress were ready, and he was wished a good time. And soon they set off, and in the evening, when everyone entered the fancy palace, some players were surprised to see that this place was a ball, open only to selected players. And some of them started discussing that Maria or Teresa would come here. Because they want to see them very much. And amongst all the players, there were two players who were from the Samurai Guild, they are the very heroes that are fighting at the front, they are the gel master of the Samurai Guild. And one of them started telling his partner to just look at the others. Don't they look like parasites? And belly up to the deaths of strong crayfish, and seeing all this biomass is just disgusting. And the big guy started to ask his boss why he was angry because the guild treasures had been stolen. But they're not coming back because he's going to outbid all those gnats. To which his boss replied that he should have just agreed. But suddenly that guy and he thinks they should keep with them. And at the same moment he accidentally pushed Alice who was standing next to him. And as soon as that big guy said with an angry look what kind of donkey got in his way, at the same moment it was like he was paralyzed and he fell to the ground with all speed because of the great pressure. He couldn't even move his fingers. And his partner started looking at all this with a surprised look. And not realizing what had happened, Alice, who was standing beside him, started to say what donkey was being talked about. And now she was still in his way. So Alice asked him once more, are you going to answer? And at the same moment, she activated the power suppression skill. Her mom suppressed the opponent's power, and after that, the guy was pressed even harder against the earth. But his partner who was watching all of this didn't understand how a top ranker from the samurai guild could be defeated by this little girl. And who were the two of them anyway? He wondered. But Jean Heck, who was standing behind Alice, started telling her to stop, because there might be trouble if her true identity was revealed. Sighing and annoyed by this, Alice cancelled her power suppression skill, and the victim's partner immediately thanked our hero for calming her down. And began to ask if such brutality was really necessary. And he apologized for his behavior and admitted that he didn't think it would affect them so much. But Gene Heck with a serious look started to activate his ice creation skill, and a huge ice hammer appeared in his hand. He started beating the guy who was lying on the earth, and said that it looked like they didn't understand. He told her to back off so he could beat him up on his own, and to get his mind around who the gel master samurai were, and what would happen if someone crossed their path. And at that very moment, our hero began to activate his skills. The greedy gaze directed at Hashikeo who stood in front of him made him realize that it was the head of one of the top guilds. 
The copying conditions were again unsuccessful, and that guy started calling our hero names and telling him that he knew who he was. Then he had to realize that they were in an alliance with China, and if he thought they could stay out of it, he was wrong. And at that very moment, our hero began to remove his mask. Hashikawa, who was standing opposite him, was surprised at what he saw Gene Heck. And all the other players who were standing around watching what was happening started to see that this was the same famous guy who was mopping up the last floors alone. They began to wonder who the girl he was accompanying was. Could it really be his partner? But our hero didn't like the fact that it was so noisy. He started to create a huge ice hammer with his ice creation skill and told Hashikawa not to be scared. He erected them to get away from the crowd. As he got closer, he started asking what he had heard about him and realized that it looked like Teresa was here too, with Maria next to her. And he'd seen her at the conference. And Stalker, for crying out loud, was here too. But suddenly Gene Heck noticed something strange. These people were acting differently. They started pointing and talking about the girl who was standing near the table. Would she beg them to let her go? These were two independent players. And our hero, looking at them, began to realize that they are the top European players, the twins Casey and Jude, and they deliberately provoke battle and torture people for laughs. But to him, they're walking bags of skill, and he has a duty to look out for them. Alice, seeing our hero's strange smile, began to realize that he was up to something again. Not far away our hero was having a conversation, and Hashikawa began to tell his companion that he did this despite the fact that they were allies. So he knocked out his comrade, and now he's alone. He hopes the punishment won't be long in coming. These were two independent players. And our hero, looking at them, began to realize that they are at the top of the European players, twins Casey and Jude, and they deliberately provoke battle and torture people for laughs. But to him, they're walking bags of skill, and he has a duty to look out for them. Alice, seeing our hero's strange smile, began to realize that he was up to something again. Not far away our hero was having a conversation, and Hashikawa began to tell his companion that he did this despite the fact that they were allies. So he knocked out his comrade, and now he's alone. Hopes the punishment won't be long in coming. That guy was the deputy head of the guild. China and he was getting nervous about seeing Jean Hayak again. After all the destruction in the elf forest and tundra, they will meet again, and on top of that, there was an order to not contact him anymore. And he can't do anything, but suddenly the two of them heard someone's words that that annoying guy will deal with him himself. And as soon as they didn't turn around, they saw a little boy who had a horn on his head, and some people thought he was a monster. And he started to approach our hero and introduced himself, but his name was Carmen and he was the manager of this floor. And he began to ask Gene Heck what he had heard that he had massacred one of the guests, and whether it was true. To which our hero started to reply that the body that got in the way of his companion was hit hard when he fell, and so he should send flowers to the grave or something. And at that very second, Carmen started getting angry about the flowers sent and saying towards Gene Heck that how dare he make fun of him and now he should meet his death right here. But our hero didn't like the fact that the host is threatening his guest. It's a mess and he'll be in trouble if he tries to kill him. To which Carmen replied that he was a stupid man and thought it was so hard to get rid of him. And our hero started telling Carmen to take a closer look, from the second floor, the strongest of this tower is watching them. Well, that didn't stop him, for Carmen believed that despite his actions, no one had ever come down. And at that very second, Alice started to get ready to fight, but Jean Heck stopped her. And at that same second, the dwarf shouted Carmen's name despite his notification. He saw that there was a message from Gene Heck saying that his shirt button was loose and he came to him saying that he was the best and it was disappointing, and started asking for him to fix it or he would write a long angry review. But Goblin didn't understand what he was talking about. After all, there's no way something like this could happen to his suit. And at that very moment, as soon as Carmen turned his head, he saw the top manager walking straight towards him and started yelling towards Carmen with great anger, how dare he treat his guests like that. Kicking Carmen's leg, the manager started to ask if he was going to answer what he was doing to his client and while he knew that some property managers took outside bribes and as long as it didn't cross the line, he was turning a blind eye. But if the manager hurts someone else's guest, what happens to the reputation of the event? To which Carmen started to reply that he didn't know he was the one who invited that guy, but that was no excuse for a top manager. And he should apologize to that person since he did something wrong. And at the same moment, the situation was getting more and more interesting for our hero. 
and he started to turn on the videotape and tell the lowly manager, Carmen, to try and speak from his heart. And as soon as he bowed his head and started saying that he was sorry, Gene Heck started shouting in his direction, asking if he had eaten porridge since morning and needing to speak louder. And Carmen started to get angry and said how dare such a pathetic person raise his voice at him. But realizing that behind his back was a superior manager, he started to ask our hero for forgiveness louder and bowed his head, because he was very sorry. And at the same time, this situation was being watched from the top floor, and the man began to reflect on the fact that Gene Heck was able to use the manager in such a way. And to him, it was an impressive man. And he seemed to finally realize why his majesty had given him the gift. If they got the boy over to their side, they could probably end the war with those nasty aristocrats. And at the same moment, Rick, who was standing beside the supreme manager, began to activate the microphone skill. And started to say that because of the problems he had with the manager, the ball would be held by him. And let's finally talk about why they are all here. And as everyone knows the ball event is for hopeful players. However, that's not its main feature, and today everyone will be able to choose a faction to conquer the tower with in the future. And as soon as Rick snapped his fingers, the main event, the masquerade, began to start. And everyone has to prove if they are worthy to perform, must choose any dungeon maze or historical place between the 10th and 30th floor. And the player who gets the achievement will be given the advantage of choosing sides. To specify a location, the player must press a button. And just as the door began to close, Rick gave a final good luck wish to everyone, and all the players were beyond excited. After all, no one understood who the pitching hopeful was or what he was even talking about. And he was the one who mentioned the manager of the lower floors. But suddenly one of the girls started whistling and told everyone to stop whispering like cowards and that they were all equal. The situation suddenly got complicated and we need to work together and solve the problem. And why not start with each other? At the same time, Jean Heck looked at her and realized that Maria is once a player, always a player. And this is all out of the blue for her, too. But she's bravely taking on the job. And Stalker, who was standing beside Teresa, began to say that he thought they were on the same side again. But some players didn't understand why they had to work together. And did she really want to be chosen? And wasn't she the enemy of humanity? And while they were discussing the situation that they should discuss everything peacefully, our hero was already standing by the button. And as soon as he pressed the red button, the notification window showed that the choice was fixed. And the preparation of the 25th floor of the Valley of the Kings began, and all the others from his squad began to move in the same way. And Stalker, who was starting to get angry because Gene Heck hadn't considered or talked things through, makes the decision himself. And at the same moment, the notification window showed that all players were moving to the selected location. Some weren't even prepared for this, and the notification window continued to show that they could leave after going through the maze or choosing a faction. Gene Heck, who was standing in front of the entrance, stared. What is this place? It looks so imposing every time. But the other players behind him couldn't believe that they had moved to the 25th floor without any preparations. The other players were ready to compete and were willing to do more than others to get out of here and become the chosen ones. That girl in the red dress started yelling for everyone to calm down. After all, nothing good would come out if they suddenly went against each other. After all, they didn't know what this place was, and she was sure the man had a plan and they should talk to him. But as soon as she turned her head, she saw that person was no longer at the place where he was earlier. And Alice, who was standing with her arms spread out, started to say that he was already gone. But our hero was already inside and started looking for a secret passage. And as he looked around every corner, he finally found that button. As soon as he pressed it, the notification window showed that there were five paths open leading to the Tomb of the Kings. And he could only choose one, and he only had one minute to do so. Despite the notification, he realized that it was a very creepy notification. Anyone who sees it will think it's a treasure trail. And once he picks the door with the element, it will open. And that's when the spirits guarding it will appear. And if he doesn't choose anything in the allotted seconds, and somehow time passes, the notification window will show that he didn't choose anything. And all the doors will open. And from inside one door, the first salamander spirit would start coming out. He didn't understand why he was always the first one out. And at that very second, he'll start to turn into a huge fire monster. And will tell our hero that he hates him too much. And he, the salamander who protects kings, is about to pay for disturbing the peace of the world.
But our hero will turn his head back, start telling his pet that if he heard, the salamander is trying to kill him. So what does he think about that? And in that very second the pet found the hero, started filling his mouth with air and activated the flame skill. And as soon as he started attacking the salamander, there was nothing left of him. For his fire had simply disappeared. And the players who were standing outside the entrance began to hear an incredible energy being directed towards them. Teraza, who was standing near Alice, started asking her something about what Jean Heck was saying and where he was going, but Alice never answered. Suddenly, Stalker appeared and started saying that he probably knows where this energy is coming from and will take reckless action. His hobby is research. As Stalker started to head towards the castle entrance, Alice stopped him, picked up a rock and threw it at the gate. Immediately, huge traps appeared in front of them. Teresa couldn't understand how she knew about the traps. At the same time, she was shocked at what was expected of Jean Heck's partner. Suddenly, she felt a strange feeling as if she had encountered this frightening aura before. At the same time inside the castle, other spirits began to come out of their rooms, saying that they had a headache and didn't understand what was happening. They felt as if they had lost. They were the wind spirit and the earth spirit. They turned to the salamander with questions about what was going on. Didn't he say that their combined power would not be needed? Suddenly they saw the salamander lying on the ground. They could not understand why the salamander was lying on the ground. But the salamander began to speak so that they would be quiet and repeat after her. It turned out that the devil who was standing in front of them had shown up. At the same time, an old man was watching all this and was shocked to see the dragon. He was interested in how Jean Heck managed to catch it. Our hero didn't want to linger for long and activated his grief branding skill, subduing the five spirits. As a result, the incredible achievement was unlocked, 5000 points were credited to his account, and the current ranking of the participants was as follows. First place, Jean Hayok with 5,100 points. Second place, Gong with 450 points. And third place, John Yusung with 190 points. At the same moment, there was a notice that many factions were showing interest in him, and all 13 factions expressed their desire to cooperate with him. The third faction wanted him especially badly. But our hero, looking at all this, could not understand what to do. After all, the third faction was interested in him. His situation was more complicated than he expected. He petted his pet and was grateful for its popularity. Suddenly, there was a notification that Nurem wanted to talk to him. As soon as he accepted the call, an old man appeared in front of him, introducing himself from Nurem. The old man began to say that they wanted him to join them, and only then would he stay alive. For their commander, it's easier. However, our hero quickly ended the conversation, started telling all the spirits to get up, and soon they will be traveling onward. They must follow his instructions or they will fall victim to the Ancient One. All the spirits agreed. The second notice came from the Empire who wanted to speak to him. As soon as he accepted the challenge, the man introduced himself as Pinheimer from the Kingdom of Collodio, part of the Empire. However, our hero replied that his name was Jean Heck, and he understood that the Empire was interested in him. The conversation began to take a more serious turn. The man asked if he would work for them and promised to support him in conquering the tower. Our hero replied that he would consider their offer, but only under certain conditions, and at the same time, the other players were trying to get past the prepared traps that were waiting for them from different directions. And the girl started to ask the other players, what is the situation? But the other girl, Maria, replied that apparently it would take more than an hour, and at this rate, no one but the group that followed the series of Provolos girl would pass the challenge. And everyone seemed to be fixated on Jean Haig again. But suddenly, she saw a notification in front of her face that the conditions for returning had been changed. If inside the maze, the player met death from a trap or monster, they would be taken back to the ballroom. However, if they are even slightly injured, all accumulated points will be lost. The conditions were changed at Gene Heck's request, and other players were happy that they could get out even if they died. But others were somehow uncomfortable with being directly asked to die. Could this even be trusted? And one of the players was coming straight at them, suddenly stepped on a trap, he was cut by fire, and started teleporting back to the first floor. Maria, noticing this, began to realize that he was really back, and Gene Heck had chosen this level because he knew about this condition. Should she ask Teresa to introduce her to him? But the other guy started yelling, why are they getting excited about this? 
didn't they realize they have to read it again? All achievement points will be cancelled if they die. Gene Hack had not easily secured a favorable place in this competition. But suddenly Maria asked him why he didn't know how to be grateful and if he knew anything about this maze. Does he know anything about whose lives were saved? As a consequence of that condition, Gene Hack didn't push that button. But the guy who started the conversation suddenly heard some strange sound, and suddenly he realized that he was being addressed by the gentleman from Murum, and he started to say that it was a whispering technique and he shouldn't speak so loudly, and things didn't go according to plan. Gene Hack needs to eliminate that. But that guy didn't realize if he should do it, to which the gentleman replied that he couldn't do it, but some organizing would still have to be done. And a little later he was able to get the gift that the gentleman from Murum pointed out to him, but at the same time, our hero heard a voice in a video message. That it was a very serious favor, usually directed by the manager. And he hoped he kept his word. Our hero replied that of course he would not forget their agreement, if they touched him, immediately go to feed the ancient. And they should not make him repeat it twice. At the same moment, the five spirits mode started, and he told them to stop and said that the guys would stay here. And he noticed the blood on the ground and the fact that the killed player was left here. Whether it was because of a monster or a trap, he wouldn't be here. Which meant that he was killed by another player. He looked up and saw the girl starting to say what he felt and it was great. Blood smelled so wonderful. And would they finish off a few more players? It was that couple, the high-ranked twins who only liked to kill for fun. As children, Casey and the Jeetle witnessed what never thought to see. Cruel murders parents some kind of psychopath. And in this heavy the situation didn't start think must whether they intervene. But still they are decided and committed taking the impossible into your own sharp hands items which were lying near them. And work in a team they easily dealt with the criminal. However after such an action they are already the same never been underscore. But this while our hero was looking at the window notifications and saw what showed him that he could copy division everyone if will fulfill all perverted desires twins. But he still could not understand why the system shows background these guys really this is really necessary but raising his head he saw how they both started fly at him. And how only they approached and hit him with all strength his weapons but still he managed react picking up his hands and blocked their blows. But still he noticed what combination speed and strength there are so many of them fine. But still this underscore was not enough because he jumped and hit their both with your feet. But after blow guys gathered and began to tell our hero that they knew that strong. But not for long thinking they again started prepare for attack. And taking out your's weapon they decided apply skill which unites their weapon will come out. And activated their incredible power and energy into skill twins and now window notifications started showing what copying weapons partner and creation general passed successful and synergy was activated and attack power increased by 200%. The twins continued smile and tell each other that them needed total just one hit and they won't feel this unusual blood on your hands. But holding his neck, Jean Hyuk didn't he understand why they such energetic. Into this time in another place other people congratulated Sarah Pinheimer. For the fact that he signed the contract but Pinheimer began to answer what more it is too early because he's just received promise but guys they kept telling him not to be so modest. And continued to talk about how Gene Hyuk will definitely will help in the struggle for power in the middle floors and the fact that he really great worked. To another sage which stood around the corner began to think what to him disgusting see this old man shouldn't have been so happy act like this for less only because of the ancient dragon. But suddenly some strange thing began to appear behind him shadow. And noticing the bloody ghost he began to ask why he had arrived. But bloody the ghost began to tell him that he didn't expect that he will look for him and what a pleasant surprise awaits him now, but the old man said for him to speak be quieter after all other can there hear. And he started asking who he wanted from need to get rid of it and not about it whether crackles the imperial fool asked ghost. But the old man answered what's wrong with him need to eliminate group with which Gene Huck works after all they interfere more total. But the phantom began to answer what he doesn't care about final target it s not worth it break the rules and the fee will be huge and confident is it an old man or what? Once give away to him such exercise. But at that moment the old man began to get very angry and let out huge aura. Ghost noticed that's what started little by little move away with the words that he has just only asked and there is no need to be angry. 
How only ghost the old man left and started counting that he's just an arrogant fool. If they will allow empires take Jin Hyuk, they will definitely kill him. And so he decided what must get rid of him on one's own. Into this time Dungeon Twins continued to attack Jin Hyuk. But he simply jumped away from everyone their blow which they committed. And while in the air he decided what need to activate Mind Demon King Step skill. And plus to this he also activated skill soul absorption because of what twins started feel huge pain in your body underscore. And for this analog he was able to get 0.3 mana points but suddenly twins started to go crazy as if crazy smiling they started saying that their body as if something had been lost and that s what happened to them first. But Jean Hyuk got up to speed ran up to them and hit them their co all strength in the stomach and finally saying what to him very I feel sorry for them. And how only they flew to the side and did a hole in the nearest wall erupted huge explosion and rose huge cloud of dust. But still our hero thought that he wants to get them skills but he doesn't understand like he should to satisfy these perverts. But still how underscore only dust ass twins started get up and tell him that he is very they are strong too I've never encountered anything like this before. But getting it Jean Hyuk understood his blade what a game dragged on for him to have to still kill underscore there. But he didn't team make it to the end call upon mine cruel blade as he looked what all changed immediately underscore. And what too the twins simply walked up to him and began kneel down but he didn't understand what is happening and started asking what they do. The twins answered that they didn't understand that at the moment they will not be able to defeat him. And if they see a and kill someone with this delicious they are bloody better will become one with him family. But such a turn our hero certainly did not expect events. And how only he activated mind deathmark skill window notifications started showing what he copied their skills and received skill division everyone. With the help whom he can temporarily use the enemy skill with which he is familiar and also maybe share emotions and even memories if he's enough close to a person. And looking at these conditions copying and that skill which he received. He thought about what all very turned out well. To Gemini all of a sudden ran up to him and started hugging him with the words that now they family and them always will together this the very death. Into this Teresa time together with Stalker and Alice walked through the dungeon. And Stalker started asking Alice underscore where now is Jean Hyuk on what she answered that he doesn't know. He became interested where are they now go to whatever length she again answered that he doesn't know. But Stalker began to get angry and shout at her what she at all knows. And turning around Alice said she didn't want to say it, but still probably have to. And concentrating she said that the way is for them indicates line mana which connects them with the contractor. If they they'll go this dear, they one teeth find it her contractor and showing his hand she said it was right in front of him. But Teresa is together with Stalker, could not understand it's true, but suddenly they started unfold mine look behind yourself. And saw what started from the walls climb out a bunch of ghosts armed to the teeth. And one of them hit his weapon straight across the ground he began to say that then CA and let them leave. Lord of the Murim clan who was considered bloody ghost said what they will all die here and now. Teresa with stalker underscore started talking to she stayed behind them. But Alice herself began to get angry because her contractor Jen Hack was far from her because of this she has no mana at all. Into this time at the other end dungeons Jean Hyuk and walked with the twins and talked about the thigh. And one of Gemini began to say that he pierced their thigh's huge metal stick and even seems heard the crunch of bones. Continue talk about his huge stick, our hero understood what it seems he is sits down social battery. And how he just left a little further he suddenly froze in place and began to speak to the twins that since they are already a family they must listen. Turning around with tension with a smile he said what they should end kill everyone contract if they agreed then he will activate skill mark of sorrow and was added new rule. But Gemini started talking why, because I'm not awakened, and what police they won't be arrested, but Jean Hyuk understood that he simply has no problems. And taking up his he said with his hand behind his head them what they will act differently. And what he will point at the bad guys and with them they can do what wants. And hearing this twins rejoiced after all, they had new rule why underscore underscore they can kill bad guys. And turning around Jean Hyuk thought about what he's lucky that they such narrow minded. But suddenly he froze in place after all felt something strange underscore. But still he understood that his friends now in bad situations and them needed help. And at that very second he began to activate mind skilled steps of the demon king and with huge began to run at speed towards his friends. 
But now in place battles Lord Morum's subordinate started attack Teresa and stalkers underscore. And how only they saw Alice, they started right away moved towards her underscore. But Teresa instantly appeared in front of her and began to activate mind skill sacred strengthening and its physical possibilities immediately increased underscore. And also she started using there a sacred shield that began to illuminate all dungeons. And how only check work she turned to Alice and said to she stood behind her. Stalker the same one fought with those guys mind sword she skill which pursued the soul and instantly dealt with several bad guys. But then he realized what's on him moves enormous strength. And unfolding yours his body is barely managed block Lord Murram's attack. Who began to say that he was surprised what stalker can use sword chi even though he himself is not from towers he became interested who is he? But stalker screamed so that he leaves where to go? What would to him talk about yourself without getting to know each other? Rebounding a little ago Lord Nirima noticed what this boy too much lively. Well, Stalker having heard these words began to rise your's weapon and telling him what will he show how lively he is. And immediately began to activate mind skill song's blades and even though he wanted to save this skill for another guy but now there is no way out. But Lord continued look at Stalker and that's all only smiled asking what did he mumble under there. Nose. And lifting your blade Stalker said it again what this blade. He was going use on another person. And, having accelerated, he began to use skill sword arts or the next soul of unity with the blade. And when Teresa noticed she couldn't he'd believe it is what to my eyes stalker is so strong. Lord Nirima saw that he's enough knew how to take advantage with this blade but still this huge a pity. And now he started using mind skill ghost blood and all forces began to attack stalker because of what he started to fly back. But Lord Nirima stopping said that he is good but it happened that way that he became his opponent. And hitting Stalker more several times on his blade something strange the wave began to emanate after these strikes and Stalker this noticed. Because of which he began to experience huge pain and spit out blood from his mouth. And how only he fell to his knees Lord Nirima swung with the words that as he really reached this level on his own. And I'm going finish him off right here to him it was a pity that will disappear such incredible talent. But at that moment a bright light appeared because Teresa activated mind skill cross and hit with all Lord Miram's powers. And how only he bounced a few meters ago he started slowly get up. And say that it annoys him this skill but now she too provide get on your knees like her underscore comrade. Well then only Teresa began to unfold the city of Mirima continued to say that she was big it's a mistake to come here. After all human with saint you shouldn't be in such a situation by force. Place. And she had to protect that girl which now surrounded by his people. And once she all time was behind it means she's not that good in battle. Well there you go Alice standing on the same place understood that she doesn't need to get involved in this battle. After all when she closed their eyes she felt it. What Jean Hayek who appeared out of nowhere and activated mind skill cemetery balls destroyed guys who surrounded and what she said to him what she am late. Our hero began to prepare for battle. And in an instant he began to destroy everyone opponents who stood in his way. New video in this Lord Nirima couldn't figure out where he came from. What underscore worse everything he could end underscore follow his movements. Teresa saw what underscore finally arrived underscore their partner and mentor simultaneously began to smile with joy that they can finally rest underscore. And by she was healed approached them and started asking stalker why does he keep time loses. The notary said that he is not weak, just that the enemy is too strong. Well, Jean Hyuk didn't he think so and began to raise his hand and wave index finger. And showing with his finger on the enemy, he began to say that everyone around them is definitely bad guys. And into this world twins moved from place. And jumping into the air, they started fly right on their own enemies screaming underscore them finally got lucky. And without any deliberation they started destroy everyone enemies who stood on their ways. Lord Nirima could not understand where this came from reinforcements and soon total now to him have to retreat and regroup. Well, he didn't he have time to come to his senses how understood that he was attacked. And what this is not some ordinary attack because he as her didn't even notice. His body was simply attacked by his own weapon. Jean Hack waved his with her hand she started telling him not to pretend after all, he is only average link in the demonic cult. 
and being behind him he said what a fight with him waste of time. Lord Nurem's subordinates couldn't believe it is what to my eyes their leader only what was defeated. Well, our hero started shouting to the twins what they missed more some assholes and them started right away run straight at them. Stalker sitting behind them watched it underscore battle but still he could not know way to understand. How did he kill the enemy and how easily interrupted by his ULT and that's it only one attack. Could Ant hang his head no way to understand. How old is he more need to grow to reach his level? After all, he is with all strength trains and tries gain more experience however but still he see Ant underscore catch up with Jean Hyuk. And how only all enemies were defeated guys started going to. Jean Hyuk is into a time he walked up to the twins and stroked them them on the head for what they well done but said them what does he have more there is things to do so they must go first and beware traps. And how only they let's run Alice started asking why did he take so long, but Teresa noticed that those twins or those two which ruthless but she eats answered what today they underscore work for him. Well there you go stalker stood on the same place and looked at one point. More precisely looked at the defeated Lord Nirimi. But noticing that Jean Hyuk is standing behind him she very ask him underscore what is he now will do and as far as he remembers to get through this labyrinth need to about 20 days. But Jean Hyuk started answering tease him what is it really 20 days and noobs have that much time. Time to play. But he didn't he hear anything in response and our hero decided to ask Terrace what happened to him but Teresa answered what she's not sure but he yell I'll come to his senses soon. But at that moment the hero began to say that these guys will open the way to the tomb of the king and if they will find the right ones their items they will clean up labyrinth in an hour. But Alice couldn't understand where it came from pets but here in the Torres they liked and seemed cute. But how only he to them said to they stopped fool around and showed him the way started right away fulfill order. And how only they started depart one of Lord Nurini's subordinates. Began to carefully open mine eye to see if there is those guys nearby. Now we see both in one from the guild buildings China. Young woman the woman sitting at the table began to take out a stack of papers. Shouting worker A Ranga looked at the table and didn't he understand where there's so much here documents. Well, going to the window she understood what has already passed about 24 hours how Liao Wei and Sir Nam Gung Young entered the tower but when did they she thought about coming back. And standing near window she started looking at people which were located below and passed through the pedestrian transition. And what these people were talking and looked so calm. And if would they only knew that they're waiting in the future. But still a girl understood what pointless worry about civilians when you see a and contact top ranks. And what this world is very vulnerable to any attack from outside. At the same time, the underground spirits guarding the grave began open secret passage. And finally they succeeded underscore underscore doors started the window also opens notification started showing that the path to the king's tomb was free. But guys those standing in front of the door looked at what was happening with surprise on their faces, but everything except Alice. And going in inside tomb of the king Jean Hyuk began to speak to nobody didn't touch anything but Alice walking the last one couldn't understand why they are so surprised this unhappy mansions. But suddenly the notification system started showing what those who entered the king's tomb can choose hidden treasures redundant greedy plants the king's curse and our hero said what they take only one. Raised his hand and began to show stalkers what if he comes out that bell then if in it call it will open exit from labyrinth. Stalker whoever looked at it could nt understand if he was joking it's so easy to get out of such a terrible situation labyrinth impossible but Jean Hyuk objected to him that if he doesn't t like something he ll ring it and do nt want to fall out hear him whining. And continuing search that the most artifact that was our hero needed suddenly he began to turn his head around heard a noise behind myself. And saw the unfinished subordinate of Lord Neurime and Jean Heck began to ask that he's here forgot. And seeing what underscore the guy seemed to have missed one thing started lift up your weapon. But that one idiot who came to them began to bother some strange scroll underscore. And opening it he began to use the scroll of the early spring and began to occur in space moving. But our hero looked at it and could nt understand what he was does. But inside Sveta started to happen bright glow and a crack appeared. From whom started the old man comes out their fighters. The guy who opened the passage began to tell the old man that group ghost blood and its leader lost, to which the old man replied what the useless trash and he knew what this heretics trusted is forbidden. 
But still he did it good work Liao Wei said the old man. And at that moment our hero began to ask really they used divine artifact just to find it and what their managers will get angry if find out about it. But the old man began to open some kind of box and take it out some kind of ball saying to our hero that this complete nonsense. After all what managers see and enter the maze. And no one will know if he kills there everyone right here and immediately began to swallow the ball that got it from the box. And how only he is her got the hang of it and started using it pill rollback. And the notification system started showing that the old man has all the stats were increased doubled and after time the force used will dissipate. Teresa with stalker underscore started overlap your huge face underscore mana which came from an old man. But Alice terrifying smiling and began to say that such weak creatures dared open your mouth. But suddenly she understood what's wrong with her body something strange underscore is happening. That's always due to the fact that our hero is a little got angry and started telling her that her intervention unnecessary and for now what she may be observe. And how only their opponents started run straight at them with a purpose destroy. Teresa noticed that there very a lot of real behind Jean Hyuk began to raise his hand. And tell Teresa what then they say will be called somebody underscore. And at that moment five appeared spirits which started switch to battle mode. And Jean Heck with a smile on his face began to tell them to they started attack. Because he wants look at what they capable and to what extent fast they there will destroy. Times together with Stalker looked at what was happening and could not understand whether them join. But the old man stood behind everyone started hitting the ground with his fist and jumping up from their seats. And so he flew up air and began to look where is Jean Hyuk standing and how. As soon as he saw him he began to fly straight to him. He raised his hand and began to use their fist destruction skill walls. And huge percussion a wave enveloped the place where our hero was there but he managed to react on time jumped aside. And calling me names our hero that he is impudent boy he continued swing and attack him. But all his attacks simply passed by our hero, historian all of a sudden cried out so that he stops dodging and fights him man to man. That's it what said our hero, this is what he finally found this thing which took so long was looking for. And jumping back Jean Hyuk began to ask the old man why he was silent. And showing the artifact that he was holding in his hands began to ask the old man what does he really know what what is this thing. But what did the old man answer what this most bothersome divine artifact 25th floor. Horn bringing despair all right our hero answered. Artifact calling cataclysm it's worth blowing into it every time. They say the one who used it the fourth time will do great luck. But the old man suddenly began to get angry, saying what about our region does he really think that he's an idiot? And laughing he began to ask what does he really hope to survive what is to come? He has three events in closed space and if he decided if I could intimidate him, I'd eat better stop already would. And Jean Hyuk, without listening to the old man, began to bring the artifact to his mouth. And blow into it with all his strength and now the notification system started showing what a horn is used to spare. But the old man definitely didn't t expect such a turn events. And how as soon as he began to turn his head he saw what abides first cataclysm. But he didn't expect what will exactly such terrible creatures which began to appear right above his head. The fact that black appeared scorpion this first tomb monster. And at this moment Scorpio swung his huge paw. And hit straight to the guys which were in the same pile and after a huge blow they started scatter in different directions. On drum's wave was so huge what some started right away lose consciousness. But Teresa suddenly began to look around and realized what she see and find it anywhere Alice. Stalker began to tell her that first of all she must think about your security. And at that moment it began to activate Alias' choice for battle. But then the old man began to shout towards our hero that he was completely went crazy underscore. And does he really want their everyone here finish off? But Jean Hai started to answer what he does end here what this poor old man to him speaks, because he just started. And jumping from place to place our hero began to move, then just the old man away. Which chased him and screamed for him to stand still. And how only huge scorpion the old man swung quickly jumped away from his big one's tentacles. And continued jump and catch up our hero. And at the same moment the old man saw what Jean Hyuk is doing something and he started screaming at him what would that stopped. 
But our hero continued blow into the artifact and call second cataclysm. Well then only the old man did more some jumping. He started to notice what about diagonals something appears underscore. And that one appeared mud predator this was second to spare tombs. And its huge tentacles started fly towards the old man who was in the air. But the old man managed get at yours weapon and began to cut there. But his players were less fortunate after all they got caught and the huge monster began to tighten them in their huge pack but those guys shouted to leader them helped. But didn't have time this guy and finished screaming how huge the monster's patch swallowed him along with the old man's other subordinates. Liao Wei which was on the ground hard moved and tried high to huge the tentacles didn't catch him. And suddenly he began to hear the voice of his mentor, the old man. So that he can provide to him support after all they must pick up the forge from Jean Hayak. But he didn't understand what the old man wanted from him but the old man continued shout to him that he is a fool. After all this row and causes all this chaos that is only on them what collapsed. And how only the old man threw he opened his sword what this thing too good for him but he has to her take. And how the sword just arrived straight to the feet of Liao Wei old man said at last so that he must brought the forge to to him it wasn't worth it. And Ray's ball which threw his mentor told him what obeys and with joy will follow his instructions. The dungeon spirits had begun going to together. And run to first cataclysm Scorpio to make it faster finish off. In the air the old man fought against Jin Hyuk but couldn't get him. And after all how many no matter how he swung, our hero simply dodged all of him like that. But the old man understood what he should be more patient. After all this guy continue blow the horn once he has already started to do. And they say what about the fourth time per person? Awaits incredible luck and the old man understood which is obviously Jean Hyuk trying that's why he's in such a hurry to get it. But what to and need to make sure that luck becomes his. So he should underscore thinks what underscore this artifact. Even though they say what does he bring great luck but that's all depends on the person. And that there really is one will find luck and the other despair. And at that moment our hero jumped to the very top and started again blow into the artifact and after this one started to arrive third cataclysm. Huge a portal shaped crack began to appear in the dungeon. And all the players which looked at her started withdraw mind sight after all she was very bright. And from it a huge body thoughts this was third to spare this tombs. And it started slow cross your hands. And after this Naya rang out huge energy which began to recline everyone closest to different sides. But to those to whom she touched simply began to split into atoms and dissolve in the air. Well, our hero began to prepare for what was coming at him flew huge wave. And how only she hit him on the bill, he began to fly to the side. But he understood that if he is now accidentally will drop this artifact. Then it will all just end. And after huge explosion, the artifact began to fly off to the side. And final in the end arrived straight into the hands of Liao Ferry. Which stood still and could not understand the accident this was or that guy on purpose threw the artifact straight into his hands. Old man who noticed it started screaming for him to give the artifact to him. But he didn't listen to him historian continued shouting what is he doing because he should hurry up and give it away to him horn. Because he didn't understand why they want everything take advantage this a terrible thing. And what they're all trying to get incredible luck. Liao Wei started out somehow strange smile and say that he is everything this time is so hard have worked. And that everyone should let him stay a little greedy. Jean Hyuk noticed this and started screaming so that he wouldn't dare use this horn. But Liao Wei didn't he listen to anyone and picked it up and started blowing into it with all strength. And at that moment he saw what about him luck arrives and, spreading his arms, he already wanted to get it. But the notification system started showing what's in the tomb again peace reigned. And at this moment in the guild China girl through the window saw a bright light which came from the tower tests. And after bright flashes which was noticed by all the people who were nearby her. Saw that three despairs appeared which got out straight from towers to the human world. Into this time in another dimension Teresa wandered through the blood. But Stalker started telling her to she protected her strength. After all does she needs to get out either turn it off or wait underscore until it expires time hole for hours 5 minutes. 
But three times I didn't he understand how can he relax in such situations, after all after all doesn't he really care about Jin Hyuk? Well then only he finished singing potions to restore their strength asked what underscore she said about worrying about it fool. And suddenly he started loud laugh, but you couldn't he understand what was wrong with him found. But he started saying that past how many time, but she still doesn't understand what big part situations located under his control. And what he caught was that others don't pay attention neither drops attention and he thinks what what's happening now same is his plan. And what there's no point now interfere that's why she must sit down and relax. Because he is sure what will be given to them soon noble battle. And after four hours Alia battle time was deactivated and three times together with stalker got out outward. Well, looking around they couldn't figure out where they had gone to spare. But here they are heard how Liao Wei shouted as if going crazy. An expression our hero who looked at the huge screen. And how only they themselves raised mind glance and looked at the huge screen they saw. That the notification system showed them what they will become witnesses punishment for what disturbed King's tomb. And what's on the huge screen showed monsters breaking into their world. And what Master Tombs gives give them a chance to redeem themselves sins and a portal was created to the place where there are three cataclysms. But the old man with all Liao held the strength way after all he wanted to go there go because his homeland is now on fire. And what the old man said to him what if he goes he will be useless that's why he said to him hand over that artifact. And at that moment the old man began to use the scroll of the early spring and began to occur in space change. And how as soon as the portal opened, the old man began to shout to the others till they obeyed his orders and grabbed the wounded and returned back. And finally he decided to take a look at the Jin Haik which stood how buried and looked at the huge monitor. At that moment magical the animals started to ask is our hero okay? Is he? But without any words he began to go straight into the portal. And even though Teresa called him, he didn't he pay her any attention attention. And just silently went into the portal where on the other side chaos and destruction reigned. Or those huge ones monsters destroyed everything is on its own ways. And the girl which was in the guild China was seriously wounded. But what it was all already that s what a terrible monster swung at her to finish off. But she didn't he want to just die right here and began to activate mind self defense law skill. Well when the monster struck her burst out huge explosion because of what she started to fly away. And landed near other people who tried clean up from here how hurry up. But still she underscore was still alive and started little by little stand up and tell those guys why they are watching. After all them need to run away how hurry up by that monster didn't get to them. And how only she stood up and began to understand what need to hold out for now Mr. Gunshun will not return. And she must win though a little time. Or even underscore it's a few seconds will better than just die on the spot. And how he just swung young woman understood what does she need now will come end. But suddenly she saw two guys which pounced on him and started with a few blows you can simply destroy it. And at that moment our hero began to tell Stalker. Will be able can he delay Scorpio for 10 minutes? But Stalker began to smile for the first time I heard a request for help from Jean Hyuk. And raising his blade he said what in 10 minutes? He'll just finish it off this guy and immediately began to activate mind skill choosing a battlefield. And they together with Scorpio started move to other measurement. Young woman standing on the same place I started asking our hero really is he Jean Hyuk and why is he here? And passing by he suddenly has stopped. And turning around said what the silly question because he came here to dial glasses experience. And into this time in another place another monster was destroying ordinary civilian rubbing them to atoms. And how only its huge tentacles were flying straight to the guy who ran away from them. A second one appeared which began to activate their skills absolutely gain. And protect people she understood what many haven't had time yet evacuate. To this monster in front of which she costs very strong and dangerous. But what is she into she would end must detain him and save him as can more people. But the monster is long wait did in t force himself and began to attack immediately Teresa. And how only its huge tentacles flew to her. Then she started quickly get your shield with the help with this shield she could block the attacks of this monster. But the rest of the people were unlucky. After all, 
They didn't have such accounts and they simply died before they had time to run for cover. But suddenly something went wrong at underscore times I started to convert please note that the notification system showed what there the mind began to become infected. And those are ordinary citizens which only what is if died started mutate into monsters. And all of them started heading towards Teresa though she didn't understand what they such. And what about her monsters also began to appear on their backs, jumped on her with everyone parties. But Teresa continued to stand in shock at the fact that she will come out on eyes though she defended herself from them. But still now underscore they weren't ordinary people after all, they were not present neither drops fear. What about was worse total this is what Teresa saw when raised her head up. Then something huge monster that stood above her began to look straight into her eyes and creepy smile. Stalker continued fight against Scorpio in another dimension. And how he just jumped up the air began to activate mind skill selection of the battlefield and all its stats were increased by 10%. And descending to the ground he struck several times because of what stats Scorpio started decrease by 10%. But Stalker began to think that he had never seen Jean Hyuk like this. And that's all it was right because this idiot isn't perfect either. And activating mind skill song he began to chop off blades his scorpion is huge paws and tail. And after the Scorpio started loud make sounds from what experienced huge pain. And Stalker was I'm very glad that he finally started to destroy strong opponents. In the center of China another a huge monster who there began to spread tentacles everything in a few kilometers. And our hero who stood on the nearest building began to look at his hidden quest because he must destroy three despairs and reward will depend on the result. And then he thought what contractor may be to him help after all she quite capable deal with them yourself but still here more was a lot of extra eye. And the fact that he was originally planned to launch them in Murim. And take advantage of the chaos to steal pill rollback and texts combat I didn't even think about art what greed Liao blowing all will spoil. But still everything underscore didn't go according to plan the way he wanted initially and now very regrets it underscore. And that's his very infuriates and irritates. And taking out their artifacts and which one of them was a bow, he began to pull bowstring. And release it at once as many as three arrows towards the monster. And also started to activate three star angular barrier which appeared straight around the monster. And how only the monster noticed he began to discover our hero mine huge mouth. And how as soon as he reached the target he began to use another one of yours mandala skill. And how only rang out huge explosion. Our hero began to understand so what? Moment to and need to be be careful in your calculations. Teresa is into a time I try heal people who turned into monsters. And with the help his skill sacred healing all monsters which her attack started heal. Teresa understood what they should end touch her otherwise will wounded her sacred by force. And more need to certainly get rid of the body thoughts which continues creepy smile. And crouching down, Teresa began to activate sacred a fall. Because of what around a huge monster began to appear bright flame. And with the help his sacred strength she started very fast accelerate and with speed Sveta fly to the monster. And activated mind skill sacred gain she prepared for the attack. And with the help her blade pierced the body of the monster who began to experience pain and screaming about everything. But this was not enough and how only monster swung his huge claw from a blow with a huge speed to the side. Well then only she I regrouped and was able to get to your feet and land normally. The monster began to look at his paws and understand that he little by little loses strength and itself splits into atoms. Teresa noticing this is what her sacred power is at work understood, what does she need get to the cataclysm avoiding people he controls underscore. And suddenly it started happening something strange underscore because the monster began to radiate more more mana. And straightened their tentacles she started releasing them towards people who turned into monsters. Grabbing them she started to pull bring them to you back. And lifting them in front of you she started sucking from them life force and drawing her into yourself. Teresa who I watched it and couldn't believe it his eyes. But suddenly she remembered how underscore her parents told her to she listened attentively after all they obliged protect people in danger underscore. And even if have to to risk own life this cargo family Laurentia. And she must always remember this and never forget underscore underscore. But now she saw sheer horror which trusted her underscore eyes. 
and how only the monster screamed his cry as possible was heard for many kilometers from the center of events. And after the scream he began to destroy all the people who captured everything underscore this Teresa observed. Who bowed down and knelt and what she saw someone's shoes. Started talking to myself knows what better she will die. And that monster who killed everyone these people should finish off her. And how she just shed a tear she started to turn black. And the notification system started showing what about the saint signs of infection appear. But how only the monster wanted to finish off her. He began to turn in the other direction and saw what's on him flies another more more terrible monster. And how only monsters collided rang out huge explosion and complete destruction. That's all due to the fact that it was our hero who threw that monster at another. But how only he saw Teresa could in t understand why she studies there. Even though he understands what body thoughts very annoying underscore. But what she now dying underscore this is already too much. And accumulating huge our energy, our hero speaks that he could not let her die like this. And at that moment a huge gap in space. And started to leave her terrifying monster which called Jean Hyuk. And at that moment, the form of the ancient dragon Kagama appeared. But the notification system started showing what valid limitation no more testing and expense mana our hero increased by 50%. But to him was all equal to your mana only with this it worked. But in addition to this, the monster began to activate overwhelming superiority because of which they from places couldn't move. And whose dragon called our hero began to call huge flame. But Jin Hei fast ran up to Taraza and began to activate three-star protective barrier. Leaning closer he heard as Teresa E told him for him to kill him. And after explosive Sveta which came from the dragon. He started to activate unique skill blade of punishment that simply burned monsters to the ground. And how only stopped act effect skills from a huge explosion suffered some neighboring high-rise buildings. But still this underscore it worked because the notification system started showing what body thoughts was destroyed. But Teresa was lying on the ground. Never came to my senses and what was more the terrible thing is that she very hard was breathing. Jean Hyuk began to activate mind skill, greedy sight. And looking at the window notifications he understood that Teresa was showing signs of infection. And bowing her for support Alice started asking Jean Hyuk what she thinks is he what. The saint fell but he began to answer what not yet. But told him that he knows very well consequences infection saint. But not for long thinking she is fat and replied which of course he knows. And what's in the future every must be careful around her. But at this moment the field selection was deactivated and started to fall out defeated scorpion. And instantly the level stalker was increased several times dozens of times even though he was hard injured. But more slowly Jean Hyuk began to approach him. And standing opposite him he said what he managed it anyway. But became reply for him to watch from top to bottom how much to him will fit because he knows what does he have ahead more long way. But raising his head he said what now he understands what will be able to reach him get there. And not for long thinking our hero drawled the sword told him what he should throw away broken things. And how only stalker looked closer he saw what this is a heavenly source. Our hero turned around and began to leave, said what did he do good work and at that moment a window appeared notification which started asking they want whether they return to the ballroom. And accepting invitation and all of them started moved to the ballroom where them they began to say that it had become known at the top what having avoided supervision observers interfered with the test by force of the sea. And how manager higher floors towers he brings their apologies. But words alone won't fix it total this is why I raise my hand. The manager began to use magical power and creating a small the magic circle he began to slowly increase it. And at this moment everyone gathered in the hall window notifications showed that punishment hasting of a senior manager floors was sent. And he continued to say that Nurum did something that was not permissible crime and he see a end close on this eyes. And is fine they all coins will be confiscated which owns Nurum and those who chooses a side must accept this is taken into account. But one of present which in particular had deal with Niram, leaving began to think about what he couldn't he'd do contact neither with Cameron neither with Monsu and what he did not imagine what can Niram get angry and what where where's this Leovea. But passing by the stalker he noticed something strange which immediately surprised him. Well, taking a closer look, 
he looked stupid expression, the faces began to say that this their heavily sourced sword. And taking the clothes he started blaming the stalker for stealing this sword and the fact that he wears it so brazenly in public. But how only stalker turned around, then immediately began to get angry and asked again what he had just what said that he stole underscore the sword. But that guy immediately changed underscore yours opinion saw. And pulling your stalker sword hit that guy. Which is why he crashed into the wall and lost consciousness and turning around in stalker and leaving said that henceforth he advises to him watch your underscore tongue. But looking at yours he understood the new world that he's not bad. And at that moment the window the notification started showing what my hero what he accomplished conditions for cupping what he must underscore win Yoshio using someone else and what he copied unique skill drawing swords his strength and attack speed are increased by 25% when drawn ball and commit first attack. And later some time he met with the warden who began to say that everyone was so excited due to sudden questa. And initially he should was choose the same side as them. And he's sorry that happened breakthrough and once again brings to him apologies for not preventing underscore intervention of tower forces. But Jean Hyuk answered what they were able to do after all all sorts of things it happens. But the manager started smiling and said what you're right, but still the fact that he was able to survive more precisely more correct he managed to say overcome there. And I ask our hero that he will do now it is whether anything he can do underscore to him help. But Gene Heck answered what there are two whole points which he would like to ask. And how only door opened the manager began to say that he had there is small announcement. And thanking everyone participants for their attention. He started saying that player Gene Hyuk said that will not join the existing one's factions, but players from below they couldn't understand what this is for a small one news and why they they are simply distracted. But the manager continued to say that instead of this is why he will create his own. And the players couldn't believe it what this at all maybe after all this definitely wasn't the case before. The manager started showing what quantity points typed by Gene Hyuk today equals 1.5 million and he completed hidden conditions by typing more million points which gave him the right to create own factions. Well, it is true they one team know where he became aware of this hidden class. But at this moment from portal started to go out representative empire and shout that he is protesting. And when our hero saw him, he thought what this Pinheimer here forgot. The manager began to say that one of the party's towers refused to accept formation of a new resident and according to the rules of the tower this refusal valid for underscore of the year. Pinheimer on what asked good hero what this it means he promised to go over to their side, but he answered what said what will consider collaborating with them. Pinheimer understood that he didn't even think agree and they spent so much resources for implementation conditions which they gave him. But having raised his hand he said again to he didn't force them to be repeated twice and he must contain promise. And at this moment representatives everyone factions started watch our hero and he began to understand what if he loses it's his idea grounds factions will turn to dust. And now he has the most excellent opportunity to use trump card. And Jean Hyuk began to address Alice but she began to answer why did he tell her not to do anything. Here she lies resting. But Jean Hyuk began to tell her that he would take a little her strength. And how only activated skill divisions everyone happened exchange with skill Alice bloody trail and now he can control blood everyone alive creatures in a certain range. Pinheimer immediately began to feel huge pressure on your body because he saw how our hero began to use mind skill bloody trail. And everyone else those gathered in the hall could not believe it his to my eyes what comes from that guy like this immense power. Pinheimer I raised my hand and saw what blood in his body such feeling what she boils. And how only he raised their eyes and looked at Jean Hyuk. He understood what this the one he can never convince them to join their faction. Seriously angry, our hero asked Pinheimer once is he still still veto would underscore. What is he covering for yours face from huge pressure began to say that he was taking take back his words and asks him to stop. How as soon as Jean Hyuk heard his words. He began little by little stop actions his people. Manager which stood near our hero started looking strange at him look. And remember the words of your friend when he spoke what to him better would keep an eye on it guy. Because he is sure that he will surpass them all expectations. Smiling manager understood that he wasn't joking about this guy then. And told Jean Hyuk that since he took your words back to him need to choose name for your factions. 
Lost in thought, he began to reason how can he call your faction but at this moment the window notifications showed that name your character was registered and name faction's company veterans. Pinheimer began to open a portal to other measurement and finally tell Jean Hyuk what he hopes they see you soon. And then they again let's talk about them relationships and after this Pinheimer led myself more reservedly. Recovery Beijing after breakthrough was going on at a fast pace even without a single attempt to get to the truth. In memory of the dead was built big memorial. When young woman was near memorial she started to lay down dead flowers but reporters started ask her underscore where now Lord Nam gone and what are plans guilds China. But how only she stood up and started to turn around the camera's shine began to sparkle right on top of her. Guild what counts most big in the country, according to Xiao Ting, fell apart due to the disappearance of everyone managers and heads. And she continued to say that this breakthrough it wasn't their strength that saved them guilds and not even the government. And the first who arrived straight away after the incident began there was Jean Heck and Sun Dream. If if it weren't for them it would be a monument standing here was would be many times greater more. But at that moment Jean Hayek began to approach the monument. And he turned attention to the woman with his daughter which cried near monument. He already understood what now to him very badly because he sees and starts to activate cold heart skill. How only skill activated the system began to show to our hero that he saves self-control even in stressful time situations. And putting it in a flower near everyone the rest he turned around and left. The next day Alice collapsed on the bed and began to say that she thought she would soon die of boredom. And started talking to Jean Hyuk that she didn't think he would create new faction. He pressed the button to use 1,500,000 coins to increase maximum quantity participants up to 23. And thought about what after exit interview Xiao Ting income from views of his channel sharp increased and he will spend them wisely. And how only to him confirmed what quantity participants factions increased to 23 people he started sending out an invitation list. And how only invitation were sent. Immediately he saw what about the faction joined new participant and this was very fast. Stalker accepted underscore invitation the most first. Milena was next Yuri and others. Though some looked at the invitation and didn't t understand why they again get tied up in it. But still it went time and all of them responded to the invitation. Teresa wrote a message to our hero what asks forgiveness after all she is already part of his faction therefore will not be able to join. And he looked that Teresa was the only one who declined his invitation and apparently she how Paladin joined the empire. But he still expected a similar outcome and sent invitation one more person. On site construction young woman saw what came to her invitation and she started to open it. And after reading who this is from invitation she I finally rejoiced and the window notifications showed that boss fifth floors joined the faction and what genius fifth floors becomes participant company's veterans. And now Jean Hyuk has almost an endless supply of resources from below floors but this it's not over yet. Because he can use free copying and took advantage of the same reward received for destruction body thoughts. And what the notification system showed him what can he do copy enemy skill not performing conditions copying and how only he copied skill Osiris from the sanctuary of the sun the description says that he can reproduce the power of the sun. And as he decided to put the icing on the cake that it's time to improve their stats but notice was so a lot of that he didn't understand when it will already end. And having considered yours he suddenly understood the final statistics what now he has become more and more perfect how earlier. Alice who was lying on the bed those who watched him could not understand why he was so happy. And she more never met underscore a person with such spiteful smile and to this all more difficult get used to. But suddenly she jumped out of bed and began to understand. That he was first who borrowed her bloody trail and also around him too much a lot of weirdness. And there is things that underscore can only know living towers and she decided what you need to ask him. Well then only she wanted move to another part towers something went wrong underscore. And this our hero noticed that I was looking at my statistics. And he decided to ask what was wrong with her. Alice started to answer what she I thought I wanted to ask him about his future plans. But I heard answer that he's going to the 8th floor. But of course at first must deal with a couple things to do before that. And getting to the 2nd floor he met manager which opened my door. Jean Hyuk said as he held out the letter that I could end would he give it to Yan Homan from Murima this is his second request. 
But the manager who took the envelope said what this it doesn't t sound that complicated, but I thought I'd ask what s in it letter. But he answered what this proposal for a deal. And a little later our hero arrived on the fifth floor tower tests in stalactite cave. And after standing for a while time how only he felt what about him someone is approaching he began to open their eyes. And saw many people who stood on the slopes caves. Our hero began to say that finally he came leader society black winds belonging more in factions. And taking out the book he began to say that then they will begin and began to activate their skills greedy sight. Neuram is one of founders of the Middle Forces Floors Towers Tests world where live superlugs mastered combat art. And the strongest of them are called Heavenly Horse and those who bow down to him name is yourself the cult of the demonic horse. And among this groups, because of their Yang Ho's skills men considered one of worst. And now after Morim lost all his coins, his desire for success reached its peak. And he began to ask our hero what he wants, but in front of our hero opened immediately underscore window notifications, what conditions copying that's young woman desperately wishes reach success, and if it gives to him although would ray of light hope will be able copy one of his skills. And how he just read it conditions cupping immediately started getting weird smile. And threw the book straight into his hands. But that man didn't understand why did he give him the subject first and that this at all it means, but our hero answered what can he do take her after all, he already got what he wanted. But the man could in t understand what he got and what was on his mind, but that as all anyway he brought elite members society black wind. And if this is true the secret book of the sword master it for sure will help to him succeed. And now he has there is hope and at this moment conditions copying our hero were completed. But how only that man opened the book he saw some stupid drawings underscore. And looking closely he could not understand what kind of nonsense the idea was drawn there at all holy text. And I start ask our hero what underscore this what's that for? That answered what this diary which led master of the sword in childhood and getting it was damn hard. But after throwing the diary on the ground, that man began to shout that if only he would stop mock him. Because he spent whole state to get there here and did he really call him for this? But raising his hand our hero said what they guys all time were messing around and so he decided them something show. As a disciple of the dark dragon emperor who rules heaven and earth. Dragon ruling over heaven and earth dark emperor. And he is the important right hand of the heavenly steed figure having the same roots as well as their society black wind. And how only minions of black the winds moved, he began to say that he didn't teen know like Jean Hyuk about him found out. But how does he even dared to desecrate the name of the one he serves because he will shut his dirty mouth with his own hands. And how as soon as he moved and began to fly towards our hero stood still and smiled underscore. But the man at the same moment appeared behind him and began to inflict his blows. And activated mind skill the man opened the black sky to he died. And after a huge explosion where his stones scattered all over cave. The man began to notice something strange underscore. That his skill didn't work and that was more more marvelous this is the fact that Jean Hyuk blocked his blow and the fact that Black Sky stopped him so easily. And after he threw it aside and his subordinate's leader started in confusion run around him. But Jean Hyuk started using merger skills cemetery of swords and Black Sky. And now he can copy and merge received abilities and combine skills always. And how only merger was completed by applying he understood his blow what is improved version original. But his opponents are horrified by this observed after all they understood what this technique emperors. Dark fist destroying humanity. And after huge explosion the cave began to gradually collapse. And what the man saw behind him underscore underscore what Jean Hyuk did with one blow huge hole in the cave. And standing over him, he began to ask believes is he. What underscore now he is a disciple of the Dark One Emperor. But that man won't last long thinking understood, what quicker total it's true. Because he heard what Emperor went out from towers to dial skillful guys and he's already done mine first step. And suddenly the man began to bow his head and greet the Dark Disciple Emperor. And immediately after underscore everyone else underscore also started by your head and greet the dark disciple emperor which was our hero. Looking down the man began to sob after all, he has now there is a chance to change life for the better. But our hero understood what these guys near him is so easy to convince what just saying the name master and now he can leave all the work on the 8th floor. 
A little later where was straight line distance 10,000 kilometers labyrinth, incredible size. Almost equals diameters land and so huge what even has its own ecosystem. And this one floor dangerous only the size of this stripping method is quite simple. Need to find the crystal strength somewhere inside underscore labyrinth. Later Milena Association trump card there were demonic people sent for reconnaissance. Hundreds gate leading to the labyrinth crowded trading stalls on items from labyrinth can earn money whole state. And turning attention to decorations Melina, I remembered what she's working so hard worked for Jean Hyuk, that's why finally can underscore relax and a little look around. And how only she I decided to ask the seller how many this stands behind her underscore underscore Jean Hyuk appeared. And she noticed it and started putting it on glasses back to face. And quickly turning in a different direction she started to leave. But Jean Hyuk again appeared behind her back and started asking where this she soaked up. And a little later he started asking what she so I came on the 8th floor to look at double impact. And what she started to explain what Lance Breeder said what 8th floor becomes all cleaner. And what double impact is a large-scale phenomenon movement several floors. And while our hero was thinking about these words Milena applied ice suits you after all it was just burning. But suddenly she noticed something strange underscore. And reacted and began to get your blade and throw it towards our hero. But the blade immediately flew off from some silhouette standing behind Jean Hyuk. Well, our hero started talking to she stopped attack after all these serious people. And getting up he decided to ask what isn't it can throw dagger in the first oncoming, but she started to answer what for what that counter hiding in the shadows. But Jean Hyuk decided to present this girl. And said what this is Wool Yun from Society Black Wind. And then our hero saw what conditions copying now will young the serves to him only by order of homan and he can copy one of skills if deserves it her trust but thinking about it he didn't he understand what should he do do. But Silena started with her ask why she's dressed like that after all historical the game is one man play. But at that moment there were many blades near her neck. And how only she turned around saw what wards this girls appeared on the wall in all parts the streets. Jean Hyuk started talking to she reduced her fervor except her in the shadows hiding 30 more people. But she started loud laugh and say what this is great, after all there should be enough to clear the 8th floor. And how only she understood everything started to turn around and leave with the words that I was glad to see you and wished good luck on the next one meeting. But she could nt go far because the jury activated skill, the stigma of grief and its face the seal started to burn again. And after this she came back and started saying that she is glad to meet him and will continue to clean up with him 8th floor. A little later, 20 kilometers from the entrance to the 8th floor. Players started see what's on the counter time left 0 minutes 0 seconds. And guys started turn to your commander. And they the commander started talking to Jake what reconnaissance the squad never returned. He lowered his head and thought what is happening something strange underscore after all on this the floor should not be no threats. But looking at the forest and what from him comes out. He couldn't understand what it was all about is happening. But he saw a huge leg monster that started to come out from forests. And the commander understood what they are doing very well bad after all now them to come battle with a terrifying monster. And at that moment he began to activate mind skill gain bodies and get them your blade. From the other end forests began to fly towards him huge quantity arrows and spears. But with the help he reflected his strengths and skills they're everyone. But still he could not understand what this is the strength because his body began to become cowardly and what there is no island here possessing such power. Other players noticed something was wrong and that underscore they were surrounded and they all started get yours weapon. But how only they saw that someone is approaching them they started be revised. And saw what this ordinary goblins. One of players for some reason I believed in my strength and began to tell the commander that she will deal with them herself. And activated mind skill fireball she threw it straight. And how he just arrived at the place where she aims sounded immediately underscore huge explosion. On girl understood what here something s wrong because she hit the target. But why didn't work then her attack and why goblin still alive underscore which got out from smoke and started run straight at them. At speed goblins was amazing because one of them jumped flew by some dozens meters and was able to injure a girl with his blade on her cheek. But this all total only was little girl fought early. 
But still this underscore was I which began to spread throughout her body and she began to choke and take with your own hands for your own neck. And guys notice this is the beginning of Catherine's scream what these goblins enjoy poison so underscore need to be everyone be careful. But still the guys did nt understand what do they need do and started ask your commander what to do underscore underscore. And what this unusual goblin and them very strong. And what they quite they can simply kill the whole group. But suddenly the commander saw some kind of strange girl which came out from forests and headed towards them. And even though he didn't understand who this she raised her hand to her mouth and told him to keep his mouth shut. And putting your hand forward she gave orders to her warriors to they destroyed these goblins. And literally at one moment all the goblins were cut into several small pieces. Well, the commander was watching everything this destruction goblins couldn't believe his eyes. That those guys literally in an instant destroyed a whole horde of brutalized and brutal goblins. And at that moment the mysterious guy's foot stepped in. And seeing this is the commander more horrified than from those goblins. After all, he saw in front of him that very unknown person about whom there is so much they say. But Jean Hyuk began to take a closer look at those goblins. And notice something unusual underscore after all, he has already saw this symbol which was on their head. But suddenly raising his head he saw what a bunch of spears began to fly straight at him. But this were little things because he activated mind skill moon hiding claws were able to stop all copies which flew at him. And throw it away spears to the side, our hero began to look deeper forests. And saw how from there come out a bunch of huge trolls and he understood what this their copy which flew into it. And activated one more skill steps of the demon king and our hero began to run straight at them. Though they don't stop started continue throw their copies using underscore skill a spear mana. But all of them, the copy simply flew past our hero who was all over speed moved zigzag. And running up straight to their feet and insert it in the center. Jean Hyuk began to activate another nation imperial art black sky with which he began to accumulate Manu inside your fist. And with all force he began to beat everyone troll which stood near him because of what they started fly up a few meters into the air. And having experienced such the strongest blows they simply died on the spot. The commander who oversaw this during the battle I could nt notice the movement our hero. And at that moment the notification system began to show Jean Hyuk what respect Will Young hanged herself on five of. And then he realized what her location you can deserve it anyway. But Milena I looked at this monster and couldn't he understand what it this and the fact that there were never such people on the 8th floor. Our hero noticed that underscore this pattern gives boss 9th floors and ogres here be should not underscore. And then it became clear to him what here consequences double influence but Milena couldn't he understand what he meant. But raised their heads they started look up. But on the other hand sides looked at our hero through the magic ball. And he realized that means what 8th and 9th floor united. And two huge boss gathered together saw what bothersome intruder still arrived underscore. And what they united everything for him. A little time later we see how toy card floating in the bathtub room. Manager which enjoys his comfort in the bathroom more I've never been so relaxed in my life how now. But suddenly he got scared due to the fact that began connection to urgent I'll call. And looking at the virtual monitor he saw Kong Jin Hyuk who greeted him and offered him to sign a contract. But the manager could nt understand why he was calling right now and started asking maybe next time he'll do it in advance time meetings. At the same time subordinates our hero started build something strange underscore from wood. And prepared they her very quickly and skillfully with your blades. But harmful goblins continued step on them with everyone parties. And destroying their countless wool young quantity a little tired. But still she managed to grab one of them and she I was finally able to breathe properly and relax. But Jean Hyuk started stirring side liquid in a jar. And opening he understood her what she's finally ready but Milina standing next to me started asking what this such. And he answered what nothing like that, just medicine current only on monsters with red cells and how only he let him breathe goblin. That immediately turned into a very obedient little goblin. But Milena thought that such people are usually called slaves, but they look this is cool. And suddenly guys drove the car that only what built and told our hero that finally not finished. And he immediately began to order everyone sit down inside. 
After all, the carriage is from the goblins are ready and they can set out. And how only they fell from their place goblins with might and main started run pull a carriage behind you as if chain dogs. Milena started asking Jinhak underscore that's why he got them caught to use like transport. But he started to answer what eighth floor huge and they must keep their strength but true meaning lies in something else. To show it to the new owner this places. What similar tricks won't work because of what the boss of the eighth floor started to get angry when looked at Maya magic ball on which our hero showed up. But suddenly Wool Young tapped Milena on the shoulder. And started asking because she close to the leader she he always wants to ask was so cruel. For what Milena answered what she it really means new girl and what this idiot won't stop before anything underscore not sure yet what all goes to yours. And she now must look more carefully among everyone she underscore he knows the one who more total looks like a demon king. But Wool Young is not completely understood about which one's demon she speaks. In another place the commander introduced his comrade which was heavily poisoned even though he told her to she although it lasted a bit. After all they've almost reached the exit. But how only they raised their head sound which came from from exit said them to they stopped. But guys started right away take for your own weapons and ask who was he and should he to uncover myself or they will all attack. But the guy who went out but now point at yourself and ask again this they are about him now they say and rising into the air and releasing a huge aura, he began to say that he was just a faithful servant. At the other end labyrinth cart which transported our hero and the rest all of a sudden stopped. And raised their heads to health saw what underscore they still haven't taken the bait yet. But using acquired a cheap pickaxe and activating three-star barrier gain. Jean Hugh started saying that he will watch will be able whether they ignore this because he is with the help element fire. Started producing ground strengthening a cheap pickaxe item. Milena whoever watched it couldn't believe it what this seriously it worked. Because of course in the end he was able to create temporary diamond pickaxe underscore special pickaxe created by force elements and radius production will increase by 200% and time remaining 23 hours 59 minutes. And giving away these goblin pickaxes he began to order them till they ran to the wall and started extract resources and split all what only sees. But looking at this madness Milena understood that Jean Hyuk is a genius. After all if it goes like this, it won't take even a week to clean it up. And what why is methods always so absurd and thinking about what maybe still, she should come to his side. But at that moment there appeared small harm who began to speak to our heroes what enough and that one is on the 8th floor there will be nothing left. And what he understands perfectly what they want say. Well then only guys started get yours weapon that waved with his finger and said to they were in no hurry. And he has there are hostages who we he will take advantage if they will attack him. And these are the other people from whom he saved and now they relax in beautiful place. If they are without extra words will follow him, he will let him go there. But before he had time to finish, our hero activated the giant S hand and grabbed the small asshole which looked at our hero and could in teed believe that he didn't have time react. And he swinging his started asking with his hand does he really think what to him eat it's about the hostages, but he was still mistaken after all if counted what will be able to do this take. And sent to him the one who can open portals was the dumbest act. But suddenly that little imp began to create a bunch of roots trees. And activated his sphere of black tentacles. Being inside spheres he understood which I greatly underestimated this guy and him need to retreat. But there was already a retreat late after all, our hero activated skill imperial art black sky and all strength hit right across his sphere because of what he began to fly off it and fly into the sky. And how he just arrived back our hero caught him and began to ask where he was the one who got ready. Because he's still honored no lily grabbed it. And later instant Milena on the other girl saw how they started fly in that guy's teeth. Into this time boss of the 8th dungeon continued to be in his cave. And empower huge org by force. But I felt something s wrong she started to turn around. And from portal appeared that little guy who's beat up very badly. And coming in inside our hero began to say what he sees they're getting ready in full here. And what he was I have to come a little earlier and hope what they they were not disturbed. Milena lowered her head and began to say that of course she's everything understands. But is it really at s not overkill underscore they three of us let's go to such a horde of monsters and even the boss of the 8th floor. 
And the other girl also started screaming that now very a lot of enemies and they they'll try clear the path to admission. But Jean Hyuk started talking to Wool Young. What really she forgot who is he and why they at all here came. But she started answering that he is a disciple of the Dark One the Dragon Emperor ruling over heaven and earth and our hero answered what all right. And started talking to she watched what such opponents will not be able to touch him with a finger. And whatever happens underscore she just has to trust to him because he will never allow kill his friends. Wool Young how only heard I couldn't believe it his ears. And what when it all this was and when was the last time someone worried about her security. After all she always took a risk his life in order to please your to the owner. And what this it was so long ago that she had time forget. And her feelings at s as if we ve return to her now she may be calmly follow your own master and immediately the window the notification showed that respect increased by 20%. But boss this the floor started screaming wards to those someone got rid of these violators and those who will handle it she bestows territory of the 8th floor. And at that moment a huge foot stood in front of our hero. And that monster began to say that he was a conger from tribe black rocks and now he's trampling Jean Hyuk into the ground. And swinging his huge with an axe he began to attack the hero who stood in the same place. But how only his axe flew to the target appeared bright sparks which rang out all over building. But something went wrong after all huge monster in one fur fell and no one could notice what it was happened. And all the monsters around frozen in place after that underscore they saw how our hero dealt with the Karnig. And the fact that he simply killed Karni in one blow. Our hero looks around understood what's on the ninth three boss monsters on the floor. But he doesn't see remaining two he became interested what they were planning it there. But one of bosses couldn't believe that Jean Hyuk was here and what she needed win more a little time. And then she started screaming to no one stood still and attacked him all together and they should bring her heads these little people. Commander who I was gagged and wanted to watch the live broadcast but she was unavailable. And he started to get angry that to him need to somehow contact them underscore. And what is there anyway some way underscore only to him need about this thing carefully and look at your ring on your finger. He started to remember what once previously in American associations awakened the girl screamed at him what that mocks her. And what why did Jack disappear on the 8th floor. But the man began to answer her what players from India and Russia now they are very loose international situation and currently send the best American players cannot be paired national security. And what she did it herself understands what the team manager emergency help hedges. Said which is also the 8th floor is underscore giant labyrinth and he will get out from him alive if he just tries. But girl turning green answered what he understands underscore that Jack is his friend but he shouldn't dramatize too much. Waving with her fist she with all hit the wall with force. And got angry and started saying that what the hell national safety after all they even one of his own the player cannot be saved. And the fact that Jack is clearly in danger and she this feels. Well, looking at yours ring she started to notice something strange underscore. And how only her eyes lit up happened outgoing division request underscore as seen by Jack Friedman. And in the same room a bright light began to glow which started to show what is available to her. Vision. Her boyfriend Jack asks Ashley sees whether she that s what unknown right in front of him. And what he doesn't know how this happened but boss from the ninth floors here on the eighth and she leads a bunch of monsters. And what Ashley must warn everyone that the rules of the tower are no longer the same they knew before. But after hearing everything that he told her, she was not so happy about how I heard his voice and that he was alive. But a little later was started straight broadcast and viewers which watched this and couldn't he understand what kind of garbage it was after all they thought it was on the 8th floor can't stream. And what from on the 8th floor how many monsters to others comments announced what was written and what they are from the 9th we went down to the 8th floor and then what? They used by God and broadcast through division glance. And at that moment he waved with his fist our hero began to speak after ninth floors what really she doesn't want to fight herself or she decided give away all points for him experience for nothing. Angry boss ninth floors started calling names our hero is uncultured expressions. And waving their huge wings she started screaming at him to stop. These stupid games but also she decided activate mind skill discharge lightning. And at this moment in the room started take place bright explosions from sparks and lightning. Jean Hyuk's partners started shouting at him for him to be be more careful. 
But after these words sounded huge lightning explosion underscore which is literally sense did a huge crater in that place where Jean Hyuk stood. But boss ninth floors could not understand what happened there. And how only she saw that one of elements appeared and defended Jean Hyuk. And what only what was assembled special squad from five elementals which started protect his masters. But the boss of the ninth floor couldn't t believe it his eyes why there are 20 perfumes here fifth floors and even on the side person. And raised his hand Jean Hyuk said what now it's his turn attack. And right now it's activating five spirits which go into battle mode. And shouting to his partner Wu Yun. She also got ready and moved with their warriors. And jumping into the air, they are all over speed started attack monsters nearby underscore. And elementals which destroyed monsters indiscriminately underscore from incredible speed. Milena who stood near Jinhika started saying that she surprised such battle and it's great to have such spirits. But our hero did not understand why she stands behind him underscore underscore. And turning around he began to look at her closely glance, but she couldn't he understand why he was looking at her like that. But at that moment he began to activate again the stigma of sorrow. And how only she felt pain because of that skill she ran away screaming that underscore she the strength of a soldier from Vladivostok will show. Alice who was in the ring began to ask Jin Hyuk need whether to him help but he answered to she was resting. After all now all located under his control. More precisely say by what located under his control after all ahead to come the present battle. But this time in one Teresa came from the buildings inside greeted guys. And going in inside she was surprised that saw ask what really this her home but she answered what technically this house her grandfather's. Walking further across the room she saw Tamina E greeted him. But suddenly she I looked at the TV and noticed a familiar silhouette. But her friends they started saying that Jean Hyuk appeared on American broadcasts and they they're watching it now. But Teresa began to say that really them friend personality unknown after all she I kept thinking how pretend that he doesn't team know but guys started replied which of course they are familiar more with second class average school and looking at the traffic straight away was it's clear what it's him. Well then only they started look at the screen understood what 8th floor was just huge boring labyrinth but something happened and the boss from the 9th floor there now. But Nuna started saying that isn't it it's not too early yet comrade said that he thought the same thing. Teresa who looked at the huge screen started to notice the TV something strange underscore. After all she saw two girls I haven't seen earlier. And they now fought for life and death helping to our hero. I deal with incredible and huge monsters. And many ghosts which hiding in the shadows also applied destruction results underscore monsters. Weaving more so quiet and silent that they simply could sneak up on. Selena suddenly told her partners what she I am happy and they LL definitely win with this Makar. But suddenly they heard stomp huge paws that came from the other side's rooms. And turning around they horrified by what kind of monsters are on them now are coming. After all this ninth floor boss Lizard King and ninth floor boss Black Fong. And them comrade third ninth floor boss I was glad to see them see and started screaming what finally they underscore came. And our hero noticed that they they didn't eat come empty handed, but what one had of them was bone service ear forever destroys enemy guns. But the other one soaked pure blood that continues to cause damage even after what wounds incurable. Jean Hayek noticing this understood what they prepared unpleasant artifacts and here that's why they were in here in the first place. But one of the bosses started screaming at them why they take so long but you started reply to she didn't build from myself the main thing after all she can't even imagine how was difficult get at these artifacts. But she still continued underscore them order to they shut up and hurry up dealt with that person which came to them. And Black Fawn raising his huge paw began to say what there was such a noise because of some bug underscore. And the fact that he will destroy him in the blink of an eye. But Jean Hack seeing that he was running while Young began to speak directly to them to his partner to she started acting. And she began to order his guys to they moved out and started protect leader. And at the same moment they all attacked one of the monsters. But Black Fawn ran up to them and began to destroy them one after another. And how he just finished several soldiers said what he's already getting bored. And opened mine huge mouth he started screaming what eat everyone indiscriminately underscore. But at this moment Wu Young moved from place and all over speed began to rush towards Black Fong. 
and having struck him several times with his sword, he began to lose equilibrium. But she continued to apply her blows. And how only she waved some activated dozens of times with his sword. Shadow tip. And Dark Fong began to understand what does he have to lose very a lot of blood and turning his terrible face towards the girl. He told her that she petty henchman of Murima. Milena in this time continued fight goblins underscore which her sharpened. But Jean Hack shouted to her to she approached him but she said in response that underscore she now very busy. But Jean Hack showing with his finger he began to say that now is happening merger items if it sees this is this is brother and the countdown to her death and all that remains is only 5 minutes. If she wants get out alive then should protect this by time won't end. But Milena started creepy smile after all she I didn't want to die. And sweeping his whip she started saying that what won't you do for life? And from this a huge whip appeared the fire cobra that began to destroy everything is on its own ways. But Jen Hack ran away and started performing sonic mode. And magical the beast began to activate mind skill bounce wind. Window notification our hero showed that thanks to help he can wind move to large distances. And jumping with all strength he began to fly through everyone monsters which fought on the battlefield. Well Lizard the boss noticed him and started shouting that he was a fool and he would kill him like as soon as he lands on the ground. But then Kagama began to appear having straightened their wings. She flew up straight under Jean Hyuk's feet and turned on her flight mode. Lizard standing on the ground started screaming at our hero to quickly went down and fought him in a fair fight. But how he just landed straight on the ground broadcast was suspended. And spectators which watched this underscore incredible battle on the 8th floor were beyond delighted underscore. Because underscore all really ended underscore interesting place lottery started screaming at her to she didn't break it accidentally TV. Broadcast ended due to the fact that manager sitting in my office began to correct notes with the words that this guy is for him how many work added. And what I asked you to cut out moments shifts unknown on Kenji Haika and for him this straight unbearable condition cooperation. But remembering what he told him said what will give to him scales ancient after all except him no one can get at her. Managers thought about it what he definitely can team this this. Well, still, looking at the monitor, he could nt understand why and he needed barrier after all, he cant understand his plans and what higher creatures cannot underscore invade on the 8th floor. But after that's all the monitors started to turn red. Many appeared errors because of what the manager couldn't understand what is happening. And blown up from the spot the manager began to run through a portal into the unknown direction. And what he threw everything over underscore worked right at my desk. But in a different place the unknown man began to pull his hand with the words that this amazing and he had no idea that he is so all will think it over. And what higher creatures cannot underscore invade on the 8th floor. And it turned out to be big pity because he too prepared and was able to deactivate barrier our hero. But this time Jen Hack or Yuanyur's manual pets saw how about him rushing many flying creatures. And he began to order pets Kogum so that he can fly closer to their heads. And how only he turned out to be higher has begun with your swords. And destroy those flying creatures whom she sent to him boss ninth floors. And hid he began to look at his blades where is she hid. But still long underscore search she didn't have to after all she stood in the very center of the dungeon and, flying closer to her, he began to ask she lee transferred the monsters from the ninth floors after all hurt their hair a lot of. After total what was said began to activate daylight which illuminated all the caves. And got it mine our hero decided to use a magic bow thin out their ranks. And activating magical red shot who as a huge began to fly into the crowd at speed monsters. Ninth floor boss immediately started to lift their huge wings and activate armor lightning because of what her protection body covered herself lightning. And how only sounded huge explosion Jean Hayek began to understand. What finally at SM did but still there was something underscore not like that here. He began to look closely at that place which shot. And understood that he's a little got arrogant after all she I could still defend against his attack. And after ninth the floors are not long thinking started to activate mind skill all rank lightning and directing lightning straight into the air in which Jean Hyuk was there. But because underscore underscore she flew on as he is a master at pet dodged everyone underscore her attack. Because of what she started getting angry and screaming for everyone to start pounce on him and quickly get it out freeze solid. 
and what monsters CA and get to the unknown and what they brought military headquarters, but the enemy was not embarrassed not for a minute. And what boss ninth floors began to understand what if they will take their number held out more though it won't be long before they can defeat him. But suddenly she turned attention to the girl which fought with defending with all my might something underscore. And she couldn't understand why she's so furious protects something underscore. But at this moment the creation was already completed and was created not binding faith. And this one copper connecting faith and mirror bending borders started unite Selena which guarded from the mirror was I'm very glad that she managed to survive. And it began call those who answered the call user threads connecting faith and this item could use only owner. Ninth floor boss the lizard couldn't understand what is happening really creatures towers answered the call person. And how just started happening connection to floor those who answered the call appeared a huge leg. Tribal leader Iceblade Caracal and when he appeared he said that with joy answered the call. Gene Hack in the air on his own the pet began to tell him that he is grateful that he came to this calls and forgives he gets three months pay. But unperturbed turning his gaze and croaking answered what this good news. And how only one of arrivals began to blow on their huge horn. A bunch of reinforcements began to move to attack. And shout to the enemy that they will destroy opponents for the glory of the ice blade. And how only Carnegie ran into the boss ninth floor's lizard rang out huge roar from them weapons. But the lizard started asking why icy trolls collaborate with people. But Carnegie silently took it as mine huge hand. And with all strength knocked him to the ground continuing to sell him. But how only lizard understood what to him now will come in she started slowly lift up mine look up. And saw how Carnegie swing his huge club and said that there is no war in the world that no one will click back to his savior. Another boss ninth floors that his partner only what finished off and she could not believe what this actually happening underscore in fact. And what Shadow Wolf 2 destroyed ordinary players. And she couldn't understand why everything is so abrupt has changed. But Jinhok started coming up to her and telling her that everyone was so busy but she total only continues to just watch. But now he will show her how need to fight. Activating their lightning the boss of the ninth floor began to smile asking our hero what underscore they really think. What will be able her defeat alone and the fact that he won t-shoot against her skill lightning armor and what began to form in her electric protection. But Jenhek activated mind mandala skill and what it can do predict enemy attack trajectory. And at this moment boss ninth floors began to activate one more skill whip lightning and direct it towards Jean Hayek. But he waved his hand with ease reflected her attack and her whip the lightning simply began to fly off to the side. And she all of a sudden understood what this guy foresaw and repelled her attacks there with bare fists and really he was hiding your true strength. But with the help mastering the steps of the demon king, he was able to get close to her in one second. And how only she noticed him and started trying step aside. On this I already had a fairy tale end because our hero was ready finish off her in place. But she all of a sudden decided at last say something but Jean Hake didn't he want her listen and activate mind skill imperial art black sky. Has begun to be fulfilled circle of punishment technique piercing and with huge he punched her straight in the stomach. And this one the strongest blow simply destroyed her in place. After all what would she was ant a strong monster. She would ant have been able to survive. After such an attack. And noticing this rest guys started rejoice. After all their leader still managed underscore destroy ninth floor boss. The only one boss which survived dark fong started screaming they retreat. Milena which clearly guarded mirror finally lying on the ground I could breathe what all finished. We his partner came up to our hero and said that the spirits would deal with the remaining enemies. And how he just started to turn towards them they thanked him and congratulated him for cleaning up eighth floor. Its level immediately began to increase. But standing still he thought what to him seems or he missed something underscore. But turning mine look at the boss ninth floors which was lying near him. At last she started saying that having experienced his attacks she understood. What is his level not even close to who he is with to him to come meet. But dim heck is not completely understood what she means underscore. And lifting his head up he saw what is formed some kind of bright red sphere. And this one very huge ball quickly began to increase in size. 
and covered the entire area in which the players and subordinates were located our hero. But Jean Hyuk couldn't understand why that's exactly what he thought what enough prepared. But this moment from top to bottom he began to appear. Demon who only his presence forces ordinary players is afraid of fear. A little time previously in the city in which started your way Jean Haik together with Milena. He spoke Milena to she stopped after all to him, there is what to tell her. What does he understand they discovered double impact upon intrusion on another floor? But why she didn't tell him the reason for which her sent to study it? And activated your mark of sorrow Milena began to suffer from pain and screamed that this all superior management and they said that she will be able meet someone special if we'll follow here. Well, Jean Hyuk is not completely understood about someone special she only what did she say. But currently time he realized what thought what enough prepared signing a contract with Rick. But now seeing the demon who slowly goes down to him. And it seems he met this special about whom heard previously. The demon came up and started asking what means it's him. That who interfered with them plans and constantly suggests fuss at everyone floors. But Alice being in the world of images, I could nt retain normally mine reason. And the demon noticed this said what someone diligently trying to protect him. But it's just a pity what her efforts in vain because his death is already near. But how only our hero decided activate mind skill greedy glance the notification system showed him what activation will impossible because of the big differences in the city. But he still wanted to get at least some drop of information but all further attempts were simply in vain. But at this moment luck began to activate due to the high level goals our hero was only available part information. And looking closer he began to see name this demon. In fact, the demon leaned towards him and began to ask what is he muttering to himself? Under nose. But Jean Hake said just one word Makidros which swallows death. But the demon was immediately surprised by what he knew what's his name. And turned mind look at our hero he heard what he said what to look forward to was waiting for him. And getting down on his knees he began to perform deactivation skill world of images. And holding his hand, Jean Hyuk began slowly lift your head and look at the demons. But Makidros asked where to him his real identity is no name after all, he is a demon announcing death, but the characteristics showed that strength is dexterity physical strength mana and skills by what were unknown to Jean Haik. But in the description it was written that he is a descendant of Pandemonium and has the title of Count and he ranks 26th in the Kingdom Demons and Capable Use Magic High Level and currently time participates in the War Caused Rating Competition and what our hero understood what seems Alice passed out due to resistance barriers. And everyone else who were behind him frozen in place even Perfume and Kagama. And the likelihood that he will win this demon is ridiculous. Just 0% but the demon started talking to that answered. Gene Hack now remains only say something he definitely doesn't t expect. The fact that he is a dark apostle serving burial one of King's demons called rotting with my heart. But the demon could not understand what he just what said about the dark apostle. But our hero continued to say that familiar weather to him organization demonic people what evade demons and he collaborated with them to find him. And what to him find known that the demon King Vellal is not interested in pandemonium ranks. And he does just that underscore to him will be honored. And at first he just wanted to become his apostle but serving King Varial learned a lot about myself. And it turned out that he was enough ambitious human. But the demon could not understand the essence of the words which he says especially about the ambitious. But Jean Hyuk continued to say that all true he wants to serve another king. Replied thoughtfully what information which he owns true and also given its dark energy. And directed his hand the demon began to activate skill black bullet and ask our hero underscore is he the one. And need be enough valuable so that he closes eyes but interference in his plans. And what he should prove him his importance until he finished it off and wiped it off his face land. But by activating mind skill sacred abode of the sun Jean Haik answered that's no problem. Varial I immediately began to understand that his image of the worlds was covered in a different way. And looking closer he saw ancient Egyptian god underscore which sat on his throne and spoke to himself knows what to him very boring. But at this moment his eyes started glow very brightly and he himself could not understand what is happening. And holding his head he began to publish loud scream. 
Not understanding who dare use his skill and all his estates in which he was sitting began to illuminate with bright light. And into this in an instant the demon moved to the sacred abode of the sun. And closing your's face from the bright sun which he had a light, he understood what it's not perfect but that's what the power of the Egyptian god is. And in front of him our hero fell asleep asked how to him such a trick. Because he is capable touch even to the kingdom of the gods. But the demon started strange smile and say Jean hake really interesting human. And at that moment things started to happen deactivation skills world of images. Milena I slowly came to my senses, feeling strange a feeling that I couldn't explain. She tried to understand that happened, but the answer eluded her. Underscore. She noticed the guys who previously were locked in a cage now lying unconscious. Underscore in her head was spinning question, why they disconnected? Other the girl, Ira, stood to the side, captivated feeling powerful dark energy that underscore as if it enveloped her. Ira looked at Jean Hack, their leader who underscore stood in front of her. His calm appearance made her understand that he was completely security underscore. Jean Hyuk, thinking, held the key in his hands. His thoughts were busy wondering why underscore it was he who became owner of this item. When the demon reported him that the key will be useful for breaking contract with demonic forces, Jean felt heaviness responsibility. He knew that underscore must find in the tower crevice and use the key to to come in inside. His confidence is that he is with it will cope, was steady underscore. Leaving, the demon threw last words, saying that met a bunch of dark apostles, but Jeannie was the most unique and bold from everyone he has ever met. Jean Hyuk realized that he had no choice but how admit that underscore varial, dark observer, directed mind look at the apostles. Clutching the key in his hands, he thought about the words of the demon who met other apostles before him. He realized that underscore someone is already before him managed to receive the title of apostle. The contours of Jin's head began to become clearer. Plan underscore. Suddenly Alice's voice rang out from rings, are you okay? Jean replied that underscore survived thanks to her that she saved him. Alice continued, pointing to a high-ranking demon with rare abilities management time, such as he was total several. Jean confident noted that it s not worth it worry about him there is a plan. His confidence was indestructible, despite all the obstacles. Touching the sphere caused systemic notice, 8th floor was successfully cleared, boss 9th floor is defeated, and 9th floor also was conquered underscore. Ira, standing behind him, began to congratulate him on his conquest another floor and asked what his underscore plans for the future. In a quiet silence after battle's systemic notifications flickered in front of Jean Hyuk, reflecting his gaze growing satisfaction, level raised. Level promoted. Recognition of his achievements in this tower world it was brief but significant. Spread out before him great magical library, her vaults hid not only books and knowledge, but also secrets ready open up to the most persistent seeker. Mysterious man in fedora hid their eyes under shadow hats underscore he dialed a number on an antique telephone, and his gloomy face foreshadowed something serious. Do you have a minute to talk? His voice was low and calm, but in it felt danger. He was ent here to underscore discuss the weather or ordinary affairs. His words were full hidden sense. He looked at the impressive design inside libraries underscore but for now I was ent in it formed gap, his words were full regrets and hidden intentions underscore in his eyes read determination to correct happened. It turns out that a hole appeared in the barrier that's set by the middle manager level? The man frowned, thinking about the consequences this oversight underscore. Jean Hyuk, standing in front of him, in disbelief looked at the manager. And how you justify yours absence? His tone was demanding, because from the answer depended much. On that day the Murans unexpectedly invaded the empire, they shadows slid over the stones, bringing chaos and destruction. As a manager, I need was be there, the man replied, his voice cool and collected, but in his eyes now glowed spark regrets or guilt. Jean Hyuk stood up, his silhouette cut off last rays of setting sun. The Murans invaded the empire? Surprise and concern reflected in his words, he understood the full scale of the problem. Jean Hyuk rubbed his chin with a finger, looking thoughtful. They must were weakened after confiscation of coins. Since are they. 
His thoughts were interrupted deep contemplation possible scenarios underscore. However this an excuse will not help me break the contract with you, he remarked dryly, without looking up glance from the manager, who seemed to be looking for something in your papers. The manager slowly turned to Jean and sighed. Hard. Therefore, as apologies. He began, raising eyes on Jean, his gaze was full of seriousness. ILL let you bring you, he continued, standing up, his silhouette-covered room surrounded underscore mystical light from magical items. One of their items. The manager's voice sounded solemnly, and suddenly room filled with bright light, opening treasures that could change underscore move history. Manager thoughtfully looked to the side, his eyes glowed at the thought of rare objects. Even the very opportunity to buy them, he paused, took a breath air complete anticipation, this is already a very masterpiece outfit. Jean Hugh skeptical raised eyebrow underscore only plans for this old man trying to sell me something, he did not trust easy paths to success. The manager, sensing his mood, raised thumbs up, emphasizing attention. Then currency for the purchase, his voice is a little trembled with excitement. A creature appeared in the room that looked like a small black demon with a mischievous smile. As you know, began Jean, affectionately stroking creature on the head, specimens in this collection's very are rare. Boo, this one beautiful shine. The manager could not hide his delight, his face distorted with excitement. I see a and resist them. Jean confident looked at the manager. Then I want to exchange one shisha for a trushing compass, dot. His voice was calm but decisive. As you know, he began, looking at the stunned Jean, the specimens in this collection's very rare. There was a note of pride and mystery in his voice wisdom underscore. A tense atmosphere hung in the room. Manager, concentrated peering at Jean, activated deep sigh. Air around him trembled with tension. Your ancient dragon has not yet grown up, he said, looking at the cute black demon sitting in Jin's arms. Therefore one I'm sewing it won't be enough. The manager, with despair in his voice, continued, the compass is trash? He is very unique underscore what will I live on if I'll sell it for this low price? His words sounded like a plea for compassion. He did a proposal that could change the rules of the game. Yes idea, for 10 shishu get a compass and rent ancient types for a week. I'm going into the red, so consider it's a gift. This old man was famous his ability bargain for anything and everything. His business ability underscore was legendary in this world where every item could be the key to greatness. Jean Hyuk, with a smile on his face, called himself Rick Genesee, the great merchant, anticipating new opportunities that underscore opened up to him. Astonishment frozen on the manager's face when Jean Hyuk confidently rejected his offer. No need Jean said firmly, his voice did not waver. Ha! Huh? What? Don't you need a compass? There was a manager dumbfounded underscore he did not expect such a turn, his plan staggered. Jean stood firm, holding black little demon I wanted to resolve everything amicably, but you overcharged me, he said adamant. As far as I know, the violation contract with the manager is serious crime, the manager's voice trembled, his gaze became sharper underscore. First the bottom manager level now underscore average. Jean continued, his words were permeated irony. I'm sure the highest manager will be delighted. Disturbance replaced surprise on the manager's face. Ah, hey, uh, uh. Like Jin Zek. Wait, he was at a loss, his plans were crumbling before his eyes. But suddenly he changed his tone. Okay. I'll give it to you for one shisha. He shouted, following the retreating Jean. Coming? Manager trying save face, decided play on concessions. When, I'll take just one. Will a little hiss, he said, trying hide yours disappointment behind the fa'ade of generosity. Jean Hyuk gave him a smile full confidence and delight. Oh. His answer interrupted delighted sigh when he looked at the touching expression, the face of a small black demon. No, Kagama, don't do it such face, softly said Jean, trying console his satellite whose underscore eyes filled up tears. The manager shook head as if waking up from a bad dream. His reaction was instant when he realized that underscore underscore encountered an unusual situation underscore. Thu hu. 
The demon could in tea contain tears, his little heart was on the verge of breaking because of the experience of this bargaining underscore. How only negotiations have reached their climax, the manager is stunned unexpected turn of events, barely restrained yours disappointment. K.H. I can tea do this. He exclaimed, his voice trembled under heaviness impending losses. Just. Bring me the payment later finally he gave up, with heavy with a sigh letting go of your hardness in favor more desperate requests. The treasured compass tration at last changed hands, his arrow unshakably pointed to a gap in the tower, indicating a new path for its owner. Excellent deal, Jean confirmed with a sly smile, fully aware true the value of what he has acquired. Preparing to leave, he turned to the manager with the latest to request that carried all the weight their interactions. Oh, I have there is last request. Manager, famous their deals at low levels now underscore promoted to position greater significance, remained behind, unsure but complete hope underscore continues interfere in affairs towers underscore I hope he gets it soon appropriate punishment, he thought to himself. Ah, Carmen. Don T worry about him, Jean assured, stepping into the unknown, the future both characters hanging by a thread, them fate intertwined a complex dance of power and ambition. But the manager began to assure our hero what will he do so that he will never see him again. And into this time, that small dirty dog asked so that he can be pardoned. And what he did terrible error. If she he will definitely let him go all corrected and continued beg to she showed affection to him mercy. But the one he addressed was just slow stirred sugar in the tea and said only one word mistake. She connected 8th and 9th floor so that he doesn't fail even high-ranking rendered support. But the casting continued to say that he took such risks, but what he calls his failure mistake. And the fact that he is simply pathetic and slow boasting began to raise his hand. And huge branches started envelop Carmena. Who started screaming and begging for him to give to him one more chance. But Mr. Hastings was unshakable and it is unlikely that he would have convinced him otherwise. And stood up with his throne he said why does he around such idiots? And raised his head hasting began to speak to the ancients didn't worry too much. Because he won't allow it no one get to the sanctuary. The next day in the Hall of Fame was one video published it was edited manager and all viewers saw how unknown destroyed boss ninth floors. And with what popularity grew more unknown how clear ones appeared more often questions what interesting who will win if unknown fight with Jean Hyuk. But this while our hero was in the hall of the defiled. And looking at my statistics I realized what she not bad after all, he raised it at once seven levels. But at that moment she began to approach him Alice. But he looked at her and could in t understand what went wrong with her face. But she started to rise necklace and said that it had worked but it doesn't t obey and apparently he I don't like something. Fifteen minutes ago to their temple where they lay her dead. And how only she activated her bloody trail, devoted servant. After after long torment, I finally woke up. And raised his head he was very glad to see my mistress. Which looked at him and said that she am glad to see him too. And asked well will he continue to serve her? But he lowered his head and knelt down and began to say that of course he will serve her after all how otherwise. And the fact that he is valus will serve her until the end their days. But now being in the necklace her servant began to say that he could not this accept how Alice a noblewoman could sign a contract with such scum. And what this sheer nonsense and her should just kill him again so that he doesn't see this shame. But our hero looked at this horror and said just one word clear. A little later when our mountain arrived at my apartment. Alice stood around the corner and covered herself pillow after all she I watched this chaos underscore our hero did. And what worse total was it s that he bullied her underscore servant just like mocked above her before. And how he just finished scope necklace inside sitting subordinate Alice couldn't even do it right move. But Alice went up to him and started telling him not to worry, he ll I'll get used to it because Jin Huck is better what he thinks. But our hero saw what about him it's arrived some kind of notice. And after he read it, Alice began to speak that he will leave not for long and she must by due education his subordinate until he's gone. And walking not long down the street he sat down on a bench next to some man. And immediately he began to ask that he had arrived all the way here and the empire had an abundance of coins. But the man took off their glasses said that the world is out towers amazing and how he thinks is written is he in this world? 
Need to more practice because he looks like a tourist. A little later, they sat down at the nearest cafe. But our hero began to ask again what only that he told him said. And what heavenly steed has finally graduated their training and say he was seen during invasion on the 24th floor. And what the most strong figure Murima began to move and for our hero this sheer hemorrhoids. But what this it is too early because he should was go out after underscore underscore they will clean up average floors. And decided whether believers part Murima team up with the heavenly horse to win the war. But now I started asking the man what did he really come to ask him to get rid of the heavenly steed. To which the man began to answer what's not not for this after all invasion Murima this their problems and such a request passed all borders underscore. And what then their defense system was fully destroyed during underscore of the past invasions and they studied this question and found what this was someone from underscore their composition. And our hero understood what means in the empire appeared spy. But the man began to say that he wanted to ask him only one thing, to find this spy. If he catches him the empire will support him and provide the shortest route to the top floors. And a little later he will contact him when start a rat hunt. One more thing the man wanted to say finally, according to information and intelligence officers, we are hunting again plans something grandiose for him underscore costs prepare. An invasion hired demon to lower floors the return of the heavenly steed and the war on the middle floors. Walking down the street he thought only about this, but suddenly he looked at the reflection in the glass. And understood what scenario towers which he knew everything changes underscore is happening much earlier. And he can will he continue to cope with these events. But at this moment the glass which was suddenly in front of him exploded began to crumble into several small parts. Passing by people could not understand what it was that happened and why the glass simply exploded. The next day our hero began to say that them need to unwind. And a little later they started to go to the first floor towers amusement park tests. But Alice was surprised this after all she didn't know what came first floor even such yes but the hero answered what about this little known place. But appeared ward Alice and began to cover her and talk to she followed him because he will her protect. And what already in this in life he will definitely will protect Miss Alice. But she immediately started hitting him on the head and said what they now under cover and he should end fool around. But suddenly Teresa also appeared and for some reason she shyly began to approach our hero. And coming up closer said that they haven't seen each other for a long time but the hero didn't understand why is she embarrassed. But still you underscore time she knew that he wouldn't he'd be alone and she was so full on the date. And went up to her and started asking questions why she was embarrassed and really ashamed that she didn't teach join his faction. And now she must look at who will come to them. After all, he even stalker called and hoped that she won't be bored. But how only stalker came up and started asking really they will train exactly here. Well, waving his arms, the hero said that since everyone has already gathered they they would start but Alice didn't he understand for what they here came. And in front of them a window appeared with my eyes notification which was burning red sign that activated amusement park events hardcore. And from their moment to the end events use everyone's skills and subjects will limited. And a plush one appeared toy and started telling the kids welcome to the park and his name is Reve and he will their guide. And this one events only one goal survive and escape from this hell. And what this it won't be easy and they see a and use their skills and subjects. It's terrible strong monsters will chase them and at this moment it opens hellish amusement park. And participants must meet the strongest monster of this horror park raccoon. And how only he opened mine Alice's huge mouth standing near began to be terrified of him. And with a light blow she threw the monster aside with the words that this abomination. But suddenly this toy I looked what now is going on complete chaos. What Teresa and Stalker immediately started destroy everyone monsters who ran at them and what them was very boring. Our hero answered what seems to him what they all simply became stronger and they must think about it how about a vacation. But a toy who observed this chaos saw on her own eyes like his amusement park destroyed. And what these invaders they'll smash him to pieces. And he started begging there till they stopped after all he simply won't have it where live. But this time on the 24th floor towers tests in the empire chaos and destruction reigned. The man began to approach another man which stood alone and looked into the distance. But came up what he started telling him what she done good work. 
and what she single-handedly destroyed one of the imperial orders which they are so proud and have long accepted him into their ranks. But he looked at his hand and understood what strength, what did he get thanks to help Nirima and the world outside the towers are just a sandbox for children. And the man started at him ask maybe does he leave quietly tower and if we'll succeed get rid of Jean Hyuk them job will become even easier. But the guy answered head what now he can deal with it yourself. But the only problem is that he has too much a lot of strong partners. If he tries to kill him, don't risk your life to protect him. And then he simply should deal with them first and ask the head who provides largest threats. And this Saint Teresa of Amsterdam and Laurentia. And this is the one young woman which protects empire. And then for them it's well excellent opportunity to deal with with everyone the rest get rid of his henchmen.